Chapter 376, Killing Yu on Jingmen to Swap Blood In the dark, the unlucky calls of birds rang out. The clouds parted, and the moon shone out. Occasional black shadows flitted across the tips of trees. Up the mountain, Fans Yan said to Deng Ziyu as he and Zhao Dia returned to the carriage. Go quietly. Deng Ziyu nodded and gently moved the reins. The horse with the bite pulled the carriage and rounded the deathly silent courtyard toward the back of the city. Behind the courtyard was a mountain, hidden in the darkness. With spring trees blocking, if anyone was looking down from there, they wouldn't be able to discover the group in the carriage. Fans Yan silently took off his gloves. They were as thin as a layer of skin. He used the gloves to carefully wipe the blood off the soft sword and confirmed there was no trace of blood left. He then sheathed the sword once more around his waist and flicked his index finger firmly. Some powder flicked onto the gloves. With a swoosh, they went up in flames. Jaudia glanced at him, took out a metal bucket from under the chair and placed it in front of him. Fans Yan threw the burning gloves into the metal bucket. He watched the gradually shrinking flame with narrowed eyes. The fire in his eyes also gradually went out. Before too long, the carriage had driven up the mountain. Below, the courtyard was still silent. The people inside were either dead or fainted, so they could not make any noise. No one knew that homicides had taken place inside, so no one would come to look. Who knew what Fan Xian was preparing to see as he remained behind on the mountain? Dang Ziyu gently stroked the horse's back. He entered the carriage and silently sat down. Fan Xian lifted a corner of the curtain and gazed downward. After looking for a while, there was still no change. It will probably be some time before the other party discovers this. Dang Ziyu looked at the sky and thought it should be exactly midnight. He advised Fan Xian. It won't be this early. Fans Yan smiled and knew that he was indeed a bit anxious. He quietly said something to Jaudia and then leaned against the back of his chair, closed his eyes, and rested. Jaudia lifted out a rug and covered him with it. Gradually, his slightly cold body warmed up. Fans Yan felt drowsiness overcome him in the warmth and fell into a deep sleep. Dot. Dot. After an indeterminable amount of time, Fans Yan opened his eyes and made a noise. Dang Ziyu lifted the curtain and gazed downward. He lowered his voice and said, They're here. Fans Yan lifted the rug and placed his head near the window. He narrowed his eyes as he looked down. He saw that outside of Yuan Meng's hidden manor suddenly came a person. He gently knocked on the door with great familiarity. The rhythm of the knocks clearly hit some kind of secret signal. It looked like he was the middleman responsible for the communication between the Jiangnan powers and Yuan Meng. He wore simple cotton clothes and his face was normal. He knocked on the manor door for a while and found that no one answered him. He seemed to be a bit surprised and nervous, and immediately retreated into the darkness. Fan Zhan, who was monitoring from the mountain, was not anxious. He knew this person would come back. As expected, the person did not go far. In a moment, there was an extra head above the northwest corner of the wall that sneakily looked out. It was that person looking into the garden to see what had happened. He summoned the courage and jumped into the garden. The three people on the mountain were no longer able to see what he saw in the garden. They only heard a very stifled cry. It should be that he had finally found the tragic scene of the large number of bodies and puddles of blood in the garden. The manor door was immediately pushed open and a man rushed into the darkness with his head lowered. He was probably going to his master to report. Dot. Dot. Fans Yan stretched in the carriage and yawned. It was only now that he noticed that the edges of the sky had gradually become white. He couldn't resist smiling. The day is almost here. If the other party wants to hide this matter, they will have to act quickly. Dang Ziyu nodded. Each manor has people watching. There will be a report tomorrow on who receives the message tonight. Fans Yan smiled and said, have a guess. Who exactly do you think will manage the funeral matters for Master Yuan today? Dang Ziyu gave a pained smile and said, The Suzhou government dot will certainly send people here. Sir, I can keep an eye on things here. You should go back to the manor and rest. Fans Yan smiled and didn't say anything. Yuan Meng's death startled the Jiangnan official who was secretly protecting her. The murder was done at night, 
and the peeping came in the morning. Whichever official could know of Yuan Meng's death within such a short time and hurried here to manage the funeral matters. Of course, was the official who played a dishonorable role in this matter. This morning they should be able to find out just which people in Jiangnan Road were the eldest princess trusted aides. Fans Yan also had no other choice. The Overwatch Council did not have enough people in Jiangnan, so it was impossible for them to place a fatal spy in every manner. They could only use the method of splitting up the monitoring and use the killing of Yuan Meng to investigate. Dot. Dot. The Suzhou Zizu had been busy every day listening to Song Shiren and Chen Bachang debate in court. Not only did he neglect his official duties, his spirit had also been greatly drained. Every night, he fell into a deep sleep. He even rarely was intimate with his favorite third concubine. When he was called out from his bed early this morning, his mood was angry. After he had heard the message. It was like a basin of cold water had been poured over his head. All of his anger disappeared without a trace in an instant. Shock and deep worry surged in his mind. Yuan Meng was dead? This had happened too suddenly. How would he explain this to the second prince, the crown prince, and dot the eldest princess? As he anxiously pulled on his clothing, he ordered someone to send the advisor in the monitor to him. When the advisor arrived, the Zizu was already dressed with a trace of resentment. He said, Why did you come so slowly? Yuan Meng is dead. All the advisors were trusted aides to these old officials and hid nothing from each other. Of course, this advisor also knew of Yuan Meng and gave a pained smile. It is what it is. Since the imperial envoy had came to Suzhou, and yet Master Yuan still refused to leave, the final result was certain death. The Zizu furrowed his brows and said, she was hidden so secretively. Do you mean that it was the Overwatch Council that had acted? Other than the Overwatch Council, which other power in Jiangnan could kill you on Meng without a sound? The advisor analyzed. You must not panic right now. In any case, Yuan Meng has already died. It is impossible for the Overwatch Council to find out our connection to her. If you react badly right now, it will actually cause the Overwatch Council to discover your connection to this matter. The advisor's considerations were indeed sufficiently prudent. The Zizu thought for a bit and then furrowed his brows. But dot it seems a bit strange. If it was the Imperial Envoy who acted, why did he kill you on Meng instead of having her captured? If the Imperial Envoy wanted to use the Ministry of Justice's wanted posters to move me, he should not have dealt with it like this. The advisor had also not understood this point. Yuan Meng was someone close to the second prince and the crown prince, although the Ministry of Justice has put out wanted posters, no official under heaven dared to brave the danger of offending the nobleman in Jingdu to bring her to justice. You don't need to be overly worried. Everyone knew of this. As for why the Overwatch Council didn't capture her alive. I think perhaps Master Yuan knew she couldn't endure the Overwatch Council's punishment and so committed suicide. We need to go see. The Zizu made up his mind. We need to at least know some details. The advisor resolutely and decisively advised against it. Sir, you cannot go. The Zizu furrowed his brows. Why? Naturally. I will not go in an official capacity. It is almost daybreak. If it is not quickly tidied up and words gets out. The Ministry of Justice in Jingdu is sure to have things to say, and the Overwatch Council will use this as an excuse to show off. How will our little Suzhou government answer the Emperor's questions? If the Overwatch Council wanted to use this as an excuse to show off, they would not have this made this into a dead problem. The advisor reminded him, who knows how many eyes are watching right now over there. You definitely cannot go. As for the funeral arrangements, I will go later in disguise with a few trusted aides. The Zizu thought and knew it was indeed better this way and allowed the suggestion. This official and advisor thought they had responded prudently enough, but they never thought that when the advisor disguised himself as Chen Kuan and slipped out of the manor, a spy hidden in the alley outside of the Suzhou Yaman had seen this scene clearly. When the Suzhou government advisor arrived at the outside perimeter of the Yuan Meng secret residence in a curtained sedan chair, he found that there were already some strange people on the streets. His heart clenched. He lifted the curtain to see before he felt at ease. He furrowed his brows at a man in a cloth shirt who had hurried over to the sedan chair and said, 
What exactly happened? How did the people just die like this? That cloth-clothed man was the Suzhou Thousand Man and one of the officials roused from his bed today by the news of Yuan Meng's death. He was originally meant to be stationed outside of the city. Since his manor was inside the city, he was actually the first to get here. Hearing the advisor's question, this Thousand Man said in bad temper. You ask me, who am I going to ask? The advisor was startled and came down from the sedan chair. The two looked at each other's clothing and couldn't stop themselves sighing and smiled bitterly. A proper official and advisor were both forced to dress in the clothing of commoners. Are the streets clean? The advisor asked carefully as he slightly turned his face and hid his appearance. The thousand men said, relax. My subordinates have already cleaned up. There shouldn't be anyone watching nearby. The advisor nodded and walked shoulder to shoulder with the thousand men toward the manor. When they entered the yard and saw the tragic sight of corpses covering the ground, the advisor couldn't help throwing up. He covered his mouth and nose and said, Where is Yuan Meng's body? In the room, the advisor forced down his revulsion and fear and walked into the room to have a look. He saw Yuan Meng's state of death with her eyes wide open. He went forward to confirm that she had died before the advisor felt himself relax a little. He sighed and said, I really don't know how we are going to explain this to the capital. We'll clean up and then worry, the thousand men said with hatred. Daybreak is about to arrive. If we let people see this, it will probably spread immediately through Suzhou. And then what will we do? No one came from the Ming family. Those unscrupulous businessmen. They're afraid the imperial envoy is watching in the shadows and refuse to show their face. Dot. Dot. The two walked out of the manor and ran into a few people who had arrived later. A number of people grouped together and spoke with serious expressions. They felt that this should be the work of the Overwatch Council. But it also shouldn't be the Overwatch Council who did it. The discussion went back and forth and twisted this way and that, yet they still did not know how to deal with this. The wounds on the body had been ruined, although we can tell it should belong to a sword. It is difficult to discover the style of the sword. We only know that one person acted and, of course, it was an ace. A figure who looked like an expert in criminal law said in a deep voice, if it was the Overwatch Council killing people, why hide it? In the end, it was still the advisor of the Suzhou Zizu who made the decision and said coldly, It is better if this case is not solved. All of us need to retreat and have our subordinates clean this all up. If the Overwatch Council does not bother with it, then bury this matter. If the Overwatch Council truly had us followed. In any case, don't let it drag us down. When they ask questions, just say, we received a report and so came to see the situation. The thousand men spat and cursed, I'm a martial general, how could I be here looking at the case? The advisor rolled his eyes at him and said, who asked you to come in such a rush? There was nothing to fight about. The people began to split off to their tasks. Those responsible for cleanup went and cleaned up. Those responsible for burying the bodies went and buried the bodies. Those responsible for going home to write up documents went to write documents. As for whether this matter would be reported, that would have to wait to see the news from the Imperial Envoy. As these people were busy, they did not discover on the mountain in the distance there was a completely black carriage that slowly drove away like a specter. Dot. Dot. The people were killed by fans Yan, but it was these officials of Jiangnan Road who were burying them. However, he definitely didn't have thoughts to take advantage of them. As for the wounds on the bodies being treated by him again. It was because he didn't want the Sigu sword's wounds to get out. Since it was impossible to frame Dong Yai, there was no need to brave this danger. Most importantly, he couldn't let the emperor in the palace know that he could use the Sigu sword. Otherwise, the emperor would certainly think of the assassin at the Hanging Temple and the younger brother of Sigu Jian. The Overwatch Council would bring a terrifying result. The carriage moved slowly. Fans Yan smiled coldly in the carriage and said, One Yuan Meng has died, and the officials of the Jiangnan Road are shocked to this extent. Are these all dogs raised by the eldest princess? Dang Ziyu glanced at Jiao Da and guessed that the commissioner wanted to borrow Jiao Da's ears to complain to the emperor in the palace. He smiled and replied, The eldest princess was in Jiangnan for a long time, of course. 
she would have some trusted aides. Did you see clearly everyone who had come today? Some of the faces were unfamiliar. Since these people all came from their manners, I'm sure the spies should have seen clearly. We will have confirmed information in a moment, Deng Ziyu sighed and said. Only the Ming family is ruthless. They know this matter should not be touched and are refusing to come out. Fans Yan also felt it was unfortunate. He originally thought that even if he couldn't use the Yuan Ming matter to scoop out a piece of flesh from the Ming family, at least it would make them feel bad. In a moment, the carriage arrived at Hoa Garden. Fans Yan felt a bit tired and waved his hand to have the others go rest while he returned to the back residence. Sissy was lying on the table waiting for him to come back. Seeing him enter the room, she quickly poured hot water for him to soak his feet. She knew that the young master did not want too many people to know of tonight's event. So, it was not suitable for her to order the serving girls to bring hot food. Thus, she personally went to fetch the swallow's nest that had been kept warm in water and served it for him to eat. Fan Xian drank all of the porridge in one go with satisfaction and soaked his feet. He then laid on the bed and fell into a deep sleep. He did not wake from this sleep until the afternoon. He didn't know what changes Yuan Meng's death had brought to Suzhou within this one day. He also did not care much. Knowing he was awake after Sissy's announcement, Deng Ziyu walked in looking somewhat haggard. He handed the file in his hand to Fan Xian. He took it over and had a look. On it was recorded all the Yemen's in Suzhou that had strange movements early in the morning. He couldn't help but narrow his eyes and sighed. These officials in the city are all enemies. Are they going to let me live? They've certainly managed to stay calm after Yuan Meng's death. Deng Ziyu smiled bitterly and said, the officials are stuck in the middle, they don't have it easy either. Fans Yan shook his head and smiled coldly. Since we have the list, the lives will be even more difficult in the future. Send the list back to Jingdu and have the second bureau begin to investigate old files. For the people we want to move, we have to dig out their dirty pasts. Even point if they took a dozen liang of silver a dozen years ago. I want it dug out. Deng Ziyu knew that in the process of fans Yan deciding to move the Ming family, along the way he was going to move these officials a little. He didn't dare make a loud noise and quietly acknowledged the order. Fans Yan read until the end and the fire in his eyes gradually grew. He threw the file down on the table with anger and cursed in a low voice. As expected. As expected, Zhu King also knew of this matter. This man certainly had fun swinging on the wall. For Fan Xian, any information the Jiangnan official dem revealed because of Yuan Jingmeng's murder would not surprise him. The eldest princess had done business with the Ming family in Jiangnan for a long time. So, of course, most of the people in the official dem of this area belong to them. Given the power and position in Fan Xian's hands, he did not worry much about facing this kind of opposition. What he needed to know clearly was where the Jiangnan governor Zhu King was going to stand on this matter. Zhu King was a borderland official. Even with Fan Xian's imperial envoy identity, there was little he could do about him. Furthermore, the governor controlled the civil administration and military affairs. The power he could control in his hands was too powerful. If even he stood against Fan Xian, the forces against Fans Yan defeating the Ming family became unusually powerful. Deng Ziyu saw his slightly angry expression. He carefully and comfortingly said, The governor's manor also received the message, but they haven't made any noises or any kind of reaction. Sir, the other party is, after all, the governor of the road. If the officials below have connections to the capital and Yuan Meng wanted to hide in Jiangnan, this matter could not have been hidden from him. However, he does not wish to offend you, and he certainly does not wish to offend the princes in the capital. This matter cannot explain anything. Governor Zhu King should still be waiting. Fan Xian muttered to himself and found his reactions did seem to be a bit over the top. Perhaps the tension hidden below the disorganization of these few days had made him overly sensitive. He couldn't help smiling self-deprecatingly and said, Thank you for your kind words, however. Go make the arrangements still. The day after tomorrow, I will go once more to visit Zhu King. Deng Ziyu was startled, and it seemed like he wanted to say something. Fans Yang glanced at him and smiled. If you have an idea, 
Just say it. Why are you being like a girl in front of me? Dang Ziyu smiled and said, I don't think you should go visit Sir Zhu King in a rush. Oh, why is that? Fans Yan asked. Dang Ziyu replied, After all, right now the governor is still in the center. If you go visit, given your personality, I'm afraid you immediately force the governor to pick a side. What if the governor doesn't do as you want, then what? In my opinion, it is best to let Governor Zhu King maintain his stance of watching the game. We will continue to do what we are doing. We will continue to pressure the Ming family. Every day that the governor doesn't make up his mind is another day where there is none to contend with you. Then, we will have more time to do what we need to do. He continued, you want the governor to make up his mind, but in reality, the longer it takes for the governor to make up his mind. The better it is for us. Fans Yan furrowed his brow and said, Right now we are just gently knocking against the Ming family. Zhu King can continue to watch the show. If later in the year one strike hard, Zhu King won't be able to keep watching the show. At that time, he will have to pick a side. I am not completely confident. Dang Ziyu thought about it and smiled. I think it we should at least wait until you've been to a zoo. Fans Yan understood his meaning. Zhu King was the previous Prime Minister Lin Ruofu's favorite student back in the day, and Lin Ruofu was Dao Bao and Wander's father, his father-in-law. Even if Zhu King didn't need to support him for his father-in-law's sake, his father-in-law was certain to know about Zhu King's bottom line. Makes sense. Fans Yan immediately felt a large weight lifted off his chest. He laughed loudly and said, he'll make her victory more likely. Although that old father-in-law of mine is almost rusting, his weight is still significant. Dang Ziyu chuckled. Fans Yan saw Dang Ziyu's exhausted expression and asked curiously, you didn't sleep this morning? Dang Ziyu respectfully replied, I had to confirm these reports so it took some time. Fan Xian wanted to urge him to relax a bit, but thinking of his previous behavior, it seemed like he didn't have much of a stance to persuade the other. He couldn't resist smiling and suddenly thought of another matter. He asked, Ziyu, before you entered the Kenyan unit. You were in the second bureau, right? Dang Ziyu glanced at him in astonishment and nodded. He didn't know why the commissioner was suddenly asking this question. Wang Kenyan will return at the end of summer. Fans Yan gazed at him and smiled. The council is preparing to have him take over the first bureau, thus Shangjing in Northern Qi needs someone who can control the situation. You've been with me for almost two years and have seen some things. Do you have the daring to go to the North? Chapter 377 Fishing. Dang Ziyu thought for a moment and clearly understood the commissioner's words. The so-called leader of Northern Qi was indeed a dangerous position, however, it was also the most important segment in the Overwatch Council's foreign battle lines. All those who returned from this role had been placed in important positions, there was little need to bring up the predecessor Yan Binian who had become the leader of the 4th Bureau at such a young age. Everyone knew that once Director Chen retired and Sir Fan Jr. took the role of director, Zhao Yan could have an even more important assignment. Wang Kenyan was Deng Ziyu's previous superior, whom he had been very familiar with. After being cooped up in the council ten years, the moment Wang Kenyan met fans Yan he was sent to Northern Qi. After Wang Kenyan returned, it was certain he would become the new leader of the first bureau. The trip to Northern Chi was dangerous, but it was the guild on a political platform. The commissioner asking whether or not he wanted to go to Northern Chi was because he was getting ready to promote him. Furthermore, he had heard that the old leader of the second bureau was getting old and preparing to retire. He himself had also started out in the second bureau. Dang Ziyu was endlessly excited and knelt in front of Fan Xian. In a serious voice, he said, It is all up to Sir's arrangements. Fan Xian smiled and didn't continue to say anything. The Jiangnan matter made him feel more and more that although the Emperor had great trust in him, he still absolutely blocked any connection between him and the military. As for when he handled matters, the unconditional power he had in his hands was actually still limited. Otherwise, he wouldn't be so afraid of Jiangnan Governor Zhu King's existence. The one that sat in the dragon chair didn't really trust his true sons, 
much less fans yawn. He knew that it was already good the emperor allowed him to hold such great power, but he also knew the emperor would not let him expand his power. Since the paths going out were difficult, Fans Yan had to ensure that he held whatever power he had more firmly in his hands. For example, the Overwatch Council. After Cheng Ping Oing Zara, the Overwatch Council had swapped out the old blood and replaced it with fresh blood loyal to Fans Yan. Dot. Dot. Deng Ziyu reported to him other movements the Overwatch Council had recently taken. All were still targeted towards the Ming family. Although the Overwatch Council's governance specializing in surveillance did not have the direct authority to interfere in non-governmental powers, what the world lacked least was reasons from governmental bodies. The Overwatch Council had completed preparations for the early stage. At any time, they could do as fans Yan ordered and stick their hands into Jiangnan affairs. From the palace treasury to Suzhou to the docks, from the camps to the treasury, they could apply pressure on the Ming family from all directions. This was LLL that fans Yan could do. Since they couldn't find concrete evidence for the Ming family's crimes, then they couldn't use public power to proceed with their bullying. Jiangnan Road officials were all watching him. Right now, the Overwatch Council's job was to, through the harassment of the Ming family's trade route as well as the palace treasury transport companies meddling with their goods, further compress the Ming family's income. Sinking the family's flow of silver into a state of desperate lacking was the only way they could force the Ming family to continue transferring large amounts of silver. And, the trap was actually hidden in the transferring of silver. How long has it been since the island has sent any messages? Fans Yan furrowed his head. The island matter that was sufficient to crush the Ming family had suddenly sunk into silence. Deng Ziyu heard Fans Yan's worry. He also had some misgivings. He reported, the Quanzu branch also felt that the matter was strange and has sent someone on to the island. There will probably be information coming back the day after tomorrow. Jiangnan was very large. It took too long for information to travel from an island in the East Sea to Suzhou. Fans Yan knew that he could only wait for now. After Deng Ziyu left, only then did Fans Yan feel a bit tired. He stretched and went out of his room to take a walk around Hua Garden. Although it was Yang Jiamai's grand garden, it was not much stained with a salt merchant's wealthy and noble air or the arrogance of private salt peddlers. Rather, it was invariably refined and elegant. It was not the same as other manor gardens shallow flowing waters, green rock gardens, layers of mountain ranges and corridors and pavilions. Through the clever arrangements of the original designer, it showed a different kind of life force. The entire garden seemed alive, enveloping gently and lightly around those in the garden like Jiangnan's green mountains and the blue waters of West Lake. This kind of clever arrangement that so united men and heaven was, without a doubt, most appreciated by a direct descendant of the Dani Yidao, Hai Tang. In the days they had been in Suzhou, she spent most of her time in the garden quietly thinking and did not go out to seek the elegant Jiangnan people. When Fan Xian saw the floral clothing beside the little lake, he did not feel surprised at all. Such a thing as fishing does not seem appropriate for you. He walked to the side of the lake and sat down, sitting slightly higher up on the bank than Hai Tang. There was about half a meter of distance between them. From this angle, he could just see Hai Tang's steady shoulder and the flowery cloth wrapped around her head. Beside her was placed a normal, yellow straw hat. Hai Tang didn't turn her head and replied evenly, Why is it not appropriate? The bamboo rod in her hands did not move at all. Only the tip bobbed up and down like it was giving greeting to the fish in the water and had no other intentions. Fans Yan smiled and randomly wiped the moss on his hands beside him. Fishing is also killing. I'll teach you a method where you don't need fish bait and your heart is the hook. In the novels he had read in his previous life, they said that profound people love to play these kinds of games. Unexpectedly, Hai Tang still did not turn her head and was not moved. Rather she laughed mockingly. How boring. If you don't use bait, do you not want to catch anything? Heart hook. Since what is needed is temperament, once your heart is a hook, Naturally it is hooked. As for whether or not it could be pulled up, what is the difference? Fan Xian was angry and bitter. He just wanted to chat, 
so why bring out such a ridiculous conversation? Hai Tang turned her head to glance at him and smiled. I know your mind hasn't been peaceful these days. Why not sit with me? Fishing is very good for calming the mind. Fans Yan shook his head and smiled. A gentleman stays away from the kitchen. Needless to say, fishing and hunting too. Hai Tang couldn't resist rolling her eyes at him and shook her head. Hypocrite. Fans Yan chuckled and moved forward a little. However, his butt slipped and he almost slid into the lake. It made him flail his arms and legs, and give out a cry. Beside the lake there were rocks but no trees or grass. Other than Hai Tang, there was no one to help, so he grabbed Hai Tang's shoulder with both hands. Hai Tang's shoulder shook and shook his hand. She then turned her hand around and wrapped it around his wrist, helping him steady his balance. She smiled slightly and said, Not only are you a hypocrite, even your acting is so fake, much too insincere. How could there be a ninth level ace who could not even sit steadily? Fans Yan looked at the sky and sighed. No one understands me, and Duo Duo also does not trust me. How will I live? Hai Tang flipped her wrist and had him sit next to her. She took out another fishing rod and shoved it into his hands. Since you want to fish, then you must have patience. Don't be in a rush. Her words carried two meanings. Fans Yan knew very well that she was not talking about picking up girls, but rather about the problem of defeating the situation in Jiangnan. He took out an earthworm from the little mud can beside him and hung it on the fish hook. Throwing it into the water, he scattered some crumbs that Duo Duo had prepared into the water to lure the fish. The lakeside suddenly became calm. A moment later, Fans Yan's light voice broke the rare moment of rapport. I have patience and am not in a rush. The Jiangnan situation is not difficult to control. The plan has already been set. I will confidently take each step. The problem is that Jiangnan is watching Jingdu and I have no control over what will happen in Jingdu. Matters over there might develop in the direction I want or it could suddenly explode into a huge matter that no one has time to react to. A huge matter? Exactly. Fans Yan did not continue to say anything. He only said, with a trace of misgiving and a thread of true admiration, you know I am the commissioner of the King Kingdom Overwatch Council, then you must also know who the true boss of the Overwatch Council is. North Zhao N, South Pingping JW1. Hai Tang's smile carried a trace of bitterness. That director Chen has killed countless of our northern Qi people. How could we not remember him? Fans Yan smiled and said, Each serves their own master, and each has their own desires. The two sides were enemies at the time, so such mutual killing was natural. I only want you to know that this old man is one of two people in the entire world that I cannot understand completely. Two people? Hai Tai curiously twisted her head to look at him. Correct. Fans Yan's expression was cautious as he said, Even if it is my emperor or your emperor, I can still guess some of their thoughts and positions. Because they sit on the dragon chair, they are certain to think of matters relating to this dragon chair. But Chin Pingping is not the same. The so-called absence of desire makes him vast. The man is about to die, and his words dot are not to be mulled over. There is no way for me to understand what this old man wants to do or what he is doing. Given his current position, there is no need at all for him to be involved in the fight for the throne. No matter who becomes emperor. They will have to provide well for him. And he has been so calm this entire time, it also does not align with how he has done things for his whole life. Chen Pingping was one of the most famous schemers of his day. With this kind of person, it was fine if they didn't act, but once they did, everything was turned on its head. Hai Tang thought for a moment, then quietly said, If it weren't for the fact you didn't avoid me and explain to me the connection between your mother and director Chen, I would definitely have seen this matter in a different way. Including everyone in the world, I'm afraid they will all think that Chen Pingping only cares about you because of the order of the King Emperor. Correct. Yet through what you have told me in the past, I seem to be able to see an unfortunate possibility. Hai Tang smiled self-deprecatingly and said, You want to help the third prince take the throne. But does Chen Pingping dot want to help you? It is too difficult. Fans Yan furrowed his brows. There are problems with my birth. If those nobles in the palace are not completely swept away, there is no way for me to enter the palace. Besides, 
who knows who was behind the incident back then. I will eventually find the truth about this matter, only I cannot rush right now. As for what you said about the director's intention, he smiled slightly and shook his head. Being the emperor is not like being a commissioner. If he doesn't let me know, he would definitely not dare to undertake such a big matter alone. Hai Tang sank into thought. A moment later she shook her head and sighed. I don't understand, so I won't think of it for now. Jiangnan is only a small fry, the capital is the big fish. Fans Yan's eyes were calm. He stared at the two slightly bobbing thin lines. It was a long time before he said, Fishing. I am still worried. Am I bringing up the fish or am I being dragged by the fish into the water without being able to climb back out again? Hia Tang smiled. You got your feet wet by the lake long ago, you can't not step into the water now. Fans Yan smiled bitterly and said, You're right. Only there is a feeling of uncertainty. I don't like the feeling of not having control of these matters in my hands. No one. Not even the ruler of a country dot can control everything, Hai Tang said lightly. We can only try our best to grasp the big picture that is already enough. You said just then, there are two people you are unable to understand completely. One is Chen Pingping, who is the other? Hai Tang was very interested in this question. She knew that fans Yan had great confidence in his ability to understand people clearly. He was even able to understand some of the King Emperor's thoughts. Yet now he admitted himself that there were people he could not see through. She very much wanted to know who the second person was. My father. Fans Yan smiled slightly. Actually dot he is like Chen Pingping. They are both very powerful figures, however, Chen Pingping has always moved up and down on the surface while my father has always stayed below. Although I am his son. I am not sure of his true thoughts. Fans Yan treated both Chen Pingping and Fan Jian like fathers. He trusted and did not doubt them. After his mother died 14 years ago, revenge and washing away the blood of the Empress's family engulfed him. While the streets of Jingdu ran red with blood that night, the love and protection these two father figures had shown him during his process of maturation made Fans Yan admire them with gratitude. The strangest thing was it was these two who closest to him that he could not understand completely. Ah, so all this time you haven't been worried about Jiangnan but about Jingdu, Hai Tang smiled slightly and said. With these two unfathomable people behind you, you indeed have nothing much to worry about in the Jiangnan matter. I am a whetstone the emperor has given to those brothers to use, fans Yan replied. This Jiangnan matter, the eldest princess. The crown prince, and the second prince. Are they not Whetstone's father and Chen Pingping have given me to use? The elders all have high hopes for me. I am very gratified. The word gratified was said with great anger. The two fishing lines were still steadily sunken into the soft surface of the water. There was not one tremble caused by a wrist. Hai Tang glanced at him and said, it looks like you indeed do not need to use the fishing line to train your temperament. Fans Yan said. I have always been determined and calm, and not easily wound up by external things. For fans Yan to speak of his own merits was not awkwardly touting his own horn, rather, it was an excellent attitude of self-analysis. How old exactly are you right now? Hai Tang asked. She could not understand how such a young person who held such great power in their hands could deal with many diverse affairs yet still maintain such a calm state of mind. Fans Yan came back at her very quickly and asked in return, How old are you this year? Hai Tang pursed her lips. Her eyes were bright. Her expression had been softened by the blue lake in front of her, but she did not want to answer this question. Fans Yan huffed and said, I turned 18 on January 8th. Hai Tang shook her head and mocked, Looking at how you usually act, if you said 80, no one would believe you. Dot. Dot. Elders had experienced the spring winds, summer rains, autumn frosts, and winter snows. They had long seen all there was in the world, so they could use that pair of slightly indifferent eyes to see through everything in this world. Only because they had experienced it all, could they view it lightly and use the calmest state of mind to use the most truthless of methods to face those seemingly strange and complicated situations. A necessity of being a schemer was to have limited desires. Thus, 
there is less to be used by enemies. Since ancient times, the most famous schemers had always been old men, old women, or eunuchs. Young people had bloodlust. For example, the second prince, the crown prince, and even the eldest princess, thus, will always at some point make an unwise decision. On the, the other hand, when someone like Fan Zhan, who had experiences from two lives, although he had been given a sorrowful 80 years old label by Hai Tang, did things he, indeed had the patience of an old man. While using Xiak Fi to fight the family property case against the Ming family, all other areas of the Overwatch Council remained silent until the waves of that case were just about to disappear. That was when the Overwatch Council attacked. In a flash, many Jiangnan Road officials were politely invited to the inspection division the 4th Bureau had stationed in Jiangnan Road to have tea. Everyone knew the Overwatch Council's tea was authentic Longjing, and the scent of tea permeated everywhere. However, no officials wanted to go drink tea. Although for Governor Zhu King's sake, few of the Jiangnan Road officials were captured. In the process of chatting and drinking tea, the Overwatch Council would occasionally talk of some old matter that still made the officials incomparably panicked. After they returned to their manners, they began to think, with a headache, of their future prospects and personal safety. For those relevant, the officials who received reminders noticed that they could no longer protect the Ming family so obviously. On the other side, the Overwatch Council began to cause problems for the Ming family business. Although they could not directly capture people and goods, under the pretense of searching for spies from Dong Yai, in a day, the Ming family store began to be searched by the government and the Ming family's caravans and ships suddenly began to have problems in their shipping process. Although they only found the Ming family guilty of small crimes like taking along personal goods, they did not find anything extremely incriminating about the Ming family. However, this continuous harassment successfully slowed down the Ming family's enormous industry system. In business, what was important was the speed in which goods could be sent out, exchanged for silver and then brought back. It was like a never-ending great river. The Overwatch Council was like sand that was slowly being sunk into the river. Once the speed of the river slowed, the mud and sand would accumulate. The once clear water would become muddy and not be able to flow as well. This move of the Overwatch Council used the least amount of manpower and attracted the least amount of discussion. Yet the results it achieved were good. After the Ming family had paid out the enormous sum for the palace treasury bid, it was the first time in many years they felt strapped for cash. With the harassment by the Overwatch Council, the cash flow became even tighter. They were forced to begin transferring silver from Ping Money House. At the same time, Ming Kingda had also begun secretly having Zhao Shang Money House sign over bank drafts. JW1, comma It is unclear how the cardinal directions relate to the their names. Previously they have only been Chen Pingping and Zhao En. Chapter 378, Behind the Ming Family's Tragedy Over many years, the Ming family multiplied and grew in the Jiangnan region. After decades and multiple generations of being carefully operated and bold expansions, it finally became one of the leading large families. They eventually made a connection with the eldest princess. After they became royal merchants of the palace treasury, the Ming family's reach became longer and deeper through the never-ending stream of silver the palace treasury goods brought in. Not only did they have countless industries in Suzhou and Hengzhou, they directly controlled large amounts of ships, caravans, and stores. Family members also controlled many business that were unremarkable but deeply connected to the Jiangnan people's lives, such as grain, oil, food, and brothels. So much so, someone once said that as long as Jiangnan people open their door, they will certainly have dealings with the Ming family's industry. In such a large family, the factions within it were unusually complicated. However, the group that wielded the highest power were still the six sons of the two wives from the main Ming family. The other, more distant relatives, were only responsible for managing business in the middle to low levels. When the old Ming matriarch alone held the power of the family, she understood the dangers of division within the family clan. The first arrangement she made was that other than the one branch of the heir, Ming Kingda, 
The other five Ming descendants would only receive dividends. They would have no power to make any arrangements or suggestions in the enormous Ming family industry and were strictly prohibited from participating in the family business. This arrangement was, without a doubt, a wise one. Using this strong method ensured that at least the Ming family remained, on the surface, united and cooperated. It did not develop the same problems as other families. The Ming family presented a united front to the outside world. Although they could not participate in the family business, it was impossible for the other five masters to simply hide their money under their beds and wait for it to birth little money chicks. They would take it to invest outside of the family business and did a lot of business in Jiangnan. The Ming family used this kind of method to, step by step, stretch their hands further and thinner. In the end, the business of these branches still clung on to the larger family branch. If the Ming family fell, then the businesses of those five masters would also have problems. Thus, they had to use the power in their hands to protect the main branch. In Fan Yan's eyes, these businesses that did not belong to the Ming family in name, were still named Ming. So, the Overwatch Council began to treat them all equally and also harass these businesses. With this, the five masters could not stand it anymore, thinking, they didn't receive much good from the family yet they were also implicated. Business was becoming more and more difficult to do. What was to be done? Dot. Dot. Open your dog eyes and see. It is the fourth master in front of you. The fourth master of the Ming family was born of the concubine, so his position in the family was not high to begin with. Thus, he had always liked to walk birds to avoid offending the old matriarch and his eldest brother. Every year, he depended on the dividends to do business. He had opened a fruit and vegetable business and did some of the businesses that the collective had missed. His days passed quite happily. However, he recently could not be happy no matter what. The trading company came to check every single DA, and his business appeared to be crumbling. Although these were not overly important consequences, a negative trend could clearly be seen. The officials that usually bowed and scraped before him rarely wanted to drink tea with him now. He understood. The officials had been scared by the Overwatch Council. No matter what, it was not up to these people to promote him. A trace of fierceness flashed across the fourth master's face, and he slapped the other man across the face. The southern barbarian that was slapped spun three times on the spot. A red handprint appeared on his face and a trickle of blood leaked out from the side of his mouth. The fourth master of the Ming family was the largest fruit seller in Suzhou. It looked unremarkable, but it monopolized 30% of the melon and fruit business in Jiangnan. He even single-handedly managed the matters of sending tribute to the palace. It would not be a problem to call him king of the melons. Furthermore, he used the Ming family's reputation to start his own guild and manage the entirety of the Jiangnan fruit market. In all these years, he had never had any powerful figures who dared to come into his territory and pick his fruits to eat. In the past few days, there was suddenly a merchant from Lingnan who jumped over the Ming family's agreement with the Zhuang family and directly sold fruit in Suzhou without first going through the fourth master's hands. Lingnan's temperatures were warm and their fruits beautiful. Once the problem of long-distance shipping was solved, there was great profit to be made. If this merchant knew the rules and had come to visit the fourth master after arriving in Suzhou, perhaps the fourth master would have nodded his head and given him a share to work with. However, this merchant either didn't know the rules or had something else to rely on. He used the fact that he had plentiful goods and cheap prices to forcefully pull down the fruit prices in Suzhou and even Jiangnan, by 20% in 10 days. This merchant's business had also rapidly expanded. The fourth master's face was full of a sinister smile as he looked at the Lingnan merchant he had smacked to the ground. He chuckled and said, Does everyone now dare to climb on top of the Ming family? A mere southern barbarian. Where did you get such daring? He knew that when his family's business had begun to be pressured by the Overwatch Council, no matter how effective the council really was, news spread and a trend was set. Countless merchant powers that had previously been suppressed by the Ming family began to stir. They all wanted to use this opportunity while the Ming family was hard-pressed to obtain some benefits. However, 
the fourth master could do absolutely nothing to the imperial envoy fan. He didn't even have time to be afraid. But, how could he let a southern barbarian interfere on his own territory? Use the stick to teach him a lesson. The fourth master looked at the ling and fruit merchant lying on the ground crying and begging for mercy. A trace of despicableness flashed by the corner of his mouth. Once his words landed, a terrible cry began to ring out from the yard. The fourth master's subordinate used a wooden stick and ruthlessly brought it down on the ling and fruit merchant's body. Each hit sounded with a smack. Who knew how many of the poor merchant's bones were broken? The terrible cries gradually became lower. His whole body was covered in blood, and he fainted from the beating. The trusted aide from the account house on the side saw this bloody scene and felt his heart stutter. He moved closer and said, Fourth Master, this person dot should belong to the Zhuang family. I know, the Fourth Master said sternly. Zhuang Bailing, that old bastard wanted to use this fruit merchant to test the waters. If I don't hit back, he'll think he can actually take advantage of the Ming family. The master of accounts gave a pained smile and said, Fourth master, at this time, you can't bring more trouble for the family. The fourth master thought of something and his expression darkened. The old matriarch has already begun to suspect me. If I don't show some rashness right now, what I can do. Countless complicated feelings also welled up in the account master's heart. He had no idea what to say. The fourth master rose from his chair and gazed at the blood-covered Lingnan merchant on the ground. In a dark voice he said, It's not that I won't allow you to do business, but doing business is not bullying others. You cannot bully me. The Lingnan merchant had awoken. Hearing these words, he was scared deeply and quickly nodded his head for all he was worth. Pay 10,000 liang of silver and bring the price back up. We will compete fairly. The fourth master chuckled, which was incomparably sinister. You don't bully me, and I will not bully you. After he finished bringing the person under control, the fourth master called for people to drag him out. He gazed at the puddle of blood on the ground and spat. He gritted his teeth and cursed. I can't do anything about fans yawn bullying me, but who the FCK do the Zhuang family think they are? Returning to his room, the fourth master cleaned his hands and rolled up his sleeves. He took down a birdcage from the corridor on the side and began to tease it. Although his mouth was whistling, his eyes were very far away. The accounts master followed timidly behind him and said in a low voice, Fourth master. You're saying dot the old matriarch knows of your meeting with Ziak Fi. The fourth master's body froze. He suddenly cursed in great anger. It was all your stupid idea. Something about having a foot in each boat. The seventh master was fortunate to not die and would certainly have good fortune later. He also had the imperial envoy's support and the property would eventually be taken by him. You had me go meet with him and take the opportunity to speak first. FCK. The next day I was called in by the old matriarch and scolded. I almost didn't make it out alive. He was unbelievably angry. After he finally managed to calm the emotions in his chest, he coldly said, The Overwatch Council has been targeting our family. If I didn't act savagely today, what would the old matriarch and eldest brother think of me? After being cursed at by his master, the account's master didn't make a lot of noise. He tearfully said, But when masters I wanted to see you that day, you couldn't not go. Fourth master. You really don't want to listen to masters I as words. Seventh brother, seventh brother. The fourth master felt very strange when he thought of the younger brother that had suddenly appeared. Concerning the matter of Ziak Fi's mother being harmed by the old matriarch, he had heard rumors. He and his mother were perfectly clean, so he did not fear the other party like the heir did. Thinking of the words Ziak Fi had brought from the imperial envoy that day, a mysterious light flashed through his eyes and disappeared. He sighed helplessly and said, I'm afraid of the imperial envoy, but I am more afraid of the old matriarch. Besides, right now the Ming family is still our family's Ming family. If I really listened to you and joined hands with Ziak Fi, with such a terrifying imperial envoy watching at the back, the Ming family will. Become the court's Ming family. The fourth master smiled wretchedly. No matter how tyrannical the air is, we have been brothers all these years. In the end, 
my name is still Ming. The accounts master did not keep trying to persuade him. Dot. Dot. The fourth master had formally rejected Fan Yan's kindness that had been made through Xiaqi Fi. The imperial envoy's reaction was very quickly brought to the large manor the fourth master had bought in the south part of Suzhou. The Suzhou government's bailiffs pushed open the door and entered. Under the close watch of the Ming family thugs, they shakily came to the main hall. They brought out the lawsuit and requested that the fourth master follow them back to the Suzhou government to stand trial. Stand trial? The fourth master had never expected there to be a day he could be captured and asked to stand trial. He shouted at the bailiff sternly, Are you out of your mind? Who reported me? For what? The bailiff had no choice. In normal circumstances, he would not dare to offend a genuine fourth master of the Ming family. He wished he could kneel on the floor and lick the Ming master's boots. He gave a pained smile and gestured with his eyes at the fourth master, indicating that there was someone behind him. Then he lowered his voice and implored, It's a Lingnan merchant. He reported that the fourth master forcefully dominated the market, hurt people and committed violent crimes. The fourth master was startled and furrowed his brows. He had not expected the Lingnan merchant would actually report him. He further did not expect that the Suzhou government would accept this case. For many years the Ming family had held a special position in Jiangnan. The Suzhou government had such a close connection to the Ming family. So how could they accept that Lingnan merchant's suit? Although the Overwatch Council had been obstructing the Ming family, they could not directly interfere with local government affairs or public affairs. The Overwatch Council could not take the lead on this kind of criminal law case. Previously when they acted violently, they had no need to worry. This time the Suzhou government actually sent someone. His gaze passed over the head of the bailiff. He saw an unfamiliar court official standing behind a few other officials, looking at his official's robes. His ranking was not very high. It did not look like the apparel of the court system. His eyes narrowed, and soon he guessed the other party's identity. Apparently, from when the Lingnan merchant entered the yard, all of this had been watched by an Overwatch Council official. No wonder the other party reacted so quickly. The fourth master's eyelid twitched. He knew he had miscalculated one thing. Although the Overwatch Council could not directly question him, they could keep an eye on the government's actions. If they ignored and did not question him, the Overwatch Council would probably capture government officials to take back and question. With such a strong deterrent, no wonder the Suzhou government dared to capture him today. He laughed coldly and gazed at that bailiff. What if I don't go? The bailiff was about to cry from anxiety and implored. Fourth master should at least give the Zizu some face. The Ming family servants all began to make a din and surrounded the bailiffs in the middle with wooden sticks in their hands. Their cold gazes stared, intentionally or otherwise, at the Overwatch Council official at the back of the group. That Overwatch Council official smiled slightly and said, My good fellow officials, what are you going to do? It seems they apostrophe redot preparing to rebel here. Beating up an official, not obeying court orders. What difference was that to rebellion? Hearing these words, the government officials knew that they had to take him back today. Otherwise, the Zizu would not be able to report back to the Overwatch Council. The Lingnan merchant's wretched report had been witnessed by many in the public court. Furthermore, People from Hua Garden also had arrived. They were drinking tea in the tea shop across from the public court. No action would be able to escape the imperial envoy's eyes. The official set his heart and gazed at the fourth master. Fourth master, please. He used his eyes to continuously gesture and make him understand that today was not the same as the past. Sometimes one had to be amenable. As for after he was brought to the Suzhou government. There were naturally other opportunities to change things around. The fourth master slightly lowered his head. After muttering to himself, he forced down the anger in his heart. He knew what the situation was like today and nodded his head. That official let out a big breath and sighed. Fourth master is having pity on me. The young Overwatch Council official of the fourth bureau in the back watched this scene with a cold smile. The accounts master moved closer to the fourth master's side and said worriedly, Fourth master, 
What do we do? The fourth master laughed sinisterly and smashed the bird gauge in his hand on the ground. The smashed bird gauge broke. Bird feathers flew chaotically, and bird blood sprayed everywhere. He smiled icily. If I must go I will go. All these years, I've only ever had tea in the back garden of the Suzhou government building, yet I've never had the luck to see the true appearance of Suzhou's prison. Today, I will go to broaden my horizons. He lowered his voice again and said hurriedly, immediately send a message back to Ming Garden and have eldest brother bail me out. Don't worry, the old matriarch will trust me more because of this. Having finished giving out orders, the fourth Ming master, for the first time in his life, was taken by officials to the Suzhou government's prison. Dot. Dot. Looks like fourth brother has no other intentions. After the news got back to the Ming Garden, Ming Kingda sent people out to open up channels while he went to the quiet little yard his mother lived in to report the matter. I'll go now to bring him back. Although he heard a Lingan merchant and the Suzhou government took him in under pressure from the Overwatch Council, the matter was not that big after all. There shouldn't be any later consequences. Sir Fan Jr. has no way of using this matter to finish him off. The old Ming matriarch sat in her chair deep in thought. Her old, sunken eyes were closed. She seemed to be thinking about some problem. She still had not replied to Ming Kingda's words. He felt a little strange. A chill suddenly surged up a moment later. The old matriarch slowly opened her slightly listless eyes and said, the Ming family is still being rocked by storms. Fourth first met with Xia Kaifi in secret, that is disloyal. Later, he acted rashly and impetuously, making the family worry for him, that his unfilial, such a disloyal and filial child. What is the point of bailing him out? After Ming Kingda was silent, his sorrow returned. The Ming family's response to Fan's Yan's aggression was to move forward by retreating. Playing on sorrowful emotions was why he had knelt in the palace treasury, and had his later illness. Now that the Overwatch Council was pushing aggressively, the Ming family faltered and indeed appeared very pitiable. Yet, the old matriarch intended, it seemed, to slice a deep cut into her own family. He sucked in a deep breath and said calmly, currently. The situation is still within our control. Sir Fan Jr. can only walk the outer boundaries and can't truly get hold of something to use against us. At this time, the sacrifice does not need to be so big. After all, he is of Ming blood. The old Ming matriarch looked at him coldly and without emotion. The Imperial Envoy will push more and more ruthlessly. We will have to eventually sacrifice someone we can give up in exchange for the sympathies of the Jiangnan people and support of the gentry under heaven. Since Fourth has been taken into prison, isn't his the best opportunity? If the people were to know that the Imperial Envoy, for the purpose of obtaining silver and wealth, forced a Ming master to death, the court would be shocked. We would obtain many benefits and time. This deal is worth it. Ming Kingda's expression did not change. He thought for a moment then said, as mother wishes. He understood that fourth brother was, after all, the son of the concubine. In his mother's eyes, he was dispensable. The old Ming matriarch gazed at him icily and said, how is the silver flow in the family? Why are you often going to Zhaoshang Money House to transfer money? Ming Kingda smiled coldly in his heart. The seal of Tping Money House is always in your hands. If I wanted to truly have the Ming family in my hands, how can I succeed if I don't think of other paths? He thought like this, but his mouth explained it in a few warm sentences. The old Ming matriarch nodded. However, Fourth might not be enough to make all of the hearts of the people under heaven lean toward us. Kingda, you have to be prepared. Perhaps you will be forced to leave the position of the master of the Ming family so that the people under heaven can see the wretched situation of our Ming family. Ming Kingda was startled. He bowed deeply and backed out of the yard. Outside of the yard, he smiled at his son Ming Lanshai who had been waiting the whole time. Did you hear it? I've said before. Her favorite is your sixth uncle. Chapter 379, Whose Navy? Fans Yan did not know what was happening internally in the Ming family. For him, though they were a rock, he had put pressure on it. But, for now, 
he couldn't crush it. He had patience. Fishing could not be rushed. He was at the Suju branch of the Bayou brothel. The business was going well. The girls were were all busy welcoming guests. Few people noticed the male owner and female shopkeeper respectfully escorting a figure quietly to the top floor. Pushing open the window to gaze out, he saw many workers in the back beside the small lake. Digging in the mud, the money and labor required to expand the lake was not a small sum. He couldn't resist sighing and asked, It is necessary? Shi Chanli smiled slightly and said, Following your instruction, we sent the branches plan and layout urgently to the north. The reply came the day before yesterday. What the second young master means is that the lake is too small and the land is not open enough. The guests who come will feel that it is narrow and cramped. We might as well put in the effort and extend the lake forward by a few hundred meters. Fans Yan gave a pained smile. It looked like sis far away in northern Chi still thought about the Bayou brothel often. It required an enormous sum of money. Sis only had to say a word while he had to mobilize many hands to make it. This noise and smell won't it interfere with the business? We've surrounded it with cloth. The guests in the building don't usually notice that side. Although the business at the moment is good, we can only dig out the lake right now. Otherwise, when spring is in full swing and summer is approaching, that is the best time for business. At that time, it would not be convenient to dig it. Fan Xian nodded and didn't say anything. He trusted his brother's eye for business. He had came to Bay Oyu brothel today mostly to find information. He looked at the file his subordinate had delivered and furrowed his brows. Where did that housekeeper of the Ming family escape to? The Ming family housekeeper had the same surname as the housekeeper Fan Xian had hit as a child in Danzu. Both were surnamed Zhu. This person was not very simple. All these years, he had been the old matriarch's trusted aide and was responsible for managing the accounts of the mysterious Junchang conference. After Xiaokai Fai had almost been assassinated outside the Jiangnan restaurant by the Junchang conference, the Overwatch Council had begun to secretly investigate the whereabouts of that housekeeper and prepared to secretly capture him. They wanted to obtain important information from him. The Zhu housekeeper seemed to have completely disappeared within a day. He no longer appeared at any of the Ming family industries. They didn't know if the Jiangnan Road officials were hiding him or something else. Even with the Overwatch Council's methods, they still had not found a trace of his whereabouts. Deng Ziyi walked in from outside of the room and reported to fans Yan the matter of the fourth Ming master being captured by the Suzhou government. Hearing him asking about the whereabouts of housekeeper Zhu, he couldn't help furrowing his forehead. This matter was his responsibility and there had not been any progress after all these days. He felt very ashamed. He furrowed his brows and shook his head. A moment later he said, if he hasn't already been silenced by the Ming family, then, it is very likely that he is just casually hiding in the Ming garden. Fans Yan knew that if they really wanted to hide the accounts master, the Ming garden would be the most dangerous but also the safest method. He couldn't resist laughing and said, are we really going to go into the Ming garden to grab him? Deng Ziyu gave a pained smile. Without solid evidence. How can we go into Main Garden to grab him? The other party is an inherited count and, furthermore, if this matter becomes too serious, the governor would certainly be forced to put pressure on you. Fans Yan sighed and felt this matter was already becoming unamusing. He waved his hand and said, if we break in and fail to catch him, it will be difficult to explain it to the governor. If we can confirm that he is in there, we could try being savage this once. We just can't confirm, Deng Ziyu said helplessly. The two were just chatting when an Overwatch Council spy suddenly knocked carefully on the door. Deng Ziyu glanced at Fan's Yan and walked out the door to say a few quiet words. His face immediately became serious. He said a few more words in a low voice and quickly turned around. He came close to Fan's Yan's ear and said, there is news from the island. Fans Yan's spirit was startled. That pirate dock had been silent for so long, he almost thought that he wouldn't be able to use that little island to defeat the Ming family. Hearing this news now, he said with great joy and interest, speak. Deng Ziyu glanced at him again and carefully said, the people on the island are all dead. Everyone is dead. Dot. Dot. 
with a bang, Fans Jan expressionlessly slammed his palm against the table beside him. The table didn't shatter, and the tea bowls didn't break, but this one palm clearly demonstrated his anger and discontent. The Ming family really acts ruthlessly and cleanly. He furrowed his brows and asked, what about our person? The Overwatch Council had a spy on the island. Fans Yan was worried about his life. Dang Ziyu said, he was lucky and survived. When the Kwanzu side got to the island, they just happened to pick him up. Fans Yan's expression was slightly hev. What is his name? King Hua. Where is he? Just arrived in Suzhou. He is recovering in the secret residence. Let's go. Dot. Dot. King Hua thought he was dreaming that he had been dreaming for days. After the island had been circled and annihilated by the soldiers, only he survived. Encircled by carnivorous birds in the sky and bodies on the ground, he tried to find the escape path that his captain had once left behind. He went to the Hidden Crescent to find a boat to sail. However, he didn't expect that the Ming family's silencing had been done so absolutely. All the boats on the island had been destroyed. Even the pirate captain's quick three-masted ships had been sunk to the bottom of the water. Looking at the sails that had changed color with the sinking, King Wa felt hopeless. The island was isolated. If the Kwanzu side found that things had changed and braved the danger to send someone else to the island, it would still take a lot of time. Could he survive on this island by himself with no water or food? The spies of the second and fourth bureaus received strict outdoor survival and intelligence gathering training when they first entered. It was fortunate he had the skill at hand, as he, King Hua, managed to survive on the island by himself. There was no water on the island, fortunately, it rained. There were no wild animals on the island. But there were bodies. Dot and the birds that ate the bodies. There were fish and clams in the ocean, so he survived with determination and nausea. Finally, his colleagues from Kwanzu braved the danger and once more came to the island. The extremely weak King Wa was finally lifted onto a boat. He could also finally have a good sleep. In his dreams, he thought about those birds that he ate and that there might be rotting human flesh in their stomachs. King Wa still couldn't help having nightmares. He slept for a long time, from Kwanzu to Suzhou. Once he woke up, he found an extra young and delicate official standing in front of him looking at him with admiration and tenderness. The Overwatch Council official beside him reminded him, it's the commissioner. The commissioner, King Wa was startled and fought to get up to pay his respects. Fans, Yan quickly stopped him from getting up. His eyes narrowed slightly as he looked at this King Kingdom version of Robinson Crusoe and a sigh of admiration rose in his heart. Political battles were not taking another to dinner, it was a game of life and death. However, whenever a sacrifice was necessary, it was actually that of the lower officials. Fans, Yan took out a pill and fed it to him. Then he used a golden needle to help him circulate his blood. He carefully treated him for a long while before confirming that it would not leave too many residual effects. When the other party had sufficient attention to speak, he began to ask questions. In their conversation, fans Yan obtained a lot of useful information, which King Wa never had time to send back to the mainland. For example, the pirate captain was connected to Ming Lan Shai's concubine. He coldly said, no wonder the concubine suddenly went back home to visit family, she's probably long sunk into the river to feed tortoises. If one marries a bastard, JW1, the only end is tortoise food. She was pitiful. Ziyu, immediately send someone to that concubine's family home to check. I want to see how Ming Lan Shai is going to explain this. King Wa had also managed, against all odds to save a letter. This was solid evidence. Even though the Ming family could still deny it, they could still use it to make a fuss. As for the soldiers on the island, do you have any thoughts? Fans Yan stared at King Wa's eyes as he asked. Although he knew the man had barely managed to survive on the island, had endured a long distance journey right after getting back to land, and was already extremely weak, he couldn't help it. He had to know. This truth was stuck like a thorn in his heart and it made him anxious. That group of sailors were clearly sent by the Ming family, 
so they were also sent by the eldest princess. Fans Yan very much wanted to know who in the army was standing on the eldest prince's side. He thought the emperor would also be interested in this matter. It could not have been Yan Ziyue. Even though Yan Ziyue was the viceroy who had come out of King Kingdom's southern battles and was a powerful ninth level superior official, his military power had always been tightly watched by the Overwatch Council. Fan Xian knew that Yan Ziyue did not have this kind of naval power. Back in the day, the Quanzu sailors were the court's strongest power on the water. Dang Ziyu glanced at Fan Xian and said gently. However, after the Yi family incident, to clean out the Yi family's influence in the Quanzu Navy, the court split the Quanzu Navy into three. Now, the Jiangnan Navy's nominal leading Yaman is in Shazu. You should have met the official from Shazu. To go from Shazu through the ocean to the island to kill people. The distance is too far. Furthermore, the trip is made on Yangtze River and is easy to reveal traces of themselves. I think it should be them. Fan Xian nodded. His emotions stayed completely steady at the mention of the Yi family. He turned his head to look at King Hua. White bubbles formed at the corner of King Hua's mouth. He was thinking hard about the soldiers that had come that night. He knew this matter was very important. It could help the council determine which power dared to act in collusion with the pirates. He opened his mouth with great difficulty and said, When the soldiers came onto the island, it was just before dusk. There are a lot of reefs around the island. Yet they could still force their way onto the island despite the dim lighting. They should be professional sailors rather than land soldiers who had borrowed boats. I once saw clearly one of the soldiers' face. Looking at his facial structure, it should be someone from the north. Fans Yan furrowed his brows. Could it be Dong Yai's navy? King Hua shook his head with difficult and reported. They spoke occasionally. It wasn't a Dong Yai accent. Fans Yan gazed at Deng Ziyu. They saw the unease in each other's hearts. The King Kingdom had three great navies. In the north was the Jiazu Navy, stationed near Shangdong Road, and it was very powerful. If the other party was a competent and capable person on the eldest prince's side, then the eldest prince's control and power in the army was much more powerful than what he and others had imagined. Since the emperor refused to let him have a thread of military power and always appeared to be very confident and mysterious, Fan Xian was certain that the majority of the King Kingdom's military power was held in the emperor's hands. It was under this premise that Fan Xian could do things with relative confidence. Now, he had suddenly discovered that his estimation of the eldest princess and the prince's power had suddenly advanced by leaps and bounds. How could Fan Xian not be vigilant? The Yi family would gradually fall toward the second prince. And the North fighting Viceroy Yan Ziyue now had another navy. Who does the Jiazu navy belong to? Fans Yan asked with furrowed brows. Deng Ziyu lowered his voice and said, The local commander sailor is a full first level genera. He does not need to listen to Yan Ziyue's orders. He's never seemed to have any leanings. After all, he was born to the Ken family. But his relationship with Yi Zong and them is not bad. Fans Yan gently curled his fists and shook his head. He didn't say anything more. Looking at the exhausted King Hua on the bed, a light smile rose to his face and he said, Recover well. After you've recovered, come and work for me. He very much admired this young Overwatch Council official who was able to go undercover on a pirate island and successfully survive in the end. This kind of talent should become his trusted aide. King Hua was surprised. He hadn't expected that after his narrow escape, he would be able to run into such good luck. For a moment he froze on the bed and didn't know what to say. It was not until Fans Yan had led the people of the Kenyan unit out of the room and the official of the inspection division of the 4th Bureau of the Overwatch Council stationed in Guangzhou left and congratulated him that he finally woke from his days. He knew he had finally made it. He had finally woken from his nightmares. Fans Yan was a bit angry. All the news today had been bad. It looked like he had to quickly send the council report back to Jingdu to have the old cripple be more attentive and not always stay in the Chen Garden looking at beautiful girls. Your successor has run into problems, surely you have to solve them, sir, good news. Just as Fan Xian was silently cursing his bad luck, Deng Ziyu, forcefully suppressing his joy, 
respectfully reported, what news? That accounts master of the Junsheng conference. We have his whereabouts. Where, sir, is wise. The information has been confirmed. That person is in. The Ming Garden. Fans Yan side. Finally, there is something to do. JW1, tortoise and bastard, cuckold are the same words in Chinese, so fans Yan is making a pun. Chapter 380 Unwilling to let go. In the middle of April, spring was beautiful and heavy in the air, unable to be more so. All of Jiangnan was enveloped in a warm wind. The people walking on the road had already begun to wear lined clothing. Thousands of kilometers away from Suzhou, outside of Jingdu, a smear of snow was still visible on the top of Kang Mountain, as cold as the white cloth over a dead man's face. The tall and big man wearing a straw hat withdrew his gaze from the snow on the top of mountain. He silently drank the remaining tea and ordered a bowl of plain noodles. He began to eat it tastelessly. This place was 15 kilometers outside of Jingdu called Shai Pai Village. This big man wearing a straw hat was the second priest of the King Temple, Great Master San Shi, who had made his way with great difficulty from Jiangnan to Jindu. San Shi had not came to Jindu to preach or break off branches from the drooping willows. He was here to kill, he was here dot to kill the emperor. Although fans Yan had, intentionally or not, allowed him to leave Jiangnan, the Overwatch Council search was tight. Even though they had not put out heavy troops on the northwest roads, it still took San Shi a great deal of time to go around the Overwatch Council and Black Knight's blockade to arrive in Jingdu. The Junsheng Conference was indeed a loose organization. When this organization had an exceptionally divine and important mission, its importance would clearly show. Very few knew exactly how many powerful figures under heaven this mysterious organization had collected. Although San Shi held the venerable position of second priest in the King Temple, he had very little speaking power in the Junsheng Conference. Furthermore, he personally objected to the Junsheng Conference's arrangements in Jiangnan. After having a taste of failure when trying to disturb Fan Yan's administration, he sacrificed himself and left behind the arrangements of the Zhengsheng Conference. Alone, with a great goal in his chest like a red sun in his heart, he came proudly all the way to Jingdu. He came to Jingdu to kill the one who could not be killed, as he thought, he silently ate his noodles. He followed his elder brother's teaching from back in the day, ensuring that each strand of noodles was finely chewed into mush before satisfyingly swallowing it down. For some reason, San Shi became felt sorrow rise in his heart. It was difficult to suppress. Two murky tears slid out from his old eyes and fell into his noodle soup. He was going to enter the capital to ask that emperor, why? Dot. Dot. After finishing his noodles, he put on his hat to hide his appearance and picked up a wooden staff the height of a man. He left the noodle shop and followed a little path at the foot of Shai Pai village and began to walk in the direction of Jingdu. In front of him was a dark and dim royal city, behind was a clean and white mountain. The ascetic walked between them. The woods became deeper and deeper, and the path became narrower and narrower. It was early morning so there were not any diligent woodcutters up early to chop wood. In the wilderness, it was impossible for there to be many people passing by. It was silent on the mountain path, so silent that it was slightly strange. There wasn't even the sound of birds and insects. After all, Sanshi was not a warrior skilled in assassination. He was only a highly cultivated ascetic. Even though he felt in his heart there was something strange, he did not pay it much attention. Neither the court nor the Junsheng conference would know he had come from Jiangnan to Jindu. The only person who knew was Hai Tang. No matter what, she would not reveal his movements. San Shi was confident in this point. He did not think someone could have gotten hold of his route ahead of time and laid down an ambush. Thus, when that mournful and fatal arrow flew out from the dense woods and wanted to ruthlessly bury itself in his eye, he felt surprised. The flight of that arrow was very strange. In the beginning, there was no sound at all, it was like a ghost. When it was only a meter away, it suddenly whistled. The whistling was soul-stealing and absolutely terrifying. His dot roar. The long black arrow seemed to cry out, kill. Dot. Dot. 
Sanshi let out a muffled grunt. His long wooden staff stabbed viciously into the ground. The carved bird head at the top of it extended very quickly, blocking the feathery arrow that seemed to have flown from the sky. With a muffled thunk, the arrow ruthlessly sunk into the head of the wooden staff. The power contained in the arrow shocked Sanshi enough that his wrist shook slightly. In a flash, the bird head of the wooden staff exploded. He narrowed his eyes. A chill surged in his heart. This thunderbolt-like skill with an arrow seemed to be at the level of the Zengvi Viceroy, Yan Ziyoi. But he should be in Kanzu, thousands of kilometers away from Jingdu. Through the leaves in the woods, Sanji's bright eyes saw clearly the archer's appearance. It was a young and unfamiliar face. But he knew the arrow he had personally caught must have received the true teachings of Yan Ziyoi. This unfamiliar youth must be Yan Ziyoi's disciple. As he was thinking of these things, Sanshi borrowed the rebound power of the shock and launched himself into the air to position his body like a bird. His hand held the wooden staff, and he smashed downward like an insane demon. Although he didn't know why the other person wanted to kill him, before he entered Jingdu and asked the emperor his question, he would not allow himself to die. Sanshi's figure was tall and sturdy. He wore a bamboo hat. His intent to kill was very strong. His entire person was in the air like a ruthless big bird. His manner was imposing and conveyed a sense of having reached a point of no return. When fighting against archers, the most important thing was to reduce the distance between oneself and the opponent. But he had opened himself up completely to the other person, while in the air. There was nowhere from which he could draw power. It was even more difficult facing demonic arrows. Sanshi swept over, seeing the archer's calm expression. He knew the other person was going to use this opportunity to fire an arrow. As expected, the archer made movements. His hands flew and drew an arrow from his back, knocked it, aimed, and fired. Three simple actions but completed naturally, harmoniously, and quickly. It was like it had been one beautiful inseparable move. This simple appreciation of beauty came from hard practice and natural talent in archery. Swoosh. The second arrow had already been fired towards Sanshi's throat. He was still in the air and had no way of dodging such a quick arrow. However, he had been waiting for this moment. He gave a muffled grunt and neither hid or dodged. He moved all his zanki toward his chest and used his stupidest, yet most powerful iron skin to forcefully take the shot. The arrows landed at his throat and made a strange clinking sound. A light flashed through Sanchi's eyes. His entire body had stopped in front of the archer, and his staff came down. There was only one meter of space between them. How could that archer dodge? Dot. Dot. The archer's expression remained calm, faced with the insane demon-like staff. He took two steady steps back. He raised his longbow in front of his body and spat out one world, seal. Four golden knives appeared out of nowhere and dissolved into four streaks of light. They sealed the Sanshi's fatal blow. A loud explosion rang out. The knives shattered, and the power of the staff was scattered. A cloud of dust rose and permeated the woods. Among the dust in the air, the bow rang out again. A soul-stealing arrow flew through the dust and trees and toward Sanshi's throat from a very short distance. The distance was too close. Sanshi didn't have time to dodge, but he didn't dare let his throat, the weakest part of his body, be continuously tested by the archer's skills. He stretched out a palm and made a praying pose. The archer had used four knives to seal his strike. He would use one palm to seal this shot. That narrow but soul-devouring arrow, hammered into Sanshi's thick calluses. It was like a mosquito bite on a poor person's flesh. It wobbled a little before falling down. It was only a light bite, a light hit, yet his entire body began to shake violently. He was pushed back a step by the arrow. Another one came flying. Sanshi raised his palm again, sealed and took another step back. The arrows flew faster and faster out of the dust like there was no end to them. Who knew that the archer had such terrifying speeds? It was the ninth arrow. Sanshi had been forced by those terrifying arrows back to the side of the mountain road. He gave a muffled grunt and straightened his arms. He swung his long staff and sent the last arrow flying. Then, he felt something tighten beneath his food. A horrifying animal trap closed with a snap bloodily over his right foot. The animal trap was so big, 
It was probably used to catch tigers. Even though Sanshi had the ability of iron skin, he had fallen into a trap. The flesh on his calf split, and fresh blood poured out. He let out a pain drawer. He furrowed his brows, unwilling to give up. There was a small spot of blood on his throat. The hand clenching his wooden staff also had many little spots of blood and they were slowly oozing out blood. It was hard to fathom how many sharp arrows there had been. If it had been anyone else, they would have long been shot full like a hedgehog. Only he could have not suffered any true injuries. It was only a pity that he was forced into the trap by those arrows. The dust gradually fell. In the woods opposite, the face of the young archer once again appeared as well as four knife-wielding attackers. Sanshi looked at the other party coldly and said, I never expected it was you who killed. He didn't get to finish his words. The young archer was here to silence him and didn't have the interest to converse with Sanshi. Although he knew Sanshi was a legendary figure, the younger generation grew up fiercely and did not have any extra reverence to give. The youth used a steady finger of their right hand to knock the poisoned black arrow onto the string and once again took aim at the throat of the Sanshi, who was unable to move. Shoot! He spoke but the arrow in his hand did not leave the string. A din rose in the woods. Countless young archers surged from all around. Separated by a distance of a few meters, they encircled Sanshi in the middle. They all held bows in their hands. Following the instruction to shoot, countless long arrows left their strings and flew in straight soul-stealing lines ruthlessly toward his body. Sanshi's pupil contracted slightly. Seeing the other party's arrangement, he knew he probably wouldn't survive today. That many archers in the mountains had to be the work of the military. No matter how powerful an ace, in the face of the military's merciless and cold-blooded continuous attacks, they would not be able to survive. Furthermore, his right foot had already been caught by that damnable animal trap. He wasn't Yi Liaian, nor was he Ku He. Sanshi sighed in his heart and swung the long staff around in his hand to block the oncoming rain of arrows from all directions. Thunk, 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 thunk. Countless breaks rang out around his body. In barely a moment. Over a hundred flying arrows had been broken by his wooden staff. The broken arrows piled up around him and looked unusually dismal. Some of the arrows did make it through his defensive circle and pierced his body. Only, these archers were not as talented as the previous youth and were unable to pierce through Sanshi's iron skin. That leading young archer was not in a rush. He only looked coldly at Sanshi who was struggling for life like a wild animal. Looking at this ascetic battling without help against a sky full of arrows, he knew that his Zenki was solid and strong. If they wanted to shoot and kill him at a close range, they needed to be patient. They had to keep chipping away. No amount of skills would be able to maintain the Zenki. As soon as Sanshi's showed any signs of weakening, once an arrow entered his body, that would be his time to die. He aimed at Sanshi's throat, coldly waiting for that moment. The dozens of archers in the woods continued to coldly fire arrows. Sanshi roared loudly and endlessly swung his wooden staff fighting in the rain of arrows. There would eventually be a point when his strength ran out. Thus, Sanshi's fierce might appear to be particularly tragic. Faced with the powerful weapon of the military, what use was a martial ace? The scene was chilling. The merciless rounds continued, and the broken arrows piled up. They gradually mounted over his calf and buried the animal trap and his injured leg. It looked like a self-immolating monk who was continuously chopping firewood for his own imminent burning. Sanshi's clothing was already wet with sweat. The speed at which he swung his wooden staff had slowed. It was clear that his Zenki was not as abundant as before. This was the opportunity. The patient lead archer gently released his middle finger, and the arrow on the string shot out. With a swoosh and a thunk. The entire wood seemed to have fallen silent in an instant. Sanshi held the arrow at his throat. A choking noise came from his mouth. He was already unable to talk. Fresh blood ran down from his palms. The archers stopped firing. The young archer furrowed his brows and said coldly and mercilessly, Continue. The firing began again. In a flash, 
dozens of arrows were shot into Sanshi's body. Fresh blood dyed his whole body red. Sanshi slowly opened his eyes and sighed once again in his heart. He knew it would be pointless to play weak to lure in his enemy. That disciple of Yan Ziyue did things in the same cold and merciless style as his master. He waved his hand and his big sleeves brushed away countless arrows like illnesses. He opened his eyes revealing a sudden light. He roared, and the wooden staff he held in his hands splintered into pieces by his pure zinky. The wood shards flew and exposed the knife within. A huge knife. In Suzhou, Sanshi had once used the knife to cut through the long street. At this moment, this knife could only cut through himself. It came down on a slant. The edge of the sword entered the flesh without a sound, and he ruthlessly cut through his right calf. He would never again be caught in an animal trap. Sanshi was like a big bird with broken wings that once again took to the skies. Like an eagle hunting rabbits, he dove into the other party. Knife lights splashed like snow, causing people to spray blood. In one move, he cut off three heads and sliced through a number of chests. The woods became covered in blood. What a powerful knife! Dot. Dot. When San Shi took out his knife, that cold, young archer had already turned and left. He quietly went up a tree and began to fire arrow after arrow. He knew San Shi was a spent force, as he had cut off one of his own legs. The blood flowed endlessly. He wouldn't be able to last much longer, as expected. After the knife light shone brilliantly, it began to dim. After littering the ground with bodies, the poison in Sanshi's body began to act. His injuries flared and blood had run dry. He laid out his long knife and hilt on the grass, gave a muffled grunt, and then spat out his last turbid breath. The second priest of the King Temple was dead. To confirm Sanshi's death, the archers gathered around. They were all elites in the military. Today they had came to ambush or even to shamelessly murder, the second priest of King Temple. Not everyone was able to maintain a calm expression. After Sanshi had fallen into the trap yet was still able to cut through his own leg and kill so many of their brothers, they couldn't help but feel a chill in their hearts. Clean it up. You guys return to camp, the young archer said coldly. Ding Han, you're responsible for clean up. A soldier bowed and accepted in a low voice. The woods once again became silent. These soldiers, adept at shooting, took off their disguises and found other hidden areas to change and return to camp. After leaving the woods, that young archer had changed into a set of ordinary commoners' clothing. He did not follow the group back to camp. Instead, he took a twisting path out of the mountain woods and found the official road to the capital. On the road, he hitched a ride with a carriage going the same way. Along the way he talked and laughed with the merchant, and thus he entered Jingdu. Having entered Gingdu, the first thing the archer did was to eat two bowls of Chinese cabbage porridge. He then bought a paper pinwheel on the side of the street. He made his way through the big street in the south side of the city, walked past quiet alleys, and stopped to have a look at a storytelling hall. It seemed he could not resist the temptation of today's story and entered the building. He ordered a bowl of tea, a plate of melon seeds, and began to listen to the story. After listening for a while, he felt the need to relieve himself and went to the washroom. He exited by the wall behind the toilet. After confirming there was no one following him, he entered a residence. Who knew who this residence belonged to? but he walked in it as easily and at ease as if it were his own. He entered the study and kowtowed before the desk. He reported to the pair of small feet beneath the table, Your Highness, he has been removed. You've worked hard. King Kingdom's eldest princess, Lian Ruai, smiled slightly. This woman with inhuman beauty was even more charming when she smiled. When the young archer had shot great master San Shi dead, he had appeared so cold and merciless. Now, he did not dare to meet the eldest prince's eyes. After he rose, he stood to the side as custom dictated. San Shi dot what a waste. The eldest prince's sighed with regret. He didn't listen to me and insisted on imitating the bravery of an ignorant man. In the current circumstances, how could we have the emperor become suspicious of us? Everything is not yet prepared. Right now it is not the time to act. For those who refuse to do as they are old, 
they can only go. The young archer continued to remain silent. He knew these big matters should be the concern of the older generation. He only needed to carry out orders. The eldest princess glanced at him and smiled slightly. You are not able to follow Viceroy Yan and fight in the north. Do you have any resentment? The young archer smiled and said, all father does in the north is drink all day. How can it compare in excitement to the capital? They spoke a bit more and then she let him leave the study. This residence had no master nor name. No one knew the eldest princess occasionally stayed here. Her favorite thing to do was sit alone in this study and think about things. Often she would drive herself crazy with her thoughts. Jun Shang confronts. A self-deprecating smile rose to the corner of her mouth. When she was young. What had been the purpose of organizing the Junshang conference? It had been to do something for the King Kingdom. She wanted to help her brother, the Emperor, do the things he could not do, such as killing some of those officials AMD taking family property. Although her brother, the Emperor, never knew of the existence of the Junshang conference, it had helped him plenty in secret. For example, in the war against Northern Qi, he was unaware of the secret influence it had in Dong Yai. When did these things change so much? The objective of the Junshang conference had undergone a great change in her own hands. A trace of wretchedness flashed across the eldest prince's face. She thought of Fan's Yan far away in Jiangnan, the palace treasury, the Overwatch Council. The suspicion and bias the emperor has shown these two years. I once gifted the ruler a bright pearl. What has the ruler gifted me? She closed her eyes and then opened them again. They had recovered their calm. She smiled slightly and thought, since the ruler cannot tolerate me, I'll have to cherish myself. It is not unthinkable to pay a certain price for this. Sir Yuan's words do indeed have their logic. In that patch of woods, other than a faint scent of blood. There was no other trace to be found of the killing that happened earlier. It looked like the military's ability to clean a scene was no worse than the Overwatch Council's. Everyone had left. Ding Han, who had been left responsible for the cleanup, was the last to the leave the mountain woods. Not long after he left, he silently made his way back around to the woods and found a broken arrow he had purposely hidden below a pile of mud. He carefully placed it into his clothing. Following that, he spat into his hands and began to dig hard. After digging for an indeterminable amount of time, he finally dug to a deep place. He dug out the body that had already been burned beyond recognition. After confirming it was San Shi's body, he pulled out a dagger from his boot and plunged it into the neck area, before very carefully cutting off Great Master San Shi's head. He refilled the earth, scattered leaves, and spread out moss. After checking there wasn't any problem. Only then did he let out a satisfied breath and turn to leave the mountain woods. He didn't need to go into Jingdu. The place he was going to was just outside Jingdu. Dot. Dot. At the back of the mountain at the back door of Chen Garden, an old servant took from Din Han's hands a box and a package. Ding Han silently bowed and began his return to the camp. In a dark room, Chen Pingping sat in a wheelchair and smiled slightly at the charred human head on the cloth. He asked, Do you think dot after being burned to this state, will the emperor still recognize the idiot Sanshi? The old servant chuckled and didn't say anything. He only saw that his master seemed to be happy, so he was also happy. Chen Pingping took out the broken arrow from the box and looked at it with narrowed eyes. Suddenly he said in a sharp voice, San she is an idiot. Do you think the eldest princess is also an idiot? She could have used anyone, but she used Yan Oi's son. It does bind him closer to her dot but isn't it too easily revealed? It seems like it will be more difficult for the commissioner to act. The old servant was Chen Pingping's trusted aide and housekeeper. He knew much of the thoughts of this director and carefully reminded him. Chen Pingping sunk into thought and said a moment later. Fans Yan might still act too early. But let him do what he thinks is the right thing. As for those things he might be unwilling to do, I will do them. There were many things Chen Pingping would never tell Fans Yan because he knew Fans Yan's heart was nowhere near as hard and strong as his own. He rolled his wheelchair to the window. From the distance faintly came the laughs of the beautiful girls the old man had collected. He looked outside and thought of Yuan. 
who was always beside the eldest princess. He couldn't stop himself smiling like an innocent child. Often the things my enemies do not want me to know, I actually do know. However, a trace of self-deprecation flashed through the old man's eyes and he sighed. Being a person that knows everything is actually, at times, not a happy thing. The old servant gently squeezed his shoulders. He knew that tomorrow the director would take the head and broken arrow into the palace, and the Junsheng conference would be revealed for the first time to the emperor. The emperor would have to finally make up his mind. Chen Pingping slowly lowered his head. If he didn't cause some big ruckus, if a few of the nobles in the palace didn't die, how could he be satisfied to let go and die? Chapter 381 the palace and the court. The emperor was not in a good mood. In the palace and court, everyone knew the emperor has not been in a good mood because though he had temporarily paused his regular event of watching opera with the Empress Dowager. Every day, other than in the daily court attendance, not many people had the chance to see the emperor. Eunuch Yao, Eunuch Hu, and the reinstated eunuch Dai had been surrounded by officials on a daily basis. Everyone wanted to know exactly what had happened. The emperor also had not summoned any of his trusted officials into the palace. It didn't look like it was because he was worried about something. People just knew that the emperor was not in a good mood. In the court, most of the memorials sent in from various provinces were rejected. The official of the Supreme Court was ruthlessly scolded and old master Qin of the Bureau of Military Affairs was also scolded by the emperor. The Qin family were the most trusted of the emperor's aides and powerful military officials. Under normal circumstances, he would give the Qin family some face in front of the civil and military officials, but today he had treated them harshly. At the Jingdu garrison, young General Qin Heng's expression did not change. When he entered and left the Hall of Governmental Affairs, he maintained a clear smile. It looked like he did not care much about the scolding the emperor had given his family. Looking at this scene, the officials understood that the emperor had wrongly scolded his trusted aide to warn someone else in the capital. This was a confusing method. No one could guess who the emperor was warning, but the warning itself existed. As expected, on the third day, Yi Zong, far away in Dingzhu, once again sent a bitter memorial to the emperor stating that since there was peace under heaven, Ding Zhu no longer needed to maintain so many soldiers. The Yi family asking to personally disband the military showed their terrified posturing. The emperor lightly allowed it and did not allow the court and bureau of military affairs to debate the matter. All of the officials, including the newly appointed Hu the scholar and Shu the scholar, all thought it was a follow-up to the Hanging Temple incident last year and did not connect it to anything else. After the Yi family asked for disbandment, the Emperor's mood seemed to improve. He resumed his daily visit to the Empress Dowager and allowed the eldest princess to live in the palace again. Guangxin Palace once again truly opened its doors for the eldest princess. Distance creates beauty and danger. One family all living together would certainly be much safer. The old man in the Chen Garden thought this must be what the Emperor thought. He sighed and knew matters had not gone exactly as he had planned. There was still much he needed to do. Since the seeds had begun to sprout in the black soil in their hearts, there would eventually be a day it would grow into a poisonous vine and unstoppably push through that layer of hard rock on top. Only the people living in the palace knew the emperor's mood had not truly taken a turn for the better. His face still carried a trace of worry and unhappiness. He was the ruler of the world the master of the palace. He was the one everyone had to watch when they made any small movements. Everyone's livelihoods depended on him, as did everyone's hope for the future and wealth. Everyone in the palace was careful and nervously tried to guess what other thoughts were hidden in the emperor's heart. The eunuchs that closely served the emperor in Taiji Palace and the royal study had become highly experienced. They did not make any sounds to the probing questions from various palaces. Under the might of eunuch Hong, the housemaids and eunuchs in the various palaces also did not dare to ask too obviously. After the eldest princess moved unhappily into Guangxin Palace, she immediately recovered her usual beauty and went to talk and keep the Empress Dowager company daily. Occasionally, she would also go the Eastern Palace to visit the Empress and Crown Prince. However, 
she was somewhat confused and wasn't sure exactly what the emperor was thinking. A lead eunuch in the eastern palace had become an important person. Eunuch Hongzhu had always served beside the emperor and was well liked by him. It was rumored he had some relation to eunuch Hong and was familiar with the people and going-ons in the Taiji Palace and royal study. If sending someone to make discreet inquiries, he would be the most appropriate choice. Hongzhu had taken up the post of a fourth-level lead eunuch in the Eastern Palace for three months. Using his status as being assigned by the Emperor and his own careful and satisfactory service, he had received the Empress' approval. Except, it was impossible to obtain acceptance at once. However, the Empress had given Hongzhu sufficient benefits. She wanted to see whether or not he could be used and to what extent. The Empress smiled slightly as she gazed at Hongzhu kneeling before her. She quite liked this little eunuch who understood the situation. He was discreet and had delicate features. She gently said, The Emperor is worried about matters of state, and I wish to help lessen his burdens. Although the back palace is not to interfere in state matters, if I know about the Emperor's mood, I will be able to make some soups to send and make His Majesty feel better. Hong Zhu furrowed his brows and said, Empress is thoughtful. Go ask, the Empress sighed and said. If the Emperor finds out, there is no need to hide it. It is not anything shameful to start with. Don't bring misfortune on yourself. Hong Zhu's expression was moved. He took his orders and left. Not long after, the recently popular figure made a few rounds of the enormous royal palace. After he had been fond on thoroughly, he didn't dare continue receiving praise so proudly and quickly returned to the Empress Palace. He leaned in close to the Empress's ear and said a few words. The Empress frowned slightly. Her noble face faintly showed her worry. She sighed and said, so it is because of the empty national treasury. I have also heard of the work to repair the banks of the Yangtze River. It's been delayed from the beginning of winter of the year before last until now, and it's all because there isn't enough money. Dada. If I could make silver appear out of thin air then I could solve His Majesty's worries. It's a pity. Hong Zhu chuckled and said, Empress is the mother of the world. Why do you need to worry about such things? As for the national treasury, isn't it Minister Fan who manages the Ministry of Revenue? When the Empress heard the words Ministry of Revenue, her eyes lit up. She asked with false nonchalance, Minister Fan has been managing the Ministry of Revenue for many years, it could be said he has worked hard. The empty national treasury dot is a problem of income, does he have any solutions? Hong Zhu was slightly startled, he began to speak then stopped. The Empress saw his expression and smiled disdainfully. Child, you have quite the load on your mind. Hong Zhu jumped in fright and quickly knelt down and said with a pained expression, I don't dare, only in the royal study. I heard that the Emperor had been very angry yesterday saying that the Ministry of Revenue was useless, and that, he lowered his voice and said, I heard that there are officials in the Ministry of Revenue who are in the red and secretly moved national funds. The amount was also very large, so the Emperor Dot was angry. The Empress heart stuttered. She immediately hid the expression on her face. She smiled slightly and said, There is no need to tell me of these state affairs. How is His Majesty's mood recently? Where does he often wander to in the palace? Hong Zhu looked around. He knew this was tabooed information in the palace, but he gritted his teeth, crawled to the Empress side, and said something in a low voice. The Empress willow-like brows went up and then shortly softened again weakly. Her lips trembled slightly, and her cheeks were pale. In a cold voice, she said, the little tower dot the little tower again. Dot. Dot. After Hong Zhu had left the palace full of unease and fear, a young man flashed out from behind the windscreen. He wore a light yellow robe. The needlework on the surface was soft and gentle, and his eyes were bright and spirited. In the palace, other than the emperor and dowager empress who could wear this color, the only other person was the crown prince. King Kingdom's crown prince's body was already much better than it was a few years ago. At least his face had lost that unhealthy pallor. This was because of the Empress' strict teachings and the fact she did not allow him to waste too much energy on the matters between men and women. It was also because as he gradually became older, 
he faced numerous complicated situations and forced step by step by his royal brothers, he had to make changes out of necessity. His biggest enemy had been the second prince, but after the second prince was successfully half crippled by Fan Zhan, he suddenly found that who he thought was his greatest help, Fan Zhan, was actually his father's son. What's more, he was the son of his father and that which, for the Eastern Palace, they had long had an insoluble hatred for the Yi family. The crown prince was now most wary about Fan Zhan, who was far away in Jiangnan. Everyone involved knew everything clearly. After Fan Zhan's past was exposed, if the crown prince took the throne, Fan Zhan would definitely not meet a kind end. If Fan Zhan alone held great power, he would certainly not allow the crown prince to inherit. Mother, it seems we can make a move in the Ministry of Revenue matter. The crown prince had been behind the windscreen the whole time listening to the Empress and Hong Zhu's conversation. The Empress closed her eyes and thought for a bit. This eunuch, Hong Zhu, just how trustworthy are his words? 70%. The Empress smiled slightly. I thought so too. Hong Zhu originally served in the royal study and followed beside your father. His meteoric rise was just a matter of time, although he has now been moved to the eastern palace and raised to levels to be the head eunuch, he holds much less power now than earlier in the year. The crown prince said, if Fan Yan had not told father about Hong Zhu taking bribes. Father would not have angrily sent Hong Zhu away. Everyone knew about this matter in the palace. They all knew the story of that day in the royal study. They all thought that Hong Zhu had left the royal study because he had offended Fan Yan. The Empress sighed and said, looking at His Majesty's punishment, he seems to truly like Hong Zhu this little eunuch. The question is, I am not sure whether this matter is real or fake. The crown prince furrowed his brow and thought for a moment. Hong Zhu's grudge against Fan Yan should be real. The eunuchs and serving girls in the palace have all heard him gritting his teeth as he talked about this matter. As for father's side. Even if he did send Hong Zhu to watch me, I haven't done anything slightly wrong for much of the last year. The Empress nodded as a murderous intention flashed through her phoenix eyes. She smiled coldly and said, As long as the reason for His Majesty's anger is real God then we can investigate the Ministry of Revenue matter. We can't let Fan Jian stay in the Ministry of Revenue anymore. Otherwise, with Fan Yan controlling the palace treasury in Xiangnan and Fan Jian controlling the national treasury in Jingdu, your future is going to be difficult. The crown prince nodded and said, I will remember well father's teachings and only do what father wishes me to do. The empress furrowed her brows and said, I'll go to Guangxin Palace in a moment to ask your aunt for her opinion. Hearing the eldest princess mentioned, a strange light flashed through the crown prince's eyes. He immediately hid it well and asked hesitantly, are we still asking Anne's side to step forward this time? The Empress shook her head and said with a cold smile, She is also not someone easy to get along with. Besides, now that the Emperor has had her move into her palace, is it not so that he is able to keep a close eye on her? With her deep in the palace, it will be much more difficult for her to contact the officials in court. When your father does something, although it always looks simple, it is actually extremely clever. You should learn more of this from him. Ah, if that aunt of yours wants to make any move, it is not going to be easy. This nominal mother of the countryside, yet there was a schadenfreude that couldn't be hidden revealed between her brows. The eldest princess has shown too brightly among the women in the king kingdom and always faintly covered the empress glory. How could she possibly be happy? Now, her husband found this aunt to be more and more objectionable. Although logically the Empress knew that it was nothing good, emotionally she couldn't help feeling a thread of joy. That shameless vixen. Dot. Dot. I am just letting her know. The Empress sighed and patted the Crown Prince's shoulder. You'll have to temporarily put up with your aunt's relationship with the second prince. Don't think about what happened before. As for the matter of investigating the Ministry of Revenue running into the red this time, I will find someone to do it. Don't worry. A chill emerged between her brows. Although my natal family has already been murdered by those wretched people, 
I still have some people hidden in the court. As for fans, Jan. Did he think he could hide his transfer of that much silver from the national treasury to Jiangnan from the world? Did he think he could hide it from the emperor? No matter how much the emperor likes fans, Jan. He would definitely not allow this kind of thing to happen right beneath his nose. The crown prince was slightly startled. No wonder the Ministry of Revenue was in the red so badly. It turned out that Fans Jan's daring was unbelievably big. Only now did he know that his mother and aunt had long grasped the root of the Ministry of Revenue problem. No wonder they were so confident. The Empress smiled slightly and said, After the Ministry of Revenue matter. The world will have a few days of peace. Fans Jan will not be able to hop around like he is right now. Think about it closely. In His Majesty's mind, as long as you don't overstep your boundaries, even if you competed with those people a bit, he will pretend he didn't see. In the end, you are still the Crown Prince, and this is something known by everyone under heaven. The Crown Prince sighed. In all these dynasties and generations, I am perhaps the most good-for-nothing crown prince of them all. The empress smiled coldly and said, There have been countless crown princes in history whose lives were not as good as yours before they inherited. What are you afraid of? As long as you endure until the day you take the throne, then that will be your moment to shine. She continued coldly. Naturally I have my reasons for my certainty that the emperor still wants you to inherit. The crown prince said anxiously, but dot although the second prince is about to fall, the third prince has gone down to Jiangnan and has been with fans Yan the whole time. This was the matter most secretly discussed in the palace. The third prince had followed the imperial envoy to Jiangnan at such a young age to watch how things are handled. Nominally he was there to learn, but was he learning how to govern a country? Thus, the birth mother of the third prince, Yi Gaipin, became the center of the discussion. However, this woman of the Liu family maintained her silence and kept to herself. The empress glared at the crown prince and said between gritted teeth, To be so scared of a yellow-faced child, how juvenile are you? The crown prince said unhappily, I just cannot see that the intentions you say father has. If he didn't have such intentions, he would have deposed you long ago. The empress felt resent for him not managing to meet such expectations. The crown prince smiled bitterly. Perhaps father is giving me a chance. The empress shook her head and said calmly, You're wrong, compared to your brothers. You have one particularly powerful advantage, yet you still do not understand. The empress expression was calm with a hint of iciness. She slowly said, the great prince has a Dongyi background. The second prince's birth mother, Lady Shu, has some power in the capital. The third prince's mother, Yi Gaipin, is born of the Liu family, which is a large family in the capital, and has Fazian as a support. Of all the princes, only you. Only the two of us are alone without any family power to use. The emperor and I are, after all, a husband and wife that has lived together for all these years. The Empress smiled disdainfully. Everything about your father is great, he is just too paranoid. With the passing on of this throne of the King Kingdom, of course, he fears that the power of the Lee royal family would fall to relatives. So when picking his heir, he cannot accept someone who has an overly large family power behind them. Thus the second prince is not possible and the third prince not even less possible. The empress' cold gaze was like two knives scooping out the crown prince's heart. Only you. The emperor allowed that old cripple to kill all of my family. One reason was because of the evil witch, but isn't another reason so that your future obstacles have been swept clear? Don't be scared, my child. She gently stroked the crown prince's icy cheeks and sighed. If nothing goes majorly wrong, no matter what the emperor does, it is all to help you grow stronger. Many years ago, he chose you and has never doubted his choice. The Empress laughed hysterically and said, even if his choice was originally wrong. Suddenly her expression became severe. She said through gritted teeth, so, do you understand? You are able to have your position as the crown prince and to be sure of keeping your position in the future. It is all because your mother's family had to pay a price of 3,000 lives. Those are your ancestors. Your relatives, they all died. They used their blood, their bodies to lay down this path for you to the royal seat. You must endure until the day you succeed. A spring breeze floated through the royal palace, 
but this spring breeze was so icy that it made one chilled. The crown prince couldn't help shivering, because the empress dowager, his great-grandmother, had always controlled the back palace strictly, he had only in recent years learned, from his mother, of the truth of that night when Jingdu ran red with blood, that his grandfather and uncles had all died in that political turmoil. So dot it was because father wanted to remove the relatives beside him. His heart began to clench. He had no idea how he should respond. If his mother's analysis was correct, then as long as he appeared sufficiently steady and nothing majorly went wrong in the world, then that dragon chair would still be his. The King Kingdom's crown prince's gaze became determined. He nodded seriously toward his mother. Mother and son seemed to both have forgotten that sentence they had said. The inheritance of the crown prince was under the condition that nothing major went wrong, and everyone in the world knew, no matter whether it was Chen Pingping or Sir Fan Jr., they were both dark and ruthless people who were experts at finding big problems in no problems. Dot. Dot. The palace and court were actually two parts of one whole, with the emperor, a difficult to ignore role. The two sides were beautifully and harmoniously unified together. If the officials wanted to curry favor with the emperor, they had to curry favor with the nobles in the palace. If the nobles in the palace wanted to extend their hands beyond the palace, they had to use the officials outside to do things for them. The so-called interest group was thus created. When the emperor raged in the royal study about specifically the Ministry of Revenue's deficit and after this message had traveled through countless channels out of the palace, the entire officialdom began to slowly stir. If the emperor did not like something, as an official, their highest goal would be to quickly catch up. Even if those standing against the emperor were figures of legendary rank like the great grand masters, the officials would still have to summon their courage and be first. They would not be satisfied to be behind others. With the emperor's mood as a marker, these things were never wrong. However, a clear time difference appeared between the news in the palace and the reaction in the court. The officials were steadier and more cautious than in the past. Since they were investigating the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue, they could not help but involve the Minister of the Ministry of Revenue, Fan Jian. Everyone knew that Fan Jian was not only extremely ruthless but also very close to King Jing who had affection with the emperor as milk brothers. The officials were unsure what affection exactly the emperor had to Fan Jian. The second reason the officials were careful was simple. Fan Jian's son, known as Fan Yan and by the courtesy name and Zip, was the commissioner of the Overwatch Council and the current all-powerful imperial envoy of Jiangmen Road. Everyone knew that Fan Yan was the emperor's illegitimate child. They also knew Fan Yan's filial piety was famous throughout the entire kingdom. Countless stories floated among the people, such as refusing to recognize his father on the pain of death while in the palace or that he fought desperately at the annual meeting to be allowed to enter the Fan Memorial Hall. If the investigation reached Minister Fan, no one knew how fans Yan would react. The officials knew the second prince had once tried to use the second young master of the Fan family. In the end, he had angered fans Yan, who had used countless dark and ruthless moves against him. He arrogantly defeated the already secretly powerful second prince until he was utterly defeated from head to tail and was incredibly wretched. In the end, Fans Yan successfully had the second prince banished to a house arrest. This brilliant result was enough to shock most of the officials who were politically opportunistic. Sir Fan Jr. didn't even care about the second prince, much less other officials. The pressure coming from the palace grew stronger and stronger, and the information from various sides confirmed that the emperor indeed had thoughts of singling out the Ministry of Revenue as a point of attack. The true reason for the Emperor's bad mood these days was also the Ministry of Revenue. Thus, the slowly stirring officials finally suppressed their natures and began to go home to write their memorials. Among these officials were some who truly acted for the country and hoped the court would investigate the officials involved in the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue. There were some who received orders from palace nobles who wanted to use this opportunity to topple the Fan family and play a trick of striking from a distance to destroy Fan Yan's reputation while he was far away in Jiangnan. 
most were politically opportunistic officials who had been in the court for a long time and rose in ranking by guessing the emperor's intentions. For many different reasons, the officials in the Jingdu court came to a rare unanimous consensus. They asked that the court investigate the rumored matter of the Ministry of Revenue's deficit to give the emperor and people under heaven an explanation. Chapter 382 Poaching Talent in Court The king court began at the scheduled time. The day was barely bright, and the palace was still cool. The emperor still sat high in his dragon chair while the officials humbly and straightforwardly discussed the government affairs of various counties and roads. After all urgent matters were discussed and concluded, the emperor, with faint exhaustion floating on his face, asked. Is there anything else? An official from the Ministry of Justice stepped out and carefully reported, Your Majesty, the matter of the head of the palace treasury transport company Sir Fan Jr. How should it be handled? Many of the Jingdu officials were surprised that although the investigation of the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue, which had been accumulating power for days, had not yet started, the criticisms toward Fan Zhan, who was far away in Jiangnan, had arrived aggressively. Within three days, memorials from the Jiangnan Imperial Censorate and other officials began to fly into Jingdu like pieces of snow. Each word and sentence accused the head of the palace treasury transport company of being arrogant and using his status as an imperial envoy to suppress his colleagues. He disregarded the laws of the country and regulations of the court. He willfully killed four of the treasurers of the palace treasury, angered the people and incited the strike of the three large workshops. The three large workshops of the palace treasury were an important column in the financial affairs of the King Kingdom and such a large event like a strike had not happened for many years. When the news traveled to Jingdu, it shocked many people. Jingdu and Jiangnan were far away from each other. The people did not know of the true situation at the North Minutes Transport Company Yaman. They knew even less about the fact that it was the Imperial Sense Rate Gojing and the officials of the eldest princess who turned the facts on their head. Clearly, it was the strike that came first followed by fans Yan suppressing the situation by killing people. After being accused by these excitable officials, it became so that Fan Xian first unreasonably killed, which then incited the commoner's anger. In the hearts of the court officials, Sir Fan Jr. was indeed someone who could committed such crimes. Lao Fan had not even been investigated when the officials began to have strong objections to Zhao Fan. The matter was debated in the court for days, but no one had any ideas, and the emperor did not say anything. Among the civil officials, there were a few who were not corrupt. They did not fear the fact that Fan Xian was the emperor's illegitimate child. On the contrary, because of this, they looked at Fan Xian with even more distrust in their eyes. They worried that this powerful official would harm the very foundations of King Kingdom and the interests of the people. Who the scholar who had already entered the Hall of Governmental Affairs and had begun to make his way around the cabinet had never met Fan Xian and his knowledge of him was limited to the rumors in the officialdom and the public. Although he had the introduction of Shu the scholar, and he gradually admired Fan Xian's literary talent, he still believed the words in the memorials. Who the scholar had spent many years as a local official in various counties. He deeply understood the unreasonableness of the Jingdu officials. He was worried that Fan Xian would rely on his family's power and his past to run amok in Jiangnan since there would be none to contend with his power. He decided to speak on behalf of the Jiangnan officials. It would prevent the location from being too deeply damaged, and he was afraid that Sir Fan Jr., whom he quite admired, would slide toward the crooked path. Who the scholar stepped out and calmly said, Your Majesty, this matter should be thoroughly investigated. The emperor rubbed his temple and asked, Investigated? Fans Yan had long written me a report telling me of this. The Overwatch Council also has their reports, and the Hall of Governmental Affairs also has a copy for the archive. Scholar, you should know. This time the palace treasury's trouble was because Fan Xian was investigating the long-established corrupt practices and caused it by getting justice for the workers. Who the scholar said in a clear voice, Your Majesty, those are only Sir Fan Jr.'s side of the story. Since there have been so many officials accusing him, 
someone has to be sent to Jiangnan to ask if the memorials are true, then there should be a strict investigation and compensation made. We must not hurt the hearts of the tens of thousands of workers. If the memorials are lying, then the Jiangnan Road officials should be severely rebuked to soothe Sir Fan Jr. and return some justice to Sir Fan Jr. The emperor almost smiled as he gazed at him. After all this scholar had said, he was determined to send someone to Jiangnan. Only, Jingdu is far from Jiangnan. Even if the capital sent someone, would Fan's Yan actually be scared of them? However, the emperor had called the long-exiled Hu the scholar back to the capital because he wanted to use the scholar's stubbornness and honesty. It was like how many years ago he used Lin Ruofu and Chen Pingping to compete against each other. The emperor of the Qing kingdom was preparing to use Hu the scholar and Fan Xian to eventually compete against each other. Since that was so, he could not, at this time, make the scholar lose face. He smiled slightly and said, your words make sense. Offer a candidate to go to Jiangnan to have a look. Whatever the matter is, it needs to be seen personally to know for sure. Who the scholar wanted this seemingly fair suggestion of handling the matter. Since he had achieved his goal, he backed away. Shu Wu, Shu the scholar, couldn't stop himself saying worriedly, of course we must investigate clearly who is telling the truth and who is lying. But I am worried that after the palace treasury has gone through this storm, the income this year might run into problems. After all, this is Sir Fan Jr.'s first year managing the palace treasury. I hope that your majesty will give him plenty of advice. This was a mild suggestion but it represented the worries of many officials. They were concerned that Fan Xian was overly irritating and ruthless, and would cause major problems for the production of the entire palace treasury. Although Su Wu was gentle, that did not mean that the others were gentle. On the contrary, there were a few officials who used his words as an opening and began to extol their own deep concerns and loyalty to the court. They spoke of Sir Fan Jr.'s youth and how the matter of the palace treasury was of great importance. If, within this year, there was too big a difference to previous years, should the court consider a different candidate, and so on? This was a brazen lack of trust in Fan Xian. The meaning was very clear. If Fan Xian could not raise the level of the palace treasury's profit, or if it was not as high as previous years, then what right did he have to control the palace treasury? Because it was so brazen, each word and sentence seemed to be for the consideration of the court. Although the officials wanted to move deity from the palace treasury, they could not refute anything. The emperor smiled slightly and said, This year's results for the palace treasury would only be known next year. I think, my dear officials, you are being too hasty. After all, some time will be needed to find out whether or not Fan Xian will disappoint me. The emperor seemed to suddenly think of something unsaid. However, the palace treasury bidding ended a few days ago and the bidding books should have already been escorted to Jingdu. If my dear officials wish to see Fan Yan's ability, have a look at the results of this year's palace treasury bidding. It should tell you a thing or two. King Kingdom was vast, so there was a great distance between Jiangnan and Jingdu. The bidding had started March 22nd in Suzhou, but the news had just reached Jingdu. If it had traveled by the secret mail road and council report, it should have been a few days faster. Either Fans Yan had forgotten or there was a problem of secrecy with the bidding books, but he didn't reveal anything earlier to the emperor or the court. After dealing with the strike of the three large workshops in North Minutes, the Overwatch Council had begun blocking the road for messages between the two places. So, although Jingdu vaguely knew about the bidding matter that had set Suzhou abuzz, they did not know of the specific situation. The message that should have traveled the fastest, under Fan's Yan's suppression, traveled even slower than Great Master Sanshi. The Emperor gazed at the group of people below and said, Has the Taeking Temple received any documents? All of the income of the palace treasury's three large workshops were audited and managed by the Taeshang Temple and Imperial Court, so the Emperor asked the head minister of the Taeking Temple. It just arrived early in the morning, the head minister of the Taeking Temple coughed a few times and said with an anxious expression, I was in a rush to enter the palace, so I have not yet seen it. The emperor huffed coldly, 
then why aren't you rushing to get it? The head minister of Taeking Temple bowed and burst into a trotting run out of the palace to retrieve it. We will all wait a bit. The emperor announced that the court conference would be extended. He accepted a bowl of tea from Eunuch Yao beside him and sipped it slowly. Time ticked by in seconds and minutes. Palace officials began to feel a bit anxious but did not reveal any kind of expression. Besides, they were truly curious how exactly things had gone. The 40% deposit from the palace treasury's spring opening bid was the King Kingdom's first major piece of income each year, so these officials couldn't help but anticipate eagerly and wait nervously. The emperor looked at the officials with cold eyes and was slightly unhappy in his heart. He understood why that when it came to fans yawn. All of the civil officials all had to stand up and express their opinion. Even those who had good relations with him, such as Xu Wu, were not an exception. Fan Xian was his illegitimate child. The officials long had complaints about the court's placement of Fan Xian in important positions. They felt it was not according to the regulations and only because the emperor felt sorry for his own flesh and blood, so he used official positions to console him. But this palace treasury was mine. This world was mine, this son was also mine. The emperor thought coldly. When did it become time for these old men to run their mouths off about this? The emperor knew in his heart that if Fans Yan failed to live up to expectations and turned Jiangnan into a mess, and the palace treasury went into decline. If calamity befell one of the important areas in the country and realized the officials' worries, then no matter how he protected him, he could only transfer Fans Yan back. The emperor had confidence in Fan Xian. It was a kind of confidence that had been gradually nurtured. After Fan Xian came to the capital from Danzu, the emperor had kept a wary and detailed eye on Fan Xian's every move. He wanted to see just what kind of ability the child had. In all things, Fan Xian's performance had not disappointed him. In the literary arts, he had the 300 poems in front of the palace. In martial arts, he had the title of a ninth level. He had Zhuang Moen gifting him books. His ability to seize gold was not vulgar, and he had no inclination to corruption. Even his romanticism was not done the same way as the other young and elegant men. As for his handle on the court situation, it was even less like that of a mere 18 year old. His loyalty to his ruler and filial piety toward his father were both to be praised. When all was said and done, the emperor was still a normal middle-aged man. It was difficult for him not to feel some inklings of pride toward Fan Xian, an illegitimate child. After all, it was his seed. When the officials began to express their doubts about Fan Xian, he had the Taeking Temple immediately announce the details of the palace treasury opening bid. Although he did not know the specific amounts, the emperor never doubted Fan Xian's ability to scrape up every last silver coin. The most basic skill required to be an official. The sound of urgent footsteps rang out from outside of the palace. The head minister of Taeking Temple ran in at a trot. His face and ears were red as he endlessly wiped the sweat from his forehead. Behind him followed the vice minister of Taeking Temple, Ren Shen, who was also puffing endlessly. To run all the way from the Taeking Temple to the Taiji Palace was indeed quite tiring. The emperor allowed the two to rise after a simple salute. His body leaned forward and a trace of interest showed in his expression as he asked, How is it? The various elderly officials in the palace also looked nervously at the two officials of the Taeking Temple. The head minister of the Taeking Temple swallowed. Before he could even speak, his expression was already one of joy. He replied in a loud voice, Congratulations, Your Majesty. Once these words were out, everyone knew the situation of the palace treasury spring opening bid in the sixth year of the king calendar was good, and it was very good, not just a little good. The officials who had some faint intentions to protect Fan Xian all let out a breath and smiles appeared on their faces. Xu the scholar was nodding his head in approval. The majority of the officials were startled. It seemed no one had expected that after the strike and being impeded by the eldest prince's powers, Fan Xian, who was managing the palace treasury for the first time, would actually be able to obtain decent results. Only the expression of that who the scholar was calm without anything strange. After the king emperor on the dragon chair heard these words, 
he felt his chest relax, his expression stayed calm, but now he sat his entire butt back into his chair, incredibly firmly. Although he had confidence in fans yawn before he received confirmed reports, he had still been a bit nervous. The Emperor smiled slightly and asked, what is the exact amount? Everyone needed money and the emperor was no exception. He had all of the money in the world but still wished that the amount of money under heaven would grow and grow. He was the greatest landlord in the world but still like all the other wealthy landlords, joy flashed faintly through his eyes. The wrench and coughed and took a file. He read in a clear voice, on the 22nd day of the third month of the sixth year of the king calendar, the total of the palace treasury transport company opening bid of the 36 lots for the north, sound, and east roads as he spoke to hear and seemed to be startled again by that enormous number. He studied his state of mind and said, 24,222,000 Liang. In total, once this floaty in total came out, the entire Taiji Palace became absolutely silent for a long time. 24,222,000 Liang? This much? This was a whole 80% more than last year. Fans yawned. How did he do it? Did he have the magical ability to bewitch others' hearts and made the Jiangnan royal merchants into idiots? The officials were all wide eyed and tongue tied. They looked at each other a bit breathlessly from the pressure of the enormous amount. Everyone's minds sank into a kind of daze. Bang! Shu the scholar, his face bright red fell to the ground. It caused chaos among the officials, so it took a while to help him up. The scholar's expression was unbelievably excited. He sputtered incoherently toward the emperor on the dragon chair. Congratulations, your majesty. Congratulations, your majesty. The officials finally reacted. After a loud startled sigh, they turned around and began to salute and praise the emperor. The fawning surged like the ocean. The emperor's grace was like a mountain. Heaven protects the king kingdom. The emperor is wise. And so on. 24 millions liang of silver. Even if right now they could only take 40% into their accounts. That was still close to 10 million liang of silver. Such a large income could be used to do too many things, such as making river repairs, strengthening the army improving the life of the people, and not raising official salaries. No matter which faction these officials belong to, after all, they were still officials of the greatest country in the world. When they thought of the fact that the court had such a large amount of silver to remedy the emptiness of the national treasury and solve the current urgency, they all began to dance with joy. This kind of dancing for joy was not an act. Rather it was true joy. No matter whether or the officials were corrupt or not, talented or not, they always hoped the court would be better. At the same time, they were desperately fawning over the emperor. They couldn't help thinking of the person they had doubted and been opposed to. Sir Fan Jr. Credit for successful palace treasury opening and bringing in so much benefit for the court all belonged to Fan Zhan, who was far away directing the fight in Jiangnan. Only, how could they make this turn? Their eyes rolled around in their heads and refused to bring up the Jiangnan matter. It just had to be who the scholar who stepped out first. Once he stepped out, the noise in the court immediately quieted down. They all wanted to hear what who the scholar wanted to say. Who the scholar said calmly, this amount is so large as to be difficult to believe. I hope that Sir Fan has not used some other method to drain the pond for the fish. If he has deceived the Jiangnan royal merchants, and the palace treasury production cannot keep up, then what will we do next year? Among the harmony, the sudden and harmonious note truly made some people uncomfortable. The officials burst into a clamor. Even those who found Fan Xian objectionable could not stand for it. They all spoke on behalf of the palace treasury transport company and felt that who the scholar's words were not appropriate. The emperor had also left behind the previous excitement and looked coldly at who the scholar. In your opinion, Fan Xian has sought out this much silver for the court, but he shouldn't be awarded. Rather he should be punished? Who the scholar shook his head and said resolutely, I meant, that I have some suspicions, that is all. After all, I was not in Jiangnan. I don't know the specific circumstances. I am just doing my duty and reminding your majesty. As for Sir Fan Jr., as long as there is no problem with the opening bid, of course, 
he should not receive any punishment and should be greatly rewarded. The emperor calmed his emotions and quietly asked, In your opinion, how should be he rewarded? Although it is a matter of silver, it is the foundation of the country, who the scholar said calmly. Sir Fan Jr. has provided a great service to the foundations of the country and should certainly receive a magnificent reward. The emperor narrowed his eyes slightly and said, what is a magnificent reward? After the North Minutes and Suju bidding matter has been completely investigated, who the scholar lifted his head and said gently, I am willing to act as the guarantor and ask that the Emperor summon Sir Fan Jr. to enter the Hall of Governmental Affairs and work in the cabinet. After he spoke, the court was shocked and the official startled. What kind of role in Hall of Governmental Affairs? That was the backbone of the court. After Prime Minister Lin left his role, the King Kingdom no longer had the Prime Minister position. Its responsibilities had been taken over by the scholars of the Hall of Governmental Affairs. Especially after Ken Heng entered the Jingde garrison, Yan Hengshu, the Minister of the Ministry of Justice, left, and who the scholar returned to the capital. The position of the cabinet of the Hall of Governmental Affairs became even more set. If one was able to enter the Hall of Governmental Affairs, that was the same as entering the court's highest organization for policy making. Who the scholar wanted to recommend fans Yan enter the cabinet? The officials wondered which side who the scholar was actually on. Why was he saying inauspicious things one moment and the next he wanted to give fans Yan such an important and elevated position? Yan Hengshu, the minister of the Ministry of Justice, glared at who the scholar with hatred and confusion. Unexpectedly. After the emperor heard this suggestion, without even stopping to think, he replied directly, No, fans, Yan is too young. The officials were slightly reassured. They thought the emperor was being fair about this suggestion. Otherwise, it would have been too absurd to allow a not yet twenty, green behind the ears child enter the hall of governmental affairs to work. Who the scholar said calmly, in ancient times, talented individuals became prime minister at sixteen. Besides, the Hall of Governmental Affairs is Your Majesty's organization for documents, it is not truly the Prime Minister position. Furthermore, Sir Fan Jr. is talented and brilliant, and suited to many tasks. Such a talent should be in court and helping to lighten Your Majesty's burdens. The Emperor gave him a not quite there smile and simply shook his head. He is the Commissioner of the Overwatch Council. According to the King Law, an official of the Overwatch Council cannot also be a court official. Even after he has quit that position, he can only be a sinecure third-level government office. Who the scholar continued quickly, King Law cannot stand against your majesty's edict. His youth is not a problem, and his position as commissioner of the Overwatch Council also isn't a problem. If this was not so, how could I dare say this is a magnificent reward? The emperor tilted up the corners of his mouth in a smile and waved his hand. There is no need to discuss this further, I dot will not allow it. An emperor's words were difficult to retract, so who the scholar could only retreat. However, there were no other expressions on his face. The emperor narrowed his eyes as he gazed down and saw who the scholar and Shu Wu met each other's gaze. He then knew that Shu Wu, this old man, received the news earlier, and the emperor immediately guessed the reason why who the scholar took the opportunity today to raise such an absurd suggestion. What a talent Dotans is indeed a talent. The ability fans Yan had demonstrated was overly shocking, so the civil officials would always be cautious with fans Yan in the Overwatch Council. They would be happier with fans Yan leaving the Overwatch Council and once more falling into the warm embrace of the civil officials. After all, Fan Xian more the hat of an immortal poet and vaguely the leader on the hearts of all the young scholars. For Hu and Shu, it should not be a difficult matter to admit Fan Xian to their ranks. Both scholars were people who cherished talent and could read the situation. They could see the emperor's future plans and felt a bit dissatisfied for Fan Xian, this bright pearl, to be thrown like this into the darkness of the Overwatch Council. Regardless of whether it was from the perspective of self-preservation of the civil system or for fans Yan, they wanted to dig fans Yan out. Although it was a bit early to bring this up, who the scholar had taken this rare opportunity and revealed the sincerity of the civil system. By mentioning this, 
years in advance, he had begun laying down the foundations for the debate. As for these little plans of his officials, the emperor had always been indulgent and did not bother about them much. On the contrary, through this matter, he more and more felt the honor that this illegitimate child of his brought to the royal family. The emperor's heart was proud. His expression was calm, and his eyes complicated. He glanced at the minister of the Ministry of Revenue, who had been standing silently in the line, the father in name of his own son, Fan Jian. Chapter 383 the matter of the Ministry of Revenue, 1. Although the Emperor's gaze only lightly brushed by Fan Jian, it was noted by many of the people in court. Because of that 20 million liang of silver, Fan Jian, far away in Jiangnan, had pulled his official reputation in a terrifying stage, and the Emperor probably liked it. Were they still going to investigate the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue? The silver from the Jiangnan Palace Treasury was enough to cover everything. If they investigated the Ministry of Revenue at this time, would it look like they were not giving fans young enough face? The officials knew the Ministry of Revenue would have to be investigated because the rumors about the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue had already flown around for a long time. Although it was unfounded, and might not be without reason. The emptiness of the national treasury around the beginning of the year seemed to faintly prove this point. If this matter was not cleared up, the court politics of King Kingdom would not stand firm. However, investigating was one matter. When to investigate needed a wise mind to decide. Fans Yan had done a great service. If these officials immediately jumped out to accuse Fan Jian, it seemed a bit unreasonable. They also didn't know what the emperor thought of this. No matter what they needed someone to take the lead. When the court quieted down a bit, an official rose, bowed to the ground, and reported to the emperor regarding the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue. His words were firm, as if all the money was missing from the national treasury had been noted by him. No one knew where this official had gotten his confidence. The emperor's intentions were unclear. Listening to the official words, he furrowed his brows and nodded his head. For a moment, the officials did not know whether or not the emperor wanted to investigate. The officials did not dare to stare at the emperor's expression, so they secretly swung their gazes toward the minister of the Ministry of Revenue, Fan Jian, in the ranks. They saw he had a serious expression, with a hint of contentment in his solemnness. They couldn't help admiring the man's breathing techniques. The matter of the Ministry of Revenue. After discussion in the royal study, an edict will be sent down. After the emperor finished saying this coldly, he announced a dismissal of the court conference. With a brush of his dragon robe, he disappeared behind the windscreen. The officials walked toward the exit of the hall. They couldn't resist whispering along the way, guessing at what the emperor was truly thinking in his heart. Dot. Dot. That afternoon, in the not somewhat small royal study below the dragon bed, there were drum-shaped stools. A few scholars of the whole of governmental affairs, Yan Hengshu from the Ministry of Appointments, an official from the Supreme Court, and Minister of Works were all present. Beside the dragon bed were the Crown Prince, Great Prince, and Second Prince. Like in previous years, their hands were hanging, and they stood respectfully. The Emperor sat on the flat bed and calmly flipped through the memorials the officials had handed up. From last night, there had been a continuous stream of officials who had begun to write on the matter of the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue as well as officials using national funds. Only, the powerful had been taken out of their sales today in court by the banknote fans Yan had sent. The Emperor also had not allowed the hundreds of officials to debate the matter in the court. Sitting on the stools, Shu the scholar and Hu the scholar secretly met each other's eyes. They knew the emperor had placed the matter of investigating the Ministry of Revenue in the royal study to discuss for the purpose of leaving the Minister of Revenue, Fan Jian, some face. Only. Why was Minister Fan not in the royal study today? If the emperor had the intention of protecting the Fan family, he should have allowed him to explain himself. The two scholars were a bit nervous. Looking at the emperor's arrangement, 
It seemed a bit different than what they had imagined. The deficit of the Ministry of Revenue looked like it was true and not another little trick the Emperor has played. It seemed like Minister Fan was really about to be pushed into the heart of the struggle. Fan Jian has reported in sick, seeming to have guessed what the officials were guessing. The Emperor had not yet raised his head. He spoke in a quiet voice but it was difficult for his quiet voice to hide a feigned anger. The officials gave a pained smile. The thought the head housekeeper of the king court was a strange one. Every time he ran into someone in the court accusing him, he never did anything. He never bothered with any aligning of the factions. He didn't even disdain to enter the palace to explain himself. He only had this one simple move and used illness as an excuse. Minister Fan staring seemed like it wasn't as small as people had always thought. Each speak your mind. The emperor tossed aside the memorial in his hands. What are your thoughts on the Ministry of Revenue? The expressions of these elders, who were the backbone of the king court were calm. Their eyes were on their nose, and their noses were on their hearts. They all refused to be the first to jump out and offend the Fan family. Speaking from the point of court interest, they all believed that the Ministry of Revenue should be investigated. However, they all had good relations with Fan Jian. Since it was the entire court that suspected the Ministry of Revenue, there had to be someone who wouldn't be able to resist speaking out. Unexpectedly, Everyone's powers of meditation were good. After a moment, no one had opened their mouths. The royal study sank into a kind of awkward silence. The crown prince watched this strange scene and couldn't resist laughing in his heart, thinking, these officials only wanted stability, but they don't know that this kind of action would only make father more and more unhappy in his heart. This moment was the time for him to sell a favor. He quickly coughed and looked at Shu the scholar for a bit. Shu the scholar also found the situation to be slightly strange. The emperor had asked a question, yet none of them had dared to answer. Where did they expect the emperor to put himself? He quickly opened his mouth and said, Your Majesty. He only had time to say these two words before the anger the emperor had suppressed had already exploded out. He berated the memorials to investigate the Ministry of Revenue all written by you. He picked up the memorial beside him and waved it in the air, angrily rebuking, and at this time, the ones putting on a dead bird expression is also you. What use does the court have for all you closed mouth cords? The officials in the royal study all responded fearfully. They quickly left their seats and bowed admitting to their faults and smiling bitterly. The emperor had some white fungus soup, which slightly calmed the fire of anger in his chest. He huffed coldly and waved his hand to have them sit. Since the emperor had become angry, the direction of the wind was obvious. Shu the scholar had a good relationship with the fan manor, but he felt he was wholeheartedly working for the public good. He didn't have any personal hatred toward Minister Fan and he didn't wish for others to use this opportunity of investigating the Ministry of Revenue to attack the Fan Manor. So, he took the lead and said, the matter of the Ministry of Revenue is an important one. It is where the court's financial affairs are located. Each year's expenses come from the treasury of the Ministry of Revenue. Although I don't know where the recent rumors have come from or from where the Imperial Sense Rate learned that the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue was so large, since there is this reason, it must be investigated. It will be up to your majesty as to how it should be investigated. Shu the scholar considered his words and then smiled slightly. All these years, Minister Fan has managed the Ministry of Revenue. Although he was the assistant minister a few years ago, because the old minister was always confined by illness to his bed, all of the matters in the ministry were led by him. It must be noted that each matter of the Ministry of Revenue is tedious so the officials have neglected their importance. When managing the Ministry of Revenue, it is difficult to make contributions but too easy for things to go wrong. In the end, it is a bitter assignment with bitter work. In all these years Sir Fan has managed the Ministry of Revenue, although he has made no contributions, he has also had no mishaps and that is already a huge contribution to the court. I hope that your majesty will be considerate of Sir Fan's hard work and contributions, and be lenient. Even if investigated, it would not do to take it lightly. After these words, everyone knew where Shu Wu stood. The Ministry of Revenue had to be investigated, 
but it could not become a mess. The crown prince laughed coldly in his heart. Shu the scholar had reasoned well with these parts. Since it was unknown where the rumor had come from, he was suggesting that even if the Ministry of Revenue had a deficit, perhaps it was someone in the court who wanted to use the opportunity. Who the scholar nodded his head and agreed, it must be investigated. The emperor's face was calm. He asked the Minister of Works. What about you? A trickle of cold sweat ran down the Minister of Works back and he gave a pained smile. These two years the Ministry of Works have done things by Your Majesty's edict and regulations of the Hall of Governmental Affairs. When moving silver to the Ministry of Revenue, it never goes smoothly. But the public will not affect the private. I don't believe that the Ministry of Revenue is purposely making things difficult for the subordinates in my department. Perhaps the Ministry of Revenue did have trouble with the cash flow. It was a devastating criticism. If the Ministry of Revenue did not have a deficit, how could it have cash flow problems? Shortly following that, the Minister of Appointments, Yan Hengshu, made clear his stance and attitude toward the matter. He was responsible for testing officials and the appointment and dismissal of officials. He recommended the emperor to investigate. If there was a problem, there should be punishment. If there was no problem, it would reduce the pressure on the Ministry of Revenue. The emperor grew tired of hearing these evasive words from his officials. He furrowed his brows and used his finger to gently knock on the table on the bed before pointing to a few thin memorials. Memorials from Jiangnan, have a look. Eunuch Yao quietly went forward, received the memorials, and passed them among the officials' hands. For a while, all that could be heard in the royal study were the sounds of the officials flipping through the memorials and their gradually deeper breaths. After a long time, they finally finished reading all of the memorials. They raised their heads with shock on the faces. Xu Wu and Hu the scholar met each other's eyes and quickly twisted their heads away. Neither had hidden the deep concern in their hearts if what was written in the memorials was true. Minister Fan staring dot was too big. The Imperial Censor Gojing reports, in the matter of the palace treasury bidding, Fan's Yan chose a puppet named Zaya to rig it. At the same time, he provided large amounts of silver for Zaya to enter the doors of the palace treasury. On one hand, he had Zaya take six of the lots going north. On the other hand, he clashed with the royal merchants and forcefully raised this year's bidding. The emperor's calm voice once again rang out. He was as cold as if this matter had absolutely nothing to do with him. Gojing has suspicions about where the large amounts of silver fans Yan had come from. The emperor gazed at the various officials and smiled coldly. I dot am also suspicious. We will first put aside the matter of fans Yan allowing his subordinate to compete with the royal merchants. But which of you can tell me, this much silver, where did he get it from? Shu Su's throat felt dry, and he couldn't really speak. Only now did he understand why so many officials were sure that the Ministry of Revenue's deficit was such a large amount. Turns out it was because of Jiangnan. The Emperor's meaning was clear. Fan Xian was able to completely control the situation of the palace treasury opening bid, and his subordinate to secretly control six of the lots heading north because of the enormous amount of silver in this matter. It was probably dot from the Ministry of Revenue, transferred from his father's hand. The officials were silent. This time, it was not because they were afraid of offending Minister Fan, rather they were still lost in the shock. Looking at the inscription on the memorial, it should have arrived at the palace last night. The emperor would have known earlier that in the palace treasury bidding, Fans Yan had used some shady methods, but the Emperor's joy earlier in the court conference had not been an act. The Emperor's silent endurance, his deep plans and distant thoughts were not something the officials could guess at. Perhaps the Emperor very much liked Fans Yan earning money for him, but he didn't like Fans Yan using the court's silver to earn money for him. The court's silver could only be touched by the emperor. No one could use it without permission. It looked like this time the Fan family had rubbed the emperor the wrong way. In the silence, the second prince, who had only been allowed back into the royal study to listen at the side in February, smiled slightly and said, Father, I am something to say. Speak. The emperor said coldly. A slight and calm smile rose to the second prince's gentle face. He bowed to the officials and said in a quiet voice, 
Commissioner Fan and I have some resentment between us, but I dare not let that stop me from expressing my opinion. I believe, since Fan Xian is far away in Jiangnan with the identity as an imperial envoy, naturally there is no one to hold him back. His orders to his subordinates to steal the court's silver for his own use is a big crime. The Ministry of Revenue privately transferring national funds to Jiangnan is almost rebellion. He was setting the tone. Everyone knew that he was targeting the Fan family, but no one was able to refute anything. The great prince, who had yet to speak, suddenly opened his mouth and said, the Jiangnan censor Gozheng has an old grudge against Fan Xian. Back in the day, he had almost been punched by Fan Xian in the main hall of the Ministry of Justice. After saying this, he did not continue to speak. Shu the scholar listened to this, thinking, that's right, we must grasp this opportunity, otherwise if it is really as Gozheng said, not only will the Ministry of Revenue be in a big mess, Fans Yan and Jiangnan will also not have a good ending. If both sides descend into chaos, who knew how many heads would fall to the ground? The king court could not endure such a big upheaval again. He quickly followed the great prince's words and smiled, Your Majesty, about Gozheng, I am not afraid of my words being insolent, but I have to say one more thing. This person strives to achieve extraordinary things and acts rashly. Last year, he was demoted to Jiangnan by your majesty. It is difficult to say that he would not frame fans Yan because of his old grudge and purposely exaggerate this matter. When the words old grudge were said, no one could resist glancing toward the second prince, whom fans Yan had the oldest grudge against. Although the second prince's face maintained a clear and slight smile, his face was starting to heat up. He glanced at the great prince with hidden bitterness. Since his youth, he had been close to the great prince, he didn't understand why today his big brother had to stand on the side of the bastard. Chapter 384, The Matter of the Ministry of Revenue, 2 After Shu the scholar finished speaking, the emperor nodded. Even if he did have other thoughts, he could not say anything at this time. Last year, when Fans Yan made trouble for the Ministry of Justice, the court had the imperial censor of the left sent far away to Jiangnan. The excuse they had used was that he wanted to achieve extraordinary things, but his morality and conduct were not good. These words had come from the emperor's golden mouth, so it could now not be taken back. Then, the emperor had to console Fan Xian, but now the emperor wanted to use Gozheng's memorial to do some things but had been pushed back by Shu the scholar. He couldn't help but laugh at himself. Does this count as digging a hole and jumping in it himself? Didn't a eunuch go to Jiangnan? The crown prince jumped out and demonstrated his stupidity. He chuckled and said, Father, although we cannot trust the words of imperial since rate Gozheng, once that eunuch returned, we will know exactly what happened in Jiangnan. These words appeared to be dependable and a compromise, but in reality, they were rather sinister. Wasn't the eunuch's slander of fans young controlled by the Dowager Empress in the royal palace with a single word? The crown prince had confidence in this matter. The emperor glared at him and said in a cold voice, How can a eunuch's words be trusted? These are your ancestors' teachings, don't you forget. The crown prince timidly did not dare speak again. Eunuch Yao, who was serving to the side, was silent and did not speak. His expression did not change. We will wait for Zhu King's memorial. The emperor closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Everyone in the royal study nodded. They though the words of a proper governor of the road were naturally more trustworthy. Who the scholar, who had not expressed his opinion yet, finally spoke. Since it is so, then the Jiangnan matter should be temporarily put aside. If this matter is true. I dot cannot believe it. If it is like what the second prince said earlier, if someone truly privately moved the national funds to Jiangnan to profit from it, then it is indeed very close to rebellion. I believe that Minister Fan is certainly not such an insane person. However, since the Jiangnan imperial censorate and officials of other places have already sent up their memorials, the court cannot ignore it and ask no questions. The investigation into the Ministry of Revenue should begin to satisfy the court officials and wash clean the accusations Minister Fan has endured. The King Emperor still maintained a superficial respect toward these scholars in the Hall of Governmental Affairs. After muttering to himself, 
He nodded his head and suddenly smiled self-deprecatingly. Even if such a thing were done, it could not be considered insane. Only, I am a little curious, has anyone thought about exactly how this should be investigated? Although the slight smile floated at the corners of his mouth, the hearts of the officials in the royal study still felt a chill. They could hear that the emperor had a big objection toward Minister Fan, however, no one understood why the always favored Fan Manor would suddenly become somewhere that the Emperor did not like to see. But how did Anjian offend the Emperor? The Emperor's last question also struck the officials mute. They had no idea how to reply. In King Court, there were two systems used to control and govern. One was the Imperial Censor. The imperial sense rates who had grown used to the court floggings. Another was the powerful Overwatch Council. The imperial sense rate was an organization that prevented corruption and had the power to raise concerns based on rumors. That was why imperial sense rate Gojang dared to accuse fans Yan of privately shifting national funds to the treasury and competing for interest with the merchants without a shred of actual proof. The Overwatch Council dealt with the aftermath of situations, and their powers were immense. After receiving authorization from the Emperor, they could take any civil or military officials into court for questioning. Under normal circumstances, if a problem arose among the six ministries, the Overwatch Council went forward to investigate the matter. They could ask any official below the third level to that square and black building to have tea. Once the matter had been investigated to the level of the Vice Minister, they would go and ask for another Imperial Edict to be granted special privileges. Like this, they investigated level by level. Logically speaking, the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue should follow this procedure. The problem was that the Overwatch Council had the Director above and the 8th Bureau below. It had been many years since the unwieldy and movement Director Chen Pingping, so terrified the officials, had personally taken on a case. In the past year, he had almost exclusively stayed in Chen Garden outside of the capital and did not involve himself in matters. There was a new position between the Director and 8th Bureau. A very strong and special position, Overwatch Council Commissioner Fans Yan. Fans Yan had the power to mobilize the entire Overwatch Council. Other than the hiring and dismissal of personnel, his powers were not much different to Chen Pingping's. If the Overwatch Council were to investigate the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue, the officials in the Royal Study all shook their heads heavily. If the son investigates the father, it would be a miracle if any problem is found. If word of this got out, Northern Chi, Dong Yai, and everyone under heaven would probably consider this the greatest joke in the king officialdom. Shu the scholar gave a pained smile and said, Looks like the Overwatch Council will have to not be involved this time to avoid arousing suspicion. However, I do not know how to arrange for an investigation of the Ministry of Revenue. The elderly officials beside him all nodded their heads. Since they were going to investigate the Ministry of Revenue, then it had to be done seriously. Regardless of whether they wanted to knock down Fan Jian or the suspicions from him, they needed to treat this seriously. It could not turn into a child's game. The Emperor gave a cold laugh and said, why don't we follow the old rules? This Shu the scholar repeatedly grumbled, thinking, this issue was very clear. Emperor, why must you pretend to be confused? After hesitating for a while, he finally summoned his courage and said, Your Majesty, after all, Sir Fan Jr. is the commissioner of the Overwatch Council with full authority. If we have the Overwatch Council investigate the Ministry of Revenue. If this gets out, I'm afraid the impact would not be good. Just have the Overwatch Council investigate, the Emperor said coldly. At the same time, have the Ministry of Appointments, Ministry of Justice, and Supreme Court send people to help. Then you all can pick out a leader to lead this matter. Since we are investigating the deficit of the Ministry of Revenue, it is not a task just a few people can accomplish. The officials in the royal study understood. Sending helpers was a way to monitor the Overwatch Council. However, they did not understand why the Emperor wanted to forcefully drag the Overwatch Council into this puddle of muddy water since he had already decided to have the Ministry of Appointments, Ministry of Justice, and Supreme Court investigate the Ministry of Revenue.
As for the candidate to lead the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue, the officials also hesitated. They were aware that the chosen official would heavily offend the Fan family and all related officials. They also knew that if they could find a problem, it would be an important stroke on their reputation in the world. Two sides balanced each other out. In the end, no one dared to brave this danger and accept this hot potato. Even the enemies of the Fan family, the Minister of Appointments and Second Prince, were silent. The Emperor's mood was hard to gauge. He was smiling slightly, and his gaze slowly brushed over the officials and his son's faces. It landed on who the scholar's face. Who the scholar secretly sighed and knew that he could not avoid this difficulty. He had entered the capital earlier in the year and been elevated by the Emperor to a cabinet scholar in the Hall of Governmental Affairs. Although his literary reputation from many years ago remained, and his official reputation in the various roads had laid a path for him, he had not had any clear achievements in the central hub. The emperor had his heart set on him for no other reason than the fact that he had been in the capital for a short amount of time and had not yet become entangled with the various powers. On the other hand, he also wanted to use the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue to establish his own power in court. Who the scholar was grateful for the emperor's trust and heavy use. But he also had a faint hatred toward the emperor for making him offend the senior and junior of the Fan Manor. The great prince, who had said one line and then became silent again, now got ahead of who the scholar and said coldly, Father, I am willing to be the one to offend other. The emperor chuckled and waved his hand. You dot cannot. Why? The great prince furrowed his brows and said, I dare to use my head as surety that I will investigate fairly and not have any biases. Please trust in my loyalty, father. The smile on the emperor's face gradually vanished. If I have said you cannot do it then you cannot do it. You are the leader of the Imperial Guards JW1 but you want to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. Do you want to set a precedent for the military interfering in politics? The Emperor said the last line very severely. The Great Prince paused and could not continue to push. Although the Emperor had always liked that he spoke his mind, today he still put on the heavy hat of the military interfering with politics on the Great Prince's head, so he could only hesitatingly retreat who the scholar left his seat to accept his orders. I am willing to lead the matter of investigating the Ministry of Revenue. The Emperor nodded and turned to gaze at the Crown Prince. He said coldly, the Crown Prince will also go. Follow who the scholar and learn. In the matter of the investigation, who the scholar is the lead. You are just there to run errands. I will obey the edict. The Crown Prince's face was calm. But he was overjoyed in his heart. Although he was only an errand boy in name, once he sat in the Ministry of Revenue Yemen, who would not fear him as the Eastern Palace Crown Prince? Of the so-called leaders, other than who the scholar, it seemed there was a share for him too. The Crown Prince was quite happy. It looked like father's indifferent attitude toward him after the Hanging Temple incident was finally changing. The various officials accepted their orders and left and the royal study recovered its peace. The emperor drank his tea with a cold expression and rose to leave the bed. Eunuch Yao quickly placed a cloak on him. Seeing the emperor's mood was not very good, he carefully asked, Your Majesty, should we return to the palace to rest? No. The emperor headed out of the royal study. We're going to the little tower. Eunuch Yao started following and quickly caught up. He didn't say anything, but he found it odd. Recently. The Emperor had been going to the little tower more and more. Dot. Dot. Outside the palace gates, the officials, each with their own unease, raised their hands in farewell. Some were pleased and headed back to announce to their cohort that the Emperor was preparing to single out the Ministry of Revenue. Some were worried and preparing to go home and consider how they were going to face the court. Some were confused and remained in their confusion wondering how the emperor's thoughts could have made such a turn in just one day. Zhao Hu, come to my manor for a drink. Xu Wu did not fear anything. At the palace gates, he pulled on Hu the scholar, who had been preparing to leave one step ahead. Hu the scholar's mind was filled with the investigation and had no interest in drinking. He repeatedly begged for mercy. Lao Xu, 
Can't you see my luck is not bad today? I don't have the mood to make poetry with you. Both of them enjoyed literature and were leaders among the civil officials. The emperor did not forbid officials visiting each other in private, so their friendship was good. Although their difference in age was fairly big, they were often found together. Shu the scholar made a sign with his eyes, and Hu the scholar's heart moved and agreed to the suggestion. Dot. Dot. The divine heart is difficult to guess. Shu Wu's manor was in the south of the city and known for its quiet and seclusion. It was not very spacious, but the two of them talking tipsily under the pavilion did not have to worry about the spring breeze blowing their offensive discussions over the wall and being overheard by bystanders. Shu Wu sighed and said, I'm afraid it will not be easy for you as the official envoy. This is truly pleasing the brother but disappointing the wife. These words compared the emperor to the brother, and Fan family as the wife. It couldn't help but be inappropriate. Who the scholar laughed heartily and said, What kind of nonsense is this? Your surname isn't Hu JW2, perhaps you've drunk too much? It is not nonsense, Shu Wu said seriously and lowered his voice. Tell me what you are going to do? Looking at what the emperor wants, he definitely wants the Ministry of Revenue to be found to have some problem before he is willing to let it go. But if the Ministry of Revenue really did have a problem, then what about Minister Fan? Right now, the question is, does the Ministry of Revenue have a problem or not? Who the scholar's expression was worried. Given your detailed explanation of Sir Fan Jr.'s personality to me, looking at his ruthlessness in his clarity, and daring and arrogance hidden beneath his culture and elegance, for him to mobilize the Ministry of Revenue's silver to Jiangnan for the purpose of stabilizing Jiangnan and increasing taxes. It might actually be true. Putting aside whether it is true or not, in any case, every day that Jiangnan Governor Zhu King doesn't make clear his stance, it will be impossible for the court to the know the situation over there. As for the Ministry of Revenue deficit, Xu Wu smiled coldly. The Ministry of Revenue is the Yemen in charge of money. Wars need money, river repairs need money, disaster relief needs money, building gardens need money, running the spring examinations need money. All of the people in the world are stretching their hands toward the Ministry of Revenue demanding money like they are demanding a debt repayment. Adding to the fact that the princes and officials occasionally borrow a little, it is completely a mess. In every dynasty and in every generation, which Ministry of Revenue has had a completely clear account? It is impossible for the Ministry of Revenue to be clean, he continued in a cold voice. Minister Fan of our King Court started work as a low-level official in the Ministry of Revenue and has spent his life working in this ministry. To say something fair. The Ministry of Revenue under his management is already the cleanest and clearest Ministry of Revenue since the founding of this country. But even like this, if one were to be truly nitpick, how could one not find something? Who the scholar nodded his head. Minister Fan Jian was not like the previous Prime Minister Lin Ruofu. He was also different from Fan Jian, who was currently being arrogant in Jiangnan. Although there might be some dirty things below his hands. His actions were unusually subdued and honest. There was not much to say in terms of ability, and his positive official reputation was rare to see among officials. If such a minister of revenue were to fall in the political battle this time, the two scholars would feel it was a complete waste. However, the emperor insisted on showing his intention to make Fan Jian leave his position. Why was this? Xu Wu furrowed his old brows and very straightforwardly asked the question that had been running around the hearts of every official in the royal study. Who the scholar was silent. He raised his wrist and lifted a cup of liquor produced by the palace treasury and gulped it down. He didn't say anything for a long time. Xu Wu stared at his eyes. He knew that some of the judgments of this colleague who was much younger than him, were worth trusting. Forced by the other party's gaze for a long time, who the scholar sighed and slowly said, when nobody expected it, the emperor had this intention, it's truly. He seemed to be unable to find an adjective to describe the emperor. He could only smile bitterly and say, it is truly admirable. His Majesty investigating the Ministry of Revenue appears to be because of his inner suspicions raised by the rumors in the officialdom. But in reality, 
It is a great plan of three birds with one stone to move. Which three birds? Shu Wu asked. His beard was covered with alcohol. The first bird, of course, is the Ministry of Revenue. It is Minister Fan. If anything is found during the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue, no matter what, Minister Fan will have to resign and go home. The second bird is dot the eldest princess group of officials that initiated this, who the scholar smiled bitterly and said, If something goes wrong at the Ministry of Revenue and Fan Jian quits his position, how could Fan's Yang just kindly let it go? Rest assured, the Emperor would definitely not allow this matter to implicate Fan's Yan. After the incident, Fan's Yan would still be the commissioner of the Overwatch Council. Thus, the Overwatch Council would naturally proceed to carry out their revenge on the eldest princess group of officials. At that time, the Emperor would be forced by the pressure in the palace to be a mediator as he watched all this happen. He might even act as if he were consoling fans Yan and be forced to remove a few officials. Pressure from the palace? Shu Wu sighed. Why will the Emperor not care about the pressure from the palace after the incident, and stop being a mediator? The logic is simple. The Emperor could push both minister fans leaving and fans Yan's anger on to the eldest princess officials. As a ruler, the most important task is maintaining the balance between the officials in the court. Fans Yan's side first lost a prime minister and later lost minister Fan. In order to maintain the balance, the emperor must remove a large group of people from the other side. Who the scholar continued to speak, this kind of explanation. This intention of the ruler was the best method of convincing that old woman in the palace. Everything dot is for the king kingdom, is it not? He smiled slightly and laughed at himself. Shu Wu continued to sigh and asked, Then what is the third bird? Who the scholar gave him a slight smile and gazed at him. The third bird is naturally myself and you. Lao Shu. Shu Wu was greatly surprised. What are you saying? You accepted the order. And our discussion in the royal study was all public related. Fans Yan is not a muddled person. How could he be angry at us? What you said is exactly what I wanted to say, who the scholar said. Who told us to reveal our desire to pull Fans Yan into the cabinet in court today? The emperor's policies have long been decided. In the future, you and I will be on one side while Fans Yan's Overwatch Council will be the other side. Since we have other intentions in mind. The Emperor will naturally break our intentions. Even if Fans Yan does not hold a grudge against us because of this matter, how could he not hate the civil officials who accused Minister Fan in front of the whole court? After this matter, Fans Yan will certainly reject thoughts for an honorable official career path. You, I, and he will never have the chance to sit together in the Hall of Governmental Affairs. There are only guesses. Nothing more. Shu Wu laughed uncontrollably. Even if the divine heart is difficult to guess, don't make it so complicated. Who the scholar sighed helplessly. You wanted me to say it, and in the end, it is also you who laugh. These words are enough for us to lose our heads ten times over. Don't you go spreading it around after drinking. What? I am also a scholar. Shu Wu chuckled. I am just drinking with company. Suddenly his expression became startled. He furrowed his brows and asked, No, your first bird isn't right. You have to explain to me clearly. Why doesn't the Emperor want Minister Fan to keep managing the Ministry of Revenue? Why is he forcing Minister Fan to resign? Who the scholar sighed faintly and said, the reason is actually very simple. It is because the Emperor no longer wishes to see Minister Fan's face every day in court. The two leading civil officials of the King Court became silent at the same time. They sighed in their hearts and felt injustice on behalf of Fan Jian. It looked like with things like a dragon child, it was best to not to casually raise it. Dot. Dot. Before the two scholars began to feel wronged on behalf of the Minister of Revenue, Minister Fan, they had once thought about whether or not they should quickly inform the Fan Manor about the court's decision to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. Later, they thought Fan Manor had many connections in the palace, how could they not know? So, this thought faded. Indeed, not long after the conference in the royal study concluded, the supposed ill Fan Jian had already heard about it and knew that in tomorrow's court conference, the Emperor would officially open the investigation into the Ministry of Revenue. 
but he was not particularly worried. That solemn face had long lost the romantic air of the old days. It was simply cold and calm now. It's not three birds with one stone, it's four birds one stone. Fan Jian smiled slightly and said to the person opposite, As a loyal official of the emperors for almost thirty years, my admiration for him has always been constant and never lessened. As for today's matter, truly it is dot admirable, ah, admirable. Regardless of whether it was in front of others or not, if the emperor was mentioned, Fan Jian would always knit his brows calmly and be completely respectful. The two cries of admirable, admirable in the study were filled with great disrespect. What is the fourth bird? Fan Jian extended his right palm and opened it in front of this body. He bent his thumb in like he was learning a clever palm technique from somewhere. His four fingers pointed resolutely and unyieldingly toward the sky. The fourth bird is the Overwatch Council. The Emperor wants to see if when his order goes out, whether or not it will be like the past when he could easily control and move the terrifying Overwatch Council or if it is as he fears and already in Fan Jian's grasp. Zianer's progress has been too quick. Fan Jian thought of his son far away in Jiangnan and sighed. If the Emperor could not even direct the Overwatch Council, then the power the Fan Manor holds might be a bit too much. The corner of his eyebrow suddenly lightly arched up, and he smiled merrily. And, the Emperor wants to see what the true relationship is between Chen Pingping and me. All these years, the Emperor has absolutely trusted me and that old cripple, and you know why. Before fans Yan entered the capital, the old cripple and I never got along. If it was something he wanted to do, I would certainly not do it. If I wanted to do something, he would certainly oppose it. Fan Jian's expression dimmed, now that I think of it. It should have been because Chen Pingping and I were suspicious of each other. We suspected that the other party had played some dishonorable role in the event of many years ago. Once Zianer had entered the capital, he continued to explain in a quiet voice, there was a lot less suspicion between us, so the Emperor's suspicions of us increased. More importantly, Zianer was becoming more and more brilliant. Every time Zianer became more brilliant, and the Emperor thought of what happened that year and the current scene, he became a bit more objectionable toward me. The Emperor is jealous, and so I am leaving. In the end, the Minister of Revenue Fan Jian reached a conclusion, but he immediately had a frivolous expression on his face rarely seen today and laughed mockingly. However dot you know me, I am always silent and have a talent for acting, but in my bones. I am a very fierce person. He wants me to learn from Lin Ruofu and ask to resign to prevent everyone from tearing into each other and making it an ugly scene. But I refuse to quit. In any case, the Emperor is always going to care more than the officials in the matter of face. JW1, translation is Imperial Guards, but there is already a phrase for that. JW2, is nonsense. Who the scholar's surname is so he is punning on his name. The Situation Chapter 385 The Investigation and the Artist's Work 1. This is what you taught me, Fan Jian sighed. His fingers gently rubbed and felt the texture of a piece of paper. There was a portrait of a woman's head drawn in charcoal on the paper. Although there were very few strokes, it managed to capture vividly the woman's spirit and appearance particularly the eyes of the woman. They looked at Fan Jian with a kind of compassion, warmth. Cheek dot as he gazed at her. The picture the emperor had a great artist secretly draw of you is in the palace. Fan Jian gazed at the woman in the picture and said with a slight smile. But for me, your appearance has always been in my mind very clearly. Every time I want to talk with you, I cannot resist but to draw another one. To draw a cheeky you, a cold you, a hurt you, a happy you. There are so many of you, which is the true you. It's a pity. There is no way to ask you. Fan Jian sighed and brought the paper to the candle to burn. He watched the elegant complexion gradually disappear into the fire, and said in a daze, If, that year, the Emperor and I had not gone back to my old home in Danzu for the summer, I would not have met you, and dot nothing of the later things would have happened. Perhaps, I would still be the TARDIST lingering all day long in the brothels. The minister raised the corners of his lips and a small self-deprecating smile rose to his face. You said before, 
this world most needed artists, pity, in the end, I became the person in King Kingdom who stinks the most of bronze. The fire on the paper gradually burned to the center, leaving black ash and broken remains of paper. You've always seen me as the most trustworthy elder brother. Fan Jian spoke like this in the end. I am very grateful for your trust, so be at ease. Even if I don't have the power to change too much, at least I will determinedly stand in Jingdu and watch Zianer gradually grow up. A soft knock came from outside the study. Come in, Fan Jian said with a slight smile. Lady Li walked in carrying a cup of winter cherry. She gently placed it on the table. The worry on her face was impossible to remove. What had happened in the palace had long traveled home through Yi Gaipin. As the present mistress of the Fan Manor, she knew what kind of difficulty the old master was going to face in court tomorrow. Fan Jian glanced at her and sighed. Be at ease, the emperor will not be overly cruel. A slight anger flashed through Lady Liu's eyes. She gently said, if the emperor remembers your past friendship, he would not have been provoked by those small incidences and want to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. In the six ministries, who was clean all the way from head to tail. Fan Jian shook his head and said, You have to trust in the emperor. This matter involves major court politics, of course, it cannot be easily overlooked. Lady Liu knew that the old master did not want to continue this sorrowful topic and shook her head helplessly. Fan Jian lifted his hole and said toward the trace of the burnt paper on the desk, salutations to each, and then drank the winter cherry in one gulp. Lady Liu was startled. She wondered who the old master was saluting. Dot. Dot. On the second day, the court conference began again. As expected, the emperor strictly criticized the botched performance of the Ministry of Revenue in the last two years and pushed most of the blame of the crime on to the head of the Minister of Revenue. As the Minister of Revenue Fan Jian was still said to be sick and did not attend court, thus the Ministry of Revenue had no one to defend it. The leaderless group of Ministry of Revenue officials wretchedly endured the attack of the civil and military officials in court. The court sent out a public edict to begin the investigation into the Ministry of Revenue deficit. The Overwatch Council would be specifically carrying this out, with the Ministry of Appointments, Ministry of Justice, and the Supreme Court helping. Who the scholar from the Hall of Governmental Affairs would lead the investigation with the Crown Prince at his side to help out. There had been rumors of investigating the Ministry of Revenue so this matter did not surprise anyone. Once the circumstances were laid out, the officials still felt the thread of shock at such a big move. It looked like the emperor really did want the Ministry of Revenue to have some hard times. Who knew how Sir Fan Jr. in Jiangnan would react after learning about this matter? That afternoon, the officials from various departments united in the investigation began to establish their presence in the Ministry of Revenue's Yemen. There were also Jingdu garrisons responsible for transferring soldiers to guard the various warehouses, since the first adversary they investigated was the problem of the accounts of the seven departments of the Ministry of Revenue. For a while, the usually lively Ministry of Revenue Yemen beside the big locust tree became even noisier. There were far fewer officials who came to date to pick up money, but there were a lot more officials to check the money. The officials of the Ministry of Revenue anxiously invited in officials carrying the imperial edict to investigate. After an endless amount of trouble, they finally managed to get enough grand chairs to invite the various officials to sit down. Then, the left and right assistant ministers reported the circumstances of the running of the Ministry of Revenue for the past two years. Earlier, under the eye of the Overwatch Council, some began to clean out the accounts to be checked over later. Who the scholar and the crown prince sitting in the center did not make things difficult for the Ministry of Revenue officials. After some warm words and advice, they waited for the specific investigation to begin. However, the officials of the Ministry of Appointments and Ministry of Justice had a rare chance to make things difficult for the old men of the Ministry of Revenue. How could they pass it up? They intimidated with words and raised their voices in angry scolding. They directly called the Ministry of Revenue a place that sheltered evil people and abetted wrongdoing, and not somewhere to help the court control money and grains.
who the scholar couldn't stop himself from furrowing his brows. He knew that these two senior officials were not friendly with the Fan family at all. If he didn't keep a close eye on them, he was afraid the investigation would truly become a method for the other party to attack dissidents. Facing such an ostentatious scene, and looking at the important officials sitting in the hall, all of the officials of the Ministry of Revenue, including the left and right assistant ministers, felt a sorrowful mood and some kind of hopelessness. Minister Fan was not in the Yemen, and these officials of the Ministry of Revenue all felt a sense of being isolated by the court officials. They knew they were about to face the most critical juncture of their official careers, nay, of their lives. The Overwatch Council officials watched the work of organizing the accounts. They watched the old officials clean out more than seven large bamboo baskets of account books. They carried it with difficulty to the main hall. The Crown Prince was shocked by all the accounts and said with surprise, there are so many account books. To match them all one by one, how long will that take? The left assistant minister of the Ministry of Revenue said angrily, Your Highness, the Ministry of Revenue has seven departments matching the seven roads finances. There are another four minor departments matching to river works and such. There are three large warehouses, the Zai Mountain Documents Warehouse, and seven other warehouses that were transferred to the Ministry of Revenue by the Palace Treasury to manage. There are 17 warehouses near Jingdu. And there is also the Baoquen office and Kyanfa Hall that were responsible for minting money. As for storehouse Yemen for the watercourse affairs far away in Hangzhou and, this assistant minster blathered on and spoke for as long as it took to drink a cup of tea, and he didn't even stop for a break. The crown prince's mind became confused from the listening and quickly raised his hand to stop it. The officials' investigation the Ministry of Revenue were all stunned. They had always known that the Ministry of Revenue was responsible for managing money, but how could they have expected there to be such a complex structure set up beneath it? In order to investigate clearly, it looked like it wasn't going to be the work of a day or two. The assistant minister smiled superficially and said, Your Highness, at this time, portions of the Yemen accounts are still being tidied up. The seven large baskets here are the accounts of the Shangdong Road Silver Company because the minister had made me responsible a few days ago for tidying up the accounts for this road, so they were quickly moved out. As for the final accounts, it would need at least a dozen more days to clear them out. Rebuked by the assistant minister, the crown prince's face almost choked on his anger. I don't care how many accounts there are, and I don't care how many days it takes. Since the emperor has sent down an edict to investigate, you have all better move quickly. Otherwise, don't blame me reporting you for secretly obstructing the edict to investigate. No one expected this assistant minister to remain fearless and said, you Highness, naturally I do not have such daring. Since all of the officials are following the Emperor's orders to investigate, there has to be some method. Which department exactly are you starting with? Other than accounts, when will you begin checking the amount of stored silver in the treasury? A few million liang of silver? Even if it's counting dot it will still take a few days. The crown prince angrily swished his sleeve and didn't bother to argue with these wicked officials. In any case, when they found a problem, there wouldn't be good consequences for them. Who the scholar watched coldly from the main table and felt it was odd in his heart. The Ministry of Revenue under the management of Minister Fan was indeed different from the other ministries. Although the assistant minister was not a lowly position, it was interesting that he dared to clash with the crown prince openly. He knew that the assistant minister was angry today, and couldn't help smiling and explaining. The assistant minister used words are not wrong. Since we are investigating, of course, it should be done methodically and thoroughly. Furthermore, it is best if it did not disturb the day-to-day -day affairs of the Ministry of Revenue. All the state affairs up and down the country need the Ministry of Revenue to send out silver. If we overly disturb the affairs of the Ministry of Revenue in our investigation, I'm sure the Emperor would not be happy to see that. Assistant Minister Yu was clearly more respectful toward who the scholar. He bowed and said in an even voice, We will do as scholar instructs. Since they didn't know where to start checking, they first had to tidy up the accounts in the Ministry of Revenue, and then have specialist officials proceed with the auditing. The Overwatch Council, Minister of Appointments, 
and Supreme Court all had specialists. However, looking at the state of things, it would have to be at least the day after tomorrow before they could start. An official suddenly said to who the scholar, in my opinion, why don't we dot first take out the accounts concerning the Treasury and Jiangnan Department, and have a look. The entire hall fell silent. The Treasury was where the silver for the National Treasury was stored. If the Ministry of Revenue really did move the Treasury silver to Jiangnan as the officials in court had deduced, it would certainly be in the Jiangnan company account. This official had clearly targeted that department with the rumor in mind. Who the scholar started slightly but could not find any reasons to refuse. Furthermore, he wanted to know whether or not the Ministry of Revenue had the daring to privately move national funds down to Jiangnan. He and the Crown Prince discussed it briefly, and then ordered the Overwatch Council official go with the Ministry of Revenue official to first bring these two accounts. The first night there was no trouble. The second day there was no trouble. The third day there was no trouble. From the beginning. The King Court's investigation of the Ministry of Revenue fell into the endless ocean of the battle between accounts. The officials who wholeheartedly wanted to find a problem with the Ministry of Revenue were, in a flash, buried under the accounts that were more than the snow on King Mountain. In the spacious main hall, the accounts were piled like small mountains. Everywhere permeated the smell of dusty old paper and it restricted the breathing of some of the officials investigating. Their eyes were filled with the yellow paper and numbers that exhausted their visions. They caused these officials' eyes to blur and their hearts to become confused. The silent investigation halls were filled with the endless sounds of pages being turned, pitter-patter of the abacus, and occasional sound of tea being sipped. The silence and monotonous and repetitive sounds mixed together like an effective lullaby. The investigating officials, who sat on the grand chairs, were still physically and emotionally tired. They were full of spring fatigue, even though they did not need to personally face those terrifying and complicated numbers. They had been busy for a few days auditing the numbers on the accounts and still did not find any problem. They were still checking the numbers of the Treasury and Jiangnan Department accounts, and, for now, had not found any evidence that would be used to flip the Ministry of Revenue. This point caught everyone by surprise. Even who the scholar, who secretly leaned toward the Fan family, felt it was strange. With so many accounts, even if it wasn't intentional, there should at least be some careless mistakes for it to be normal, right? With such an oceanic volume of calculation work, had the Ministry of Revenue not made any mistakes at all in the past two years? It was said that if the water was clear, there would be no fish. If the accounts were clean, then they were fake. It was impossible for there be to such a perfect account in the world. If there was, then it had to be a fake account. Who the scholar thought this, and so did the investigating officials from the ministries of administration and justice also thought this. They began to check with more vigor. If they could find a single hole, they would be able to use a hair to move the whole body and pull the entire ministry of revenue from its horse. However, when this warm but tedious afternoon ended, the various officials buried in the accounts raised their heads and looked at each other with shocked eyes and shook their heads at their respective superiors. The countless threads of disappointment welled up in their hearts. There was not a problem, at least, not in the accounts of the Ministry of Revenue and the Jiangnan Department. The Ministry of Revenue they had investigated was very clean, strangely clean, as a naked as virgin after a bath. Dot. Dot. Something is not right. The Minister of Appointments, Yan Hengshu, who had rushed to the Ministry of Revenue, shook his head and said to Hu the scholar beside him, It is too unusual. Hu the scholar nodded. Yan Hengshu narrowed his eyes and said, After some thought, of course, there wouldn't be problems from just checking these two accounts. People are not stupid. They knew that the court suspected this area so, of course, they covered their tracks in this area very well. However, all of the accounts and treasuries are under our control. The items and numbers have to match up. If the Ministry of Revenue really does have a problem, it must be from covering their tracks. I think that our next step shouldn't be focused on these places. We should expand out. Check the seven departments and three treasuries. All of the accounts have to be brought together and checked. We will surely find something fishy among them. Who the scholar furrowed his brows and said, 
Not even talking about how difficult it would be, it would certainly take a lot of time. The crown prince listened at the side. Suddenly, a strange feeling welled in his heart. Have the officials beside him never taken advantage of the treasuries the Ministry of Revenue managed? How did they all have the daring to endlessly expand the accounts being checked? He thought about it and agreed with Yan Hengshu's suggestion. To be able to defeat the Fan family was what he most wished to see. News of the clean accounts traveled quickly from the Ministry of Revenue to the Fan Manor. The expression of the supposedly sick Fan Jian did not change, he only muttered to himself. When an artist makes fake accounts, of course, they seek perfection. Go investigate. The broader the better. The bigger the mistake you, find the better. Chapter 386, Fan Jian's Sword The investigation of the Ministry of Revenue continued. With the expansion of the battle lines and an increase in the number of people invested from each department, they finally found some traces they could use. The investigating unit finally felt at ease. They figured that no matter how many problems this loose thread could pull out, as long as they had a good start, then they would have broken through the flawless image of the Ministry of Revenue under Minister Fan. The first problem found was in the money for winter jackets sent to King Zhu in the fourth year of the King calendar. The amount was not very big. However, following this thread, it was like rolling a snowball. The shortfall that the Ministry of Revenue elders had hidden behind layers and layers became bigger and bigger. Gradually it lay exposed in front of the shocked eyes of the investigating officials. The Crown Prince and the Minister of Administration, Yan Hengshu, were overjoyed. They completely ignored who the scholars' requests to be careful and ordered their subordinate officials to dig deeper. From the county to the capital, they dug up this complicated line from the very roots. Gradually, the evidence they held in their hands closed in on Jingdu, which was to say, it closed in on the high-level officials in the Ministry of Revenue who could truly sign off on these things. The left and right assistant ministers who had been responsible for aiding the investigation in the Ministry of Revenue also began to feel alarmed and scared. This winter jacket account had originally had a plan, and they had once checked this project. They could never have expected that behind the mere hundred thousand liang for winter jackets, so many things could be pulled out. No matter whether it was the court or merchants who did creative accounting, the most common method was to take a big shortfall and break it into countless trivial fragments, then scatter them among giant projects like salt in a snowstorm and water in a flood, to disappear without a trace. No one had expected that the burden scattered out from the winter jackets had not been spread properly. On the contrary, it had given the game away. The left and right assistant ministers waited in the Ministry of Revenue Yemen for a whole night with ashen faces. When they left their posts that day, they decided that regardless of the comments, they had to go to the manner of the minister to ask for some ideas. Unfortunately, the Crown Prince coldly sent orders that before this matter was cleared up, the officials of the Ministry of Revenue were not to leave without permission. At the same time, he had the Overwatch Council and a few trusted aides keep an eye on the two assistant ministers. Ever since Fan Jian had entered official service, he had always worked in the Ministry of Revenue. Regardless of how the name of the Ministry of Revenue changed before and after the new policies, and no matter how the people and situation changed in the court, he had started as a lowly zone. Nine years ago, he was already the left assistant minister. At that time, the Minister of Revenue was old and sick at home. The Emperor greatly favored Fan Jian but also did not want to bypass ranks in his promotion. So, he had forced that old and sick Minister of Revenue to remain in his post and did not allow other powers to place people in. From then, he made it possible for Fan Jian to lead the entire Ministry of Revenue from the position of assistant minister. Time flashed and nine years had already passed. In those years, the King Emperor had favored the Fan Manor heavily, and Fan Jian had also used those years to make the entire Ministry of Revenue into an interest group like one solid piece of metal, a very quiet and inconspicuous interest group. When the Ministry of Revenue investigation started, all the officials in the Ministry of Revenue looked up to watch their minister. They knew that as long as he did not fall, nothing much would happen to them. But today, the Ministry of Revenue seemed to have sunk into danger. 
and the left assistant minister was unable to enter the Fan Manor. For the moment, the Ministry of Revenue officials felt fear and great unease. Dot. Dot. The left assistant minister could not come, but Fan Jian had run the Ministry of Revenue for a long time. He knew everything there was to know about the tense situation of the past two days. That very night he knew the Crown Prince and officials investigating had already found a fatal weapon in the Ministry of Revenue, the winter jackets of the northern soldiers. This won't be able to move me. Fan Jian sat in his study drinking winter cherry. He narrowed his eyes and said, no matter who goes to Kangzu to inspect it, the jackets on those soldiers' bodies are all of superior quality. No matter how bad I am, I would not make an issue on the bitter cold of northern soldiers. Today, he was not talking to a picture. The person sitting across from him was alive, a protege of the Fan Manor who had always received Fan Jian's deep appreciation, Serge and Chiuo. When Fan Xian punched the official in Jingdu, the person handling the matter was Serge Enchiuo. He was also a veteran official of the Ministry of Revenue. Since he handled matters well, Fan Jian decided to have him leave the Ministry of Revenue and had him use the particularly useful identity as a protege to work for him. Enchiuo thought for a bit and frowned. Those winter jackets from that year, not only were they not of inferior quality, on the contrary, even their workmanship was done very carefully. We were very particular about the material. The cotton filling came from the palace treasury workshops, and the cotton cloth used was first-rate productions from the palace treasury. Some of the other accessories had broken the rolls and used goods from Dong Yai. They can't say much about you on this point. But he began to speak and then stopped. Fan Jian smiled and said, You've been with me all these years. So you should know that I do things carefully. However, when analyzing the situation, I'm not afraid to think of the worst possible angle. Zheng Chiuo gave a pained smile and said, However, because the material used for that batch of winter jackets was very good, when the Ministry of Revenue discussed the price, it was set slightly higher. The money taken from the National Treasury dot seems to have been a bit too much. Speak more straightforwardly. Yes, Master. Zheng Chiuo said, the Ministry of Revenue took a lot of silver from that batch of winter jackets, and later it was used to fill in other areas. Correct, Fan Jian spoke without expression. A lot of silver was indeed taken from this batch of winter jackets. That was because that month's official salaries almost couldn't be paid. The Emperor did not know of this situation, and I couldn't bear to have this matter bother the Emperor. At that time, the silver sent from the palace treasury had not arrived and we also had to prepare the rewards for the second year of the Western Expedition Army. The Ministry had no other choice other than to take some money from this batch of winter jackets. He waved his hand and smiled. However, this amount of silver was not very big. It didn't manage to fill all the other places. Yes, Zheng Chiuo's face was full of worry as he spoke. The winter jackets is just one thing. This time the court is investigating the Ministry of Revenue. They lonely find more and more things like this as they look. If all these incidences of moving silver to fill in deficits are gathered in Jingdu, I'm afraid dot they'll eventually point to the batch of silver the Ministry moved last to Jiangnan. Fan Jian sighed and shook his head. It can't be helped. In reality. The silver moved to Jiangnan this time was mostly for the matter of the palace treasury opening bid. This actually has little to do with Anzi. I am the Minister of Revenue, so I also want the palace treasury's income to be a bit better. If the court doesn't use money to challenge the Ming family, how would the Ming family be willing to pay so much silver? He lowered his head and said quietly, actually, at the very beginning of this patch of silver being moved. I had gone to the palace and told the emperor. The study was deathly silent. Zhang Chiuo was shocked and speechless. He couldn't talk for a moment. The excuse for investigating the Ministry of Revenue was because the Ministry of Revenue had secretly moved national fines to Jiangnan to make a profit. The movement of this large cache of silver was actually known by the palace. Fan Jian very determinedly shook his head. His Majesty has his own difficulties. If it gets out that the court brought calamity to the wealthy merchant family, the Ming family, the court's reputation would be too ugly. However, everyone in the court is now guessing about that matter. The emperor had to, 
however unwillingly, investigate a bit, he sighed and said, since it is so, how can we make it public? Then what do we do? Cheng Chiuo said, appalled. The meaning of his words were clear. Since it was the emperor who had directed the matter, was this only to settle the discussions force Minister Fan to be the scapegoat? Fan Jian said calmly, as an official, of course, I have to help the emperor with his worries and concerns. The Ministry of Revenue's move in transferring the silver was too big this time. Eventually, it could not be hidden. If, in the end, the ministry is still found guilty, I'll have no choice but to stand before the emperor and resolve this matter. The methods with which the court used to defeat the Ming family were very dishonorable. Furthermore, behind the Ming family were countless court officials who acted as their supporters. For the sake of the stability of the king court, the specifics of these kinds of methods and the emperor's implicit consent could not be announced to the court. Cheng Chiuo's expression was moved and sorrowful. Minister Fan was indeed a loyal official. Even in the heart of the struggle, he was still thinking about protecting the emperor's dignity and interests of the court. Sir, just resign, Zhang Chiuo said painfully. It's already that time, so there is no need to keep holding on. Fan Jian shook his head with a lack of enthusiasm. Cheng Chiuo once again persuaded him painfully. I know you're not one to hang on to a post for riches and honor. Looking at the current situation, the emperor has already made preparations to stop the investigation after you resign. As long as you resign your post, it is something of an end for the matter of moving silver from the national treasury. I doubt the second prince and eldest prince's side will keep pursuing and attacking the matter. Who the scholar and Shu the scholar will also speak on your behalf. In regard to the question of resigning, Zheng Chuo, as Fan Jian's confidant, had actually already suggested it many times, but Fan Jian never agreed. He gently let out a breath and said, There's some things that once you do them, it is clear you can completely pull yourself out. But you just won't do them. Fan Jian lowered his eyelids and said, The Ministry of Revenue has always been managed by me. The court has gone to war year after year and spend countless amounts. Yangtze River has also needed repairs for three consecutive years. In this world, there is no one who knows better than me the emptiness of the national treasury. And, there is no one who understands better than me about the dangerous situation in front of us. All of the officials think we are living in a time of peace and prosperity, but how many know of the dangers that lurk beneath the magnificent landscape? But Dot Sir Fan Jr. has already gone to Jiangnan. As long as the palace treasury returns to the right track, the country's dangerous situation will be slowly resolved, Zheng Chiuo said anxiously. Fan Jian laughed in his heart. If the palace treasury situation was not completely in Fan Jian's control. If the emperor did not have the confidence to turn the King Kingdom national treasury situation around in two years, how could that emperor afford to let him resign? Although he thought this, his face was serious and pained. It is because Fan Jian has new control of the palace treasury and the situation is all very good, so at this moment, I cannot go, Fan Jian sighed. One, because it is the critical moment between sorrow and joy I dare not let go. I want to manage it for the emperor for another two years. Second, is an zi This child, he appears to be steady and cold, but in reality, he is very emotional and ruthless. If I really resigned, and it was because of the matter of moving money to the palace treasury. Given his personality, I'm afraid he would immediately quit his position in the Palace Treasury Transport Company and come back to the capital to find justice for me. Zheng Chiuo's face was full of shock. After thinking carefully, he found the minister's words had some logic. It's getting late. You should go back now. Fazian closed his eyes and said. As for the matters in the ministry, you don't have to be too worried. Although a single spark has lit the fire, one day it will burn itself out even this fire on me. But, if I can hold out for one day, I will stay another day. Furthermore, if this fire becomes larger, who knows how many people it will burn. Zheng Chiuo sighed and felt deep admiration for the fact that Minister Fan served the public wholeheartedly. He didn't say any more and left the study. He left Fan Manor and got into his own carriage. He returned to his home and laid down a piece of paper. He wrote a secret letter and handed it to someone in the manor. 
Then he laid on his own bed with his eyes wide open, unable to enter sleep for a long time. The Fan Manor's protege Zheng Chuo, until today, could still not decide what kind of person he was when he asked himself honestly. The Minister of Revenue Fan Jian was actually also not sure what kind of person his confidant was, but he was sure about one thing. Zheng Chuo was not his. Zheng Chuo was the Emperor's. Fan Jian wasn't sure if Zheng Chuo had been placed at his side through the Overwatch Council or if he had gone through the inner court. Regardless of how, Fan Jian knew that over these years, each of his actions has been watched by the man in the palace. So, over these years, each of Fan Jian's actions had been performed for him, including tonight's pain and righteous analysis. Fan Jian was not Lin Ruofu. He would not be knocked down by those closest to him. Beginning from that night many years ago, amid the drumming from the west side, he firmly made up his mind. He would never ever trust another person in Jingdu. The Ministry of Revenue had indeed sent a large amount of silver to Jiangnan, and this movement of silver had indeed received King Emperor's implicit consent. When the palace had become angry about this matter and ordered the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue, Fan Jian was beyond angry and felt a sense of absurd drama. He couldn't resist laughing out loud. This cache of silver from the National Treasury to Jiangnan was, of course, not for the purpose of clashing with the Ming family. Fan Jian knew that his incredible son had long gathered a shocking amount of silver. Only, he didn't know where this silver had come from. The reason Fan Jian had moved the silver to Jiangnan was to provide a cover for Fan Jian. Compared to Zhao Fan, Lao Fan's consideration of problems appeared to be more shrewd and ruthless. He didn't believe that Fan Jian could use the excuse of the Yi inheritance to convince the emperor which was why Zai Akifai suddenly had so much silver on hand. Every time he thought of this, Fan Jian couldn't help but sigh. Fan Xian was growing more and more daring in his actions. He even dared to ally with the King Kingdom's old enemy, Northern Qi. When the son caused trouble, the father had no choice but to provide a cover. Furthermore, to ensure that his son's plan would be able to proceed smoothly, the Ministry of Revenue had to put some money into the money house to ensure that it could be withdrawn at any time. This, was the complete truth about the Ministry of Revenue privately transferring money from the National Treasury to Jiangnan. In this plan, although the amount the Ministry of Revenue moved was large, what was spent was very little. The majority of the portion took a loop around Jiangnan and had long returned to the Ministry of Revenue. So, Fan Jian was not at all worried about the Crown Prince, Minister of Appointments, and those people actually finding anything. Furthermore, Fan Jian purposely let some slip to the river works Yemen. If the Emperor wanted a major official without any major slip-ups to resign, he only had to make some noise and then proceed with some clever hints to some people, and then the official had to resign. Prime Minister Lin Ruofu he had fallen under such an arrangement. Fan Jian did not want to accept the Emperor's arrangement, and he also didn't want to retire to Danzu so early, so he allowed them to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. Only by making the water muddy, could he better prove his own innocence. At the same time, he pricked the man sitting on the dragon chair through Zheng Chuo's mouth. Only if he believed Fan Jian was loyal, stupid, and dumb but still not replaceable, could Fan Jian continue to stand proudly in this Jingdu filled with darkness and watch Fan Jian grow with a kind and fatherly gaze. Is everything under control? Fan Jian carefully scrutinized the letter for his son. A man dressed in black stood in front of him and bowed deeply. Zheng Chiuo is like you on Bowen. Both are without sons or daughters. They're both probably people of the Overwatch Council. Fan Jian frowned and said, Yuan Bowen is really of the Overwatch Council? No wonder my in-laws had fallen so quickly. The black-clothed man said in a deep voice, But Zheng Chiuo has a nephew. According to my investigation. It should be his own son. However, he is afraid of the palace using this child to threaten him so he hasn't dared to claim him. Fan Jian's eyebrows twitched and he smiled slightly. Very good. We can threaten him now. The black-clothed man nodded. His hands were flat by his side. The man had a line of old calluses running down from the webbing between his thumb and index finger on his right hand. If Fan Jian had seen this detail, 
He would certainly have thought of the callous as J.O.D.A. and the other Tiger Guards had due to long years of holding the hilt of a long knife. Fan Jian gazed at the black-clothed man and said, There really isn't much to do following me. These years you've been quite unoccupied. Don't be resentful of me. The black-clothed man smiled and said sincerely, Eleven years ago, I failed in protecting the royal family and allowed a serving girl beside the Empress Dowager to be killed. I was certainly a dead man. It is all thanks to you remembering our past relationships that you secretly saved me. If it were not for your saving grace, I'm afraid I would have long been under the yellow earth counting maggots. Fans Yan smiled and shook his head. Your personality is just this frivolous. Not like a tiger guard at all. No wonder you were the emperor's least favorite back then. Then he said, keep an eye on Zhang Chiuo. When need be, send his son's right hand to his room. Chapter 387, Picking Up a Giant Snowball The investigation of the Ministry of Revenue made great progress. The officials of the three departments were pressed closer and closer to their goal. The crown prince's expression also became more and more boastful and he would sigh occasionally when in conversation with who the scholar. No one knew whether he was sighing about the purge that the Ministry of Revenue was facing or the stronger and stronger spring. The description of rolling a snowball was appropriate. In Kangzhou, where there was snow year-round, the winter jackets of the tens of thousands of soldiers did not bring too much trouble for the Ministry of Revenue. But from there, Traces could be followed to the capital and that led to other old incidences. All of the clues were gathered at the Ministry of Revenue. The deficit became larger and larger. King Kingdom's wound, which the Ministry of Revenue officials had always carefully hidden, was bloodily torn apart and revealed for the officials to appreciate. After the investigation unit went into the palace to report, they increased the intensity of the investigation. At this point, even who the scholar knew that the Ministry of Revenue could not be protected anymore. If Fan Jian quickly resigned right now, the court might still leave the Fan Manor some face for Fan's Yan's sake. If this confrontation went on, it would not be as simple as Fan Jian losing his post. Although who the scholar and the civil officials were terrified by the Ministry of Revenue's deficit. They also did not wish the court to make too big of waves. They also did not want the temporarily balanced court to have some kind of slant. So, through some channels, they conveyed kindness to the Fan Manor. As long as Minister Fan personally asked to resign, who the scholar and Shu the scholar were willing to jointly guarantee his safety. This was the only kindness of these officials. For Fan Jian, a veteran official who had followed the emperor for almost 30 years, once he had decided on an idea, the response he made would be incredibly stubborn. The Fan Manor expressed gratitude for the kindnesses the various manners secretly made, but as for the kindness themselves, Fan Jian himself still did not make any specific responses. He had not entered the palace crying and sobbing to the emperor. He also did not submit his resignation. In fact, he was still ill at home and his illness did not seem to be taking a turn for the better. The officials knew that Minister Fan was not sick, and the palace also knew. But, the emperor did not send the royal doctors and eunuch Hong to check up on the Fan Manor. Since the palace that had not treated the Fan family fairly, the palace tolerated Fan Jian's way of showing resentment through his illness. In the following days, the crown prince sat in the Ministry of Revenue and watched the people below investigating. It forced to the scholar to also personally come to watch. The investigating and the investigated were both quite tired. On this day, the work of investigating the Ministry of Revenue made another breakthrough progress. The silver in the accounts did not match that in the national treasury. The huge amount of deficit pointed in four directions to four unremarkable officials. Finally, they found specific people executing the orders and specific incidents of the deficit. Hearing this report, the crown prince's eyes lit up, but his expression remained very calm. He was thinking, if we follow these officials all the way up, will we not pin you into a dead end, Fan Jian? Wait until we trace it all the way to Jiangnan. The court will remember that 20 million liang of silver that was to Fan Yan's credit. But the corresponding crime would force fans Yan to suffer all of the consequences. When Hu the scholar heard the names of the four officials, particularly the last one, 
His eyes also lit up, his expression remained calm. He thought Minister Fan's methods were truly very exquisite. It looked like he and Shu the scholar's worries these days had been unnecessary. The crown prince was young and did not have the same meticulousness of thought that Hu the scholar had. He also did not have Hu the scholar's ability to remember all that passed before his eyes so he did not see the trap within. Under the mindset being able to successfully capture their enemy, he danced with joy and, without any thought to his reputation, ordered his officials to focus their attack on this problem. Although the Minister of Appointments stood secretly on the side of the eldest princess and the second prince, in front of this positive situation and with the crown prince leading the way, he cheerfully joined in. He stood beside the crown prince and cheered. Although he didn't personally participate, his cheers rang out without stopping. Who the scholar watched from the side and smiled secretly. Dot. Dot. The investigation of the Ministry of Revenue had reached a critical juncture. In the main hall, deep in the courtyard, the crown prince's proud laughter rang out. In his hand, he held the official's confession. With an imposing and tyrannical aura and a cold light growing gradually in his eyes, he forcefully questioned the Ministry of Revenue official in front of him. Speak. Where did the 400,000 liang of silver in this account go? It was deep into spring, and the weather had become hot. The wretched sixth-level official kneeling in front of the others was already soaked through with sweat and the color of his official robes had become dark purple. Hearing the crown prince's strict yelling he wanted to cry but had no tears. He was only an agent, how could he know where the minister had moved this cache of silver? The crown prince saw the official's frightened state and glanced at him with irritation. He suddenly remembered his goal and softened his voice. The move for this cache of coins was signed by you. You have to explain where this silver went next. The court's silver cannot just randomly be used like this. This official could not stand the pressure of the questioning and stammered. It was unfinished work left by the vice director of Jiangzuo. The Ministry of Revenue had seven departments, and each was managed by the director and the vice director, fifth level officials. The vice director of Jiangzuo was Fang Li, a relatively high level official in the Ministry of Revenue. His name, along with the other three directors in the Ministry of Revenue, were targets the Crown Prince's investigating officials had already found. Today, they were to be questioned in court so the Ministry of Revenue could no longer deny anything. The Crown Prince was quite pleased with this sixth-level official's behavior, although his face remained dark. He said in a cold voice, Go wait below and listen. The official left the hall in a fluster and sullen. He didn't know what he was about to face. Send in the person called Fang Li. The Crown Prince was in high spirits and did not notice that his actions had already overstepped the regulations. In his ordering of people around, he did not consult the opinions of the nominal leading official, who the scholar. In a moment, that vice director of the Ministry of Revenue, Fan Li, walked in. He bowed to the various officials standing around. His bearing was proud, and he did not seem to know what was about to happen. The crown prince looked at this person's face and found his heart thudding. He felt he looked a bit familiar. He took a closer look and found that he seemed to have heard this official's name somewhere before. Fan Li had already come into the hall, and the crown prince didn't have much time to think more. Who the scholar and Yan Hengshu still maintained a sly silence. They gave the entire stage to the crown prince and let him play on it alone. The crown prince looked at the two officials beside him and huffed quietly thinking. In the future, this whole world would be his. What was it to question a few Ministry of Revenue officials? As long as it could implicate Fan Jian and connect all the deficits with the silver in Jiangnan. Even if it looked ugly right now and damaged the dignity of the Eastern Palace, he could not worry about that right now. He slammed the table and said in a cold voice, Report your name and drank. The Ministry of Revenue Vice Director of Jiangzuo started and his lip trembled slightly. His face was full of shock as he gazed at the crown prince. He had not expected that the crown prince would be so severe to him. His face flushed red. He raised his clasped hands with difficulty and said, I am the Ministry of Revenue Vice Director of Jiangzuo, Fang Li. The crown prince frowned and had an Overwatch Council official hand over the file found a few days ago as well as the confession of the official who signed the silver transfer. He asked darkly, 
Tell me, where did this 400,000 liang of silver go? Fang Li looked like he had been struck by lightning. He stared at the crown prince like an idiot, or perhaps dot he stared like the crown prince was an idiot. He stammered for a long time before he said in a trembling voice, Your Highness, I truly don't know. The crown prince frowned with a look of worry for the country and its people. Just saying you don't know dot I'm afraid dot won't be enough. Now Fang Li was truly stunned. Particularly when he heard the crown prince say I'm afraid with a twist, his heart dropped into an ice vault. He understood what he heard and saw. The crown prince not only forgot who Fang Li was, he had completely forgotten about the 400,000 Liang. He was sorrowful in his heart. He laughed self-deprecatingly and helplessly, after all this, what did he count as? He was just a small fry in the Ministry of Revenue. He had worked for the Crown Prince before and drunk with him at the same table. Why would the Crown Prince need to remember his normal and unremarkable face now? What was that 400,000 Liang for? That year, the Crown Prince liked women. He liked to spend money on women, repair gardens for women to play in, and reward his trusted aides, who was the Crown Prince. He was the future master of the country. Eventually, all the money in the world was his. If he used it, he used it. Why would he waste his thoughts to remember where it had come from? Fang Li's mouth was dry. He stared speechlessly at the crown prince. He wished that the other party would be able to remember something to prevent this absurd and unbelievable situation from continuing and developing to a point of no return. Unfortunately, the crown prince did not seem to notice the gaze of this Ministry of Revenue official. The investigation work was still ongoing and the vice director of the Ministry of Revenue knew that this matter was too big. Once he spat out the truth in front of all the officials, it could not be taken back again. He determinedly gritted his teeth and refused to say another word. The crown prince felt this was very strange. He frowned as he looked at the familiar-looking official. He didn't understand where the other party got their daring from. The confession was before them yet he said not a word. Was the other party. Did they want to take all the blame for Fangian, or... Has there always been something more to this matter? The long silent minister of appointment, Yan Hengshu, suddenly aggressively slammed the table and said severely, This bastard sure is daring. Come, drag him out and question him properly. He turned his head and asked, Sir who, can corporal punishment be used? Who the scholar, who had been staring at the ants fighting in front of his shoes the entire time? seemed to only just realize what was happening. He opened his pair of listless eyes and said, Ah, use corporal punishment? The last word of use corporal punishment was said without much tone, and it wasn't clear whether it was a question or consent. Yan Hengshu impatiently raised his clasped hands and said, All will be as you order. An official of the first bureau of the Overwatch Council took the order and prepared to go forward to drag out this stubbornly quiet vice director. The stubbornly silent Fan Li heard that he was going to prison and the words use corporal punishment. In his fear, he finally couldn't control his state of mind and gave a wretched cry, I've been wronged. I was a graduate in the first year of the King Calendar and became the vice director in four years. It is all because of the power and might of the royal grace. How could I do such an illegal thing? This succession of sentences spewed forth, but he truly had some ability. In such a tense moment, he still only gazed at who the scholar while he explained himself and refused to even glance at the crown prince. When the always silent Yan Hengshu jumped out and suggested using corporal punishment, a sense of oddness deepened in the crown prince's heart. When he heard Fang Li's explanation, he felt a chill go down his back that pierced right to his bone. A graduate in the first year of the King Calendar, the son of the previous director Go of the Board of Rights, Go Bao Kun, who had always had good relations with the Crown Prince was a graduate of the first year of the King Calendar, Fang Li and Go Bao Kun were the same year. Countless memories resurfaced in the Crown Prince's mind. In a flash, he remembered many things. That year, because of Go Bao Kun's recommendation, he had condescended to have had a meal with a low-level official of the Ministry of Revenue called Fang Li. Through the arrangements of the eldest princess, he had the other party receive two promotions in the Ministry of Revenue. Later, the Crown Prince had hinted to Go Bao Kun, 
and this trusted aide of his and Fang Li had secretly moved a cache of silver from the Ministry of Revenue for his own use. Only, many years had passed, so no one knew where that cache of money had been spent. Go Bao Kun had long died somewhere, and the Crown Prince had forgotten all about this matter and Fang Li, who would have thought he would meet this person again while investigating the Ministry of Revenue, had dot that 400,000 liang of silver flowed into his own pockets. The Crown Prince's face was filled with shock as he watched Fang Li being dragged out of the hall by the Overwatch Council. A bitter taste rose in his mouth and his chest began to tighten. He knew that this official could not be questioned by the three departments, otherwise, there would be a big problem. He understood that he had already made the stupidest mistake and could not let this mistake continue. He glared fiercely at the Minister of Appointments, Yan Hengshu, who stood beside him with a slight smile on his face. He roared out, Wait! The manner of the Director of the Board of Rights, who had been knocked down by Fan Zhan, was, in name, close to the Easter Palace. In reality, they were the eldest prince's trusted aides. The crown prince had discovered this the night His Highness recited poetry. Since the other party was the eldest prince's people, Yang Hangshu knew of the matter of him borrowing money from the Ministry of Revenue through Gobeo Khan. The crown prince thought fiercely that it was fine that this old man hadn't reminded him, but he wanted to strike him while he was down. Your Highness. What's wrong? Yan Hengshu gazed at him with a slight smile. The crown prince was speechless for a moment. It was impossible to stop. He had single-handedly begun to investigate the case with great fanfare. In the end, he had implicated himself. How could he wrap this up? He frowned and narrowed his eyes. It looks like this official has something to say. It won't hurt to ask him first. Yan Hengshu smiled and nodded his head who the scholar naturally also did not have any objections. Fang Li, who had just narrowly escaped death, knew that the crown prince had finally remembered him and let out a big breath. When he met the crown prince's worried gaze, he knew that today's matter was truly difficult to handle. A vicious thought flashed through the crown prince's mind. He suddenly remembered that Go Bao Kun had long disappeared somewhere. As long as he, himself, refused to admit anything and found a way to have Fang Li keep his mouth closed, then he could wash himself clean. Having thought through this point, he said with a warm expression, Fang Li, think carefully before you tell us where this silver went. I am investigating this case by imperial edict, of course, I will not let go of a corrupt official, but dot I will also not wrong a good official. Hope flashed through Fang Li's eyes. He knew the crown prince was hinting to him to randomly accuse someone else. Since this 400,000 Liang account had been dug out, there was no way to close it in front of Hu the scholar, Minister Yan, and the officials of the Supreme Court and Overwatch Council. He knew it could only be like this. He lowered his head. His eyes darted wildly as he made up his mind. He only had a moment of time but he didn't know who to push it onto. After taking the money back then, he had secretly destroyed the accounts, but it was difficult to give this large amount of money another purpose. Yan Hengshu glanced at the crown prince and sighed in his heart. He knew that the other party was preparing to sacrifice a pawn, and this pawn seemed to be prepared to be sacrificed. It was a little unexpected. How could such a useless individual such as the crown prince have made this low-level official, Fang Li? so obedient. It was clear that the crown prince had not recognized this person earlier. He didn't understand that in Fang Li's heart, the crown prince was the one to inherit the throne one day. As long as he could survive this matter, he would always have a chance to turn his fortunes around. However dot for 400,000 Liang, why would the emperor take pity on the life of a low-level vice director? Fang Li had clearly not thought about this point. Dot. Dot. Not letting Fang Li think for too long under the inspecting gazes of the hall of officials, a slightly tired voice had already helped him answer and resolve his dilemma. At the same time, it looped a chain around the crown prince's body. I recorded this transaction. That year the board of rights sent out orders because the emperor had written an imperial edict to repair the buildings in various locations for the autumn examinations as well as the school residences. 
so he needed the Ministry of Move Money. Altogether there were 14 transactions for a total of 400,700 liang of silver. The silver had already been sent to the Board of Rights. They should have the receipts. However, I did not handle this matter myself. I will go check to make sure in a moment. It was all carried out according to the King Law and Court regulations. Please don't make things difficult for my poor subordinates. As for whether or not there is a problem with this cache of money, word just needs to be sent to the various provinces to see the conditions of the autumn examinations and school residences, and everything will be clear. Minister Fan, who had been sick for many days, finally dragged his weak and ill body to the Ministry of Revenue Yemen. He stood near the door and recounted each transaction weekly to the officials in the hall. The official from the first bureau of the Overwatch Council quickly went forward to help, while Hu the scholar led Yan Hengshu and the investigating officials to quickly rise and bow. Although there were special investigation officials, not a single person dared to show a trace of disrespect. This Minister of Revenue who had led the Ministry of Revenue for nine years, defended his subordinate as well as explained word by word exactly where the silver had gone. As long as it was checked, the truth of this matter would come to light. The Crown Prince's face grew pale, and his eyes began to wander. Chapter 388, With Reason and Heavenly Might, Minister Sir Hu, who the scholar's face was filled with a slight smile as he welcomed Minister Fan. The officials responsible for investigating the Ministry of Revenue all gathered around and expressed their condolences to the recovered minister. The Minister of Appointment, Yan Hengshu, was not an exception. His old face was filled with sincere concern and worry. The Overwatch Council investigating officials had carefully helped block Minister Fan from the breeze blowing through the door. They were eager to learn whether or not the court was truly investigating the Ministry of Revenue. Did the Emperor really want Minister Fan to resign? As long as Fan Jian was in court, and the Emperor did not tear apart this bond of being Milk Brothers. And as long as Fan Xian was still alive, no official in the court dared to treat Minister Fan lightly. Thus, the current scenario had a preposterous sense of comedy. The Minister of Revenue, who was being investigated, was instead being asked after by everyone and carefully protected, particularly the investigating officials from the Overwatch Council. Led by Mutai, the first bureau had always been, and still was, the Yemen fans Yan directly managed. He was their superior's father. So how could they dare to do otherwise? The crown prince's face turned green and white. Watching the scene in front of him, a great sense of unease welled in his heart. Fan Jian had claimed illness for many days and did not come to the Ministry of Revenue. Today he had arrived and seemed to have attracted everyone's gaze. This usually secretive and unassuming official seemed to have some kind aura around him. He was the crown prince, the future ruler of the King Kingdom. But when faced with Fan Jian, he still had to unwillingly stand up. A warm smile was pushed onto his face and he comfortingly said, Minister, are you feeling better? The Crown Prince was not afraid of Fan's yawn, and he did not care about the Overwatch Council. As one of the royal family, and particularly as the inheritor of the Dragon Chair, it was necessary for him to show a certain respect. The old Fan family and their old Lee family's relationship was too deep. In Danzu, there was still the old woman watching from a distance. The emperor was not sure how his father felt toward that wet nurse. Fan Jian gave an ashamed smile and said, The matter of the Ministry of Revenue all began because of me, yet your highness and sir who had to tire yourselves. It is truly my wrongdoing. Everyone exchanged some pleasantries, and each returned to their own seats. Although Fan Jian belonged to the side being investigated, there had been no public memorial edict targeting the Minister of Revenue. He made no secret of it and sat in the dead center, not letting anyone take over his position. This was the Ministry of Revenue. This was Fan Jian's territory. Dot. Dot. After everything had recovered its peace, only then did everyone turn their gazes to the Vice Director Fan Li. No everyone's eyes were the same. Yan Heng's shoes were filled with schadenfreude. The Crown Prince was hesitating. Who the scholar was cold. The Overwatch Council officials watched with furrowed eyebrows. Only Minister Fan's face was peaceful as if he never had the thought about how many this Fang Li could implicate. At this point in the proceedings, 
the Crow Prince had understood everything. Fan Jian was a shameless, sly, and silent of Fox. When the court began to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. Actually, it began a few years ago when the Crown Prince had stretched out his and for a loan. Fa Jian had coldly and clearly saw this scene and then had used ruthless methods to quietly suppress the matter. No one found out about it. In doing so, he had purposely left a nondescript and unassuming little tail. Once it had been gently shaken, it would land on one of the seven departments. Thus, not only had he helped the crown prince hide it, he also got hold of something big to use against him. Most importantly, this kind of hiding also hides the officials on the crown prince's side. From then on, this cache of 400,000 Liang became nothingness and was covered up unnaturally well. So well, that even Fang Li thought there wouldn't be any problems. Adding to it was the collapse of the Board of Rights and the Crown Prince's trace of stupidity. Only Fan Jian was clear about the entire process, and he was unusually shrewd and ruthless. He didn't directly throw this out to attack his enemy, rather, he placed the loose thread in the wild and left a slight trace. For example, the winter clothes the soldiers wore in the northern snow and completely unnecessary siege machines on the southern battle lines. When the court began to investigate the Ministry of Revenue, they found this loose thread and began to gently tug. In the, they pulled out their own belt. This was a ploy that had been planted for years. Fan Jian did not have to do anything. He only had to wait until he was being threatened and create some kind of situation then have someone pull on their long-forgotten belt with strength. It was a good ploy. The investigation targeting the Board of Rights had already begun. Although after Go Yu was strangled in the Imperial Prison, the Board of Rights experienced a huge change of personnel. The documents were in a mess. Under the strong abilities of the court's investigating unit and Overwatch Council's meticulous search, the transfer form the Board of Rights had made out and receipts the Ministry of Revenue had always secretly kept were matched against each other. That 400,000 Liang of silver had indeed been sent to the Board of Rights. The question was, where had the Board of Rights sent the 400,000 Liang that had been split into 14 batches to repair the autumn examinations and student residences? who the scholar had long patrolled the various places under heaven and afterward joined the Hall of Governmental Affairs. He knew that the various student residences in the various provinces and roads were still rambling and broken down. Many of the autumn examination buildings were even leaking rain. Thus, his expression became uglier and uglier. He asked the Board of Rights official in front of him, who can tell me? Where did this 400,000 Liang go to? Who the scholar turned his body slightly. He glanced at the crown prince and sighed. Everyone in the hall was aware of the situation in the court a few years ago. The Board of Rights had always been the Eastern Palace's back garden and did not have the daring to falsely request 400,000 Liang and spend it. Everyone could guess that this cache of silver must have flowed toward the Eastern Palace. Since it has been traced to the Eastern Palace, it seemed that it was difficult to proceed with the matter. Who the scholar muttered to himself for a moment then said, The most pressing problem at hand is to investigate the whereabouts of this 400,000 Liang of silver. The crown prince felt his heart jump, but a warm smile was on his face. Sir whose words are logical. Mutai of the first bureau of the Overwatch Council did not have the privilege to sit beside these officials. So he was standing to the side. He looked at Fan Jian's expression. He suddenly opened his mouth. The silver did reach the Board of Rights, however, the official that handled this matter died in the autumn examination case the year before last. The Crown Prince was silent. Go Yu was dead. Go Bao Kun was gone. Now the Overwatch Council had confirmed the death of the person who had handled this matter. Even if the eldest prince's side knew that he had some connection to this 400 000 Liang of silver, they would not be able to find any evidence to give to Hu the scholar, so his was slightly reassured. Although reassured? He still couldn't help feeling a bit sorrowful and angry. And, why did you do this? Unexpectedly, Mutai's next words made a chill run through the crown prince's heart. He only heard him say, but, there are always traces to be found. Scholar, 
Do you think the Overwatch Council should go investigate the Board of Rights? Investigate the Board of Rights? Everyone in the hall was startled. He wanted these wolves and tigers of the Overwatch Council to investigate the Board of Rights? The court investigating the Ministry of Revenue would clearly make Sir Fan Jr., far away in Jiangnan, very angry. If the Overwatch Council investigated the Board of Rights under Sir Fan Jr.'s control, the poor officials of the Board of Rights might not survive. However, Mu Tai's request seemed appropriate. Fan Jian slowly stroked his beard. His face was expressionless but he was thinking that the brain of this trusted date of Enzis seemed to work much better than before, he even managed to guess my intentions. Fan Jian's intentions were simple. If the Ministry of Revenue wanted to protect itself, it had to drag out the battle lines and pull in more ministries. The Board of Rights was only the beginning. After all six ministries had problems found with them, the extremely wise emperor couldn't remove all six ministers. The Minister of Appointments, Yan Hengshu, glanced at Fan Jian and felt great admiration for this old fox. He quickly shook his head and rejected the idea. The court explicitly stated to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. It would not be good for the ripples to extend too far. Fan Jian smiled superficially and said, Makes sense. Makes sense. Everyone could hear the mockery in these two repeated words. Yang Hangshu's face flushed red. He knew his objection made no sense since the Ministry of Revenue's deficit implicated the Board of Rights. Of course, it should be investigated. Who the scholar's expression was also very pained. Trying to mollify the situation, he said, Let's discuss a bit more. If he let go and asked for an imperial edict to have the Overwatch Council investigate the Board of Rights, then in the end it would certainly come to the Crown Prince. Before they went to the palace and asked for the edict, as the leader of the investigating officials, who the scholar did not dare make this judgment, the Crown Prince suddenly gritted his teeth and said, The matter of the Board of Rights will eventually have to be investigated. However, there has to be an order. The matter of the Ministry of Revenue deficit has not yet been resolved. If the investigation is expanded too broadly, it will likely be an obstruction to His Majesty's edict. Fan Jian remained smiling slightly and said, Your Highness makes sense, makes sense. Who the scholar sighed in his heart and said, For the matter of the Board of Rights. We'll go the palace later to listen respectfully to the imperial wishes. We will follow the crown prince's wishes and continue with the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue. Dot. Dot. If the investigation continued, there would certainly be more problems found with the Ministry of Revenue. That 400,000 was just the tip of the iceberg. The crown prince did not believe the Fan family could be so clean in the Ministry of Revenue. Of course. The Ministry of Revenue was not clean. There was more than this one loose thread of the Crown Prince that Minister Fan had planted in his ploy. As the investigation into the Ministry of Revenue went deeper, a few other ministries were successfully dragged by the Ministry of Revenue under the water. The Supreme Court was the first among them. The face of its long silent official immediately changed color and was very awkward. The Ministry of Revenue didn't have messy accounts. It had too many secret accounts. One after another of the deficits pointed to the use by some part of the court. At the end of the investigation, even such an innocent yeoman like the Imperial College didn't escape. Minister of Appointments Yan Hengshu began to be on his guard. Although there had been problems found with the Ministry of Revenue at this time, nothing had implicated the eldest princess and the second prince, because on his side, the money came from the palace treasury. However, Fan Jian and the Ministry of Revenue were so well prepared, who knew if they would use some kind of way to harm the second prince. We'll stop here for now, Yan Hengshu furrowed his brows and said. After we ask for an imperial edict, we will continue tomorrow. Makes sense, Fan Jian continued to smile and say these two words. Who the scholar's face was cold as he watched the officials of the investigation unit. He wondered how the court have become corrupt to this extent. If the emperor made up his mind to keep investigating, Minister Fan would have to resign. As long as it didn't get to Jiangnan, he wouldn't be too responsible. However, a large portion of the other officials in the court were probably going to fall. Dot. Dot. 
The royal palace was deep in spring. There were occasional red apricot trees showing above the low walls of the inner palace. The green trees and bright flowers contrasted. The beautiful scene could only be seen and not touched. It was already dusk and had quickly turned dark. The doors to the royal study opened then closed, closed then opened. A number of officials came then left. In the end, there was just the emperor left alone. There was also that old eunuch and a bright candle. Bang! The king emperor's eyes were filled with rage as he slammed one palm against the wooden table. Somehow he did not spill a drop of tea. In a nicey voice, he said, what a daring ministry of revenue, a daring eastern palace. Do they really think I'm too afraid to kill them? The officials who entered the royal study earlier were the ones responsible for investigating the Ministry of Revenue by Imperial Edict. After hearing their report, the King Emperor's rage grew. His original intention was to investigate the Ministry of Revenue and use the matter of the Ministry moving money to Jiangnan to urge Fan Jian to resign. He wanted to use this relatively open and above-board method to re-establish the balance in the court. However, he had never expected that the Ministry of Revenue would be much cleaner than he thought, that Fan Jian was much cleaner than he thought. On the contrary, it was the other departments in the court that had taken countless benefits from the Ministry of Revenue, particularly the Eastern Palace, earlier, who the scholar had already secretly submitted a memorial about the matter of the Board of Rights and had sorrowfully hinted that it would be best to not continue the investigation into the Ministry of Revenue otherwise. It would cause great turmoil in the court. Before the Ministry of Revenue had time to bear the responsibility of their actions, the officials of the other departments would have already started eating prison meals. After the Emperor's anger, he couldn't help feeling a slight chill at the Ministry of Revenue's methods, thus, his earlier thunderous anger. From his perspective, since Fan Jian knew of these long ago, why did he keep it hidden the entire time? He waited until an attack on the Ministry of Revenue before suddenly throwing it out. He caught the officials by surprise. Wasn't this catching the Emperor by surprise as well? He had grown up with Fan Jian from a young age and knew what this great housekeeper of his was capable of. He was not surprised by the preparation of the Ministry of Revenue's response. He was angry that the officials in the court were so disappointing and caught by the Ministry of Revenue on such a big ship. What made him angrier was that the crown prince was so stupid. How could he dare to give him this world? The emperor's anger toward Fan Jian's incisive counterattack was because this friend was. He wants to threaten me. The emperor furrowed his brows and said coldly. Yuna Kong, with his face full of age spots, shook his head and sighed. Your majesty, excuse my speaking out of turn, but people dot are always selfish. Even a loyal official like Minister Fan, in such a dangerous situation, he has to think of some methods of self-preservation. The emperor's voice was slightly severe as he smiled mockingly, to use such schemes. Is that a loyal official? Yuna Kong sighed and said, Director Chen also likes to play with such schemes, but in terms of loyalty, even I don't dare to put myself above. The emperor slowly closed his eyes. Chen Pingping has saved my life countless times. How could Fan Jian compare? Minister Fan has managed the Ministry of Revenue these years and quietly smoothed over all hidden dangers. Why is that? Nothing more than for the peace of the court. Yuna Kong sighed. If Minister Fan truly had a disloyal heart, he had enough evidence in his hands to do something major. He never made any such overtures. It clearly shows that he does not want to cause unrest in the court. He should have at least told me first, the emperor said icily. Yuna Kong said in a gentle voice, given the messages from the Fan Manor these years, the reason why Minister Fan didn't come to the palace to report this matter was because he did not wish Your Majesty to spend effort on it. Your Majesty should still remember the news that came a few days ago. The Emperor paused and remembered the message that Sheng Chiuo had brought. His emotions gradually calmed down, and he recovered some goodwill toward Fan Jian. He frowned and said, However, the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue must continue. If it is too hastily concluded, 
what would happen to the court's dignity. What is important right now is your majesty's attitude toward Minister Fan. Eunuk Hong lowered his head. The emperor shook his head. He cannot be the Minister of Revenue anymore. I can compensate him in other ways. But he can no longer lead the Ministry of Revenue. Uns is far away in Jiangnan managing the palace treasury. No matter how you look at this matter, it is not appropriate for Fan Jian to continue in the post of Minister of Revenue. A sense of sorrow rose in Eunuk Hong's heart. He felt somewhat sympathetic for Fan Jian, who had worked so hard all these years. He probingly said, There is something I am not sure whether or not I should say. Speak. Eunuk Hong's raised his pitch a little and said, Sir Fan Jr. is a heaven-blessed genius. It was putting the right person in the right place when your majesty arranged for him to control the palace treasury and overwatch council. As for Minister Fan, by conventional reasoning, he truly should not continue managing the Ministry of Revenue, but dot perhaps your majesty still remembers, in the first year of the King calendar, it was in this very royal study when it was still Vice Director Fan Jian that he had an argument with Director Chen. Minister Fan, from his very bones, did not wish for Sir Fan Jr. to control the Overwatch Council. Yes, continue. The Emperor furrowed his brows. He understood the implicit meaning in Eunuk Hong's words. After all, Minister Fan is a distinguished and talented scholar. Eunuk Hong smiled slightly. He is a sentimental man. I shall be presumptuous as to say, that no man of sentiment should be trampled beneath others. With Minister Fan remaining in the capital and Sir Fan Jr. working in Jiangnan, things will be much steadier. The Emperor's expression was calm. A moment later he said, earlier in the Dowager Empress Palace, she also said this. One. For the sake of the wet nurse in Danzu, the palace has always been more protective of the Fan Manor. Too, with Fan Jian in the capital, Fan Xian would indeed be more at ease working in Jiangnan. What so called ease? It was nothing more than secret defenses and threats. Nobility can wait, the emperor finally said with a cold face. I will not treat the Fan family unfairly but I cannot allow the matter of the Ministry of Revenue to conclude like this. To exchange the power of a minister for the title of nobility, did Fan Jian lose out or did he benefit? Dot. Dot. At the Fan Manor, Fan Jian was drinking his winter cherry with his eyes closed and enjoying the massage given to him by Lady Liu behind him. He sighed and said, I'm afraid the Emperor will think I am threatening him. That would not be good. Lady Liu's face was slightly dark. She knew this matter was very difficult to resolve. Although the palace would treat the manor unfairly, it looked like the master would have to step down from the Minister of Revenue position. The Emperor's wishes had already, through Yi Gaipin, been once again accurately and cautiously brought to the Fan Manor. These days, the work of investigating the Ministry of Revenue was still progressing dully. It had implicated even more people. The entire court had already become a pool of muddy water. The civil and martial officials were all fearful, and the Overwatch Council had already captured quite a few people. The Ministry of Revenue itself had been found to have a few problems. It was just some forces that had been working hard had not yet achieved the wanted result. Still, no one has been able to grasp the secret silver route between the Ministry of Revenue and Jiangnan. Many people, including the eldest princess, began to feel a strong sense of unease. Perhaps the silver fan Xian used in Jiangnan truly did not come from the Ministry of Revenue. As long as there wasn't a major crime, even the emperor could not forcefully request Fan Jian to resign. The summer floods are about to arrive. Fan Jian smiled slightly and said, The court will need silver. The investigation of the Ministry of Revenue will wind down. I'll burn some more time with the Emperor. As long as I can last until Fan Xian returns to the capital at the end of next year, there won't be any major problems. Lady Liu smiled and realized that the Master had been waiting for nothing but the flood the heavens would bring. It was like using heavenly might against heavenly might. The Emperor was not a muddled ruler. He understood the need to weigh the pros and cons. I wonder how the situation is over there with Fan Xian, Fan Jian said with some worry. The money sent to the river works hollowed out a lot of his confidence. The Ming family is not so easy to eat in one bite. Chapter 389, 
the capital deep in spring, the rain kept falling, the flowers in the Jingdu gardens had long bloomed, fell, and mixed into the mud. As for the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue, the palace was still waiting for a result. This placed a burden on the court officials. They understood clearly that whomever wanted to topple the Ministry of Revenue had to fall first. Without even needing the faraway Sir Fan Jr. to speak out, Sir Fan Sr. in the capital had showed enough trump cards. The investigation went back and forth. No one wanted it to fall on them. Who would want that kind of stupid thing? Furthermore, the crown prince had already been a stupid example. In officialdom, the most powerful was the emperor's words. Second, was the so-called unwritten rules. The Ministry of Revenue was swaying between these two. No matter how much it swayed, it refused to fall. Fan Jian refused to resign and resolve this matter. Even though rumors came from the palace saying that the emperor was prepared to offer nobility as a show of his compensation, the Fan family still held out. For a moment, the officials in the capital couldn't help but feel great admiration for Fan Jian's confidence. In reality, Fan Jian was not holding out with all his might. After the Ministry of Revenue had implicated enough officials and the Crown Prince began to turn his gaze to other things, such as self-preservation or dragging a few of his brothers under the water, the Minister of Revenue had not returned to the Ministry of Revenue Yemen. Rather, he began to leisurely drink tea in his manner, went to the residence to look at the mountains and rivers, and occasionally went to friendly manners to have a chat. It was not appropriate for him to visit other manors because the Ministry of Revenue investigation was at a critical juncture. He did not want to bring trouble to others. Others also did not dare to be too close to him. King Jing's manor was an exception. He was the Empress Dowager's own son, her youngest son, and the Emperor's own younger brother. All these years, he had been silent, well-behaved and planted his flowers. The palace all knew what this attitude showed so never bothered him much. Fan Jian and King Jing had always been on good terms. It was normal to visit his manor. On the other hand, given King Jing's personality, there was nothing he was afraid of. One day, Fan Jian entered the palace and talked deeply and sincerely with the emperor in his royal study for a whole night. He sincerely confessed his thoughts to the emperor. He analyzed it from all directions and believed it was best for him to continue in the post of Minister of Revenue. On this question, he did not conceal anything from the emperor. He was reluctant to give up his post, not to zealously continue fighting JW1. In this seemingly simple, but really very complicated situation, Fan Jian analyzed himself and the court piece by piece. He urged the emperor to withdraw his order to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. This was the best choice for the King Kingdom. It was the bright and honorable path. Such raising of the virtuous, even if it was oneself, such straightforwardness and uprightness, even the emperor was slightly surprised. The next day, it was said King Jing also went into the palace. It was rumored that this preposterous king talked for a long time in the Empress Dowager's Hanyuang Palace and even argued with the old matriarch. As for the content of their argument, no one knew. Dot. Dot. That night, the Empress Dowager and the Emperor watched the highlights of the opera. As they were eating melon seeds, the Empress Dowager told the Emperor the story of King Jing entering the palace. The Emperor smiled and didn't say anything. The Empress Dowager's meaning was clear. It was the same as when Fan's Yan first entered the capital. The Fan family has done a lot for the Li family, so they couldn't be treated too unfairly. Besides, if the youngest were to come to the palace every day and make a fuss, this wouldn't look good. Most importantly, the matriarch knew that her grandsons had probably all done some ugly things in the Ministry of Revenue. The investigation of the Ministry of Revenue had gotten to the royal family. What was the royal family to do with their dignity? Minister Fan had always thought that the emperor would care more about face than the officials, but he had not expected that the first to be ashamed would be the Empress Dowager. However, the effect was much the same. The next day, the edict came down, although, in order to protect the court's propriety, it did not explicitly withdraw the imperial edict to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. Using the excuse of state affairs, the emperor moved most of the officials in the joint investigation unit back to their original departments. Without question, 
the intensity of the investigation against the Ministry of Revenue weakened greatly. The officials collectively let out a breath, as the saying went, You are fine, I am fine, we are all fine. It was court that tried not to offend each other. Why make it so that parties could not coexist? Everyone knew in their hearts that the reduction in intensity of the Ministry of Revenue investigation certainly had something to do with the fuss King Jing had made in the palace. Thinking of this, the officials couldn't help feeling it was a bit odd. Fan Manor Ha always been friendly with Jing Manor, which was known to all. However, now was not like the past. At the beginning of autumn last year, there seemed to be some problems between the two families. First, fans Yan and the second prince's battle implicated King Jing's heir, Li Hongcheng. Later, the lady of the Fan family was, to the shock of everyone, accepted as a disciple by the Northern Qi imperial adviser, Ku He, and the marriage between the two families came to nothing. But King Jing entered the palace. Have the two families repaired the relationship as it was before? The civil and military officials all sighed, feeling more and more that Fan Jian had unfathomable depths. However, at the same time, the emperor announced a confusing personnel appointment. The imperial sensrate He Zongwei was promoted to imperial sensrate of the left and added to the unit investigating the Ministry of Revenue. He Zongwei was, back then, talented and famous in Jingdu, on par with Hu Jing, one of the fan's four disciples. Because he had always been on good terms with Go Baokun and had connections with the Board of Rights, he had delayed his steps going into official service to avoid talk. He waited until the spring examination in the fifth year of the King calendar but was forced to give up the examination due to the death of a relative. So, this famous and talented individual never participated in the imperial examinations. In people's hearts, his luck was indeed extremely bad. On the other hand, He Zongwei's luck was extremely good. That year, he was on good terms with the Go family, met the crown prince, and his fame in the capital took off. Later, in the spring of the fifth year of the king calendar, he was coincidentally implicated in the matter of the previous prime minister's fall. In the end, he was spotted by the emperor and jumped over layers and layers of processes and directly bestowed the title of imperial censorate by imperial edict. Everyone knew that this was only because he Zongwei was a person good at swaying from side to side, and he stood on the right team. For one moment, he stood on the crown prince's side, and in another, he stood on Xin Ying's side. However, now he had become the imperial censor of the left. Such a young figure. Yet he made it to such a position. People couldn't help but be shocked and speechless. Why did the emperor have such a great appreciation of this person? Actually, it was not like there wasn't precedent for such a thing. Fan Xian was younger than He Zong Wai, held a higher position, had more power, and was more famous. The problem was that everyone now knew that Sir Fan Jr. was secretly a prince and was famous for both his martial and literary accomplishments. It was not strange for him to have the position he did today. But, what was it about He Zongwei? Some of the gossipy officials couldn't help secretly laughing that perhaps the emperor had found another illegitimate child. No matter how the officials or people guessed, in the end, this old talent of Jingdu, who had long been hidden in the second prince's carriage, in the eldest prince's manner, and in the imperial censor's study, was finally about to officially step onto the stage of history and would radiate light and heat for many years. Young, handsome, talented, he had status and the emperor's approval. He Zongwei stole everyone's gaze like a newly risen sun, while fans Yan was probably the black hole that would swallow the sun. No one would believe that last year, Fans Yan had punched this now popular member of the court black and blue. This was He Zongwei's lifelong humiliation. He knew that Sir Fan Jr. Far held him in true contempt. Now that the emperor thought highly of him, then he had to do things for the emperor. Dot. Dot. The situation that left the crown prince in terrible shape was finally being resolved, although, he still had to find a way to smooth over that 400,000 liang of silver. Last night, in the Hengyuang Palace, the Empress Dowager thoroughly scolded her grandson before telling him that the Emperor was not in a good mood. While Great Grandmother was able to help protect him once, 
it did not mean she would be able to do so again. The crown prince was regretful. In the two years after fans Jan entered the capital, he had been doing well. He was well behaved and quiet, and even played around with women less. However, the person he was two years ago was rather preposterous and had left a number of loose ends, which were easy to grab. Thinking of this, he began to feel hatred for the Minister of Revenue who had grabbed these loose ends tightly and caused him such pain. That fan family, compared to the second prince that he had hated with intensity in the past, the Crown Prince decided that within the next few years, his biggest enemy was, without question, the fan family. Regardless of whether it was the senior or the junior, the matter of investigating the Ministry of Revenue had already forced the Eastern Palace and fan family into close combat. This time, the fan family had taken the advantage. Regardless of whether or not the Crown Prince wished to resolve this peacefully, given Fan Jian intelligence, he knew that after the Crown Prince inherited, the fan family would have to suffer the consequences. The crown prince was not the emperor. He did not have feelings for the old woman far away in Danzu. As for Fan Zhan, because of the Yi family matter all those years ago, this was an irreconcilable hatred. The crown prince did not have hope that Fan Zhan would stand on his side. In fact, he did not even have hope that he would not oppose him in the matter of inheriting the throne. Since the main dilemma had been established, all the other problems were minor ones. All the past unhappiness could be wiped away by the wave of a hand. So, when his trusted aide sent word that the second prince had invited him to meet on the Liujing River, the crown prince thought for a moment and then agreed to the suggestion. He smiled coldly and knew that that second elder brother of his also realized that if they were to defeat Fan Zhan, it would not be enough to depend on their own power. There was only one chair. Whether it was the crown princes or the second princes, everyone could draw their daggers and fight for it after. At the moment, they had to ensure that this chair did not end up beneath the third prince's butt. In the current situation, these two sons of the emperor had to abandon their former hatred and band together. They had to unite all the power they could to be able to strike at that bastard far away in Jiangnan. On Liujing River, the spring was as heavy as a woman's glance. It was gradually becoming warmer. Summer was coming. On a pleasure boat, the crown prince and the second prince drank and laughed enjoying the scenery and the beauty. It was like there had not been any unhappiness between them these few years. The second prince actively extended his hand and naturally expressed his position first. He first expressed his apology for the dishonorable action of Minister Yan Hengshu, who had struck while the crown prince was down during the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue. Of course, he would not say it explicitly. Although the emperor was sometimes a bit stupid, most of the time he was quite clever. He only needed a slight hint to understand. The crown prince also sighed, saying that after fans Yan entered the palace, his pressure on him had lessened. The brothers met each other's eyes. Both saw the faint worry and helplessness in each other. Fans Yan held too much power in his hands, and the old people standing behind him were also too powerful. More importantly, it seemed that now some of the people in the palace were leaning toward his side. Li Chengping, the third prince had long been at Fan Xian's side. What exactly did father mean by this arrangement? The crown prince and the second prince sank into silence at the same time. In the end, it was the second prince who slowly opened his mouth and laughed gently. Your Highness, I heard that Fan Xian had opened a branch of the Beiyu brothel in Suzhou. The two girls in it are very famous. One is a girl he snatched from Han Cheng while the other is rather interesting. I heard that she is a female slave from eldest brother's manor. The crown prince's eyelids drooped, and he gritted his teeth. He gave a cold huff and said, that big brother of ours. Didn't he speak for fans Yan that day in the royal study? Looks like he is truly afraid of that great princess from Northern Qi. Second brother, you've always been friendly with eldest brother, why didn't you see he is such a henpecker? The second prince raised his eyebrows and laughed. He didn't continue to say anything. A warm breeze gently blew, and the pleasure boat floated slowly. The willow branches were hard put to resist the gradually warmer weather and longed for the rain that had stopped in the morning to fall once again. 
The two people sitting by the window in the boat had warm expressions. In reality, they each had their own ulterior motives. They only unwillingly sat together to discuss matters. Izan Wai will continue to investigate the Ministry of Revenue. The second prince smiled slightly and said, Please be reassured, he knows how far to go. The crown prince huffed coldly, including the board of rights and He Zong Wai. These people had actually all been close to the eastern palace. They had been pulled away by the eldest princess and the second prince. Now, He Zong Wai had already found firm footing in the court. How could the crown prince not be resentful? He said icily, Don't forget. He Zongwai is one who is fond of scholarly honor, and he is a true servant of many masters. Today, he stands on your side, who knows which side he will be on in the future. The second prince stared in a daze at the spring scenery outside of the boat and sighed. Relax, he won't throw in his lot with fans. Yan's sighed. The crown prince said, but given his present position, it seems like there is no need to stay on your side. He mockingly smiled. When is all said and done? Father gave him the position. The second prince was slightly surprised. He knew that the crown prince's words were right, but he was too lazy to offer a retort. He smiled slightly. It was not convenient for him to come today for exactly the reason you said. Since he is an official, of course, he has to be careful to maintain distance from us. However, the second prince turned to look at the crown prince. An innocent and warm smile remained on his face but a few threads of annoyance grew in his heart. He felt discomfort in his heart to have been forced to ally himself to this person he has always held in contempt. Today, I have invited your highness out because someone wishes to see you. The crown prince paused and furrowed his brows. Who is so arrogant as to dare to call me to meet them? Dot. Dot. Even if it is me? From the back of the cabin came a soft, bright, and alluring female voice. Once this voice came out, it seemed to immediately cover the marvelous natural sounds of the wind, river, willows, and flight of the birds. It seemed to be incomparably touching. The crown prince's expression changed. A complicated emotion flashed through his eyes. Dumbstruck, it took him a moment to slowly stand up and bow toward the back of the cabin. He smiled self-deprecatingly and said, after Aunt entered the palace, you did not visit me. I had thought that you did not wish to see me. The eldest princess Lian Rui lifted the beaded curtain and walked out slowly. She gave a sly smile as she gazed at the crown prince. Suddenly, the crown prince felt nervous for no reason and did not dare look directly at that inhumanly beautiful face. Dot. Dot. It seemed like we have fallen into a trap with the Ministry of Revenue matter this time. There was a hint of tiredness on the face of the eldest Princess Lian Rui, yet it could not hide her brilliance. Suddenly, she sputtered in laughter and said, That son-in-law of mine is truly very amusing. He designed a trap for us to burrow into. Fortunately, King Jing made a fuss. If the problem had grown, we would still not have found evidence of the Ministry of Revenue secretly sending silver from the National Treasury to Jiangnan. That would have been difficult to explain to the civil and martial officials. The Ministry of Revenue's silver had made a round in Jiangnan and had long returned. Naturally, it could not be found. Although some of the silver had been left in the Jiangnan money house, that amount was not very big. Given fans Yan's ruthlessness, it was hidden without a flaw. The crown prince's eyes watched his nose, and his nose watched his heart. In a quiet voice, he said, Please give me your advice. I'm just here to drink tea today, the eldest princess said with a smile. After all, you are dot true brothers. Anything can be laid out and talked about. Don't let outsiders laugh at you. She held the true on the tip of her tongue and emphasized it. Although it was the main point, she unintentionally revealed an intention to entice. The crown prince's voice trembled as he said, If we cannot find information to use against the Ministry of Revenue, fans Yan Dot has no flaws to grasp onto. Can we only wait for him to strengthen his wings in Jiangnan and then return to the capital? The Ministry of Revenue has to be investigated. The eldest prince's watery eyes stared at the crown prince's face and she smiled. The emperor has temporarily taken a step back. In the future, he is sure to take a large step forward. There is no need for your highness to worry about this. As for that son-in-law of mine, 
there is even less to worry about. And Zi seems very stubborn, but in reality, it is very easy to defeat him. The crown prince and the second prince were both surprised, wondering how could she say that. It was difficult to slander Fan Zhan, and it was even more difficult to topple him. There was no way to destroy him mentally and impossible in the flesh. How could the eldest princes say it so casually? That son in law of mine, the eldest princes said softly seems to be emotionless, but actually dot he is very sentimental. Dot. Dot. After the secret conference on the Liu Jing River came to an end, the second prince sported his carriage under the protection of the eight generals and returned to the manor in the north of Jingdu. Since Fan's Yan had killed one of the eight generals and Fan Wujiu had been scared home by the swordsmen of the sixth bureau, there were only six left. They no longer looked as mighty as previous years. The second prince had been bestowed the title of king for some years and had been married for many months. His relationship with his Wang Fai, Yi Linger, had always been very good, and there hadn't been any negative rumors. In their bedroom, she helped her husband put on a thin sky blue coat. Faint worry floated on her usually open face. The second prince turned back to look and felt slightly apologetic. He held her cold hands in his and comfortingly said, What are you thinking about today? Yi Linger bit her bottom lip. A struggle flashed through her bright like jade eyes, and she finally gathered her courage to ask, where did you go? The second prince lowered his head and was silent for a moment before telling her very straightforwardly, I went to Liu Jing River to see the crown prince and aunt. A surge of warmth welled her heart. Such a big thing, yet the second prince did not hide it from her. He truly saw her as someone close to his heart. She couldn't resist asking, why? Can't we just pass our days peacefully? The second prince was warm and considerate and did not reveal any tyrannical and shameless behavior of the royal family. One of the reasons was because Yulinger's background was very deep. Another was because he truly did have some feelings for her. This younger generation of the King Kingdom had actually all grown up in one place, for example, Wanner, these princes, Yulinger and the young lady of the Fan family. The division between the royal family and their trusted families was not very clear. The second prince knew that his wife was thinking of him and couldn't resist letting out a sigh. In many things, we have no choice. Yi Linger looked at him in a daze. She suddenly spoke. In the past, it was the emperor pushing you out, but now Dot Fan's Yan has already taken your role. Why must you still participate? The second prince sighed again and said calmly a moment later, If it is truly as you say, and my mission in history has already been completed, then indeed I should not participate in this matter. But don't you forget, he slightly mockingly said, The master you mentioned, that most famous Sir Fan Jr. in the king court is in reality a figure who best remembers a grudge. Yi Linger frowned slightly and said unhappily, What kind of grudge cannot be resolved? Should I go talk to him? Although the second prince secretly smiled at his wife's childishness, he still felt faintly touched. He pulled her into his embrace and comfortingly said, There is a lot of hatred between men that cannot rely on the relationship between women for them to be resolved. He didn't explain further. He knew that the hatred between himself and Fan's Yan was difficult to resolve. The tiger guards that had died on Nyland Street, the Bayou brothel incident, those dead prostitutes, and many, many more. Fan's Yan held him accountable for all of it. In reality, this was something that the second prince did not understand. Clearly, only a few unimportant subordinates had died. Why would Fan's Yan hate him so much? In order to protect himself, he had to have power. Of course, the actual most important reason was dot until today, the second prince was still not satisfied. No one was satisfied. Yet, very few knew of the hard work of Fan's Yan, far away in Jiangnan. JW1 These two phrases sound very similar in Mandarin, hence the comparison. Chapter 390 Spring Union. The crown prince had been scolded, the area of investigation had shrunk, the Ministry of Revenue was temporarily safe, and the Overwatch Council once again straightened its spine. Things were just this amusing. Whether or not the first bureau of the Overwatch Council could straighten up depended on the Minister of Revenue's body and angle of the ground. 
who the scholar slapped the table in the Hall of Governmental Affairs and fiercely cursed that all those scholars were not clean. In any case, he was still young and hot-tempered and did not need to always have the bearing and style of an elderly official like Xu Wu did. The emperor needed who the scholar's fame and drive. Only, in the matter of the investigating the Ministry of Revenue, who the scholar did not completely satisfy the emperor's desires. From what he could see, at least from the circumstances that had been uncovered, the Ministry of Revenue did not have it easy. What made Hu the scholar most secretly angry was that even until today, there were still officials in the court who would not let go and wanted to find evidence relating to Jiangnan. The sound of the table being slapped rang out again. Who the scholar's eyebrows were furrowed deeply. He coldly stared at the official beside him. In a deep voice, he said, moving silver to Jiangnan. Where is the silver? Isn't it in the Ministry of Revenue's treasury? In the future, if there is no evidence, don't randomly talk about such groundless things to avoid chilling the officials' hearts. He looked at these ashen-faced officials and huffed coldly. Everyone. Do your best. Finishing these words, who the scholar shook his arms out and walked out of the little room beside the royal palace. He left many officials in the room looking at each other. Everyone felt deep regret and embarrassment. They investigated the Ministry of Revenue, and it was clean. Meanwhile, countless problems had been found with their factions. The supporters behind these officials were all linked in countless ways to Jiangnan. Looking at the situation in Jiangnan, these important figures judged that the silver fans Yan used for Xiaqai Fi to challenge the Ming family was moved from the national treasury. It was because of this judgment that they dared to so confidently attack the Ministry of Revenue. Since all that silver was still in the Palace Treasury Transport Company, the national treasury could certainly not cover it up. But, there was not a single trace. The officials gnashed their teeth in anger. They didn't dare respond to who the scholars fierce scolding. They'd been told to kick up such a fuss, and, in the end, were not able to find any problems. The father and son of the Fan family were too sinister. It was very early in the morning, and the sun in the east had not yet risen. The Hall of Governmental Affairs was preparing the memorials for the court. The officials' expressions were all somewhat tired. Most of them had not slept all night. However, thinking of the imminent battle in court, everyone had to be at 120%. In the first stage of investigating the Ministry of Revenue, it was clear that it had ended with the two factions of the eldest princess and the eastern palace being completely defeated. How could they save the situation? With or without intending to, these officials shifted their gazes to a young official who had been sitting in the shadowy corner, Yizan Wai. He was the new celebrity in the court. Behind him, he had connections to the eldest princess and the eastern palace and now he had the emperor's deep appreciation. Since who the scholar did not wish to make too much of a fuss on the Ministry of Revenue matter, it meant that the emperor had many unspeakable intentions that could not be successfully completed through the official. This was why he had moved the new imperial censor of the left Hezonwai into the unit investigating the Ministry of Revenue. The officials looked at Hezonwai. They wanted to learn from this young official how exactly the palace was preparing to deal with this matter. He had been specially placed in the Hall of Governmental Affairs and listening in for three days. He remained steady in his duty and was rigorous with with respect toward who the scholar and the other officials. He did not speak much, nor did he act rashly. He truly embodied the spirit of being steady, calm, and unflustered. However, being stared at like this by the other officials, Hezon Wai knew he had to show some kind of ability. This was not just for himself, it was also for the emperor. It's a mess, he sighed and warmly said to the other officials. Looks like this matter will slowly go on. Who the scholar was a bit anxious earlier. Please don't think much of it. Slowly going on explained the palace's attitude. The fan manor's response was both clever and tough. The palace was, at this time, unable to come up with a good solution to change out this minister of revenue. It could only wait for another opportunity. The officials became silent. They felt unsatisfied in their hearts as well as faintly concerned. Since Fan Jian's position did not change, the officials who had led the attack would have to face the appropriate consequences. Dot. Dot. After the matter, 
The court officials belonging to the eldest princes and eastern palace factions began their last attack, not to kill their enemy, only to save themselves. No matter how clean the Ministry of Revenue was, the investigating unit had still found some small problems, particularly under the instruction of He Zongwei who had joined after the event. The officials gave up their shocking accusations and simply refused to let go of the small problems they had found with the Ministry of Revenue. For example, some of the numbers in the accounts were not clear. There was a small cache of silver that could not be located. Although these were small problems, it showed that the people investigating the Ministry of Revenue were not doing so for revenge, rather, they truly wanted to find problems with the Ministry of Revenue. As he listened to the impassioned accusations of those officials, who the scholar smiled coldly from where he stood in the first place on the left row. Beside him, Xu Wu's face was full of concern, and Minister of Appointments Yan Heng Xu did not say a word. The Emperor sat high in his dragon chair. He used a complicated gaze to look at one person among the ranks of officials. Today, the Minister of Revenue, Fan Jian, had also come to court. The emperor looked at Fan Jian's slightly salt and pepper hair and sighed in his heart. He opened his mouth and asked, where did that 180,000 liang of silver go? Fan Jian stepped out. He didn't defend himself, and he didn't explain. With his age clearly showing, he bowed and directly apologized humbly. That 180,000 liang of silver had long been sent to the river transport governor's Yemen. Dot. Dot. The court immediately burst into an uproar. The Ministry of Appointments and related officials, who had advocated strongly for the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue, immediately hid the joy that appeared on their faces. They were confused. Why did the ruthless Minister of Revenue admit, in court and before the Emperor, privately moving national silver into the river transport governor's Yemen? They knew this was not an opportunity to be missed. In a flash. Officials stepped out and righteously accused the Ministry of Revenue, pointing the blame directly at Fan Jian. In this world, the only people with the authority to the stored silver in the national treasury were those with the Emperor's decree. No one else was allowed. Fan Jian had the Ministry of Revenue move silver to the river transport governor's Yemen, yet he did not have a royal decree in hand. No matter from which angle this was considered. It was the crime of impetuously lying to the emperor. The emperor stared at Fan Jian's exhausted face. A faint light flashed through his eyes. He did not seem to hear the demands of the officials in court to punish the minister of revenue. The emperor didn't hear, but some of the officials heard it very clearly. A fiery rage lit up in the depths of their hearts. The deficits in the ministry of revenue were closely related to the officials attacking the ministry of revenue. While Minister Fan's move of the national silver to the river works could be considered inappropriate, his intentions could be understood. He did it for the court, for the people. Yet, it had become a sore point for those shameless and mean people to attack. Xu Wu's eyebrows trembled and there was a great rage in his eyes. He turned his head and glared at the officials who had stepped out. The elders of the Hall of Governmental Affairs knew that for the court to send out silver, the paperwork was very complicated. If they were to slowly ask for an edict and then move the silver into river works, the Yangtze had probably already burst its banks. During the depths of winter, Xu Wu had once complained to the emperor about this matter. Although he did not know the details of the matter of Fan Jian transferring money from the Ministry of Revenue to the river transport governor's Yemen, he was certain that it had nothing to do with private profits. Bullsh T. The Fan family had no land on either side of the Yangtze. What good would he receive by moving silver to repair the river? Xu Wu forcefully repressed the anger in his chest and stood out. He faced the emperor in the dragon chair and saluted. Seeing this scholar of virtue and prestige stepping out, the officials attacking the Ministry of Revenue mumbled and withdrew their voices, returning to their places in the ranks. The emperor glanced at him and said, what is the crime of privately moving silver from the treasury? Lao Xu the scholar raised his head and said straightforwardly, Your Majesty, if you're asking about the law you should ask the Ministry of Justice or the Supreme Court. I work in the Hall of Governmental Affairs and am not familiar with the King Law. The Emperor gave an almost smile and said, 
then what would you like to say? Xu Wu saluted again and turned around to glance contemptuously at the fledgling officials. I am of the opinion that Minister Fan has committed no wrong in this matter. What do you mean? The matter of the river works has long been dire. Fortunately, this year, the strength of the spring floods were not as powerful as previous years, but the summer floods are about to arrive. As for the matter of the Ministry of Revenue moving silver into the river works Yemen, Xu Wu took a deep breath and said very respectfully, I approved the memorial in the Hall of Governmental Affairs and directly transferred it to the Ministry of Revenue, so I am actually very aware of the matter of the Ministry of Revenue moving silver. Once these words were out, the court broke into another round of clamor. Unbelievably, Shu the scholar took such a big risk and bound himself to the Fan family. Why did he do this? Minister Fan seemed to be slightly surprised too as he looked at the elderly scholar in front of him. The emperor frowned slightly and then suddenly smiled a moment later. Oh, why do I know nothing of this? I am muddled by age, please forgive me. Shu the scholar was not muddled by age. Earlier. The officials were talking tumultuously and he couldn't stand to see it. A thread of his resolute conscience surged up from the bottom of his heart and his blood charged, making him stand out to act as a guarantor for the Ministry of Revenue. At this moment, he recovered his senses and realized that the Emperor would certainly not like the people of the Hall of Governmental Affairs acting as guarantors for the six ministries. He smiled bitterly and lowered his voice, Your Majesty. Pity my old age. Last night, I also drank a couple cups and suddenly had a burst of juvenile frivolousness. At this time, even if I wanted hold control my mouth and I couldn't. The emperor saw a proper scholar acting the clown and couldn't resist smiling. That thread of unhappiness at being challenged gradually dissipated. Hugzuzi, the emperor smiled slightly, in your opinion, what is the Ministry of Revenue guilty of? After a slight moment of consideration. He said quietly, guilty of deceiving the ruler. A buzz started up around the court. The emperor raised his eyebrows and asked with great interest, how should it be punished? Not punished, who the scholar bowed very deeply. Why? The Ministry of Revenue moving silver into the river works is out of a desire for public good. It is an act of loyalty to your majesty. Although he deceived the ruler, he did so out of love. Who the scholar said lightly, when the king law convicts. It cares to understand the reasoning and mindset. A bright heart knows of the reason and understands the action. The Ministry of Revenue officials and the Minister are honest and sincere. Please see this clearly, Your Majesty. Oh, the Emperor seemed to be very interested in this explanation and smiled slightly. But the law is here. If we do not act according to the law, how will we silence all the mouths of the people? How will we have the officials follow the law? There is no need to block all the mouths of the people, who the scholar replied evenly. As long as the banks of the Yangtze can be filled, the people can see with their eyes and hear with their ears. As long as they have food to eat and a safe place to live, they will know of your majesty's hard work. The emperor was moved and nodded his head, who the scholar continued to speak. As for the officials, a bitter mile suddenly rose to the corner of his mouth. If the officials are truly safeguarding the law, then that is fine. In my opinion, although the king law is heavy, it cannot outweigh the word of the emperor. If your majesty empathizes with the hard work of the Ministry of Revenue and is lenient in your judgment, the officials will recall with emotion your divine heart. At the end, he said in a quiet voice, Your Majesty. It has been raining continuously lately. This last part was said in a very low voice. Other than the few officials close to the dragon chair, no one else was able to hear it. The emperor sank deep into thought. He knew that the scholars of the Hall of Governmental Affairs closest to him were standing on the side of the Fan family today because they were thinking of the court, thinking of the wealth of the King Kingdom. He frowned as he thought. Hu and Shu did not know of his actual intentions. They had been provoked by the matter of river works, so had stood out to protect the Fan family. But dot were his actions this time so inappropriate? Did the officials with some conscience in the court all believe that Fan Jian should be kept? His furrowed brows gradually loosened. He gazed at Fan Jian below in the hall. In a quiet voice, he asked, I don't want to hear what other people have to say. You tell me. 
Why did you move silver to the river transport governor's Yemen without my permission? Fan Jian sighed and walked forward a few steps. He bowed to the ground and replied very simply, Your Majesty, I was worried there wouldn't be enough time. In reality, this cache of silver was one portion of the silver the Ministry of Revenue had sent to Jiangnan. The Emperor knew this, and Fan Jian knew the Emperor knew this. Today, in the court, Although the officials took this opportunity to attack him, Fan Jian refused to defend himself at all. He did not intend for the emperor to help him share the burden. To dare to privately move the national silver to repair the river was an action in the interests of tens of thousands of people. It was truly a rarely seen righteous official in the king court. No wonder it moved the scholars Huan Shu. He dared to face heavy accusations and not defend himself for the sake of the emperor's face. It was truly the action of a loyal servant of the king court. No wonder the emperor was also a bit moved. The emperor thought deeply and then slowly nodded his head. After the court conference, the public edict was sent down. The Ministry of Revenue's deficit was severe, and the emperor was angry. His orders for the investigation of the Ministry of Revenue were to proceed. The Overwatch Council and Supreme Court were responsible for the questioning of any problems that had already been found. Minister of Revenue Fan Jian had his second rank of nobility removed and his salary fined but keep his post. It was funny to speak of this second rank of nobility that had been bestowed by the palace after fans Yan saved the emperor in the hanging temple. As for the fine, including the salary fine from last time, Fan Jian would not be able to receive a salary for a full two years. However, he remained steadily in the position of Minister of Revenue and, correspondingly, the deficits that had already been found in the Ministry of Revenue implicated many officials. A vigorous investigation was about to begin. Various powers were forced to cut off their own hands and feet to prevent the deficits the Ministry of Revenue had suppressed for all these years from cutting off their heads. The Crown Prince's 400,000 liang of silver was filled in by the Dowager Empress using her private funds but the officials of various factions did not have such a kind grandmother. Regardless of whether it was the Eastern Palace's faction or the Eldest Prince's faction, many of the officials fell from their horses and some new blood, young figures like Yi Zongwei, began to gradually enter the court. Because of Fan's Yan and the Second Prince's previous battle, a batch of officials had already been wiped out. This year, in the depths of spring, because of the Ministry of Revenue and the Eldest Princess battle, another batch of officials were wiped out. To abandon and renounce became the main tone for a while in the court. The origin of the story began in Jiangnan. Fans Yan had created a fake situation so that the people on the Eldest Princess side would think that they had caught the Fan family's biggest criminal act. Only then did they have the courage to throw out such a pawn into the muddy water with the intention of dragging the Jingde Fan family off their high horse. No one expected that the silver had come northern Qi. The Fan family did not move the silver in the national treasury. Of course, the emperor believed he knew that the Fan family had moved it and that it was moved with his permission. The emperor thought he knew all of the things under heaven, but he was wrong. When all was said and done, the Fan family very managed to stand steady and the emperor increased his control of the officials a bit more. This made the palace a bit more peaceful. It was a great joy. From the current situation, it appeared, at least on the surface, that there was no power in the capital that could threaten that chair. For a moment, the spring scene was bright and cheerful, incomparably harmonious. However, the crown prince and the second prince had been forced to, in secret, ally themselves temporarily. Although the Fan family had been hurt in this matter, everyone knew that after Fan's Yan returned, something big was sure to happen. Dot. Dot. The kind of might and power required to force two absolutely irreconcilable brothers to unite together was enough to make all the people feel proud and smug. However, Fan's Yan, who had made all of this happen, did not feel pleased at all. One reason was that news from Jingdu had not had time to reach the distant Jiangnan. Another reason was that although he could make the princes afraid to make a noise in Jingdu, here in Jiangnan, far away from Jingdu and faced with that constantly retreating Ming family, he suddenly discovered that to crush the Ming family was surprisingly difficult. 
it was more difficult that crushing his own royal brothers. Chapter 391 Bright and cheerful scenery. Often there was a common point between commercial and political battles that when it appeared things were at an end, there was also a glimmer of hope. When things were very intense and fiery, who knew when it would suddenly become desolate and quiet? As for the Ministry of Revenue battle in Jingdu, Xinying and the Eastern Palace thought they had their finger on the pulse and had gotten hold of the best information to use against the Fan family. They attacked proudly and quietly. They wanted the Fan family's square and round crest to have a change of owner. They did not know that in the end, all the trouble had the opposite effect, and they would lose a large amount of power for no good reason. To speak of Jiangnan. Fans Yan held the imperial envoy sword in his hand. After clearing the palace treasury, he controlled the transport company and forced the Ming family to rapidly retreat through Xiakai Fi challenging them. Then through the officialdom, he successfully forced the Ming family into a chaotic situation, and, through the giant power of the Overwatch Council, he made life difficult for the Ming family all under heaven. His power was imposing and it seemed that at any moment he could crush the Ming family into a pile of fine powder. However, right at this moment, it was hard to imagine such a shocking thing could happen. Dot. Dot. My people need to enter the garden. Fans Yan slammed the table. His eyes were like hooks as he looked coldly at the person before him. He bit off each word clearly as spoke. Sir Zhu. I have already waited for ten days. I will not wait any more today. Sitting beside him was the most influential person in Jiangnan, the Jiangnan governor Sir Zhu King. They were having their secret discussion in the study of the governor's manor. The accounts master of the Junshang Conference, who was also the head housekeeper of the Ming family, Mr. Zhu, had already been found by the Overwatch Council. He was hiding in the Ming Garden. Regardless of whether it was for that assassination attempt in front of the Jiangnan restaurant or because of fans Yan's strong interest in the Junshang conference, the Overwatch Council had enough excuse to kill their way into the Ming Garden and retrieve him. However, that was, after all, the Ming Garden, one of the three major gardens under heaven. It represented countless Jiangnan people's interests, countless people's lives and countless people's hopes. Even though fans Yan wanted to send people into the Ming Garden to search, he had no choice but to first go to the Jiangnan governor's manor and inform Zhu King. As long as Zhu King nodded his head. What Ming family. What Jiangnan gentry. Fans Yan did not care much about them. He could not directly enter the governor's manor and raise this seemingly shocking suggestion. Zhu King's attitude was also very clear. You want to search the Ming Garden? Sure. You want the governor's manor to send officials to help? No way. He was not afraid to offend the Ming family, but he knew very well that the Ming garden was like a door. In the previous few months, Zhu King and fans Yan had cleaned up the Ming family industry outside of the door. They had tormented the Ming family's spirit but had not touched the foundation of the Ming family. So, the other side had retreated and feigned weakness to protect itself. Once the government stepped over the Ming family's tall threshold, this meant that the battle had already reached the nucleus. The two sides had torn into each other, and it had become a situation of one must die for the other to live. King Kingdom Court did not care about the toppling of a wealthy merchant family, even if this family was the wealthiest in the kingdom. However, the Ming family directly supported a hundred thousand people, and they influenced the lives of many of the Jiangnan people. The Ming family did not need to strive to counterattack. As long as this situation was revealed, the stability of the entire Jiangnan area would be in question. Zhu King looked coldly at the young man beside him, thinking, You are the imperial envoy. After you've turned Jiangnan into a mess, you can dust yourself off and leave. After you return to the capital, there are still the Emperor, Director Chen, and Minister Fan to support you. But what about me? Would the mess at the end be all left to me? If Jiangnan was not stable, how would he continue as the governor? When Fan Zhan, very respectfully, came to the governor's manor to discuss this matter, 
Zhu King rejected the request for the two sides to work together with a strange determinedness. His words were very clear, since it was about the mysterious Junchang conference and that the Overwatch Council had found the problem in the beginning, and it did not involve local governmental affairs. His people could help the Overwatch Council clean up around the perimeter but would not directly enter the Ming Garden. This was the way of the being an official. Zhu King knew that fans Yan did not have a handle on the problems that could be caused by searching the Ming Garden. Thus, he wanted to drag him down too. How could he allow himself to meekly be dragged under? It had already been ten days and Zhu King still refused to relent. Fans Yan began to feel the anger gradually rise in his heart. After leaving the governor's manor, Fans Yan boarded his carriage and furrowed his brows. With his chin on his hand, he began to drift into a daze. Deng Ziyu glanced at his master and said quietly, People have long been scattered outside of the Ming Garden door and are keeping watch. I heard that the fourth master in the Suzhou Manor also did not suffer much. When do we want to enter the Ming Garden to capture the person? We can do it ourselves. We don't have to have the governor's help, although we might lose some people. Ming Garden would have hired guards and maybe even a powerful private military. Fans Yan had once seen the garden from a distance. He knew that with some small additions, it could become a solid castle. If they wanted to force their entry with the Overwatch Council people, it would be a difficult matter without the Black Knights. If Zhu King did not agree, the Black Knights could not enter into the wealthy land of Jiangnan. It is not difficult to enter the garden. Fans Yan gave a pained smile and shook his head. As long as the Ming family are not preparing to revolt, who would dare to hold back the Overwatch Council with my documentation for a search? Whatever castle-like armed forces. The old Ming matriarch would not dare to move any of them. His face gradually grew cold. If we want to enter Ming Garden to take someone, there are two problems. One, we don't know how many aces the Junshang Conference had in there. If head housekeeper Zhu has the inside knowledge of the Junshang Conference and has not yet been silenced. Would those aces escort him away from Suzhou? 2. We cannot make this too troublesome. The Ming family has already feigned weakness for a few months. The sorrowful atmosphere they have created is incredibly thick, particularly after that fourth young master was taken into the Suzhou manor and has not been let out yet. The rumors floating around outside are becoming more and more strange. Deng Ziyu listened quietly. He knew what the commissioner was worried about. Everyone in Jiangnan was saying that the Overwatch Council, under Fan Xian's direction, was oppressing the Ming family and had intentions to take over the family wealth, and that it was about to change into a story of killing to steal the property. There had to be a reason to send out troops, and the court's reason for defeating the Ming family has never been straightened out. Thus, in the Jiangnan area, with hundreds of families of gentry, they all began to use a wary and irritated gaze to stare at Fans Yan. The reputation Fans Yan had built for two years in Jingdu had been majorly stained. Ming Kingda is a clever man. Fans Yan frowned and said, This strategy of retreating as advancing is indeed very good. They appeared to be constantly retreating, yet we are still pushing them back step by step. In the people's eyes, there would always be an emotional bias. Furthermore, the Ming family has deep roots in Jiangnan. Their ability to stir up public opinion is every stronger than that of our 8th Bureau. After they learned that Zhu was hiding in the Ming Garden, the Overwatch Council and Palace Treasury Transport Company's attack on the Ming family became more and more fierce. The Ming family industry received endless harassment. It had the appearance of the end of an era and looked incredibly pitiable. Public opinion is a very important matter, as is reputation. Fans Yan sighed. If we keep suppressing the Ming family like this, not only will the people develop an antipathy toward us, even the royal merchants Ziakai Fi contact might grow fearful for the court. No one knows whether or not they will be the second Ming family. What gives me the biggest headache is, he shook his head, I don't know the situation in the capital right now. I don't know if I make too big a move, if too many people die or if the criticism is too heavy. Would that give the people in the capital an excuse to transfer us back? While the Jiangnan situation was still unstable. Fans Yan did not want to return to the capital. After he returned to the capital, 
he would be impeded by those women in the palace. This was not a situation he could accept. The carriage arrived at Hua Garden. He spoke a few words with the third prince and others. Then he took Tang Ziyu and a few trusted aides into the study. He spread out a large map on the desk and began to think in silence. After Fan's Yan thought for a while, he used his finger to point at a province on the map and asked quietly, Has there been news from Guangzhou, the family home of the concubine of the heir of the Ming family, Ming Lanshai? was in a village right beside Quanzu, the Overwatch Council had found that this concubine's older brother was indeed the person responsible for running the Ming family's pirate business and stealing from their own merchant ships on the Eastern Sea. That pirate leader had already been silenced by the military the Ming family had colluded with, while that concubine had also vanished. To use the Ming family's words, she had gone back to visit family. The Overwatch Council knew that this was a lie. But who could reveal this lie? That concubine did not return to the village, a member of the Kenyan unit reported. We also didn't find traces of bandits along the way. She should have been silenced in Suzhou. Fan Xian nodded. He had long expected this, so he was not surprised. He asked, what is important is that village. Since it is that pirate's family home, there must be some people who followed him onto the island to become pirates. Those relatives must have some knowledge of this matter. Since the Ming family has washed that island in blood, those villagers are not likely to stupidly stay on the side of the Ming family. Shame flashed across the face of the member of the Kenyan unit. He said, that village is already empty. Fans Yan furrowed his brows tightly. The village was empty? There was no need to ask for a reason. Since it was empty. It was one of those dirty methods. Where are the relatives from here? His finger was still pointing directly at Quan Zhu. He frowned and asked, The shipping company and officials on the boat were killed by those pirates. When will those relatives come to Suzhou to report the case? Another member of the Kinian unit replied in a deep voice, Most of the relatives have already returned inland, only some are still remaining in Quan Zhu. However, the people of the 4th Bureau went to have a look. Those relatives received a large amount of money as compensation, and their interest in pursuing the pirates have already faded. Most importantly. The Ming family have truly been good to them. They simply do not believe the Ming family would collude with the pirates. Fans Yan was startled then turned and lightly mockingly said, Of course it is not collusion. The Ming family are the pirates. Following this, he asked about some of the earlier arrangements of a few of the bureaus and received from them all some not very wonderful replies. Only now did he know that after he had chopped down the Kui family in Jingdu, in the days that Yan Binian took to plan and prepare a secret plan for the Ming family, they had already made sufficient preparations. They had not left many flaws. Fans Yan sat down in that slightly icy chair. His mind wandered as he held a warm bowl of tea. His subordinates looked at the commissioner silently. It looked like it would be very difficult to take down the Ming family in a short amount of time with open and above board methods. If they used the Overwatch Council's sinister methods, Jiangnan, after all, was not like other places. They had to consider the people's reaction. If the people really took to the streets, it would be difficult for the Overwatch Council to wrap things up. Thinking of this, fans Yan began to be angry at Zhu King's indecisiveness. If the Jiangnan governor made an appearance and followed in at the back dot with one of them in the light and one in the dark, with one red face and one white face, this matter might be much simpler. Fans Yan did not feel a great sense of defeat. He knew that in the battle between the court and the Ming family, the Ming family could always only be on the defensive. Fans Yan had plenty of time to play with the Ming family slowly. His rush to enter the Ming family was mostly because he wanted to understand the Junshang conference. In this competition with the Ming family, he could endlessly try to knock down the other party. Even if he didn't succeed the first time, he could rest for a bit and then try a second time. But the Ming family couldn't. This large family could not lose even once. Once they lost, it would be the end. Make the preparations. Fans Yan lowered his eyelids. Prepare to enter the Ming garden to capture him. Dot. Dot. Deng Ziyu hesitated for a while then said, We're not waiting for the governor to express his stance. Fans Yan smiled coldly. When I do things, 
I've never liked to follow in other people's footsteps. I've waited 10 days. That is giving Zhu King enough face. If I make my move at this time, he would not blame me for being ruthless. What about talk by the people of Jai Angnan? Talk, saying that I am oppressing the Ming family. I am going to enter gently. I am not going to hit a single person or kill a single person. How have I oppressed them? The trace of a smile was revealed on Fans Yan's face. Besides, I have thought it through. If such a thing as a reputation is destroyed in Jai Angnan, I'll just slowly pick it up later. Fan Xian waited for 10 days. It was not that he did not have the confidence of entering the Ming Garden to capture Zhu or not giving considerations to the talk. It was also not to wait for Zhu King to express his stance. He was waiting for Nu from Jingdu. After the palace treasury bidding, he knew that the eldest prince's faction in Jingdu would attack the Ministry of Revenue. He was waiting for the result of this matter. Although the matter was in Jiangnan, the head was in Jingdu. Each day that the situation in Jingdu was unclear, it was difficult for fans Yan in Jiangnan to strike. The next day, the birds on the tip of the willow branches cried out randomly. Three quick horses sped into Suzhou under the cover of the dawn. The garrisons guarding the city knew they were the Overwatch Council's secret spies and did not dare to stop them. Horse hooves thundered and rushed to Hua Garden. Someone had already come out to lead the three horses into the garden. This was the Overwatch Council's quickest messaging route. It was countless times faster than King Kingdom's Express Post horse. Fans Yan held the council report from Mu Tai in the capital and felt some joy. He knew that the result of the matter was as he had expected. The Ministry of Revenue was fine while the eldest prince's side suffered a major loss. Only when he read the details, he understood that the emperor intended to use this opportunity to have the Fan family in Jingdu retreat from the stage. The slight smile on his face immediately became serious. He didn't have time to consider his father's matter. Fans Yan shook his head and said to the Overwatch Council official beside him, who was long ready to receive his orders. Enter the main garden and take him. Once the Overwatch Council official left with his orders, from the various offices around Suzhou came out a number of officials. The sound of horses' hooves shattered the quiet of the morning. Leaving the city, more than 40 Overwatch Council 4th Bureau officials rode out under Deng Ziyu's leadership. Openly and publicly, they headed toward Ming Garden. Be careful. Fans Yan turned and said warmly, No one knows what kind of people the Junshang Conference has left in Jiangnan. Hai Tang's hands were stuffed in the big pockets of her floral clothes. She tilted her head and smiled. Dot. Dot. In the early hours of the morning, in the outskirts of Suzhou, the early rising birds sang a bit and then returned to sleep again in the trees. It was very quiet around the official road particularly around the beautiful and expansive Ming Garden. They could faintly hear the sound of water being poured for face washing and teeth brushing. Everything was just like how it usually was. On the road, there suddenly came dozens of riders. The people on the horses were wearing the Overwatch Council's official robes. As the dozens of riders vigorously arrived outside of Ming Garden, the spies hidden around the garden responsible for surveillance came down from the trees and out from behind the mountain. Some of them mixed in with their colleagues who had came to search the garden, while other quietly disappeared without a trace. Deng Ziyu's face was serious as he rode his horse up to the main garden's main door. He flipped off the horse and his subordinates behind followed in one uniform movement. Ming Garden was silent like a shy virgin, but Deng Ziyu could clearly see the soul-devouring flashes of metallic light behind the low wall. On some of the high points to the left, he could also see longbows and crossbows. The other party had already laid down heavy defenses in waiting. If they fired together, not one of the dozens of Overwatch Council officials would probably be able to return alive. Deng Ziyu's expression did not change. He believed in the commissioner's judgment. Although the Ming family were bandits at heart, when faced with such a big bandit like the Overwatch Council, they would not be so stupid as to actively fight with fire. As expected. The main door of the Ming Garden was slowly pulled open. With both eyes bloodshot and looking like he had not slept all night, the young master of the Ming family, Ming Lanshai, respectfully stood beside the door. He spread his right hand and said, Everyone, 
please come in. Chapter 392, Rising Climax, Report The carriage stopped at a place only two streets away from the Suju government. The Tiger Guards kept an alert out for nearby movements. An Overwatch Council spy wearing common clothing stood closer. After his token was verified, he leaned close to the window in the carriage and spoke in a quiet voice. In the carriage, Fans Yan was holding something and looking at it closely. He nodded and said, Speak. The Ming Garden didn't offer any resistance. The people of the 4th Bureau have already entered and are currently searching. For now, there haven't been any results. Fans Yan was silent for a moment then said, Use appropriate force. Tell Deng Ziyu not to be too aggressive. The spy made a sound of acknowledgement. He turned and left the carriage disappearing into the morning crowd in Suzhou. The carriage slowly began to move again. It had gone half a street toward the Suzhou government when another Overwatch Council spy flashed out from a corner of the street and approached the side of the carriage. They lowered their voice and reported, no strange movements at the docks. Fans Yan was silent and did not speak. He waved his hand and had the person leave. To get from Hua Garden to the Suzhou government, they had to cross almost half of city. Along the way, the carriage advanced silently and did not draw the attention of too many people. Most of the people in Suzhou did not know that early this morning, the Overwatch Council officials had already charged aggressively into Ming Garden. In this distance, the crows that the Overwatch Council had moved at the last minute began to report on information from all quarters. All information relating to the Ming family's reaction was gathered in this moving carriage. The situation in Ming Garden, the situation of the Ming family's merchants opening shop like usual, and the response of the governor's manner, all of this was sent at the quickest speed to the carriage to be handed to fans Yan for him to consider holistically. Today. This carriage was the Overwatch Council's headquarters. Fans Yan also felt something was strange. Even if the Ming family feigned weakness, they could not allow themselves to be bullied without any sign of a response. To the contrary, it was the governor's Yemen that started to tense up. There were already thoughts of mobilizing the military. In today's plan, seeing the Ming family's reaction was one part. But capturing Zhu was the most important part. Ming Garden had been under the Overwatch Council's constant and strict surveillance. Zhu shouldn't have had an opportunity to escape. Most importantly, up until now, the Ming family shouldn't have known that the Overwatch Council had the information of Zhu hiding in Ming Garden. Fans Yan couldn't stop a trace of a self-deprecating smile from rising to the corner of his mouth. For the big clans and families in this world, if they were attacked by outsiders, they were always like centipedes and would not die in an instant. If their internal problems were incited, then they would face true difficulties. These words were said by Kao Xukin in a dream of the Red Mansions. He was having this feeling now because Zhu's hiding place was told to Fan Xian through some channel by someone in the Ming family, someone very powerful in the Ming family. Otherwise, Given the strict defenses of Ming Garden how could they know so certainly that Zhu was there? The Overwatch Council, over a dozen years, still had not succeeded in planting a high-level spy. As long as Zhu was in Ming Garden, then today's matter could be considered successful. Dot. Dot. The carriage slowly drove toward the Suzhou government. More Overwatch Council spies came forward to report various pieces of information. When there were no more peculiarities, the carriage burrowed into an unremarkable little alley. Close to a thick wall, the carriage stopped for some unknown reason. About three meters to the left of the Suzhou government was the jail holding criminals. The prison executed people in the autumn and fed them in the spring. It now was the time when the population was most prosperous. In a single prison, it held 40 to 50 people. Through the metal doors of the prison and to the end of the path, there was some light splashing through the skylight that carried warmth. It dispersed some of the dampness. Compared to the other cells that did not see the sky or the sun, it was much more comfortable. This cell had a layer of straw on the ground. Below it, something forbidden, like a cotton blanket, could faintly be seen. A pale-faced middle-aged man was drinking alone, enjoying the treatment not afforded to usual prisoners. This was the fourth master of the Ming family. Because the Overwatch Council wanted to defeat the Ming family, 
he became the first sacrifice that was offered. He was forced into the Suju government. It had already been over ten days, yet there was still no indication of him being let out. However, the Ming family was still a large family with great power. The Suju government had practically been supported by them, so there was someone taking care of everything while he stayed there. His days could be considered quite comfortable. There were some infamous bandits in the cell beside his who all looked at him with envious gazes. The fourth Ming master couldn't be bothered to acknowledge those petty thieves. He only slanted his eyes to look at the three bailiffs outside of his cell door. A slight mocking smile appeared at the corners of his mouth. What's happening today? The bailiff opened the cell door with a bang and a bailiff bowed, with a flatter smile, he said, Fourth Master, it's been hard on you these days. However, the Overwatch Council keeps a tight watch, so we can't move you to a single cell. The Fourth Ming Master shook his head and sighed. The matter at hand is to be able to get out of here as quickly as possible. Has there been no word from the family? At this time, two other bailiffs had already brought in good food and alcohol and laid it out in front of him. The fragrance washed over their senses. The fourth Ming master was confused. It was not yet time for lunch. Why were they bringing food so early? Suddenly, he thought of something and couldn't stop his expression changing dramatically. In a hoarse voice, he asked, what does this mean? After this meal, it's best to be on your way. The bailiff sighed. The fourth Ming master's face was deathly white. He couldn't quite believe his own ears. At most he was forcefully dominating the market. How could it be a capital offense? Besides, he was of the Ming family. How could the government dare to kill him so casually? He unconsciously backed away and stared at the bailiff with hatred. Viciously, he said, What you said, I don't understand. The bailiff lowered his head and said, it's the intention of the Overwatch Council. Please don't blame me. The fourth Ming Master was not a stupid person. After a moment of thought, he understood the matter from beginning to end. He was silent for a moment then laughed mournfully. What Overwatch Council? It's probably the family that wants to kill me. The bailiff straightened and lowered his voice. Since fourth Master already understands then don't take it too much to heart. It's for the good of the family. The Overwatch Council is forcing the family hard right now. Rumors say that they already entered the Ming Garden this morning. If nothing is done and trouble not stirred up, how could the Overwatch Council be willing to draw back their hand? You're the fourth master. It is worth it to use your life to temporarily ensure half a year of peace and safety for the family. The fourth Ming master cursed in a rage. Those sons of beaches, if they need someone to die, why don't they have the old matriarch die? FCK her ancestors. Having reached the moment of life and death, he understood why the Ming family would send someone to kill him. This was certainly not to silence him. He did not know anything about the core of the family business. This was a stain to be smeared onto the Overwatch Council's face. Since the Ming family had decided on the battle plan of feigning weakness and tragedy last year, they needed the death of the fourth master of the Ming family to be the explosive turning point. Thinking of this, his heart was unbearably hopeless, unhappy and angry. The bailiff's expression changed. The old matriarch is the protector of tens of thousands of families. Fourth master's words should be more respectful. The fourth Ming master smiled miserably. He backed toward the corner and cursed continuously. I am also a master of the Ming family. Why should it be me who has to die? Just because I'm not her true born? At this moment, Two bailiffs had already walked to the fourth Ming master's side. They completely ignored the fourth master's cursing and resistance. Taking out a scrap of dirty cloth, they stuffed it into his mouth blocking his obscenities. At the same time, they tied his hands behind his back. By this time, the noise in the room had already alarmed all of the prison. Many prisoners were looking curiously and fearfully towards this direction. The lead bailiff furrowed his brows and yelled. The Overwatch Council is conducting business. Silence, all of you. Even though they were locked in prison, these prisoners knew that, currently, the Overwatch Council was suppressing the Ming family. However, no one thought that the Overwatch Council could come into the prison to secretly kill the Fourth Master. They couldn't stop a chill running through them, and they gradually felt a sense of injustice for the Ming family but no one dared to look in that direction again. They were terrified of bringing trouble on themselves. Dot.
Dot. The bailiff looked at the plate of food in front of him and shook his head. He sighed in regret and said, you couldn't even eat your last meal. It's truly been hard on you. After saying this, he waved his hand. The two bailiffs who had caught the fourth master slipped a noose around his neck. The fourth master's neck was pulled tight, and his face turned a bright red. His two feet scrabbled against the floor and kicked up the straw dirtying the blanket underneath. The rope became tighter and tighter. The fourth Ming master's eyes seemed like they were about to pop out. His nostrils flared wide and he appeared strangely horrifying. The strength of his kicks became weaker and weaker, like a dying frog. He struggled weakly and without strength. It was easy to imagine the hopelessness in the heart of the fourth Ming master who was about to die. It was easy to imagine the hatred and resentment he felt toward that old woman of the Ming family and Ming kingdom. However, he was about to die. What could he do? The bailiff coldly watching the dying fourth master suddenly felt strange. His gaze slanted toward the cell next door and saw that the prisoner was looking at him. He looked at the bailiff coldly. Not like he was coldly watching the ruckus, but rather his face was completely expressionless. He suddenly turned and saw that the prisoner had removed something from the pile of straw and was aiming it at him. It was a crossbow. Thunk, thunk, thunk. The crossbow rang out three times and three bolts flew out. They accurately pierced the throats of the three bailiffs. Their hands flew to their throats, but they didn't have time to make a single sound before they fell to the floor. Their legs kicked a few times, and then they died. Once the bailiff died, the rope loosened. The originally dying fourth master kicked weakly and gradually recovered his strength. He slowly opened his eyes and looked at the prisoner in the cell beside his with a dazed and blurry gaze. He didn't know why the other party saved him, and he didn't see clearly how the other party saved him. The other prisoner was acting like he had done nothing. His eyes stared flatly into the distance as he squatted beside the bars. The fourth Ming master's entire body was sore and rubbery. He had also soiled his pants, and the stench was unbearable. However, he knew had just had a narrow escape. Suddenly, the thick wall behind him seemed to have been moved by spirits. A gash quietly opened up and revealed the deep blue sky outside. Dot. Dot. J.O.D.A. withdrew his large knife. His face was slightly pale, forcing his way through the thick walls of the Suzhou government prison had drained a lot of his zinky. He entered the cell, picked up the fourth Ming master with one hand and left again. Another official of the Overwatch Council entered and pulled out the bolts from the three bailiff's throat. He carefully arranged the scene inside the cell. Then he walked to the bars and extended his hand. The prisoner that had saved the fourth Ming master earlier did not say anything. He handed the Overwatch Council official the secret crossbow in his hand, then he pointed to the lunchbox to the side. The Overwatch Council official picked up a drumstick and placed it in his hand. The prisoner smiled and looked somewhat pleased. The Overwatch Council official lowered his voice and said, Wait another two months. Sir still needs you to be a witness. The prisoner nodded as he munched on the drumstick. Not long after the Overwatch Council official left, the prisoner flicked what was left of the drumstick into a cell across from him. Suddenly his expression changed and he cried hoarsely with distress and terror. Help, help. Someone is killing and escaping. Dot. Dot. The carriage left the little alley behind the Suzhou government and slowly drove to where the governor's manor was. However, there was now an extra person in the carriage. The fourth Ming master lay distressed and terrified under the chair in the carriage. He raised his head to gaze at the young and handsome figure, and couldn't speak for some time. Fans Yan shook his head and sighed. Indeed, the large and wealthy families are not very dark. Shortly after, he smiled slightly and said, Naturally, you already understand, so I will not need to say much. You need to have a good grasp on the Ming family of the future and work well with 7th Ming. The 4th Ming master swallowed. The scene of his narrow escape from death had been too much for his state of mind and did not allow him any consideration of the offer before he nodded his head fiercely. Fans Yan quietly said. The old matriarch wants to kill you but she fell into my Overwatch Council. She made it known to the public and created for me a shameless and cold-blooded appearance. She wanted to incite the public's emotions to protect the Ming family. However, now that I have rescued you, 
Instead the dirt is on the Ming family. To say that the Ming family broke into a prison. How do you think she will respond? The fourth Ming master's eyes were empty. He shook his head. Enduring the pain in his throat he hoarsely said, Sir. Don't underestimate that old dot that old whore. Chapter 393, Who Was Not Surprised? Fans Yan sat in the carriage, his eyes looking out. He said in a quiet voice. Regardless of whether you should be dead right now or captured by the Ming family, in any case, during this period of time, it's impossible for you to appear before people. The council has arranged for a place for you. Hide there and come out after this matter has settled down. The fourth Ming master weakly agreed. Fans Yan glanced back at him and couldn't help shaking his head. Back when I had seventh Ming meet with you. You should have agreed. Why the need for such a scare? The fourth Ming master gritted his teeth and said in a hoarse voice, Who would have thought this pair of mother and son could be so ruthless? Fans Yan shook his head impatiently, To protect such a large family, naturally, there needed to be many sacrifices. The fourth Ming master fell into silence. His hand touched his red, tight, and very sore throat. He knew he was nothing more than a sacrifice and did not have much right to ask for anything. When the carriage had traveled half the distance of the set route, another carriage took the fourth Ming master from Fans Yan's carriage. This left only Fans Yan and a few members of the Kenyan unit. The seven Tiger Guards were following JLDA's orders and were scattered around the carriage, covering up their tracks. Sir. Where are we going now? A subordinate asked in a low voice. Fans Yan thought about it and then said, Wait another half hour and then send a message to the governor's manor. I want to see Zhu King again. His gaze landed on this subordinate's face and asked, Earlier, did you make the appropriate arrangements in the prison? The subordinate said in a low voice, Yes. Furthermore, the Suzhou government has had someone keeping watch. The Ming family will not be able to escape the accusation of breaking out prisoners, only. Speak straightforwardly. Fans Yan furrowed his brows. I don't understand, if the Ming family wanted to kill the fourth Ming master to frame the Overwatch Council, there is no need to do it so ridiculously. Fans Yan shook his head and said, the methods are not important. What was important was the time, today. The Overwatch Council entered the Ming Garden to search it and the fourth Ming Master died in prison. Regardless of how he died or how the Ming family arranges his funeral. As long as he died, and his body is found by others, all of the gentry and people in Jiangnan will think that I had done it. He smiled and said, The Ming family. Has been waiting for me to grow impatient and enter the Ming Garden so they could throw out this sacrificial pawn. However, now that the fourth Ming master did not die, I am truly curious as to how the Ming family will continue to play the tragedy card. The carriage came slowly to a stop. The morning sun in Suzhou warmly and softly touched on the long street, touched on people's hearts, and then touched on the top of four-wheeled black carriage as if it wanted to stroke away the coldness in the heart of the person in it. Estimating that a ruckus had already started over in Ming Garden, Fans Yan lifted the curtain and stepped down from the carriage. The tiger guards gathered near him as he stepped toward the tall doors of the governor's manor. An official of the Overwatch Council had long delivered a calling card, so the doorman of the Yemen did not dare obstruct him. An advisor hurried out and invited Fans Yan inside. It was still in the study. In it was the governor, Zhu King, and the imperial envoy. Fans Yan. The latter straightforwardly expressed his reason for visiting and informed the governor that Overwatch Council people had already entered Ming Garden. After hearing of the situation that had already occurred, Zhu King's eyes tightened, almost unnoticeably, at the corners. He sighed and slowly said, There are many things that cannot be achieved by rushing. Going to Jiangnan to defeat the Ming family was an established policy of the King Emperor. Fans Yan was just the specific executor of this policy. As the Emperor's confidant, Zhu King knew the origins of this matter. However, he differed greatly from Fans Yan on the specific measures to be taken. The court had not set a timeline for the assimilation of the Ming family. The Emperor believed he had plenty of time and enough patience to slowly swallow up all of the large families in Jiangnan. Thus, accordingly, 
Zhu King did not want to act too hastily. He had always used appeasement as the main strategy to prevent creating too much trouble and causing chaos in Jiangnan, thereby destroying the foundations of the court's rule. Zhu King was not very happy about Fan's Yan coming directly to the Yaman and stating his entry into the Ming Garden. He still did not understand why Fan's Yan was in such a rush. He was a young, powerful noble, not yet twenty. What did he care if it took a few years? He also felt a thread of anger in his chest. He knew Fan's Yan's action was to force him onto the same boat and to pick up a knife. The Overwatch Council had already entered Ming Garden. If the two sides clashed, as the Jiangnan governor, no matter what, he had to ensure the peace. He would have to do whatever was necessary. Previously, Zhu King refused to relent because he didn't have the confidence they could defeat the Ming family, and he was worried about the talk in the capital. Now that Fan's Yan had played him, his rage gradually rose. In a low voice, he said, who will be responsible if it all goes wrong? Fan's Yan thought quietly for a bit and then said, there shouldn't be any problem. Zhu King looked at him coldly and said, not to pull rank. But I am still your senior no matter how you look at it. You haven't been careful enough in this matter. The Ming family has already feigned weakness for almost half a year. They were just waiting for you to take advantage of them. Now, you've taken that advantage through the door. How could they miss this opportunity? Fans Yan shook his head. What can they do now that I have entered Ming Garden? Zhu King lowered his eyelids slightly and said, the Ming family supports 1,000 private soldiers. Although the court has always known, for the sake of the contributions they've made for the court, they've always looked the other. For a large family of tens of thousands, it was not difficult for them to use various methods and give various reasons to support a thousand soldiers. After hearing this, Fans Yan couldn't help laughing coldly. Is it for contributions to the court or for contributions to the Junshang Conference? The words Junshang Conference silenced Zhu King. For such a mysterious organization with such limitless power to appear in the Jiangnan he governed, it had to be said that he had failed in his duty. He had been severely scolded in a secret letter from the emperor. Zhu King understood that Fans Yan was using the Junshang conference to pressure him. He could only helplessly shake his head. What exactly is your plan? Fans Yan was quiet for a moment and then said, the Ming family was going to kill the fourth Ming master and frame the Overwatch Council. I stopped this from happening. In the Suzhou government? Zhu King was slightly startled. Only now did he understand why Fans Yan appeared to have a card up his sleeve. 1000 private soldiers. But if the Ming family do not dare to raise their flag in rebellion, I only have to send in 40 people and they won't dare to move at all. Fans Yan continued to smile slightly. Don't they like to play using retreat as advancement? I want to see how far they can retreat. Zhu King watched him through half-closed eyes. They truly won't dare to move? You're not holding an imperial edict. Measure for measure, Fans Yan replied, I don't have an imperial edict, but I have the emperor's sword. Zhu King lightly said, the Ming Garden just has to wait for a few people to die to use that as an excuse to change their tune. They couldn't directly bury the 40 Overwatch Council spies in Ming Garden, it wouldn't be impossible. The Emperor's Sword? Ming Garden could find sufficient excuses to argue that they didn't know about this point. They just thought that Sir Fan Jr. of the Overwatch Council wanted to kill people and steal property, so they were forced to retaliate. Don't forget. The Ming family has laid down good foundations these last few months. For something like this to happen right now, everyone under heaven will believe their side. These words struck right at Fan Yan's heart. If they really pushed the Ming family too far, it was possible they would do such an insane thing. Given the Ming family's foundation and support in the capital, it was completely possible for them to shed all pretenses with Fan Yan and fight. Furthermore, it was the Overwatch Council who entered the Ming Garden first. Even if the two sides fought openly, public opinion would be on the side of the Ming family. However, unexpectedly by Zhu King, fans Yan did not seem to care about this at all. There was not a ripple of expression on that young, handsome face. Zhu King couldn't help furrowing his brows. Fans Yan finally opened his mouth. There was a light self-mocking smile at the corners of his mouth. While the Ming family was waiting for me to act, 
I was waiting for them to act, as long as all pretenses are shed. If they actually dared to touch my subordinates, I will, no matter what, accuse them of rebellion. I don't care if no one believes me. I will put that hat on the head of the Ming family matriarch, that old bastard. To say such crazy things in front of the governor proved that fans Yan didn't lack daring. However, his following words made Zhu King feel a slight chill. Naturally, no one will believe they would rebel, fans Yan said with a slight smile. But once I strike, the black knights that have been staying in Jiang Bai would come. I will have everyone in the Ming Garden killed, as long as everyone in the six families are all dead, who will cry for the injustice. The gentry or the people of Jiangnan? He continued to say calmly, even if they brought their injustice to Jingdu. So what? Even if they brought the lawsuit before the crown, so what? The people in the six families have been wiped out by me backslash. There would only be Xiaqai Fi left and, at most, the addition of the fourth Ming master for show. The court would still receive the Ming family's property. As long as the goal is reached, it's fine if the methods are somewhat dirty. He turned his head and stared at Zhu King's eyes. I trust that if my Overwatch Council loses 40 something people and then I move the Black Knights to Suzhou, you won't obstruct me. Right? Zhu King's pupils constricted. If matters really developed in this way, if the Overwatch Council threw in 40 something officials and he still forcefully obstructed the Black Knights from coming south, he was afraid the Overwatch Council would truly flip out. If he angered that old man in the wheelchair, then even if he was the governor, it would probably still not end well for him. Looking at fans Yan's warm and innocent eyes, Zhu King felt a sudden chill for no reason. He had a whole new understanding of the young official beside him. It turns out that Commissioner Fan of the Overwatch Council was indeed a ruthless person who killed without blinking. Indeed, the younger generation handled matters with sufficient craziness. What about you? Having massacred the Ming Garden, naturally, Fan's Yan would have to suffer the consequences. Zhu King still did not believe Sir Fan Jr. would make this gamble with the Ming family. I, at most, they'll remove all of the noble positions, remove me from my post, and reduce me to a commoner. And exiled 3,000 Li away. Fan's Yan seemed to be thinking of his own end. He laughed out loud and said, It's not like you don't know. I can go anywhere under heaven. Zhu King couldn't stop himself shaking his head and sighing. Then the 40 subordinates you sent into the Ming Garden. They're all sacrifices. Fans Yan closed his eyes and shook his head. Not necessarily, I was only talking about the worst possible situation. I believe, given the cunning of the mother and son of the Ming family. They will certainly not make this choice. I am very curious how exactly the Ming family will respond. This is like playing cards. I might not win with this one round, but I am curious which card the other party will play. He opened his eyes and smiled. Sometimes, I have the curiosity of a gambler. I dot him also beginning to feel curious. Zhu King's eyelids quivered slightly. I hope your judgment was right and that account Master Zhu is still in Ming Garden. Relax. Fans Yan encouraged this governor. I have someone in Ming Garden. Zhu King furrowed his brows. He didn't know who exactly Fans Yan had placed into the Ming Garden. Given his identity, it was not convenient for him to ask. So he closed his mouth and did not speak. The two leading figures of the Jiangnan officialdom sat like this in silence in the study, waiting for news to come from Ming Garden. They didn't wait long before the news came. The advisor of the governor's manor approached Zhu King's side and whispered for a moment in his ear. Zhu King became silent, and then he looked at Fan Zhan. He sighed and said, the card the other party played seemed to have been beyond your expectations. I am going to start mobilizing soldiers. Fans Yan furrowed his brows slightly. Zhu King continued to smile bitterly and said, I'm mobilizing soldiers. For the protection of your subordinates and not to prevent you massacring the Ming Garden. Zhu King knew he didn't have to tell him in detail. He hurried out of the study with a still shocked expression. Fans Yan stood and heard the whole story from the mouth of the member of the Kenyan unit outside. The Overwatch Council's information should have traveled faster than that of the governor's manor, but because he was caught, after all, in the governor's manor. The information actually ended up arriving slower.
After fans Jan had heard what had happened in Ming Garden today, he still couldn't help reacting like Governor Zhu King. A shocked expression came across his face and his mouth was slightly open. He signed and said, Extreme. Even more extreme than me. He was ready to curse out some obscenities to release the feeling of absurdity in his heart, but in the end, he resisted. He smiled bitterly and shook his head. His expression gradually became calm, and then he gave out orders. Of Dengzi you pull everyone back. Do not respond to attacks or verbal assaults. The official of the Kenyan unit accepted the orders and left. Following this, Fan Xian walked out of the main doors of the governor's Yemen only to see that the Yemen was in chaos. Most of the officials who did not know what was happening looked at each other. They did not understand why the governor had picked now to inspect the governance of the city. Why was he calling at this time for all the military officials in the city to come to the manor to discuss matters? Fan Xian had the right to participate in the discussion. But he knew it was not appropriate for him to stay in the governor's manor today. He would have to trouble Zhu King to quell the unrest that was about to arrive, while he should go do something else. In the carriage, Fan Shan rubbed between his eyes. He suddenly said to Tiger Guard Jouda, Actually, a lot of times, how a matter progresses completely depends on the order in which people die. Jouda was startled. He did not understand what the commissioner was talking about. Fans Yan scratched his head and said, Clearly, I wanted him to die, but if he died before I wanted him to die, then dot we actually have some problems. Who died? Jouda asked with a frown, the great grandmother in the eyes of the Jiangnan people. The matriarch that saved who knows how many poor people. Fans Yan smiled slightly. Because she couldn't stand the humiliation of the Overwatch Council entering Main Garden and the oppression by Sir Fan Jr. over the last while. This morning, she hung herself in anger. The old Ming matriarch committed suicide. Jouda fell into shock. Although he was from Jingdu, he knew of the prestige and status that this old ancestor of the Ming family had throughout Jiangnan. Using her death to demonstrate her convictions, fans Yang laughingly scolded. Ming King Da sure is ruthless enough, even more ruthless than his mother. In reality, the old Ming matriarch did not want to die. Even though the old Ming matriarch was gradually becoming older and older and the breath of her life had flowed out for many years. Even though she had sufficiently enjoyed a happy and prosperous life, she still did not want to die. The Ming family had a great reputation in Jiangnan. Opening shop and giving out porridge, sponsoring scholars, and such, the Ming family had done countless such charitable acts. This old Ming matriarch was like a benevolent immortal from the skies in the heart of these people. Wrapped from head to toe in honey sweet and glowing clothing to the point that now the Jiangnan people, and even some from further away, had begun to erect shrines to her. Clearly, the old Ming matriarch had not connected her life to the shrines, and she had never thought that now the shrines have been erected. She could have, or rather should have, lived for a few days. In this beautiful morning, hearing that the Overwatch Council spies had entered the Ming Garden to search, the old woman had been angry and cursed. After Ming Garden was constructed, when has it ever been searched by the government? Even if the governor was entering the manor, he had to bring his manners. These Overwatch Council bastards. The little garden she lived in was deep in Ming Garden. She couldn't hear the clamor of the Overwatch Council searching the front at all. However, this kind of humiliation still made her angry. She narrowed her eyes and said, Are you planning to allow our family to be thus bullied? Standing beside her was Ming Kingda. His face was slightly gray. He understood what his mother was saying. In a small voice, he replied, The people have gone, only dot forth, after all, is also a brother. The old Ming matriarch looked at her son coldly and with irritation, thinking, If you're not truthless, how can you accomplish big things? How could you have the family struggling at death's door under the Overwatch Council's powerful attacks and endure until the day that the tables turn in the capital? You have to be ruthless. The old Ming matriarch scolded. Ming Kingda glanced at his mother's wrinkled face. A very filial smile appeared on his face as he acknowledged her words. Chapter 394 Black mud beneath the white frost in the city. The Overwatch Council charged into Ming Garden like this today because of Mr. Zhu, 
Ming Kingda glanced at his elderly mother and said evenly, Do you think we should? The old Ming matriarch looked at him coldly. She knew what he meant. Housekeeper Zhu was the main housekeeper of the Ming family, and he was also the accounts master of the Junshang conference. He was too important. If they let the Overwatch Council find him, many of the Junshang conference's secrets would be known to fans Yan and, through him, the Emperor. Regardless of whether it was for the protection of Ming Garden or the safety of the Junshang Conference, Housekeeper Zhu had to die. However, there was a problem. The matriarch sighed gently and said, It's not like you don't know, but Mr. Zhu was sent to us by the eldest princess. Whether or not to kill him, it is not our decision to make. The search is about to reach the back, Ming King said without expression. But a cold smile flashed through his heart. Junshang Conference? How was an organization at that level something a wealthy and large merchant family like the Ming family should be implicated in? As expected, now that they were past the point of no return, they couldn't get rid of it even they wanted to. He always had a deep prejudice against the old matriarch binding them so close to the side of the eldest princess. As for the Junshang Conference, he found it even more necessary to avoid. The old matriarch slowly closed her eyes. Relax, Mr. Zhu's safety shouldn't be a problem. The old woman suddenly furrowed her brows and said hesitantly, There is one matter I still don't understand. Why is the imperial envoy so certain that Mr. Zhu is still hidden in Ming Garden? If he doesn't find him, how will he explain it to the world? Ming Kingda's heart thumped. A similar look of confusion rose on his face. The matriarch thought about it and felt a bit tired. She shook her head weakly. Her white hair clearly showed her age. I'm tired, the old woman said irritably. Don't let those Overwatch Council's thugs disturb my rest. Relax, mother. Ming Kingda walked to her side and placed both his hands on her shoulders. He seemed to be getting ready to help her stand. In an even voice, he said, No one will disturb your rest ever again. Dot. Dot. The old matriarch suddenly turned her head back and saw guilt, fear, and malevolence appear then immediately disappear from the eyes of her trueborn son. Then her mouth was covered with a leather rope wrapped tightly around her throat. She wanted to cry out but could not make a sound. Her hands were held tightly by her own son. She could only kick with her small feet. They kicked randomly and made clapping sounds. Endless fear and anger flashed through the old woman's eyes. She stared intensely at her female servant not far from her. She had countless trusted and aids in the manor, but at this moment, None of them were beside her. She didn't know where they had disappeared to. The female servant glanced at the old Ming matriarch and slowly turned her body around. The rope at her throat became tighter and tighter. The matriarch could not breathe. A fiery pain was in her chest. Her eyes began to fade. She knew everyone had betrayed her. However, compared to the betrayal, the strong and thick sense of remorse and hatred were even more difficult to suppress. It flowed out with her tears and the saliva from her mouth. You have to be more ruthless. To succeed in great matters, of course, there needs to be a sacrifice. All of these words suddenly rang out again, accompanying the ringing in her ear, just before death attacked the old woman's heart. Her eyes bulged. She stared intensely at her trueborn son in front of her. Ming King lowered his head unwaveringly. He grasped her hands and didn't make a sound. Perhaps a long time passed, or perhaps it was only a short instant that passed, but the chest of this old Ming matriarch sitting in the grand wheelchair, who controlled Jiangnan from the shadows for decades, gave a muffled thump. Her body suddenly became soft. Her feel dangled lifelessly below the chair and did not make any movements. When people were old, they should rest. Dot. Dot. The Overwatch Council search of Ming Garden was not going smoothly. Although no one dared to obstruct them, Deng Ziyu could feel the anger in the gazes of the people growing stronger and stronger. Furthermore, the guards and hired thugs staring and waiting in the shadows could pull out their weapons and rush up at any moment. There was no nice way of searching the home. All along the way they overturned tables and chests, and berated everyone in stern voices to return to their rooms. They appeared to have the imposing manner of an evil predator and incited a sense of enmity among everyone in Ming Garden. However, 
Deng Ziyu was not worried, as Commissioner Fan had told him to enter the garden, he must certainly be confident, as expected, although the people looked at him with loathing and hatred, no one dared to obstruct him. However, Ming Garden was too big. After looking for a while, they had only searched half of it and had not found any trace of housekeeper Zhu. I am going to search the back garden, Deng Ziyu said to the young master of the eldest branch, Ming Lanshai who had been beside him the entire time. No, Ming Lanshai stared intensely at him and harshly said, What exactly do you want to do? Do you really think the Ming family is so easily dishonored? In the back garden lived the woman and relatives. How could it be searched? Ming Lanshai used this as a pretext to kick up a fuss and angrily cursed out the Overwatch Council officials. Deng Ziyu set his face and refused to budge even a single step. In his hand he held a document written in Fan Yan's own hand on which was the Imperial Envoy's seal. It was sufficient excuse for a search. Of course, he couldn't search in the name of the Overwatch Council. He could only do it in the name of the Imperial Envoy of Jiangnan. It must be noted that the Overwatch Council was not allowed to be involved in local governmental affairs. They were particularly not allowed to judge civil matters on their own authority. The outing today was a move of hanging a sheep's head while selling dog meat. It could be said that Fans Yan was borrowing soldiers. The two sides faced off in front of the door to the back garden. The Ming Garden guards had resisted for a long time and couldn't resist anymore. Obscenities flowed out as they cursed endlessly. Under the impassioned emotions, the hired thugs and private soldiers that were supposed to stay hidden at the sides emerged and completely surrounded almost 40 Overwatch Council officials in the center of the yard. Deng Ziyu darkened his face and said coldly, Young Master Ming, are we to continue searching. Or are you prepared to resist the Imperial Edict? When the Imperial Envoy was out, they represented the Emperor's wishes. Who dared to resist an edict? Ming Lanshai's face turned green then white. He tightly gritted his teeth and acted sufficiently humiliated and embarrassed. A moment later, he roared in an angry voice, Go search. The heaven has eyes. I don't believe that the Overwatch Council won't have retribution in the future for bullying others through force. Why would Deng Ziyu pay attention to all this? With his hand holding the hilt of his simple knife, he stepped toward the back garden. Unexpectedly, he had not gone ten steps when someone came rushing out straight into him. He saw the person wore the outfit and accessories of a servant, based on the quality of her clothing and appearance. She was also an important person in Ming Garden. This girl's face was deathly pale and her eyes were lifeless. She charged toward the crowd crazily like she had seen a ghost. She cried out indistinctly, Dead, 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 dead? Deng Ziyu felt his heart jump and some kind of inauspicious omen. He frowned and stopped the girl. In a severe voice, he asked, What happened? There was a trace of the haughty air of a large family on the girl's face. But right now she seemed to have been overly shocked. Her face was a mask of distress and terror. She trembled for a long time and couldn't say a complete sentence. She could only shake uncontrollably in front of Deng Ziyu. If he had not ignored Abu and grabbed her arm, she would probably have collapsed to the ground already. The Overwatch Council people searching the garden did not recognize the girl, but the Ming family people knew her. She was the old matriarch's personal servant and one of her confidants. Suddenly, everyone from the six branches gathered around. Seeing her expression, they couldn't help being scared and wonder what exactly had happened. Ming Lanshai urgently grabbed the girl from Deng Ziyu's hand. Holding on to her collar, he asked, What's wrong? Who died? Deng Ziyu stood at the side and watched with cold eyes. A strange light flashed through his eyes. The girl servant was shaken by the young master a few times before she finally regained her senses. Her mouth cracked open. Before she could say anything, she first burst into mournful tears. Young master, the old matriarch. The old matriarch, she. What happened to the old matriarch? The old matriarch. She's gone. The girl servant struggled to finish her sentence. Then her head tilted and she fainted in Ming Lanshai's arms. It was like Ming Lanshai had been struck by lightning. He stood there in a daze. For a moment, he couldn't believe his own ears. The members of the six branches around him all looked at each other with wide eyes and wide mouths, 
frozen like countless frogs. It seemed they did not know how to use a shocked expression to express their current inner feelings. The old matriarch was gone. The old matriarch was gone. The yard remained deathly silent for a long time. The first cry suddenly exploded out and was followed by rising cries. It was like a grand chorus of singing. The miserable cries and sobs rose and fell in succession. Many people sat down in shock unable to stand up again no matter what. Ming Garden was enveloped in an atmosphere of shock and sorrowful rage. Other than the fourth Ming master in the Suzhou prison and Master Ming, who was beside the old matriarch, masters from the four branches were present. These four men cried and sobbed. Pushing aside the dazed Ming Lan Shai, they lifted their long gowns and charged into the back garden. Instantly, no one cared about the rule of not entering back garden without permission. No one had to give a cry for the hundreds of people who had appeared in Ming Garden to rush into the back garden accompanied by sobs. The Overwatch Council officials present looked at each other and had become the most awkward group of people. Deng Ziyu's pupil constricted and felt a sense of crises. When he had accepted his orders and came to search the garden today, he never thought that it would turn into such a situation. Although they didn't know how the old matriarch had died, Deng Ziyu was sure that she had died too miraculously and coincidentally. It was so ingenious that the Overwatch Council wouldn't be able to avoid the responsibility if they tried. A moment earlier, he caught sight of Ming Lan Shai's state of mind which made more questions arise in the depths of his heart. The old Ming matriarch's death had shocked everyone in Ming Garden. The guards all rushed out and charged to the Overwatch Council side. With weapons and bows in their hands, they enveloped the Overwatch Council. Hatred flashed in their gazes. Deng Ziyu furrowed his brows slightly and knew that if they made one misstep right now, it would end in a fight. However, before they came, the commissioner had explained clearly things dot shouldn't have developed like this. He made a prompt decision and ordered his subordinates to enter the back garden. Ming Garden was in a state of chaos, so no one had the time to care about them. Furthermore, those Ming Garden private soldiers holding weapons and watching them would never attack in the place where the old Ming matriarch had died. Dot. Dot. They walked in the back garden for a long time. Following the sounds of crying, Deng Ziyu saw the ground covered with kneeling people outside of a quiet little garden. He couldn't help feeling a chill in his heart. Sweeping his gaze around, he saw in the large central room, below the rough roof beam, a long white sash with a person hanging from the end. It was an old woman. The old woman's hands hung by her side. The points of her feet pointed toward the ground and she swayed in the air with a gentle spring breeze. The scene was just as creepy as it seemed, particularly the pair of bulging eyes that refused to close. The eyes were bloodshot from her final struggle before death and looked out full of hate and dissatisfaction. Coincidentally, they looked straight at the Overwatch Council officials outside the garden. Deng Ziyu was arrested by the sight of the dead person's gaze. He quickly turned his head and ordered his subordinates to be prepared to break out at any moment. The sound of crying filled the garden. The descendants knelt across the ground, sobbing their eyes out and endlessly kowtowing. The old Ming matriarch was dead. Ming Garden would certainly hold the Overwatch Council responsible for this debt. With emotions in the crowd running so high, no one knew what would happen. However, the path of retreat had long been blocked by the private soldiers, who watched them like predators with eyes full of hatred. If they were to kill their way out, it would be difficult. Before long, Ming Kingda, whose forehead was already bleeding from his kowtowing, removed the old matriarch's body from the roof beam with the help of his four brothers. He forcefully suppressed his sorrow and made the related arrangements for the funeral, and then led his four brothers out of the garden. No one dared to talk. Everyone used their exit to stare at the Overwatch Council officials outside. Deng Ziyu had never had this many people want to devour him. The Ming family's gaze already expressed this kind of hatred clearly. He knew that right now they could not retreat. Once they retreated and news of it got out, it would bring great danger to the Overwatch Council. If the moment the old Ming matriarch died, the people of the Overwatch Council fearfully retreated. What was this but an act of a guilty conscience?
He set his face and narrowed his eyes. The old Ming matriarch colluded with Dong Yi and committed suicide for her crimes. Temporarily pause the funeral arrangements. After her cause of death has been determined, then proceed. From the perspective of the Overwatch Council, he had to appear particularly unyielding at this time. For the Ming family, the old ancestor had just died and the Overwatch Council had already accused her of committing suicide for her crimes. No one could endure this. The sixth young master loved to wrestle and was a big man with a crude personality. Adding to the fact he was the youngest of the Ming children and always the best loved by the old matriarch. He also had the strongest feelings for the old matriarch. His mother had just suddenly died. In his moment of sorrow and rage, when he heard Deng Ziyu's words, he turned around, grabbed a chair, and began to bring it down on him. Deng Ziyu lifted his knife and blocked the chair with a clunk. The sixth young master's eyes were red, and the muscles in his face twisted. In a sharp howl, he said, Come. Beat this group of heartless hired thugs to death. The Ming family guards were waiting for this order. In this half year, they had almost been suffocated by the Overwatch Council's suppression. No matter how they bowed and scraped, they were unable to protect themselves. Today, they had even forced the old matriarch to death. Looking at the Overwatch Council officials present, it was like looking at evil dogs that had charged into their home. The crowd roared and rushed forward with their weapons fearing that they would not attack fiercely enough. Clangs and bangs ran out in the chaotic fight. From the moment he found about the old matriarch's death, Deng Ziyu knew that things were going to go wrong and had warned his subordinates to be prepared to do battle. Although the battle came suddenly, none of them were caught off guard. The people of the 4th Bureau formed into a small defensive circle and pulled out the plain knives at their waists, ready to do battle. For a while, only the sounds of the wind could be heard, and only the light flashing off the swords and knives could be seen. Occasionally, there was a fresh tragic cry accompanied by the scared screaming of the Ming family women. Ming Garden had the advantage of numbers. Within the private soldiers, there were a few aces and masters who showed their faces. Many of the Overwatch Council were injured, and blood flowed like it cost nothing. Although the 4th Bureau was not a martially powerful yeoman of the Overwatch Council, they were, after all, people who had received professional training. Although people were injured, they were immediately replaced by those within the circle. They barely managed to maintain the defensive circle and successfully repel the Ming family's private soldiers' first wave of attack. But dot how long could they last? The sixth young master was about to go crazy, yelling with all his strength. There came the light sound of a slap. The sixth young master's face received a slap. He turned his head in shock to see his eldest brother's still sorrowful but more so rage-filled face. Ming King lowered his voice and gritted his teeth. Do you want the whole clan to die as well? Not waiting for the shocked and dazed sixth young master to reply, Ming King da set his face and yelled, Everyone! Stop. His voice was not loud and so many people did not hear. Spots of red appeared on Ming Kingda's pale face and he raised his voice to a roar. Do you want to rebel? Dot. Dot. After all, he was the master of this generation in name. After the old matriarch's death, the words in name could be removed. Under Ming Kingda's order, all of the thugs in Ming Garden stopped and retreated. The crowd parted to make a path. Ming Kingda coldly followed the path and walked forwards until he reached the Overwatch Council officials. The master of the Ming family looked coldly at Deng Ziyu like he was looking at an evil dog waiting to die. Deng Ziyu did not appear weak at all and smiled coldly. Master Ming, you asked a good question. Are you really going to rebel? Ming Kingda's gaze carried a trace of coldness and disdain. Yet he still did not say anything. At this time, what response could the Ming family make? Kill the 40 officials of the Overwatch Council in front of them. Without even needing to wait for an edict from Jingdu, Sir Fan Jr. sitting Suzhuan Governor Zhu King could mobilize troops at any moment and wipe out Ming Garden. But dot the other party had forced his mother to death. All of these doubts and painful internal struggles appeared on Ming Kingda's face and it was all seen by the Ming family and Overwatch Council officials. Brother, the sixth young master rushed crying to Ming Kingda's side. They forced mother to her death. 
we can't let these dogs leave alive. After everyone in Ming Garden had gradually calmed down, they seemed to all understand the difficulty and struggle in the Ming master's heart. The sixth master was not an exception. The mother and son relationship ran deep. How could he endure this anger? The humiliation and pain you have brought to the Ming family. Ming Kingda's mouth trembled slightly. His face was deathly pale as he stared at Deng Ziyu's and said, The Ming family will return in tenfold. As for today, kneel and ask forgiveness from the old matriarch and I shall let you leave the garden. The sixth young master could not believe his ears. He urgently said, Brother, you can't let it go just like this. On the contrary, it was Deng Ziyu standing opposite who narrowed his eyes and said after a moment of thought, Master Ming, you should know that the Overwatch Council kneels only for the heaven, the earth, and the ruler. We do not kneel for anyone else. Ming King furrowed his brows. His spirit seemed to have taken a major hit after today's repeated attacks. He stood a bit unsteady and barely managed to hold on to the Sixth Master's shoulder, which also prevented the Sixth Master from acting rashly. In a hoarse voice, he said, Then dot the good and bad will burn together. As they were talking, Deng Ziyu felt the gaze with which Ming Kingda looked at him seemed to be trying to signal some kind of deep hidden meaning, but he couldn't figure it out. Ming Kingda sighed in his heart. He had not expected the Overwatch Council would be so unyielding to not be willing to make any superficial concessions even in the face of such a dangerous situation. The confrontation continued. It could explode at any moment. There were always a clever figure or two of the six masters. Seeing that the situation was not right and hearing their eldest brother words, they felt a trace of alarm. As merchants, what right did they have to burn alongside the court? To smash a rock with an egg, putting on this appearance would not make the rock lose anything. Furthermore, they weren't true-born sons of the old Ming matriarch. Why should they pay with their lives? So, the second master and third master both came around. They put a sorrowful expression on their faces and leaned close to Ming King Dezir to urge the Ming master to put the tens of thousands of lives in the family first and temporarily endure it. They had to slowly plan for the revenge for the old matriarch. Ming King De had personally killed the old matriarch, so he already had a guilty conscience. The paleness of his face was not purposely enacted. In the current situation, he had to act like he and the Overwatch Council could not live under the same sky and the two powers could not coexist. Now that the second and third masters had come out to persuade him, he felt a bit more at ease and put on an expression of a painful struggle. No one knew how long the confrontation went on when suddenly there was a clamor outside of the garden. Following it was the thundering of hooves and countless riders as their horses crashed in. Ming Kingda's heart stuttered, thinking. The Overwatch Council's Black Knights were clearly still in Jiangbai, so they couldn't have charged into the garden right now. Who were the newcomers? Dot. Dot. Thousands of soldiers and their horses swept in with spears as dense as a wooded forest and an impressive military might. Immediately, they separated the Ming family's private soldiers and Overwatch Council officials. For a moment. The dust rose and the grandeur was imposing. The people who had come were the provincial soldiers the Jiangnan governor had mobilized. Using an urgent order, they had rushed as quickly as possible and made it before the disaster began. They stood between the two groups, who had their swords drawn and bows drawn. The leader was an experienced general. He had already heard what had happened. With a serious expression, he exchanged some words with Ming Kingda. Originally, he wanted to enter to pay his respects to the old matriarch, but he knew that Ming Garden was not ready, so he could only drop the subject. Along with the provincial military entering the garden, there was also a member of the Kenyan unit of the Overwatch Council. He moved closer to Deng Ziyu's side and relayed the two sentences the commissioner had said. Deng Ziyu was surprised. It wasn't a problem to retreat right now. With thousands of provincial soldiers present, even if the Ming family wanted to make a move they wouldn't be able to. The problem was if they did so, did they not make true the fact the Overwatch Council had forced the death of the old Ming matriarch? He did not understand what fans Yan was thinking. The best response was clearly to mobilize the Black Knights and use this as an excuse to completely wipe out the Ming family. However, 
the arrival of the provincial military protected the lives of the Overwatch Council officials, but they also prevented the possibility of the Black Knights massacring the Garden. As for Deng Ziyu's suspicions about the cause of the old matriarch's death. Only the Suzhou government had the authority to investigate it, the Overwatch Council did not have this authority. However, all of the government officials in the Jiangnan region belonged to the Ming family, so they were certain not to find any problems. He was even more confused. Just what arrangements had the commissioner made? Were they still going to capture housekeeper Zhu? Was he just going to allow the situation to develop like this? Dot. Dot. It was the depths of spring, yet Suzhu was covered in silver adornments and plain wrappings. It was not snow. Yet it was colder than snow. It seemed like all the people of Suzhou were wearing mourning. Those strips of snow white cloth were like strands of imperial orders. Speaking of the Ming family matriarch's benevolence and contributions to the Jiangnan people, the news of the old Ming matriarch's death seemed to spread throughout Jiangnan in a single night, and the specific circumstances of her death spread through the mouths of different people and became stranger and stranger. Regardless of which version of events they heard, the blame was all squarely pointed at the Overwatch Council. The anger of the people began to converge, yet they could not, at the moment, find a channel through which to vent it. The Overwatch Council Yemen had always been secretive, and so temporarily there hadn't been a heroic scene of tens of thousands of people sealing the door and demanding justice. As for who a garden where the Imperial Envoy lived. It was heavily guarded. The people, for now, did not yet have the daring to demonstrate there. Thus, everyone could only wear mourning and use the sorrow and anger on their faces, and the hate-filled cursing in the marketplace, to express their silent protest. This was against the Overwatch Council as well as against Sir Fan Jr. The old Ming matriarch's mourning hall had not yet opened. So the officials and nobles from various places who had come to offer their condolences were temporarily living in Suzhou. The entire city was enveloped in that cold atmosphere and was at odds with the surrounding spring scene. However, fans Yan did not care about this. His skin was thick enough, his heart black enough, and his spirit strong enough to be able to pretend the entire city wearing mourning was a movie from his previous life. As for those voices that cursed him from the shadows and in the light, he was able to prevent them from entering his ears. He sat in the top floor of the Suzhou branch of the Zindong restaurant that he had booked. In his heart, he only worried about Hai Tang. She had gone in his stead to apprehend Mr. Zhu of the Junsheng conference and had not yet returned. He didn't know if she had run into danger. Thinking of this, he couldn't help giving a self-mocking laugh. In this world. The only people who could hurt Duo Duo were those great grandmasters. He picked up his whole bowl and slurped up some noodles before giving a satisfied sigh. Then, he opened his mouth to say, Master Ming, I've really been wretchedly played by you this time. Ming Kingda knelt at his side, repeatedly kowtowing, and fawningly said, Sir's thinking is as agile as the Yangtze River and your power is as lofty as a mountain. How could you care about such a tiny breeze around you? Chapter 395, I watch the people's hearts from above. Torrential river water, a flooding yellow river. Rise, you are now the true master of the Ming family. You don't have to be so careful in front of me. Fans Yan took his measure of Ming Kingda with an amused gaze and then picked up his bowl to slurp up more noodles to eat. Ming Kingda had secretly came to Zin restaurant. He had been very careful to avoid the eyes and ears of everyone, and he also felt a bit nervous. After all, a sorrowful and angry atmosphere was building in Suzhou. All 10,000 of the Ming clan were watching this master. If others knew that he had come secretly to see the Imperial Envoy, he probably wouldn't be the master for much longer. However, Although they had met today, the Imperial Envoy would still not say anything clearly. Ming Kingda found this to be a bit peculiar. Fans Yang put down the bowl and thought for a bit before speaking. There is no need to talk about anything else. I will only ask you, the Mr. Zhu you promised to give me, where is he now? Ming Kingda felt the chill and imposing force in the Imperial Envoy's words and unconsciously lowered his head to explain himself. That person. I was not able to control him and let him out of the garden. This is my mistake. 
Please punish me. Punish? Fans. Yan smiled self-mockingly. Now that you've done this, how can I punish you? Ming King decided and said, by this point, do you still not believe my sincerity? Fans. Yan shook his head and said, last time in the courtyard of the palace treasury I already said you must hold the blow like a dragon spitting pearls, to reach with chopsticks like a phoenix bending its head, to eat until mostly full and to pack away what is not finished God being a person is like eating a meal, the pose must be beautiful and you must know your limits. He stared at Ming King's eyes. In our agreement, you sell the person to me and respond as necessary to the situation, but it did not involve the later content. You did not tell me about this matter and did it yourself. The current situation puts me in a very difficult position. Ming King da was quiet for a moment and then said quietly, Matters are already like this. In order for the Ming family not to dissolve and to smoke in my hands, some of the people obstructing ahead need to rest. I trust you will be able to understand. Understanding is one matter. You acting on your own without my receiving my permission is another matter. Fans Yan scolded. Don't think you can use the opportunity of my subordinates entering the garden to do as you wish and that this matter will be completely hidden. You have to know. I have paid too high a price for this matter. Right now, the entire Jiangnan is watching me. Have a think about how you can fix this situation. Ming Kingda was silent. A moment later, he said, This is my fault, I will think of a solution. Fans Yan nodded his head, but he actually did not particularly trust this ruthless and cunning old fox. Ming Kingda saw that the Imperial Envoy's expression had cleared a bit. Only then did he gather his courage to speak. Sir. There were people in Ming Garden who surrounded and attacked the Overwatch Council officials. This matter has to be investigated. Hearing these words, fans Yan couldn't help but smile. Not only was this Ming Master ruthless, but the thickness of his skin was actually comparable to his own. He sighed and said, if these words were heard by outsiders, who knows how shocked they would be. The master of the Ming family is actually urging the Overwatch Council to investigate Ming Garden. Ming Kingda smiled slightly and said, If I don't do so, how can I have you trust me? Relax. Fans Yan calmed down. My identity and position are not the same as yours. You are unable to hand me Mr. Zhu, but I will still do what I promised you. I will deal with 6th Ming. You won't need to worry. However, he stared at Ming Kingda's eyes and said in an imposing manner, As I said earlier, you played me this time, and now everyone in Jiangnan wishes they could devour me. You have to think of a way to handle this matter, otherwise, you know the consequences. Ming Kingda bowed sincerely and accepted the order. Then he carefully asked, What about fourth? Fans Yan was silent and did not answer his question. Ming King sighed and knew that the Imperial Envoy had to hold some information to use against him to feel at ease with allowing him to sit in the position as the head of the Ming family. Concerning the matter of the fourth master being broken out of jail, the Overwatch Council had witnesses. They could throw it out any moment to have him killed. Fans Yan gave him a not quite their smile. How could he bring out such a piece as the fourth master right now? If they didn't follow up the jailbreak matter, then there would be little use of for the fourth master. If they did follow up with is, the fourth master would only die. Would it not be a waste for him to die like this right now? The emotions are still running high in your family. Don't rush the matter of cleaning out the old matriarch's trusted aides, fans Yan advised. He suddenly smiled and said, In these matters, you are more experienced than me. My words are extra. Ming Kingda quickly replied respectfully, It's all thanks to your advice along the way. Don't lie. The corner of fans Yan's mouth corked up and he stopped him speaking. The ferocity of the last method was not something I could have thought of. Besides, fans Yan said in a quiet voice, after the matter has cooled down, you need to arrange for the matter of Ziakai fire returning to the family. Ming Kingda suddenly raised his head. He looked at fans Yan with a calm but complicated gaze. A moment later he faintly said, you still don't trust me. In the future, don't say so many pompous things. Fans Yan said, you know, and I also know, you don't trust, so, 
I also don't trust you. Ziak Hi-Fi is someone that I can truly trust. Each day that he doesn't enter Ming Garden to discuss the matter, the agreement between us will not be considered made. The furrow between Ming Kingda's brows appeared to grow even deeper. He took a deep breath and said, When King Cheng was young, he and I had disagreements. I'm afraid he hates me to the bone right now, but, I will follow your orders. I am willing to back down. However, the old matriarch just passed away. Right now the emotions are high. Everyone knows that King Cheng is your trusted aide. If I let him return home, I'm afraid I won't be able to suppress the backlash of the tens of thousands of people in the clan. Fans Yan shook his head and said straightforwardly, Look at the situation. Everyone in Jiangnan hates me. Do you think I care about the backlash from the tens of thousands of people from your clan? You created this situation. So you will have to settle the backlash. I only ask for results. As for the process, that is something for you to worry about. Ming Kingda's face darkened slightly. This matter dot is truly rather difficult. There is nothing difficult. Fans Yan smiled mockingly and looked at him. I have always had an appreciation for your methods. The old matriarch is about to be buried, and the Overwatch Council has no authority to investigate anything. However, I will have the grave constantly watched. It is better for it to be difficult for you than for it to be difficult for me. If I am truly put in a difficult situation that is impossible to endure, then you should face difficulties for your entire life. The Overwatch Council already had enough information to use against Minkingda. If he got any ideas again, before fans Yan's good days came to an end, Ming Kingda would have first died of a thousand wounds. With the situation as it was, Ming Kingda understood that although his crafty plan had allowed him to be the true master of the Ming family, he had sat down right in a volcano, particularly that last move which he had hidden from the Imperial Envoy. Although it meant that the Overwatch Council would no longer be able to threaten the Ming family, it had also truly angered fans Yan toward this kind of naked threat. Ming Kingda knew he could only wholly accept it. He had done such an unfilial thing. Unexpectedly, in the end, it had all completely benefited the other party. He raised his head and looked at the Imperial Envoy. Sir, that's very calculating. Fans Yan was not angry at all and laughed heartily. You like to calculate others, and now you think you have been calculated by me, so you feel unhappy. However, don't think too highly of me. In this regard, I truly do not have much talent. His voice became cold. Resilience comes from an absence of desire. You want too much, so you give me too many opportunities. As for things like calculation, I have always believed such things like schemes are never as straightforwardly terrifying as power. The calculation goes back and forth, and wastes precious life. Master Ming, in the future. You should do things more honestly and sincerely. Ming Kingda became silent. Go back now. There are still many things for you to deal with, such as the hatred the people in your clan feel for me that need to be comforted. Fans Yan laughed coldly and said, If there are plans in the future, I will send someone to inform you. He thought a bit and then advised, I know you are afraid of that Junshang conference. However, don't fall out with them yet. I need the Ming family to have a position in it. Ming Kingda knew he had no other options. He could only agree to this for now. Rising, he went downstairs. His retreating figure became bent, revealing his age. Dot. Dot. After Ming Kingda left, the leader of the Kenyan unit of the Overwatch Council, Deng Ziyu, came out from behind the curtain. There was no way the shock could be hidden on his face. It was not until today that he learned the commissioner actually had so many secret agreements with the master of the Ming family. Following Fan Yan's orders, he sat. Dang Ziyu opened his mouth wide and was dazed for a while before he organized his thoughts clearly to say, Unbelievable, truly unbelievable. Fans Yan couldn't stop himself shaking his head. What is unbelievable? Ming Kingda is a clever man. He knew this was the court's intention. He could not hope to stand against the court. He only hoped to use a relatively peaceful method to protect some livelihood for the tens of thousands of people in the Ming family. And on this point, he and his mother had some irreconcilable differences. Under such circumstances, if he didn't come to me, who else could he go to? Of course, 
I still underestimated him. Fans Yan sighed, I didn't expect his last move. In this way, the Jiangnan people are all watching us, and Zhu King is also greatly shocked. Regardless of which way the court is leaning, there is no way we can continue with our coercion of the Ming family. On one hand, he colluded with me to stabilize his position as the master of the Ming family. On the other hand, he secretly acted ruthlessly and incited the emotions of the people under heaven to temporarily protect the Ming family's interests. Ming Kingda indeed did not let me down. However, there is one thing he didn't account for. He uses me, but I also use him. The problem is that my confidence is much stronger than his, so in the end, he could still only be used by me. Everyone miscalculated one thing. Fans Yan explained seriously, including the things I said to Zhu King, in reality, it was all to scare him. You all think I can sweep aside the Ming family at any time, but actually, this is impossible to do. Thus, I need to use Ming King. Da. Dang Ziyu looked at the thoughtful commissioner in shock. Fans Yan closed his eyes and then opened them a while later. He slowly said, if the Ming family truly rebelled, what can I do? Actually mobilize the Black Knights to Suzhou to massacre the garden? True, that would wipe out all six branches of the Ming family and make the blood run like rivers and cover the wilderness in corpses. But dot what good would that do for me? He smiled and shook his head. After a period of solemnity, relying on the court's power, we can claim Ming Garden was rebelling. Within half a year. It will make the entire Jiangnan region keep quiet out of fear. Not one person will dare to say anything. The court will successfully take over the Ming family's enormous property and everything will be as the emperor planned. His face became cold. But, what good is that to me? Dang Ziyu was silent. The commissioner had repeated twice what good is that for me. The commissioner unconsciously placed his plan and the emperor's plan against each other. This sent a slight chill through Ding Ziyu's heart, but he didn't dare say anything. He understood that if Ming Garden was massacred, it would create a horrifying crisis. Although the emperor would acknowledge the Ming family's framed rebellion, in order to pacify the hearts of the Jiangnan people, the Overwatch Council would certainly be severely punished and the Commissioner would suffer harsh consequences. To bring the Ming family into the National Treasury on behalf of the court required him to give up his own interests. Fans Yan would not do such a stupid thing. Dot. Dot. This is why I wanted to find Xiaqi Fei at the start, then the fourth master, and then finally Ming Kingda. Fans Yan explained evenly, the situation in Jiangnan appears to be very muddy, but it is actually clear. Zhu King is the emperor's confidant and watching from the side, so I had make the waters a bit muddier. To bring in the Ming family, it could only be done peacefully. Fans Yan slightly lowered his eyelids. If I am too aggressive, the emperor could throw me out at any moment. You should understand this reasoning. Dang Ziyu felt a chill in his heart. He was increasingly confused as to why the commissioner had to mention the emperor repeatedly in front of him. He didn't understand why the commissioner was telling him all these tabooed things. Was he testing him? The old Ming matriarch has always been one of the important figures in the Junshang conference. Fans Yan continued to say, each day she stays in position is another day for it to be impossible for the Ming family to be taken down peacefully by me. So her death, although it has brought me some trouble, speaking as a whole. I am willing to accept this result. Fans Yan gazed into Deng Ziyu's eyes and said quietly, you've been beside me the whole time, of course you know. It has not been easy for me. Dang Ziyu sighed in his heart and saluted wordlessly. Fan Xian walked to the railing at the top floor of the restaurant. He narrowed his eyes and watched the pedestrians below wearing mourning and the incense shop in the distance working against the clock. He knew Suzhu was busy in the wake of that old woman's death, who knew how many noble and powerful figures had already gathered here waiting to worship in the morning hall. Dang Ziyu followed behind him and looked at the scene below. He sighed and said, there are too many ways to defeat the Ming family. The current situation dot does not seem like the most optimal. Fans Yan replied calmly, that is why we will have to get Ming Kingda back later for that trick he played on me. In today's Jiangnan, 
With the strange death of the old Ming matriarch and Ming Qingda's secret collusion with Fan Xian, the Ming family and Xin Yang perhaps could still promise something on the surface, but in secret, they were very different from last year. While Fan Xian controlled Jai Angnan, opening his hands, the palace treasury smuggling business was about to start with great fanfare. Without the Ming family holding them back, it would go much more smoothly. In the end, the price that fans Yan paid was nothing more than his illusory reputation. However, in his view, forcing the death of the old Ming matriarch and creating a slight disturbance in the people's hearts, the emperor was certain to find some reason to thoroughly scold him, but he was happy with this kind of reaping what is sown. In reality, there was a lot of inside information that affected fans Yan's decision making that he did not tell Deng Ziyu. For example, he couldn't mobilize the Black Knights because he feared the Emperor would throw him out. Fans Yan clearly understood that it was already an anomaly to be such a young official as him that held such great power. Although the Emperor still very much trusted him right now, who knew when the Emperor would suddenly change his mind? Judging from the Emperor's actions these years, he was a highly suspicious person so he had always kept a severe gaze on him and strictly prevented him from having any relation to the military side. Mobilize the Black Knights? Fans Yan smiled self-mockingly. He knew how many would be scared if he took such a ferocious action. From the recent disturbance with the Ministry of Revenue in the capital, Fans Yan could see even more clearly that before the Emperor had made up his mind to clean out the eldest prince's force, he had already begun to be vigilant about the existence of the Fan family. In Jingdu, the Emperor did not manage to use the matter of the Ministry of Revenue's deficits to force his father down. If the Ming family matter became more troublesome, who knew whether or not the Emperor would take away his power? The word power looked simple but it was like a drug. Once consumed, it was difficult to break away from. Although Fan Xian was aware, he could not stand for the power in his hands to be decreased in any way. He was used to the benefits of power, but, for self-protection and to protect others, he needed the power he held. To advance through retreat, he had to let his reputation take a hit for now. Dot. Dot. Deng Ziyu followed beside him and lowered his voice. The situation recently is rather tense. The Eighth Bureau suggests perhaps you should go over with a few sticks of incense. Given Fan Xian's identity as the Imperial Envoy, if he were to pay his respects to the old matriarch, it would clearly lighten the current situation. But Dot Fan Xian only shook his head with a cold expression and said, no need. Deng Ziyu was slightly startled and did not understand why. Fan Xian extended his hand and pointed to the city people with sorrow on their faces and said in a quiet voice, In reality, the people's hearts are not scary. What is scary are those who stand above the people and can use the people's hearts. As long as I satisfy those people, what the people think will not impact the big picture. Chapter 396 You Make Trouble Outside the Garden. I laugh inside the garden. It had begun to rain in Suzhou again. It was said that the rain upstream was even heavier. The attention of the court officials was focused on the heavily damaged banks above Shazhou. Fan Xian was in Suzhou, but his gaze was also in that direction. Yang Wanli had long taken his post in the river transport governor's Yemen. The silver transferred from the palace treasury had stopped and the silver from the national had arrived. The money in river works had never been as abundant as this year, however, the river repairs had begun too late this year. No one knew whether or not it could hold up against the summer floods. The rain was heavy and immediately dampened the Jiangnan heat. All that was left was a cold remnant of spring. For the Jiangnan people, this rainwater only increased their internal melancholy and sorrowful rage. Few people thought of the previous year's victims upstream of the Yangtze River, who were without a roof to live under and without clothing to protect them, because the old Ming matriarch's funeral was about to take place. Fan Xian watched all of this coldly and did not react. After Deng Ziyu, everyone including the governor, Overwatch Council, and his subordinates in the palace treasury transport company all advised him that it would be best to offer a stick of incense in the morning hall. If the imperial adviser made the gesture, given the reverence of the King Kingdom people to the court, they shouldn't continue their troublemaking. 
Fans Jan staunchly rejected this suggestion. In his eyes, it was just the funeral of an old bastard. What about it? It was only the death of a single person. If the matter upstream of the Yanked Sea was not handled well, God knows how many people would die. The officials sighed in despair at the Imperial Envoy's attitude. They thought perhaps he had not felt the undercurrent flowing through the people. Dot. Dot. At the end of the month, Ming Garden was filled with the plaintive cries of birds. White cloths were hung up high in the expansive morning hall. It was now the seven days in which the coffin was stopped. Once seven days came to an end, it was the time to announce the death. According to the funeral regulations of the King Kingdom, after seven days, the news had to be sent to their family, friends, and even enemies. Regardless of what hatred the two sides had, the rule of announcing the death could not be waived. The original purpose of this was so that the death vanished all gratitude and hatred. Often a person's enemy would use the occasion of the announcement of the death to personally visit their mourning hall and offer their condolences. It was like resolving their disagreements during their life. From then on, the yin and yang were separated and the two had nothing to do with each other. Everyone's eyes were on Hua Garden. According to the regulation and the old matriarch's status, the white notice announcing the death should also be sent to the imperial envoy's hand. As for what he was going to do, it would depend on how he handled the white notice. No one had expected that when the Ming Garden sent the notice to Hua Garden, Hua Garden only courteously invited in the third master for a cup of tea and then saw him out. The white notice was not accepted. The third master threw a fit right outside Hua Garden. He cursed them out thoroughly and then viciously spat on the stone steps in front of Hua Garden. Immediately, a servant came out and used clean water to wash away all traces of the spit. Nothing and no one under heaven was higher than the way. In the heart of the common people, the deceased was the senior. This was the way of the world. For the imperial envoy to not pay the deceased respect, the people felt a trace of shock and many kinds of anger. They were angered even further because before the old matriarch's morning hall had opened, the Overwatch Council struck again and captured the sixth master who led the obstruction of the search in the Ming Garden. They captured him on the grounds of investigating Dong Yi spies, and thus, not only the Suzhou government, but even the governor's manner could not say anything. Furthermore, after the Overwatch Council secretly captured the Sixth Master, they immediately sent him to be watched by the Shazu Navy and did not hand him to the local authorities. Whether or not there was someone taking the lead, in any case, from the next day, there was a continuous gathering of people in front of Hua Garden. In loud voices, they cursed and scolded, calling out slogans they didn't understand such as severely punish the true criminal, release the innocent, and such. To make even more of a headache, the Jiangnan scholars had joined in the ranks, and young students were very hot-blooded. Each time Sir Fan Jr.'s actions made these students feel a sense that their idolized image was being destroyed. They were angry beyond description, they clamored loudly and criticized harshly. Hua Garden was as quiet as usual. However, the Jiangnan Road Governor's Yaman was worried that there might be an uprising by the people, so he moved a squadron of soldiers to stand guard outside it. They drove the angry scholars to the end of the long street. Governor Zhu King, under heavy escort, made his way with great difficulty through the excited crowds and entered Hua Garden. In the study, he and fans Yan argued spiritedly for a long time. The result was that neither was able to sway the other. In the end, Zhu King asked helplessly, with these excited commoners surround the garden and refusing to leave, where is the court's dignity? Fans Yan coldly said, to surround the prince, their intentions are not honorable. If you still won't use soldiers, I will. Zhu King was startled. Only then he remembered that the third prince was still living in the garden. If the Suzhou people were allowed to continue surrounding Hua Garden and it got back to Jingdu, then there was no need for him to continue being the governor. Some of those scholars leading this would probably also pay with their lives. As the Jiangnan governor, he could not allow such terrifying things to happen in his jurisdiction. After a moment of thought, he sincerely asked. What should be done? Given Zhu King's ruthlessness and shrewdness, 
It was a small problem to handle some scholars that were drunk on their hot-bloodedness. What was important was that he understood this atmosphere was one that Fan Xian had purposely cultivated. Without understanding his true purpose, he had no need to interfere and sink himself into this chaotic mess. Fan Xian glanced at him and said, it's all a bunch of hot-blooded young people. I don't want to make things difficult for them. However, with this continuous rain, it is very cold at night. Their hot blood will cool and naturally, they will disperse. Zhu King's brow furrowed slightly. What if they don't disperse? Fans Yan smiled coldly. Righteous anger can't be eaten for food. If they still haven't dispersed by night, it means some of the people surrounding the garden are not here with righteous anger. Instead, they are there for another purpose. The goal the people in the shadows wanted to reach was simple. Besides inciting the people to an uprising, as long the people's reactions were a bit stronger and the matter traveled back to Jingdu, then the emperor would have to have some kind of response. Zhu King thought for a moment and then immediately understood Fan's Yan's meaning. Should the governor's manner act in this matter? Fan's Yan shook his head. This is a reputation destroying matter. It will be fine for me to shoulder it myself. Sir, just guard who a garden well. After all, the safety of the third prince is of the most vital importance. Zhu King understood, but he couldn't stop feeling slightly strange and shocked. If they followed the conventional morals of the officialdom, in the matter of suppressing a people's uprising, everyone always did it without drawing the attention of their superiors. However, Fans Yan putting on this solitary and stubborn show had indeed reduced his own pressure. Their discussion ended, and Zhu King took his leave. Fans Yan sat alone in the study, lost in thought. Soon after, he couldn't resist laughing mockingly at himself. Hai Tang had left for many days and had yet to return. If they were unable to capture Mr. Zhu, they would lose one third of the benefits of this Ming Garden uprising. As for the angry Suzhu people, fans Yan did not care about them at all. With Ming Kingba in the lead on the other side, the matter would certainly not go beyond the realm of excitement. But, it was very clear that behind the actions of the crowds, there were many shadows hiding in the darkness. Without someone provoking and inciting them, how could small city people accustomed to being timid and fearful have the daring to yell outside the imperial envoy's manner? Concerning this matter, fans Yan had already made sufficient preparations. Now that he had also received Zhu King's answer, his heart was at ease. The matter developed just as fans Yan expected. By dusk, the people outside had gradually dispersed. There were some righteous-looking students wearing square headscarves and some commoners of unknown status mixed together. With the governor's manners soldiers on guard, those people could only recite scripture from the end of the long street. They angrily accused the imperial envoy of acting with disregard for their lives and bringing disaster to the Jiangnan people. It was unknown who started it. But the crowd gradually became excited and forced their way toward Hua Garden. The governor's manners soldiers did not dare to strike ruthlessly for a moment, and they were slowly forced back. They came closer and closer to Hua Garden before the crowd stopped. In a clamor of noise, all kinds of obscenities were shouted out. However, the students were not completely stupid. They knew cursing was one thing. But they only shouted obscenities about the Overwatch Council and did not involve Fans Yan's ancestors to the 18th generation. Everyone knew that Fans Yan's ancestors were the Emperor's ancestors. It was fine to curse the Overwatch Council that was hated by scholars everywhere, but to curse the Emperor's ancestors to the 18th generation? Everyone only wanted to help the old matriarch who died so unjustly let out some anger. They did not want to throw their own lives into it. Hua Garden remained quiet. Glowing lights could faintly be seen inside and music traveled out through the rain. The governor's manor's soldiers stood guard sternly. They torches in their hands lit up the outside of Hua Garden. The rain came down like thin like needles and had long soaked through the students still remaining outside. They meet each other's gazes and wiped clean the rain on their faces. They found it difficult to believe their own ears. Suju was already like this, and they themselves were already like this. 
Yet the Imperial Envoy had the leisure dot to be like that. They were being drenched by the rain while the Imperial Envoy was listening to opera. The students mysteriously began to become angry. Their cursing, which had just stopped due to their exhaustion, was renewed with vigor. Amidst the cursing, a person wearing simple grey clothing stood in the crowd. They rolled their eyes around a few times then removed an item from within their clothes and threw it into a garden. The item fell into the garden and only made a muffled sound. There was no explosion. On the contrary, shocked cursing came out from within a garden. Who the FCK is throwing bags of dog blood? Dot. Dot. Throwing dog's blood was one of the best ploys to insult someone, although it was a bit childish, like kids having a disagreement. Once it was thrown into Hua Garden, where the Imperial Envoy lived, it became a major matter. The students were startled and their cursing took a break. They wondered which of their peers was so daring. As they were thinking, three black shadows flashed over Hua Garden. It was three swordsmen of the 6th Bureau of the Overwatch Council. They looked coldly at the people making trouble on the street outside the garden. The crowd became silent without reason, then suddenly someone cried out. The Overwatch Council are going to kill people. We. A shadow flashed into the crowd. The provoking cries rang out clearly and then stopped. It was like a duck that had been choked by someone. The crowd started and separated from the center to see a cloth-clothed man holding the throat of the gray-clothed man walking out coldly. The cloth-clothed man was the head of the Tiger Guards, JLTA. Following fans Jan's orders. He had been standing outside the entire time watching the people who were fanning the flames. Given his ability, capturing someone was naturally very easy. He threw the grey-clothed man onto the ground and stepped on the man's chest, hearing the man's ribs shatter. The students watched this wretched sight and hot blood rushed into the heads. They surrounded JLDA in the center and cried out loudly. Murder. The Overwatch Council killed someone. This scene shocked the surrounding officials from the governor's manor. They urged their horses closer and approached. At any moment, it could be a situation that needed to be suppressed by the soldiers. JLDA coldly picked up the grey clothed man and shook him like a sack. With a clatter, countless items fell out from his body. First, he is not dead. The reply to JLDA's words was the sound of the grey clothed man's groan. The student's mood became slightly more stabilized. JLDA coldly said, Second, you are here to ask for justice, while this person is here to entice the Imperial Envoy to kill you all. There is a difference, so there is a difference of treatment. These are the Imperial Envoy's own words. Only now did the students wake from their days. Looking to the ground they couldn't help jumping in fright. They saw that not only did bags of dog blood fall from the grey-clothed man's body, there were also fire starters, lamp oil, and other similar things. Only now did the crowd realize that if they had allowed this man to stay amidst the crowd as he wanted and had burned down Hua Garden, in which lived the prince and imperial envoy, they themselves would certainly be labeled as thugs by the court and killed on the spot. The second of the Imperial Envoy's own words, J.O.D.A. said coldly. The crowd was intimidated by his imposing manner and all listened well. To express the injustice you feel is the nature of young people, I don't blame you. J.O.D.A. continued to state fans Jan's words, but to be provoked and incited by others without knowing the truth, how stupid is that? If you have a sense of injustice to express, you have to seek out a correct path. To make this kind of ruckus like fishwives at the market is truly very embarrassing. The students hearing these words felt very dissatisfied. A student that looked like a leader stood out, upright and unafraid. The Overwatch Council handled matters unfairly and forced the loss of a life. I have already gone to the Suzhou government to report the case, however. Officials protect each other and the Suzhou government is afraid of the power of the Overwatch Council and did not dare to accept the lawsuit. Dare I ask the Imperial Envoy, what other path will allow me to express my sense of injustice? JLDA looked at that person coldly. The Imperial Envoy says since you have the daring to gather outside the garden and make trouble. Do you have the daring to enter the garden to discuss the matter? The students immediately broke into a clamor. Some said they couldn't enter. Some said they must enter. The opinions of the crowd were diverse and muddled. In the end, 
They all gathered their gazes on the student who had spoken out earlier. He was a student of Jiangnan Road's Bai Lu Academy, Fang Tingxi. His background was poor, but he was very knowledgeable and experienced. He had always been deeply admired by his peers and was the unofficial leader of the students. Fang Tingxi considered for a moment then gritted his teeth and removed the blood litters he had collected from the people from inside his clothes. He raised it above his head and said, I am willing to the enter the garden to discuss with the Imperial Envoy. J.O.D.A. glanced at him expressionlessly. Holding that grey-clothed man, he began to walk into the garden. Fang Tingxi felt slightly uneasy, but he gathered his courage and walked in. At the same time, he managed to dissuade his peers' requests to enter together. Dot. Dot. Fans Yan sat in the grand chair with his eyes half-closed enjoying the gentle massage of Sissy standing behind him. His finger tapped on the table following the song the singing master was singing in the garden pavilion. To the side of his hand was the daring Fang Tingxi, who dared to enter the garden alone to ask the imperial envoy for justice. He was reading something. His face was green one moment and white another, and his lips trembled slightly. It seemed he was shocked by what was recorded. Fans Yan slowly opened his eyes and said, these are top secrets of the court, however, a lot of it cannot be taken to the Suzhou government as evidence. In many cases the witnesses are dead and many implicate nobles in the court. I also cannot use this publicly to break the Ming Garden's pretense. However, since you have the daring to pull together a group of students to demand justice, you cannot be an idiot. After seeing these things and knowing the details of the Ming Garden matter, you should be able to come to your own conclusions. In Fang Tingxi's hand were the fruits of the secret investigation the Overwatch Council had carried out on the Ming family during this past half year. It included the pirates on the island in the Eastern Sea, Ming Lanshai's concubine's mysterious death, the story of Xia Kaifi and the Ming family, the Ming family's smuggling to Dongyai. Sigu Jian secretly leaving aces to enter Jiangnan to assassinate fans Yan. Each account was all recorded clearly. Since these records were circumstantial evidence, they were unable to be submitted to a court as evidence. Fang Tingxi knew that what was written here was definitely true. His hands holding the case files shook slightly and he said, but dot it shouldn't be like this. The old Ming matriarch embraced Jiangnan. She sponsored countless poor and struggling students. My family has always been poor. If it wasn't for the Ming Garden gifting rice each month and paying for me to go to school, how could I have entered the Bai Lu Academy? His eyes were red and looked angrily at Fan Zhan. Sir, since I dared to enter the garden today, I didn't expect to leave alive. I do not believe the things recorded on here. The Overwatch Council is the best at framing others. Fans Yan looked at him coldly and didn't bother at all to respond. Fang Tingxi also could not go on speaking. Ever since I took over the Overwatch Council, when has there been a case of cooking up imaginary charges to trap someone? Fans Yan ridiculed. As for you, as a student. You should have the ability to think for yourself and not accept what others say and what others see. You only need to look at the situation of these recent years and use your brain. Of course, none of you actually have brains, fans Yan criticized harshly. If you had brains, none of you would have been provoked to come surround Hua Garden. What kind of place is this? This is the Imperial Envoy's Yemen and the Prince's temporary Imperial residence. If I were to behead 300 of you, there wouldn't be any problem. In the end, you will have died and my reputation would also be lost. It only benefited those lawless merchants who seek to circumvent the law. His anger was faked because fans Yan knew that these students fell for this method the best. As expected, Fang Tingxi mumbled indistinctly. Your chiding is correct. He began to have second thoughts. Not only did the Imperial Envoy not make a move to suppress the students, on the contrary, he had invited him into the manor. His heart was indeed sincere. He opened his mouth in a pained smile and said, Sir is very magnanimous. Fans Yan closed his eyes and shook his head I can't be considered magnanimous. It is only because you are still young that I don't want to use such methods. So I have been able to endure you until today. He suddenly opened his eyes and said, 
you should know which four people are the four disciples of the Fan family. The four disciples of the Fan family were Hu Jikang, Cheng Jialin, Shi Changli, and Yang Wanli. All of them had leapt up after that year's spring examinations. Everyone knew they were Fans Yan's disciples. Fang Ting Shi nodded his head. Fans Yan smiled. These four students are all older than me, however, they still call me teacher. Speaking of Jikang, he had also made trouble in Jiangnan before and was like you today. Fang Ting Shi was slightly startled. Fans Yan finally said, It is not an appreciation of talent. Perhaps seeing you I am being nostalgic. After fainting she left, Sissy furrowed her brows and said, Young master, these people don't know what is good for them. How come you are still this polite? Fans Yan shook his head and said, Reputation is indeed not important, but the subject of students should still be considered. In the future, after these people pass the provincial imperial examinations, they will all enter the court and become officials. Even if I am not thinking about myself, I still need to make considerations for His Highness. Sissy said again, this matter is going to end like this. The trace of a warm smile rose to the corner of his lips. If Feng Tingxi can persuade the students to leave, it means he is capable. In the future, of course, he should be cultivated properly. As for those ghosts mingling in the crowd. I was waiting for them. Ming Kingda had sent someone with a message earlier saying that the internal faction of Ming Garden had already mostly been suppressed. The problem was that it was not easy at the moment to suppress the rumors in Suzhou, particularly as the crowds making trouble were being provoked intentionally by some people. Don't use knives. Fans Yan turned around and gave orders to Jiao Da. The wooden sticks I had you prepare a few days ago are more effective. For suppressing things, it is good to make them hurt, but they can't bleed. Whatever matter, if the word bleeding is put in front of it, it will always be trouble. After fainting she left the garden, he talked for a long time with the other students. Unfortunately, in the end, he wasn't able to persuade everyone. On the contrary, some of the suspicious students wondered whether or not he had become fearful of the court's power and so on. Some people in the group provoked others with peculiar words. After fainting she exploded in rage, he felt ashamed. He didn't know what to do. He could only take his fairly close peers and leave a garden. There was only half the number of people in the angry crowd. Having had the previous incidents of the dog's blood, the governor's manor soldiers watched even more closely. After an indeterminable amount of time, a huge group of people charged out of Hua Garden. With wooden sticks in their hands, they struck toward the students who surrounded the garden and would not leave. In a moment, wretched cries rang out. The sound of wood on flesh could be heard clearly. Although the people of the Overwatch Council did not strike hard and the students did not receive heavy injuries, how could these students? who were immersed in literature every day, endure the teachings of the stick. They cried and yelled, and were dispersed by the wooden sticks. The front of Hoa Garden immediately recovered its peace. Only the thin rain fell slowly. The governor's manor soldiers looked at this scene with open-mouthed shock. They thought the imperial envoy really was vicious and ruthless. No one noticed that along with the students running in all directions away from the beating. There were also some sneaky shadows. After these sneaky shadows, there were some Overwatch Council spies disguised as scholars or commoners who ran in fright as well as keeping a careful eye on them. Fans Yan stood on the ladder and climbed to the top of Hua Garden Wall with the third prince's hand in his own. Looking at this sight, he couldn't stop his laughter and said, Following the perfect model. I should have had the group disguise themselves as gentlemen loyal to the ruler who loved the people to beat these students. The third prince asked curiously, Sir, then why didn't you do that today? Fans Yang laughingly scolded, to use the people of the Jiangnan water bandits. Now, everyone knows that Xiaqai Fi is one of our people. Why bother to hide behind that extra layer of powder? Chapter 397 a strange guest to Suzhou. Very high-spirited. Fans Yan had one foot on the railing on the topmost floor of the Suzhou branch of the Beiyu brothel. In one hand he held a fan that he was using. The continuous cold rains at the end of spring had stopped and the heat had returned. In a flash, 
it made the temperature of the air rise again. He narrowed his eyes and looked at the procession on the road wearing funeral gear. Hearing the mournful sounds of the music, he couldn't hold back a smile. Ming Kingda indeed had some tricks up his sleeve. The mournful and angry look on his face, and his attitude of absolute irreconcilability with Fan Zhan, were done very well. He actually had the old Ming matriarch's funeral procession cut across the entire city. The route was very ostentatious. Along the way were commoners who put out little tables with fruits to worship her. Beggars who had received benefits in the past kowtowed to the giant slow-moving coffin as it moved along the street. The mournful music was actually sometimes quite moving. At least it was to fans Yan's ears. He fanned himself and couldn't resist sighing again, very high-spirited. The wind came from the fan JW1. He couldn't be bothered to compete with the Ming Garden in attitude. He did not find using a dead person to obstruct his sight exciting. If they wanted to parade, they could. It did not cause any true loss to him. After sweeping clean the sixth master and the old matriarch's trusted aides and related persons, Ming Kingda had gradually stabilized his control of the Ming Garden situation. It was also under his powerful suppression that the tens of thousands of the Ming family did not make a call to indiscriminately destroy the good and the bad because of the old matriarch's unusual death. After fans Yan divided the students making a ruckus and then used wooden sticks to teach them a lesson. The scholars immediately quieted down when they did not receive further support from the Ming family. Just as Fan Zian had expected, the so-called righteousness could not be sustained. Fan Zian knew that to be able to suppress the cries for revenge from within the Ming family's internal faction must have been hard work for Ming Kingda. However, this matter was originally Ming Kingda's fault. If he didn't want Fan Zian to act out violently, he had to swallow this hard work and his anger. What made fans Yan truly happy was that the spies scattered into the crowds a few days ago had already sent back messages. Perhaps it was because of the Ming family's sudden silence that caught the elders of the Junshang Conference off guard but, at least in the Jiangnan region, the Junshang Conference made some relatively stupid decisions in some matters, like inciting the people to gather and cause a commotion. By means of the investigation the Overwatch Council did in this matter, and the few people that Ming Kingda had secretly sold to Hua Garden, the Overwatch Council was already keeping watch on one manor downstream of the Yangtze River. It was a gathering place the Junshang Conference had set in Jiangnan. It was an unremarkable manor and not a very important location to the Junshang Conference. However, fans Yan needed to get rid of it to express his stance. With him in Jiangnan, the Junshang Conference had best behave themselves for now. If they didn't behave, he would make them shut their mouths. Dot. Dot. The Black Knights could not enter Ming Garden because the Emperor did not like to see the Overwatch Council's martial strength overly interfere in local politics. However, as for this mysterious Junshang Conference, an organization that seemed to be possibly opposing the Emperor's might, the King Emperor didn't care about what methods Fans Yan used. Governor Zhu King also did not oppose Fans Yan's plan. After all, there wouldn't be enough time to ask for instructions from Jingdu. Today was the old Ming matriarch's funeral procession and burial, and it was also the day that 500 black knights crossed the Yangtze to wash some place with blood. The funeral procession had already gone through the long street below the Beiyu brothel. Fans Yan noticed that some of the noble figures had carefully retreated from the procession. The Jiangnan gentry did not want to offend the Ming family, but they also did not dare to overly neglect the imperial envoy's face. So, they saw the procession to the city gates and then turned back on their own. Very high-spirited, with great power in hand. Why fear the people's heart? Although fans Yan did not feel complacent, he had begun to feel in the depths of his heart that power was like a drug. No wonder the Western philosophers had a saying, something that shall long passed on, and was often seen in forums, absolute something, would bring absolute something. Fans Yan was aware that he did not need corruption. Without any shame, he thought his realm of consciousness was relatively high and so he couldn't resist a third sigh. There should be someone asking accommodatingly, Sir, why? Unfortunately, 
it would be half a year before Wang Yinian could return to the Qing Kingdom. Beside him, Deng Ziyu considered for a long time with a strange expression before he choked out a sentence, Sir. You seem to be in a good mood. Dot. Dot. Fans Yan smiled and said, Of course I am in a good mood. This old woman died cleanly and efficiently, standing on a tall building and watching someone else be buried. How could I not be happy? Deng Ziyu wondered how is this something to be happy about? Unable to resist, he opened his mouth to remonstrate, the Jiangnan people. He had only said three words when Fans Yan stopped him. He smiled coldly and said, do not repeat those arguments. What are the people's sentiments and opinions? In a few months, these people will have completely forgotten. Whatever kindness, whatever benefits, it would only be remembered for a few days. In the end, it won't be more important than daily domestic worries. The common people. The common people are the type of people most prone to forgetting. The words were pointed and they pointed to Fans Yan's past. They pointed to the Yi family that had long been blown past, rained on, and dissolved into the royal palace treasury. Back then, the Yi family was comparable to today's Ming family. They were ten times more impressive, ten times more powerful, and ten times more benevolent to the people. One day, the court changed its face and the family was destroyed. The tens of thousands of people under heaven all kept quiet out of fear. Who dared to seek justice for the Yi family? Deng Ziyu was startled into silence. He knew they had touched on a sore point for the commissioner, so he did not dare to speak again. He also understood why every time the commissioner brought up public opinion and popular sentiment he would smile coldly at them and not care. Those of us who are officials, we are only the emperor's officials, we are not these people's officials. Fan Xian words were completely the opposite of serving the people. With the situation as it was, what could Fan Xian be displeased about? The Ming family was a monkey in the palm of his hand. Jiangnan was certain to settle. Xiaqifai had already sent a message from Jiangbai a few days ago that he had connected with Fan Xian's younger brother. The waves in the capital around the Ministry of Revenue had settled. Hang Zhu was urgently picking medicine. The three large workshops were in full swing under the serious, conscientious, and brisk eyes of the Kina Hall shopkeepers. As for within the officialdom, Fans Yan and Zhu King's relationship was growing closer by the day, in the palace, the emperor's trust in him had not decreased. Particularly after the Ming family matter, Fans Yan had sacrificed his own reputation. This, without question, increased the emperor's feelings of tenderness toward his solitary illegitimate child. Looking around, it was all situations of great personal victory. As for the Junshang conference. A cold smile flashed past the corner of Fans Yan's mouth. He didn't know what the old cripple in the Chen Garden outside of the capital was thinking. In any case, Fans Yan did not plan to investigate too deep into this matter. The so-called raising of a tiger was thus. If he wanted to eradicate the Junshang conference, first of all, it would be very difficult thing to do. Even if Fans Yan temporarily looked around wildly and braved the risk of losing more than half the power in his hand, he might still not succeed in this task. Just looking at how the tyrannical second priest of the King Temple, Great Master Sanshai, was thrown out by the Junshang Conference as a sacrificial pawn, it was possible to imagine how much power this supposedly loosely structured organization hid away. Even if he successfully toppled the Junshang conference with the utmost help from his father and the old cripple, settled Jai Angnan, and stabilized the monarch's control, the emperor would not allow Fans Yan to lead soldiers and fight. Then, what could Fans Yan do? Would he retire to that dim room in the Overwatch Council at such a young age and grow old? Fans Yan did not want to become a second Chen King Ping. For some problems, he would not rush to resolve them. On the contrary, he wished these problems could be in situations under his control and to bloom slowly like a flower with poison. Of course, he didn't know that his thoughts in the Beiyu brothel today were the same as that of the old cripples. The elder and the youth were both working hard toward a goal that could not be publicized. It was regretful that neither of these two people seemed willing to inform the other, perhaps they didn't want to implicate each other. 
not deeply investigating the Junshang Conference did not mean not defeating the Junshang Conference. The Junshang Conference had played Fan Xian a few times in Jiangnan, and he had to eventually pay that back. Currently, the Black Knights were progressing silently on that mountain trail. Months of planning and the only tiny loophole was the Junshang Conference accounts master. Mr. Zhu. He had yet to be silenced and was still able to silently escape despite being under both Ming Kingda and his own surveillance. This demonstrated that he was certainly an important figure in the Junshang Conference, perhaps he even held the truth to the Junshang Conference. And Hai Tang Dot had still not come back. Faint worry rose between fans Yan's brows. Mr. Zhu had to be under the protection of someone very powerful. He left the side of the railing sat back down at the table, and gave orders to Deng Ziyu, contact the governor's manor, send out wanted posters. His spoke quietly, the Ming family has already sent over housekeeper Zhu's picture. Give it to the governor's manor. Both sides will search together. Deng Ziyu felt apprehensive. He knew that the imperial envoy did not have any better ideas and could only start to use the government's power to try and apply some pressure publicly. As for that picture, he knew that it was drawn by the old Ming matriarch's personal servant. Fan Xian sighed and said, If we could capture Mr. Zhu alive. Wouldn't it be too marvelous? Dot. Dot. You hopes are indeed marvelous. The top floor of the Beiyu brothel was empty. Only Fan Xian's table was occupied. Two people suddenly appeared at the table beside the railing and had replied to Fan Xian's words very coldly. The metallic sound of countless blades being unsheathed rang out in the top floor, full of cruel intentions. With Jada in the lead, the seven tiger guards gripped their strangely shaped long knives with both hands and formed the head of a trident protecting fans yawn behind them. At the same time, a dozen swordsmen of the 6th Bureau of the Overwatch Council surged out from the side of the building. They hadn't drawn their swords beside them. In their hands were raised black painted bows that did not reflect much light and appeared threatening. The swordsmen aimed at the two people at the table. There was originally no one in the building. Yet these two people had silently appeared. The other party's arrival had not only been hidden from the swordsmen of the 6th Bureau of the Overwatch Council, it had also been hidden from the Tiger Guards, as well as Fan Xian, whose internal injuries had long healed. What kind of realm was this? Fan Xian's guards reacted quickly. In an instant, they had partitioned off the two people with a dozen bows. In addition to the seven tiger guards who could stand against Haitang Duo Duo and Fan Xian, who had long reached the ninth level, even if the newcomers were Dong Ai's Yunzilin and Northern Qi's Lang Tao, everyone was confident they could easily take the other party down. However, the two people did not have any change in expression when faced with this array. One of them had a slightly forced smile, while the other figure, wearing a straw hat, only gave off a coldness that regarded everyone he saw as nothingness. The figure wearing the straw hat slowly lifted his head and revealed a strange appearance. There was not a trace of expression on his face, only his eyes looked at the people in the building as coldly as if he was looking at a group of dead people. You want Mr. Zhu? This person is Mr. Zhu. Surrounded by crossbows, the person was still very at ease. A natural aura of aggressiveness rose from across the crowd as he looked coldly at Fan Xian. But, I will not give him to you. Fan Xian looked at the person through the tiger guard's clothing. His mind turned, and he calmly said, So it is you who is protecting Mr. Zhu. No wonder Hai Tang has yet to succeed. Since you are not willing to give the person to me, then why did you came to see me? I don't have the habit of chatting with uninvited guests. The person said coldly, an exchange. Pull back the Black Knights, and I will spare your life. Spare your life? Under such circumstances, he could still say he would spare Fan Xian's life. Unless he was an idiot, only then would he have such confidence. Fan Xian knew the other party was certainly not stupid, so... They definitely had the ability to kill him in such a situation. Fans Yan smiled and asked, How is Hai Tang? The man suddenly strangely rolled his eyes. I very rarely kill women. Fans Yan smiled slightly and said, That is good. Release. Dot. Dot. It was a very sudden, 
very expected call of release. The swordsmen of the 6th Bureau of the Overwatch Council released the triggers in their hands, and 30 poisoned crossbow bolts flew out in three batches. Like a deadly and dense rain, they flew toward the table. What Mr. Zhu? What Jun Chang conference? He did not have time to care about them. As long as he could kill the person in front of him, fans Yan would think anything was worth it. High spirited, a bitter smile rose at the corner of his lips. JW1, there is a pun between this phrase and the previous line but it doesn't come across in English. Chapter 398, You Dare to Kill Me? At a distance of fewer than 3 meters, the speed of the 30-plus poisoned bolts was terrifying, and the power they held was shocking. No would have thought that someone could dodge such a dense and sudden attack. Even if the person sitting beside the table was a god, he wouldn't be able to dodge it. So he didn't even try to dodge. He also didn't seem to move. But a pair of chopsticks vanished from the container on the table. This pair of chopsticks was held steadily in his hand and began to dance easily through the air as if he was picking out delicious food from nothingness. The soft tips of the bamboo chopsticks whistled through the air. It was as if it was not a pair of chopsticks but rather an ancient weapon infused with boundless zinky. Ding, 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 ding. Like rain hitting a banana leaf. Dot. Dot. A collection of dull thuds rang out as all of the bolts in their rapid progress were lightly nipped and pulled by that pair of chopsticks. In an impossible state of affairs, they were all pushed slightly to the side, so they moved slightly off from their expected trajectories. They passed by the bodies of the two people sitting at the table and shot into the wood boards and walls of the Bayou brothel. The crossbow bolts shot into the wood, and the tail of the bolts quivered slightly. In an instant, the 30-plus bolts made it look as if the room spouted a riot of grass, yet it did not harm their target at all. The swordsmen of the 6th Bureau of the Overwatch Council saw this scene before them and felt a chill surge through their hearts, taking over their entire body. To be able to push aside this many speeding bolts in such a short distance with just a pair of chopsticks, this kind of speed, this kind of eyesight, this kind of power, this kind of... The other person was not human. The other person was definitely not human. Dot. Dot. The Overwatch Council was the toughest organization in the Court of King Kingdom. The Overwatch Council officials had the firmest and most persistent state of mind of King Kingdom. However, they were, after all, still people. When they found the enemy they were facing today seemed to have already secretly left the category of human. They felt some fear and a sense of helplessness. The third bureau's consecutive firing could only fire three rounds. It was already too late to raise their bows. Furthermore, the hands of the sixth bureau swordsmen were shaking as they stared with disbelief at the person beside the table. They seemed to have forgotten their next move. At the same time, the arrows poured forward. The seven tiger guards charged toward the table like seven aggressive tigers leaving the mountain. Under the protection of the arrows, they held their long knives in their hands and became seven streaks of snow bright light chopping toward the table. The light of the knives were still in space when fans Yan called strictly from behind the tiger guards, retreat. Following this cry, he rose and his entire body lifted up. Dot. Dot. At the call to retreat, the six tiger guards, other than Jiaoda, forcefully pulled back their zenki and placed their knives across their chest very awkwardly. In the air about one and a half meters away from that table, they forcefully stopped their bodies. Their toes tapped, and they followed orders to retreat. However, Jiaoda's martial ability was the most powerful so his reaction was the fastest. He was the middle point of the trident and had already reached the table and faced the mysterious figure in the bamboo hat. He felt a slight chill in his heart, but he was unable to retreat. He could only let out a roar and circulate the zanki in his body to the extreme. His hands shifted on the hilt, and he chopped down into the air. Jiaoda suddenly felt the foot behind him tighten and his body was pulled backward by an abundant, irresistible and enormous force of Zenki. The strike had already come down. The knife flashed across the front of the table because he had been pulled by someone behind him. He didn't strike the figure in the bamboo hat, instead he chopped down on the floor in front of the table. With a sharp crack, 
The thick and solid wooden floor is parted like thin paper beneath the long knife in Zhao Da's hands and a giant tear appeared. For a moment, the dust rose and wood shavings flew in all directions. Through that hole, it was possible to see the tables on the floor below. In the instant that Zhao Da had struck, the man in the bamboo had gently put the pair of chopsticks in his hand on the table. It was not until then, that anyone noticed that beside the table leg was a sword. A very simple sword that gave off no light. A rough cloth was wrapped thickly around the outside. Then, the pair of chopsticks landed on the table and the normal-looking sword suddenly emitted a bright light. With a zing, the sword hilt began to shake on its own accord. It jumped up excitedly and ripped apart the rough cloth wrapped around the sheath of the sword. It forced out half a snow bright sword. A cold and murderous sword not of this world emanated out from this half of a sword. The sword will enter the space between the floorboards. When Jaoda's long knife touched the floor, it traveled out. At the same time that the long knife split open the giant hole in the floor. Countless fine cracks appeared along the knife gash and rapidly spread over. The cracks did not have any patterns to speak of, yet they appeared to be a beauty without any vitality. Dot. Dot. The cracks rapidly invaded Jaoda's long knife. His long tiger guard knife began to shake uncontrollably. On the sharp and solid surface of the knife, it looked like an invisible pair of hands were using a diamond to carve into it and countless deep marks appeared. Jauda's hands also began to shake. He fearfully and helplessly let go of the knife. The long knife cracked into pieces like a weathered stone face. The terrifying sword will only travel to the outside of the knife hilt and then suddenly jumped up. Jauda gave a muffled grunt. He covered his chest and then sprayed out a mouthful of fresh blood. At the same time, his right wrist cracked. The joint had actually been shattered. It was only a matter of three breaths. The crossbows and the seven knives of the tiger guards were as simple as the raising of a pair of chopsticks and laying them down to the man in the bamboo hat. In their meeting just now, the Overwatch Council had been wretchedly defeated. At this point, the people protecting fans Yan knew that the other party's words earlier were not empty threats. With his extraordinary and godlike realm, if the man in the bamboo hat wanted to kill the Imperial Envoy, even if they all died, they wouldn't be able to stop him. Extraordinary and godlike. Other than the four great Grand Masters, who else had reached such a realm in this world? Fresh blood trickled out from the corner of Jauda's mouth, and his eyes were full of terror. Half kneeling on the ground, he stared at the man in the bamboo hat sitting not far away. Biting off each word, he said. Sigujian, as a tiger guard to the King Kingdom's royal family, who had he ever been afraid of? However, Jauda said these words weakly and with hopelessness. In the people's hearts, the four great grandmasters had long left the category of normal humankind. All of the rumors had already almost become legends, and the people only felt reverence toward these four great grandmasters. Respect and fear nothing else beyond these. No one dared to make a move against four great grandmasters, even if someone wanted to commit suicide, they would still not choose this road. Jauda stared at the figure in the bamboo hat intensely. He did not understand why Sigujian, who should be far away in Dongyai, would be here in Jiangnan. It was not until now that he felt his ankle being gently released by someone. Earlier, if that person had not grabbed his ankles powerfully and pulled him back, Jauda's strike down and the man in the bamboo hat's sword will sweeping out. Right now it wouldn't just be his long knife that was shattered in pieces, his body would be too. Only now did Jauda feel a boundless fear. He unconsciously looked back and saw Fan's Yan's right hand was shaking as he gently wiped it on his long gown. Dot. Dot. Fan's Yan's hand was completely soaked in a cold sweat. He knew that if he hadn't seen and called quickly, the seven tiger guards would have all died by the hand of the man in the bamboo hat. However, his expression remained calm. Although his pupils constricted slightly and his right hand hidden behind his back was slowly shaking, he still remained calm. Faced with this extraordinary and godlike figure, he had to be calm. He was facing a great grandmaster. Fans Yan was not a normal person. Since his youth, 
he had lived with a great grandmaster who had not entered the ranks of the great grandmasters. He was personally taught by Uncle Wuzhu. When faced with this man in the bamboo hat, he was not like the other people in the building who were so terrified they couldn't even speak. He was still terrified. He could feel his mouth become bitter and astringent. Wuzhu had once talked about the words true power. Wuzhu, without a trace of Zenki, had extraordinary power, but he was, after all, Fans Yan's closest family. Now that Fans Yan met a great grandmaster for the first time in person, he finally realized that under the pressure of the other party's true power, he didn't have any chance to retaliate. Fans Yan was a meticulous person who knew himself well. He knew that with his ninth level power, ten of him could not defeat Uncle Wuzhu. The same logic would prove that ten of him could not defeat the old man in the bamboo hat in front of him. Particularly after what he saw and felt earlier, it made fans Yan further believe the words Uncle Wuzhu had once said. A first level could kill a ninth level as long as they are lucky enough. But if you are facing those guys. Don't talk about such things like luck. The warriors under heaven move from bottom to top with the ninth level as the strongest. However, between each level, the difference was not insurmountable. Otherwise, Fans Yan would not have been able to kill indiscriminately on Nyilan Street or played with Lang Tao and them in Shangjing, Northern Qi, like he did. However, once past the ninth level, it advanced into the realm of celestial beings. Just like Ku He that Baldi and the man in front of him. It was a completely different realm. The difference in power was like a deep gorge of which the bottom could not be seen. No kind of scheme and shrewdness could make up for it. The top floor of the Bayu brothel was completely silent, while the downstairs had long begun to clamor. Although Jiaodia's strike had chopped into the empty air, it had shocked countless people. The noise was unbelievable, however, it quieted down after a small break because the guard downstairs and Shi Seng were handling it. The man in the bamboo hat beside the table remained silent, as if he was waiting for fans Yan to make a decision. His body did not glow, but in the people's eyes, his thin cloth clothing seemed to be plated with the brilliance of the sky. No one dared to look directly at it. As for the exchange, the Mr. Zhu that fans Yan had long wanted to capture sat silently and timidly beside the man in the bamboo hat. No one would have noticed him. A simple person, yet he blotted out all the brilliance between the heaven and earth. Dot. Dot. Fans Yan's left hand was still holding the fan. He squeezed it tightly and looked at the man in the bamboo hat. He did say anything for a moment. The top floor of the Bayu brothel was absolutely silent a deathly silent. The atmosphere was oppressive. The man in the bamboo hat looked at Fan Zhan, whose expression was calm, and smiled. Your reaction, your strength. They seem to be a bit stronger than the rumors say. The man referenced how Fan Zhan had assessed the situation extremely quickly, called back six of the people, and then exploded from his seat. In the short moment Fan Zhan was in the air, he used a coffin breaker to dramatically strengthen his right arm and then used a little trick to tightly grip Jiaodia's ankle, forcefully pulling him back and saving his life. For fans Yan to be able to do all of that in so short a time, it could already be so considered very perfect, possibly to the extent that the man in the bamboo hat revealed a trace of appreciation. However, fans Yan did not answer him. Contrary to everyone's expectations, he slowly walked to the railing and did not look again at the man in the bamboo hat. Including J.O.D.A., all of the guards were shocked. The commissioner was very daring. Faced with a great grandmaster that tens of thousands revered, he was able to act so naturally and dared to not look at the other party. Fan Xian walked to the side of the railing and faced the wealthy Suju in the sparse air above it, as well as the remnant smell of firecrackers in the air. He took a deep breath. His face changed slightly before immediately returning to normal. Who knew what he was thinking of? Footsteps rang out from the steps. Shi Changli, with his face full of shock, and Sang Wen, who had her mouth opened wide and worry mixed in with her gentleness, glanced at the table surrounded by the Overwatch Council and immediately turned their questioning gazes onto fans Yang beside the railing.
Everyone is dismissed, fans Jan remained by the railing and gave the order coldly without turning his head, he gripped the fan in his hand tighter and tighter. The paper on the fan was already beginning to go out of shape, he had made up his mind. Earlier, when the Tiger Guards had suddenly attacked, fans Jan's call was enough to make everyone retreat without regard to their life. From that, it was clear that all the guards offered absolutely no objections to his orders and would carry them out thoroughly. However, when he gave the order to have everyone go downstairs, everyone, including the tiger guards, all used silence to show their protest. There was a great grandmaster who wanted to kill people. At this kind of time, no one dared to leave Fans Yan alone in the building. Fans Yan turned around. He looked at Jauda and smiled slightly. Perhaps my commands are no longer effective. Dot. Dot. Jauda's heart thumped, looking at the familiar and warm smile on the commissioner's face and the encouragement in his smile. He felt momentarily confused. He understood Fans Yan. Every time he revealed this charming smile, often it was when he was truly angry. It was also when he had a card up his sleeve. Fans Yan continued, without my orders. No one is allowed to take one step into this building. Also, immediately evacuate the surrounding streets to prevent accidental injuries. Jauda let out a trembling breath and wiped away the blood at the corner of his mouth. He gave a muffled grunt and led everyone down the stairs. Along the way, he pushed down Shi Changli, who was standing by the door and refusing to leave. As fans Yan's personal guards went down the stairs, they saw a scene that remained forever etched in their minds, a scene that terrified them. Fan Xian walked slowly step by step toward the table. He wore a strange smile on his face. The out-of-shape fan was open again in his hand. As he fanned, he walked toward the table steadily and with great confidence and ease. Dot. Dot. In reality, from that side to the table was only a distance of a dozen steps or so. But in these dozen or so steps, fans Yan felt he had walked through the gates of hell. What was remarkable was that the closer he got to the table with the man in the bamboo hat, the calmer fans Yan felt, like an oasis of peace. Reaching the side of the table, fans Yan stared at the man's eyes and rudely met his gaze, as if he was not scared at all. The man only had to casually raise his hand and he would be able to kill him. But, he also seemed to think that this imperial envoy of Jiangnan Road was amusingly daring and smiled slightly as he looked at him. Dot. Dot. Jauda went downstairs and immediately rearranged all defenses. He also followed the commissioner's order and evacuated the nearby people. He ordered his subordinate to quickly go to the governor's manor to mobilize troops. Although he knew these methods would do nothing against the extraordinary martial artists in the building. It still kept people occupied. He then climbed to the top floor of the building closest to the Bayou brothel and flipped onto the roof. He carefully hid his body and watched every movement in the Bayou brothel across the street. He was prepared to throw his own life into this gamble at any moment. Jauda hid behind the gargoyle on the roof and stared at the top floor of the Bayou brothel. He could not hear what was being said inside. But just watching what was happening was enough to shock him. Dot. Dot. The building was empty except for fans Yan and the man in the bamboo hat facing him. One was sitting beside the table, and one was standing beside it. As for Mr. Zhu, fans Yan did not consider him a person but rather an eyesore, so he waved his hand indicating for him to move to the side. The already deeply terrified account master of the Junsheng Conference, Mr. Zhu started and then immediately left his seat obediently and sat down in a corner beside a railing. A chair was emptied. Fans Yan lifted the front of his robe and sat down expansively without a care. He was now less than half a body's length away from the man in the bamboo hat. It was intimate, dangerous, and terrifying in the extreme. Jauda, watching from a distance, Almost died of fright while fans Yan in the building continued to smile lightly. He folded up the out-of-shape fan in his left hand, slowly lifted the chopsticks the man in the bamboo hat had left on the table, and put them back into the container. He did these three actions very attentively, slowly, and carefully. After the chopsticks were put back into the container, 
He then sighed happily and clapped his hands as if he had completed a mighty work. The man in the bamboo hat had not moved to kill him. This meant everything could still be discussed. Daring. The man in the bamboo hat looked at Fans Yan with a slight smile. Of the younger generation, you are the most outstanding talent. If the Grandmaster's words got out, it would certainly establish Fans Yan in a stable position. Yet Fans Yan did not feel any gratification from these words. He smiled warmly and said, So what, if you want to kill me, it is still the work of a moment. The man in the bamboo hat calmly said, My words earlier are still in effect. If you pull back the Black Knights, I will not kill you. Dot. Dot. Fans Yan suddenly raised his head. His eyes revealed a glimmer of mocking and disdain. In this, it has been a long time since someone dared to use this kind of gaze to look at the man in the bamboo hat. So, although the man in the bamboo hat was a top figure in the world, he still couldn't help a glimmer of anger. This is your demand? A full grandmaster has fallen to such lows. Even if you don't want your old face, our king court still want our face. Fans Yan suddenly opened his mouth and countless scathing words flew out as if the person in front of him was not an unfathomable great grandmaster but one of his subordinates in the Overwatch Council that he grabbed by the ears to scold. The man in the bamboo hat was startled. It was clear no one had ever lectured him like this before. For a moment, he didn't know how to react. Fan Zian aggressive slammed the table and stared at the man's strange appearance and said each word clearly, Are you going senile? This is a matter of the Junshang Conference. Whether or not I mobilize the Black Knights to slaughter people has FCK all to do with you. Unless you have disciples in that manner, do you think I will listen to you if you charge in like this and put a knife to my throat? Even if I did listen to you. What about the future? Do you think your disciples won't die? They'll probably die even faster. Fans Yan's voice became sharp. It held a mixture of boundless disdain and ridicule. He pointed at the man's nose and taunted, I beg you to be more clear-headed. What year are we living in now? Long gone are the days a sword could remove all obstacles. Who do you think you are? Do you think you are a sword immortal? That is still a dead end. Dot. Dot. The man in the bamboo hat looked at Fans Yan like he was watching an idiot and suddenly felt that he was an idiot. He walked the earth and received the reverence of tens of thousands. Even the ruler of a country treated him with respect. It was impossible to find someone who was not respectful to him much less someone like this beautiful youth in front of him. Pointing at his nose and taunting him. But... He was a great grandmaster after all. He was stunned for a moment before recovering his calm. On the contrary, he gazed at Fans Yan and laughed out loud with such cheer. It has been many years since anyone dared to talk to me like this. As he spoke, the man's tone dropped and he said coldly, I will count to three. If you don't give the order to pull back the Black Knights, I can only kill you. Those steady hands slowly came to a rest on the table. Fans Yan's gaze dropped slightly, looking at the hands that should be aged yet had not a single extra wrinkle. Dot. Dot. Below the table, the sword was pulled with a powerful force. It gave the roar of a dragon and began to buzz. The hilt of the sword rose slowly. The half of the sword shining with a snow-white brilliance lit up the inside of the building brilliantly. 3. The man in the bamboo hat began to count backward coldly. Fans Yan's eyes narrowed. He glanced at him and directly said, 1. Finishing this word. His fist smashed down beside him. This punch contained the bitter cultivation of almost twenty years of day and night mediation, the tyrannical zanky of the unnamed skill, the coffin-breaking technique of the Yi family, and the heart of Danny Idao learned from Hai Tang. Chi followed the will, and in a breath he shattered tens of thousands of barriers, broke through meridians, circulated the punch through his body and ferociously slammed it down. His fist landed on the hilt of the sword. The air in the building moved without cause, and the air outside of the rail seemed to have been shaken, distorting the scenery around it. With a zing, that normal sword was smashed back by Fan's yawn, and the dragon's roar immediately disappeared. Beside the railing, Mr. Zhu had long fainted from this world-shaking shock and was wretched lying beside the railing. Dot. Dot. 
fans, Jan swallowed back the mouthful of fresh blood that had risen up in his chest. He stared fiercely and toughly at the man's eyes and suddenly opened his mouth to yell out, Dang Ziyu, listen to my orders. This shout imbued with Zenki traveled out and in a moment reached the entire long street. J.O.D.A., hidden across the street started and unconsciously stood up. While Deng Ziyu who had been standing guard in the middle of the street the entire time didn't know what had happened. In a trembling voice, he replied, I am here. Fans Yang continued to stare into the man's eyes and viciously said, send the order for smoke and fire. Have the Black Knights enter the garden, if they meet resistance. Kill without mercy. Kill without mercy. Dot. Dot. After an indeterminable amount of time. A complicated sigh came from the man in the bamboo hat and interrupted the silence at the top of the Bayou brothel. You are right, I shouldn't have re-entered the human world. Only, the people you want to kill, that you want to capture, are people that I care about. What is there to be done? The man in the bamboo hat gently grasped the sword hilt beside the table. He picked up and said in a quiet voice, so I picked up the long sword and left the eastern mountain. The power of the sword gradually overflowed. If was a lie to say fans Yan was not scared or nervous, but he valiantly used his state of mind to control every tremble in his muscle. He stared intensely at the man's face and said one sentence. You don't dare to kill me. Dot. Dot. Silence. Why don't I dare to kill you? Because you are not Siguji and that idiot. Fan Xian again tightly gripped that broken fan on the table and said, Of the four great grand masters, as long as it is not that mercilessly idiot, no one dares to kill me. The man's hand continued to grip the hilt steadily. Fan Xian believed that if the other party pulled out his sword, his body and head would separate. So, he forcefully pushed down the glimmer of fear deep in his heart and said each word clearly, so that is why I don't understand why you would appear here. In my heart, you should be on a half-broken boat singing under the skies, relaxed and at ease. A virtuous person whose sleeves do not dip into the flowing clouds, not a brutish martial master who would let matters bring confusion to your heart and act in such a stupid way. The man's gaze changed. Fan Xian wasn't sure whether or not his eyes were playing tricks on him because he saw a glimmer of appreciation in the other person's eyes. The waves only bloom for a moment but compared to rocks a millennia old, none are the same. Sir is also like this. Fan Xian stared intensely at the other person. If you are Yilaya Yan. How could you dare to kill me? Chapter 399 One strike to topple the building Fans Yan's first and only time meeting Yi Laya Yan was the year he was 12. That year he was lying on a precipice with strange colors swirling before his eyes. He was watching the solitary half-boat below the precipice, the millions of holes on the beach, and the one-hit battle of the strong between the two exceptional people. One of the people was the great grandmaster of the King Kingdom and the other was his uncle. The twelve-year-old fans Yan had only mastered the basics for the tyrannical way. His perception was not very insightful, so he could only sigh in admiration for the reputation of that battle but extracted the essence within it. On the contrary, it was in recent years he would occasionally think of a time or scene and then gradually find, within his memories, the marvelous parts the shocking parts, and the parts from which he could learn. The more he remembered, the more admiration he felt toward Uncle Wuzhu and Yilaya Yan's exceptional methods. Sometimes the image of Yilaya Yan on the solitary half-boat sailing on the ocean would still rise in his mind and that very strange song would still sound beside his ear. But he had never, ever thought that this great grandmaster of the King Kingdom, this major figure that was revered by tens of thousands of people, would be in the top floor of a brothel and become someone he had to face. Dot. Dot. Fan Xian was the person who feared death the most in this world, so for enemies that he might have to face alone, he had once done ample research and analysis. After much calculation, and weighing up of his strength and background, among these people, the one he should fear most ought to be Dong Ai's Sigu Jian, the most unfathomable would be Northern Chi's Ku He, and the most troublesome were, of course, the ones in the royal palace. However, although Sigu Jian was an idiot and could kill him easily, 
everyone knew that idiots hated going out to strange places. While the most unfathomable and the one who most enjoyed exploiting others, the imperial advisor Kuhi, had been personally struck down into the mundane world by his closest uncle Wuzhu, a person who could be injured did not feel so scary. As for the ones in the king royal palace, they were all related and did not need to be considered for now. The people fans Yan truly feared were all at the level of a great grand master, thus it could be seen that this was not excessive self-confidence, it was just a bit arrogant. However, the topic had come back round again. Given his power, in addition to his blind uncle, they only really needed to consider these people. Among the four great grand masters, it was only Yilaya Yan that fans Yan had not worried about. For one, his childhood memories were overly deep. He always felt that this elder of the Yi family had a refined and graceful attitude. Spending much of his time traveling, he was a true person with a path. His personality was bright and cheerful, not one that would be involved in the pointless battles of the mortal world. Second, the state of the Yi family in Jingdu made fans Yan see clearly that Yi Laya Yan was truly a sympathetic person, otherwise, it would be impossible for the emperor to maintain the balance between the two sides. The Hanging Temple was a dark flame that destroyed the Yi family, such a base method, yet Yi Laya Yan could resist returning to the capital. He considered the Yi family's contentment and safety and the continuation of the Yi clan to be more important than anything else. As long as Yi Laya Yan did not stop in Jingdu and impact the balance of the current situation, the emperor would not truly do anything to the Yi family. This could not be publicly announced. In the place between the imperial power and Yi Laya Yan that surpassed martial ability, there was a natural implicit understanding. Fans Yan could not understand why Yi Laya Yan would make a move because of the Junshang conference matter and charge so determinedly to him and use his life to threaten him. If this wasn't stupid, then what was it? Even if the Black Knights were called back this time, would the Emperor not know of the connection between the Yi family and the Junshang conference? Wouldn't this balance still be destroyed? Since he had come, so be it. Fans Yan had calculated this great grandmaster's fate. Only then did he dare to be so mocking and disgracefully acerbic. He knew very clearly, if you are Yi Laya Yan, how could you dare to kill me? Dot. Dot. Fans Yan stared at the pair of eyes that were as calm as limpid autumn waters below the bamboo hat as if he wanted to divine the great grandmaster's true purpose in suddenly coming to Suzhou. In the depths of his heart, he was prepared if Yi Laya Yan immediately answered his question with one of his own, why wouldn't I dare to kill you? He would immediately coldly toss out his mass murder weapon that walked the Jiangu as an explanation. If you kill me. Uncle Wuzhu would naturally kill everyone in the Yi family. This was a very simple truth. Yi Laya Yan would certainly believe it and furthermore, would not accept it. Ah dot so that year, you hid on the precipice and secretly watched. Unexpectedly, Yi Laya Yan did not continue fans Yan's previous sentence. He only slowly returned the sword in his hand back into its sheath. He looked at that handsome face and sighed. Fans Yan's heart jumped but the no expression appeared on his face. It was still cold and calm, don't understand? Yi Laya Yan asked. Fans Yan truly did not understand and nodded his head. The ferociousness and confidence he purposely showed earlier immediately weakened greatly. Yi Laya Yan smiled slightly and said, if you weren't on the precipice, how could you recite those lines? How could you know I am me? How could you be sure I knew you were you? How could you know I wouldn't dare to kill you? It sounded very complicated, so fans Yan was actually a bit dazed. Fortunately, his enlightenment had come a dozen years earlier than normal people. Having lived twice, his foundational knowledge of logic and such was stronger than most. He turned it over in his head a few time and finally unraveled Yilaya Yan's words. What Yilaya Yan wanted to express was very simple, in this world, at least today, at least in Jiangnan, there were not many people who could recognize him. This shocked fans Yan. Was it true that very few people would be able to recognize the King Kingdom's great grandmaster? Dot. Dot.
He unconsciously loosened his tight grip on the paper fan and a glimmer of mocking rose to the corner of his mouth. Don't think that if you pretend to be ruthless you can imitate my uncle. Don't think that if you wear a bamboo hat you can imitate bald kuhi. Don't think that if you carry a sword that others will believe you are Sigijian. You are Yilaiyian. Whether or not I recognize you, you are still Yilaiyian. Sigujian's movements were of utmost importance to the Overwatch Council. It was impossible for Yi Liaian to imitate him, so this was something that fans Yan could not understand. Did Yi Liaian do this because he truly wanted to shed of pretenses of cordiality with the Emperor? He smiled mockingly and said, Although Sigujian is indeed rather stupid and has been the scapegoat countless times for the King Kingdom. Your acting is a bit too lacking in effort, who I am is not important. Yi Liaian looked at fans Yan coldly. I am just here to remind you, your visit to Jiangnan has resulted in too many deaths already. Fans Yan narrowed his eyes and looked at one of the four extraordinary martial art masters left in the world without cowering back at all. He slowly said, in this world. How could goals be achieved without people dying? What goal do you want to reach? I am an official. My responsibility is to protect the Emperor's interests so that they are not damaged at all. A strange light flashed through Fan Xian's eyes. He smiled slightly and said, Other than this, I have no other intentions. Even if it is death, no, I won't die. Yi Liaian became silent. A few moments later he said, your dot mother was not like this back then. Fans Yan did not find it surprising that the other party would bring up his mother, but his face wore a frosty expression as he coldly replied, Don't use my mother to pressure me. Besides, speaking of killing people, I'm sure you remember very clearly that my mother was no better than me. I am talking about roots and natural disposition. Yi Liaian's voice suddenly deepened. Those who like to kill. How could they hold great power? The slightly warm atmosphere earlier from reminiscing about former times immediately froze over and became tense again. In Jingdu, you have those people taxing their body and soul to worry for you, for the time being. I will not talk about that. Yi Liaian sat upright beside the table, his whole person seemed as tough and unyielding as the pine trees on the Easter Mountain. When you came to Jiangnan, Jiangnan became troublesome. How many people have died because of your clever hands? Fans Yan narrowed his eyes and felt an incredible anger in his heart. He lowered his voice and said, Perhaps if I didn't came to Jiangnan, these people would not have died? The palace treasury bastards would not be bastards and the rotten Ming family would become virtuous. He smiled disdainfully. Elder, earlier I said not to pressure me in my mother's name, now I will add to that. Using righteousness also has no effect on me. Yi Liaian's expression did not change. It was impossible to see either joy or anger. He only quietly said, In the matter of killing you on Meng, you drugged the servants in the manner, so it appears you have some kindness. However, these drugged people were all captured by the Suzhou government later and killed to keep them from talking. He looked warmly into Fan's Yan's eyes and continued to speak, When you left. You should have guessed that under the pressure of the Overwatch Council those innocent people could only die. You didn't kill the innocent, but the innocent died because of you. I only need to shoulder the responsibilities I need to shoulder. Fans Yan's mouth had some teaching from his previous life for a light reply, but great astonishment surged up in his heart. It was not because of those innocent people dying because of him. Although this did darken his heart slightly. The astonishment came from Yi Liaian's tone. That tone seemed to faintly hint that dot the details of his entry and killings in the manor were completely known to the other person. Fans Yan stared into Yi Liaian's eyes. He didn't know just how much this great grandmaster knew. If he knew he had already mastered the Sigu sword, that would be bad. This was one of Fans Yan's secrets. Once it was known by the Emperor in the capital. The entire Overwatch Council would be trampled into the ground because of the incident with the shadow at the Hanging Temple. Yi Liaian could certainly use this to threaten him, but looking at his expression, it seemed like he did not know the details. Of all the things Yi Liaian could have brought up, why did he bring up the completely unimportant Yuan Meng? A severe light flashed through Fan Xian's eyes, 
and he immediately recovered his calm. He gave up the thought of killing him to stop him talking. Today's situation was not the same as in the past. He had always been the knife, and the people the meat. Today, it was him struggling desperately on the chopping board. If he wanted to kill this man in front of him, it would be essentially impossible to do during Uncle Wuju's recovery period. Thus, fans Yan slammed the table and roared in anger. To succeed in an important matter, one cannot bother about the trivialities. If I didn't strike like lightning and allowed Jiangnan to go on like in the past, how many deaths would the Ming family cause? How many more people would those pirates kill? Will you fill in the deficit in the national treasury? Without waiting for Yi Liaian to reply, that resentful finger of his extended out again. He very daringly and rudely pointed it at Yi Liaian's nose and cursed. What about that Junshang conference? Is it cleaner than me? What is your identity? How could you lower yourself to work for them? You are the Grand Master of the King Kingdom. Why do you not stand on my side? Why do you stand on that side? The last sentence twisted cleverly and pointed straight at his heart. Yi Liaian furrowed his brows slightly and slowly said, The Junshang conference is not like what you imagine. Fans Yang laughed mockingly and said, of course I understand, you are a lofty great grandmaster but you are still a person, you still need luxuries. Walking the earth and wandering the horizon seems joyful, but if you always scorched and drenched by sun and rain, how could it feel fun at all? If everywhere you went, in each province and land there was someone to receive you, to serve you, to worship you. Naturally you will be happy. Other than the Junshang Conference, who else could offer you the entire world? Yi Liaian smiled slightly as he looked at him. It seemed like he didn't expect for this young man to be able to so easily discern his relationship to the Junshang Conference. The matter was just this simple. Ku He was worshipped by Northern Qi. Sigu Jian was worshipped by Dong Yai. The one in the royal palace was naturally worshipped by the King Kingdom. But what about Yi Liaian? He walked the earth and did not return home. He blew the wind on the sea and supported the pines on the eastern mountain, and he traveled the rivers and lakes. All of this needed someone to manage, someone to look after. The great grandmaster also needed to eat and to live in inns, particularly someone of his status. Surely he didn't like the cliched fawning and preferred to live in a quiet garden and talk with hermits hidden within the mountain. A garden needed money. Going into the mountain to visit friends required travel expenses. Traveling around the world was actually a very extravagant life. It wouldn't do for a proper great grand master to be a highway robber. Fans Yan was done speaking. He smiled coldly and said, But your disciples' relationship with the Junshang conference is not so simple. If you want to scoop up people from my hands, it will not be so simple. For your sake. The Junshang Conference has protected these maiden-like hands. Are you going to use these hands to hold up the sky for the Junshang Conference? As he spoke, his gaze, with or without intention, landed on Yi Liaian's hands that were lying on the table. That pair of hands were as white as jade without a single wrinkle. They did not look like an old person's hands. They looked like a pair of woman's hands that had never seen sunlight and only knew embroidery in a boudoir. This was from many years ago when Yi King Mai pushed Wu Zhu to enter the King Kingdom's Jindu and his first battle with Yi Liaian. It was a mark of Yi Liaian successfully sacrificing his sword and letting go of his hand. After all these years, nothing had changed at all. Hearing fans Yan describe his hands as womanly, his eyes, which had been as calm as limpid autumn waters, gradually began to flare up. Dot. Dot. The most important thing in a negotiation was to understand the other person's emotions, even if that person was a loft great grandmaster. When fans Yan first realized that Yi Liaian was about to show his anger, he immediately changed the topic of conversation and slowly said, There should still be a while before the Black Knights make their move. If you truly care about your disciples in the garden, shouldn't you give Mr. Zhu to me? Yi Liaian looked at him with a not quite there smile and seemed to be mocking him as well as looking at an ignorant child. Now you are willing to accept my condition? Fans Yan slightly lowered his eyelids, 
but his heart gave a thump. He originally thought that since Yilaya Yan had dragged the account master of the Junshang conference all the way to Beiyu brothel, he intended to use Mr. Zhu to exchange for the descendants of the Yi family in the Junshang conference. Perhaps the other party never intended to do this. I never accept any condition when threatened by others. He raised his head. His calm eyes gazed with sincerity at Yilaya Yan's strange appearance. But, that does not mean I am not willing to come to an agreement with an elder worthy of respect. Hearing this, Yilaya Yan finally made an expression. He sighed and said, Indeed so shameless. Fans Yan smiled slightly. You use martial abilities to threaten people. I use lives to threaten people. If we are talking about being shameless, the difference is not that big. Yilaya Yan slowly stood up. Fans Yan's heart jumped, although his face remained calm. He once again opened that poor fan that had already been warped and drenched in sweat and fanned it randomly. Yilaya Yan looked at the fan in his hand and a glimmer of amusement flashed through his eyes. He could see that this young man was actually very nervous deep in his heart. Dot. Dot. Do not think that you understand everything and that you can control everything, Yilaya Yan said. Otherwise, there will be a day that you will die very unfortunately, Yilaya Yan sighed. You are a clever man, but don't be overly clever, Yilaya Yan lectured. Dot. Dot. You should know how the later matters should be handled. Yilaya Yan slowly lowered his head allowing the bamboo hat to hide his strange appearance. He held the long sword wrapped in rough cloth backwards and walked to the rail to pick up Mr. Zhu by his collar. Fans Yan finally felt a glimmer of helplessly and confusion. If Yilaya Yan was not here to deliver a count Master Zhu to him, then why did he condescend to talk with him for so long? Yilaya Yan turned his head. Smoke and God gradually rose in his eyes and an instinct yet chilling murderous intent shocked fans Yan's body. He finally slowly said, I carry a sword not to imitate that idiot Sigu Jian. Perhaps you, child, have forgotten that back then I used to wield a sword, as he spoke. He slowly drew out the sword. The snow bright and sharp blade did not give a trace of light. It seemed that all of the light had been absorbed by the palm of that steady and pure white hand. Fans Yan's eyelid jumped, and he gathered his mind. He bit down hard on the tip of his tongue and used the pain to alert himself. At a time of life or death, every stratagem and battle of wits was fake. He suddenly forced out the tyrannical zinky surging in his lower back and moved it into his fists before striking forward. He struck the table, following a strange and sharp cry. Fans Yan's entire person was shocked up by the tyrannical double punch. His body twisted in the air like a pathetic dog, anxiously and dismally. He dissolved into a black line at an admirable speed and sped out of the building. Fans Yan swept over the long street. His entire person hovered in the air. His eyes were full of terror. Even now he could feel the murderous sword will behind him chasing after him as if it could chop him in two at any moment. He twisted his body and kicked out with his leg. He opened his mouth and spat out blood before increasing his speed again. He made three flips in the air and the tips of his feet stepped on the green banner outside the building opposite. Using the strength of the rebound. He once again dissolved in a light smoke and landed on the street. The six Tiger Guards and the Overwatch Council swordsmen had long charged over and securely protected him in the middle. Layer upon layer, they acted as his meat shield without fearing death. In an instant, fans Yan felt surrounded by people and could not see the situation outside. A glimmer of gratitude flashed through him before his body returned to its most sensitive state prepared to escape at any moment. Dot. Dot. It was absolutely silent on the long street, a strange silence. Fans Yan did not dare move rashly. He hid for an indeterminable amount of time behind his guards before he felt something was strange. He ordered his subordinates to make a small gap. Yilaya Yan was no longer in the Beiyu brothel. Looking down the gap his subordinates, who were half dead with nervousness, had opened up, fans Yan saw, at the end of Suzhulong Street, a cloth-clothed man in a bamboo hat manhandling a person and slowly walking toward the city gate. Although he was walking slowly, 
Each of the other person's steps seemed to be 30 meters long, he gradually grew distant. Fans Yan swallowed some saliva to soothe his burning throat. He burrowed out of the crowd with a confused expression. Standing on the long street, he gazed at Yilaya Yan's retreating figure in a daze. Dot. Dot. J.O.D.A. had already come down from the building opposite. Seeing the safe and unharmed commissioner, he was overjoyed and asked in a trembling voice, Sir, are you all right? Fans Yan placed his slightly shaky hands behind him and said with a forced calm, What could have happened? As he spoke, he watched Yilaya Yan's figure disappear into the city gate. No one had noticed that on the top floor of the Bayu brothel, other than the deep gash J.O.D.A. had left. There were gradually some new changes. Beside the table that Fans Yan had broken with his fists, a crack suddenly appeared in the thick red paint at about half the height of a person on the thick corridor column. The fan that Fans Yan had thrown down during his escape had disappeared without a trace. The gash on the paint suddenly split open with a crack like a miserable injury. The skin was peeling outwards and revealed the wood inside. The solid wood inside was also slowly cracking open. The crack was impossibly deep, and it had already bisected this huge column. It was not just the column. All of the wooden columns, railings, walls, decorations and tables had begun to crack at waist height. The cracks gradually grew and extended, slowly becoming one unit. It was like a supernatural workman had instantly drawn a black line across the room. Only, the line wasn't drawn in ink, it was drawn with a sword. With a crisp crack, the first thing to fall over was a vase shelf in the corner of the top floor of the Bayu brothel. The vase fell onto the floor and shattered into power. Then there was a gigantic sound. Dot. Dot. The long street had emptied long ago. There were only fans Yan and the dozens of his subordinates surrounding him. Hearing the sound, they consciously raised their heads and gazed up and to the right. Everyone was dumbstruck and speechless, including fans Yan. Their eyes were filled with shock and fear, and their mouths were opened wide revealing perfectly white, tea-stained, or missing teeth to the point that they didn't even react when the wood and dust gradually filling the sky fell into their mouths. The Bayu brothel collapsed. More accurately, the top floor of the Bayu brothel collapsed. Even more accurately, half of the top floor of the Bayu brothel was, with a determined poise, neatly collapsing according to a perfect design, sending dust up into the air. As the dust settled, Everyone clearly saw that it was like Bayu brothel had been cleaved in half by a heavenly sword. The top had completely collapsed, leaving, very tidily, on the bottom half of the boards and decorations. The break was very neat and smooth. It was truly like a giant sword had sliced it through the middle. Everyone knew that this had indeed been sliced open by a person. In everyone's hearts, their first impressions once again rose up. This person was not a person. Dot. Dot. Fans Yan was the first person on the long street to close their mouth. He looked at the long empty city gates and then turned back to his own broken building. He couldn't resist slapping his face heavily to convince himself this was truly happening. Once the Overwatch Council and the Tiger Guards woke from their days, the gazes they turned toward Fans Yan were somewhat strange, full of shock and lingering fear and some confusion. How did the commissioner get out alive? This question. Fans Yan was not too sure either. Deng Ziyu. Fans Yan's voice were slightly hoarse and his eyes were flushed with an unhealthy red. As he coughed he said, make a trip to over there. It was clear that Deng Ziyu was still in a daze. Only after Fans Yan had repeated himself angrily twice that he woke up and quickly acknowledged it. Fans Yan called him over to stand in front of him and lowered his voice, if dot I'm saying if, someone surrenders, then you have to ensure their survival. Deng Ziyu was slightly shocked and raised his head to look at the commissioner. A glimmer of fear flashed through Fans Yan's eyes and he said, Bring the person back. No, have the Black Knights directly escort them back to Jingdu. He sighed in his heart and didn't want it to have any connection to it. In an elder's matters, let the elders play by themselves. He couldn't suffer such mental torment again. Deng Ziyu accepted his orders and turned his head to glance at the half destroyed building. He couldn't resist swallowing and asking in a shaky voice, 
Sir, who exactly was that person? Fan Xian glared at him and said, Didn't Jiao Da say it was Sigu Jian? Dang Ziyu proved himself to be a trusted aide of the Second Bureau and very directly countered, It is clearly written in the Council report. Sigu Jian is still in Dongyai. Fans Yan directly cut across his words and said angrily, Look at this broken building. The other person was a great grandmaster. Can our spies keep an eye on their movements? Dang Ziyu did not understand why Fans Yan was angry. He took his orders and went in search of a horse to ride out of the city. He had to quickly meet with the Black Knights. After Dang Ziyu left, Fans Yan remained standing on the street and refused to return to Hua Garden. His subordinates and the Tiger Guards could not persuade him, so they could only stand with him. Fans Yan couldn't resist glancing again at his broken building. He wanted to say something but resisted. In a short time, there was an express report from the Overwatch Council. Report, already left the city gate. Dot. Dot. More time passed. Report. Already passed the night pavilion. Dot. Dot. In the end, a frightened rider stopped. Report. Already passed the seventh Lee Hill. The seventh Lee Hill was more than seven Li away from Suzhou. It was already the road back to Jingdu, more than a full twenty Li. Although no one dared to believe that a man in the bamboo hat could have traveled twenty Li in such a short time, they remembered the other person's identity and understood a little. Having confirmed that the exceptional martial artist who split a building with one strike had left Suzhou, everyone let out a breath. Tiger Guard Jiaoda wiped the cold sweat from his brows and moved closer to Fans Yan's side. In a quiet voice, he said, Sir, should we arrange for someone to stop him? Who could stop him? Jiaoda thought for a bit. He had indeed said something very stupid, so he quickly said, Quickly write a secret report and send it to Jingdu. Fans Yan furrowed his brows and said, I'm afraid it won't be in time, but I'll still have to write it. Dang Duan, he called another member of the Kinian unit, one of the original swordsmen of the 6th Bureau responsible for protecting Xiaqai Fi a few days ago. When Deng Ziyu wasn't around, Fans Yan trusted him the most. Fans Yan didn't hide it from Jiaoda and directly said in a cold voice, Go tell the governor's Yemen that tomorrow we are going to Ming Garden again. We are going to seize all of the Ming family's private soldiers. Jiaoda listened at the side and felt slightly apprehensive. He had indeed not expected that after such a dangerous moment, the commissioner would first think of how to use this incident to his advantage. An assassination attempt on the imperial envoy was a big matter. Right now the anger of the Jiangnan people was at its height. Everyone was sure to think of the Ming family. This incident could be used to further weaken the Ming family and at the same time, it could also decrease the people's rage at the old Ming matriarch's death. Jiaoda truly prostrated himself in admiration for the commissioner. Dot. Dot. Having confirmed that Yilaya Yan had left Suzhou, Fans Yan's heart relaxed. Only, he still had great misgivings and was confused. However, it was impossible for him to speak of it to anyone. He looked again at the half-broken building beside him and couldn't help pulling a gloomy face and cursing. How much will this cost to fix? That old bastard. Hearing these words, everyone jumped in fright and was immediately shocked. No one dared to open their mouths. The street was completely silent. No one would have thought that the commissioner actually dared to curse out a great grandmaster. Fans Yan looked at everyone's strange mood and felt anger surging up. He opened his mouth and ranted, This is my building. Someone destroyed it, and I'm not even allowed to curse. That is a bastard. Jiaoda wished he could cover the commissioner's mouth. But he didn't have the boldness. He couldn't help feeling even more admiration for the commissioner. He was indeed an exceptional figure full of daring. Earlier, fans Yan faced Yi Li Yan alone in the building, which already had made his subordinates admire him. Later, he survived and even successfully had the great grandmaster leaving swiftly, so everyone felt an admiration of fans Yan to their very bones. Of course, what everyone most admired was that fans Yan dared to curse him on the streets after the incident. Dot. Dot. Under everyone's admiring and praising gazes, fans Yan muttered something but no one heard clearly. They only saw his body go soft, 
and he sat down. A floral image floated past, and a girl held on to Fans Yan's body. Everyone knew she was the commissioner's close female friend so they were not nervous. They were just a bit worried. It looked like having gone against a godlike great grandmaster. The commissioner still received some internal injuries. Everyone quickly followed the young man and woman in front toward Hua Garden. The soldiers from the governor's manor finally arrived. Fans Yan tilted his body into the girl's embrace and smelled that faint floral scent. He couldn't resist saying resentfully. He's already left and then you come out. An apologetic look flashed across Hai Tang's face and she said, I can't beat him. Fans Yan couldn't resist rolling his eyes, who can beat this kind of strange creature? Hai Tang asked worriedly, internal damage? No. Fans Yan replied seriously, I pretended for too long upstairs. Actually my legs dot turned to water long ago from fear. Chapter 400 who a garden's brainstorm. In front of a valley about twenty li from Suzhou, was an unremarkable manor peacefully waiting for the dusk to fall. With the fall of dusk, night also arrived. Four hundred black night steeds, with muffled bits and cloth-wrapped hooves, silently surrounded the manor like a nighttime god of death. Then came a bloody massacre. The black knights outside the manor fired in flaming arrows while the people on the inside also lit fires. The fire beacon lit up and lives were snuffed out. The manor was completely destroyed. Dot. Dot. The Black Knights were the fifth bureau of the Overwatch Council. It was the department with the strongest martial ability but did not have someone in the Yemen. They were always outside Jandu waiting for Chen Pingping's directions until the Overwatch Council gained a young commissioner. Now, the Black Knights were divided in half, with 500 following Fans Yan. From this, it was possible to see Chen Pingping's high opinion of Fans Yan. When Fans Yan went as a diplomat to Northern Qi, the Black Knights had escorted him to the boundaries between the countries. By the Wu Du, they successfully wiped out the military squadron Shang Shanu had sent out to rescue Zhao En. The strength of their martial prowess was evident. The Black Knights that had been waiting since then in Jiangbai and finally had a place to use their martial abilities. Yet, the deputy commander of the Black Knights, who was on his horse at the foot of the mountain, did not have an excited expression. For him, this was just a simple task. Commander Jing sat firmly on his horse and watched the roaring fire in the garden. His right hand gently pressed against his face and removed a black-colored mask that had hidden his appearance, revealing a slightly pale face and pair of cold, emotionless eyes. The task the commissioner had assigned had been completed. They had not expected that the garden would have such strong martial power so the Black Knights had taken some losses. The most terrifying was that everyone in the garden seemed to know they had come to the end of their road and resisted with their lives, not a single person surrendered. Commander Jing did not know who was in the garden, he was only carrying out the commissioner's orders. Furthermore, the people in the garden had also lit fires, any evidence that could not see the light of day had probably long been destroyed. He pulled the reins, the hooves clip-clopped and he slowly rode closer to the burning garden. His black knights were looking after the injured members and cleaning up the scene. His eyes kept a close watch on all of this when suddenly his eyelid twitched. Five horses broke out of the fire, glinting like black fire. They were like ghost horses from the underworld. On the five horses, other than the black armor-clad knights, there were a few extra figures trussed up like Zong Tsai. Commander Jing brought his right hand back to his face and replaced the black mask before the five riders approached. His thin lips parted slightly and an icy cold voice rang out. With some surprise and shock, he asked, Alive? The five riders rode closer to him and reported, These five hid in the well, they surrendered. Although Commander Jing remained cold, he was happily surprised. The corner of his mouth moved, and he revealed an icy smile. The commissioner should be happy. Given this garden's attitude of fighting to the death and the plans to kill indiscriminately, to capture some alive was indeed not an easy task. Commander Jing looked at the five captives on the horses and felt it was strange. Back to Suzhou, the black-colored masks reflected the golden-yellow flames and appeared to be extraordinary splendid and brilliant. It made people shiver despite the lack of cold. Below the mask, 
Commander Jing coldly gave out orders. The horses outside the garden neighed and tore through the silence of the dark night in the valley. The horses hooves sounded chaotically before they reformed into ranks, neatly divided into three lines of a black current. They wound their way around the blazing manor and slanted over the road at the foot of the mountain before disappearing into the black night. Not long after the black knights had left the mountain-like spirits and headed back, they ran into Deng Ziyu's group which carried the commissioner's newest orders. Commander Jing was silent. He then ordered a small squad of knights to escort the captives to Jingdu. The rest of the hundreds of nighttime gods of death did not enter the city. Instead, the silently searched for a place to cross the river and returned once more to their camp in Jiangbai. Dot. Dot. When Deng Ziyu returned to Hua Garden to give his report, Fans Yan only nodded his head to show he had heard. Having written the secret memorial for the emperor in the study, he handed it to a subordinate in the council to send back to Jingdu by urgent post. Alone he went to the main hall, where bright lights hovered high above and lit everything brightly, particularly the chest full of snow-white silver. It was lying quietly, reflecting an alluring brilliance. Fans Yan glanced at the silver. He shook his head and sighed. Sitting on a chair beside the chest, he thought silver was indeed very effective. The 138,880 Liang of silver just sat neatly in the chest. He couldn't resist taking another glance and sighed again. In the end, he still gave up what he was thinking. When faced with Yi Lai Yian, the feeling of helplessness and weakness actually made Fan Xian a little angry. He did not feel much self-pity or any humiliation since to be unable to defeat a great grandmaster was absolutely fair and reasonable, but he knew that no matter how his life developed, there would be a day that he would have to face a great grandmaster. Even if it wasn't Yi Lai Yian, if it was Sigu Jian or the person in the palace, in the end, he would have to face them. But today, Yi Lai Yian's ability to destroy half a building with one strike and the unnatural imposing manner that seemed to surge out from between the heaven and earth made fans Yan realize that himself in the present could do nothing to someone at the realm of a great grandmaster. It was like how the Ming family could do nothing to him, it was the same logic. A great grandmaster was too strong, so strong that they could ignore any usual attempts to besiege them by military force. It was no wonder that the emperor treated the Yi family so even-handedly, Ku he could support so many orphans and widows, or that even the idiot Sigu Jian could protect Dong Yai. Fans Yan thought and sighed. He began to miss his dear uncle Wu Zhu. He immediately dismissed his own thoughts. In his life, he couldn't always depend on his uncle to resolve his worries and difficulties for him. Plus. Wu Zhu would not have an advantage against these great grandmasters. From the depths of his heart, Fans Yan could not bear to let his uncle Wu Zhu brave such dangerous and difficulties. Dot. Dot. So, how could they kill a great grandmaster? With the company of the chest of silver and light of the hall, Fans Yan sank into deep thought. In a moment, his mind had modeled many scenarios and topics. What kind of place did he have to create where death was certain and a perfect opportunity for murder so that he could kill a great grandmaster on the spot? His palm unconsciously slapped the chest and he suddenly stood up. In a loud voice, he called, meeting, meeting. As he called, he walked to the back hall. The commissioner had called for a meeting so no one dared to neglect it. The upper-level officials of the Overwatch Council situated in Hua Garden, all the members of the Kinian unit, and the seven Tiger Guards gathered in the discussion hall. Fans Yans had barely sat in the chair before he couldn't resist it anymore and laughingly scolded, take Mr. Lin back to play. He glared at the third prince, who had came to see the commotion, and D.A. Bao, who had run in at some point and had the servants help take them outside. He glanced again at the people present and shook his head. Have Shi Chan Li and Sang Wen come in as well. The subordinate received his order and left. Shortly after, Shi and Sang arrived in the hall. Shi Chan Li often helped his teacher handle various matters, so he was not unfamiliar with these meetings. The hesitancy and surprise hung on Sang Wen's face. The imperial envoy was naturally discussing matters of state. What could she, 
a mere singer, do, the topic of today's meeting is simple, everyone open your minds, if you have any outlandish ideas, feel free to share them out loud, fans Jan rubbed his temples and said with a headache, I really cannot think of an idea by myself, Tiger Guard J.O.D.A. glanced at him and saw that the commissioner was worried, but he did not know what he was worried about, in a low voice, he said, Please instruct us as needed. Let's pool our knowledge for mutual benefit. Fans Jan smiled bitterly and said, Come and help give ideas. Everyone looked at him curiously, not sure what kind of ideas they were to give. Fans Jan very seriously said, How do you think dot we can kill a great grandmaster? Dot. Dot. The discussion hall immediately chilled and everyone looked at each other. Sang Wen was so shocked that the corners of her slightly wide mouth was pursed into a small cherry. Shi Chan Li felt even more intensely an urge to turn around and leave. What were they discussing? How to kill a great grandmaster? If someone could truly think of a way, then the first thing the South Kingdom and Northern Chi would do was send someone and legally kill Sigu Jian. Then the two countries would split Dong Yai's wealth and the noble girls of the aristocratic families as bounty. Of everyone in the hall, only Deng Ziyu's ranking was somewhat high and was close to Fan Zhan. Looking at his expression, and the strange expressions on his colleagues' faces, he carefully said, Sir Dot have you been injured by the sword Qi? Fan Zhan started and then roared in anger, I haven't hurt my head. He didn't acknowledge his subordinate's shock. Instead he forced everyone to give ideas, for a moment, the people in the discussion hall had no other choice and could only pick some absurd ideas to give. As they gave ideas, they felt very ill at ease. The great grandmasters were revered by tens of thousands of people. His role was like that of an immortal, yet at this moment, they had to follow the commissioner's orders and think about how to harm them. The Overwatch Council was a dark aim and following with dark water. After talking a bit, everyone became daring and felt a strange sense of excitement. To have a meeting to discuss killing a great grandmaster. Even if they couldn't kill them, just thinking about it was exciting enough. In the name of opening the discussion, someone said since they definitely couldn't beat a great grandmaster, in order to defeat him they had to weaken his strength and increase their own, so they suggested poison. Immediately someone countered and said that the great grandmaster's abilities had already surpassed the boundary. When poison entered their body, it would immediately turn into a puddle of snow water, so it wouldn't work. Then someone suggested they should choose a kind of medicine that would stimulate a body's special quality. It was not a poison but was able to, in a short amount of time, mobilize the body's emotions and energy. Afterward, they would naturally be weak. Fans Yan interrupted coldly and said, That's an aphrodisiac. Someone else said that desire steals a person's life. First, they had to throw his resolutions into disorder and then desire would be his downfall. Then, they had to make him crazy and create a special scene to arouse the great grandmaster's emotions and force his state of mind into chaos and confusion. Fan Zaya nodded in approval but in his heart he was cursing that Tuang Feng was even crazier. Deng Ziyu thought for a long time and suddenly slapped the table. It's actually not difficult. We just have to think of a way to create a situation where the other party cannot easily escape, then surround them with the six bureaus archers and fire methodically without rest or stopping, burning up his Zenki. Even if it needs tens of thousands of arrows, we must weaken the other party. And then have the Black Knights of the Fifth Bureau charge in. After all, the Great Grandmaster is not a god. He can stand against a thousand, but a thousand knights. He will eventually die. Fans Yan looked at him and asked, With your plan, how many people do you think will die? Deng Ziyu calculated and reported, All the archers of the Sixth Bureau will probably die. 10% of the Black Knights should survive. Fans Yan shook his head and said, I want to kill someone, not send my own people to death. Deng Ziyu excitedly said, if it could succeed, 
It doesn't matter how many people die. Fans Jan's eyebrows rose and he smiled coldly. How can you stop the other person from moving and just let you shoot and charge at them? It's not like he's a scarecrow. Deng Ziyu was silent. The brainstorm continued. Everyone's ideas became more and more absurd and nonsensical. Suggestions included kidnapping, causing an avalanche, and even rigging up a toilet. Then, the counter-arguments followed. First was that Sigu Jian did not have any relatives because he had killed all of them himself. At the same time, Don Yai never saw any snow from one end of the year to the other. As for the last suggestion, everyone snorted and did not even bother to acknowledge it. Fans Yan gazed at the scene coldly and felt more at ease. The seemingly absurd meeting today was actually to lighten the fear in his subordinates' hearts concerning the Beiyu brothel today. Without a doubt, Yi Lia Yan's sudden appearance today cast a strong shadow on these people's hearts. It was even difficult to see the usual determination on Jiao Da's face. Working with this group of subordinates, he could not allow them to sink into these kinds of inappropriate emotions. So, fans Yan publicly asked everyone to discuss how to kill a great grandmaster. After a series of discussions, it could clearly be seen that the fear pressing down in the depths of everyone's hearts had lightened greatly. The excitement was effective in sweeping away the shock everyone received today. Of course, the people in the discussion hall had indeed raised some very effective ideas. No one knew whether or not fans Yan would make use of them in the future. As for his subordinates, Imagining Sigu Jian as the enemy was indeed a little out of fans Yan's expectations. The people and officials of the King Kingdom would never think to defeat Yilaya Yan, since they were currently in the honeymoon period with Northern Qi, and because of fans Yan and Hai Tang's relationship and the fact that the mistress of the Fan family was now Grandmaster Ku He's last disciple, his subordinates would not discuss how to kill Ku He in front of the commissioner. Once again it was poor Sigu Jian. Dot. Dot. The discussion continued until the candles burned out. After everyone had dispersed, they continued to talk secretly in the corridors in the garden. They could not contain their excitement for the commissioner's bold proposition. Fans Yan shook his head and called over saying when the Beiyu brothel has been half destroyed. It will take at least half a month to fix it. What arrangements have you made for the girls? When the streets were first evacuated, the clients in the Beiyu brothel had left. The girls had also been removed to a safe location. Only now did Fans Yan had the time to worry about his brothel business. Sang Wen replied respectfully, the girls have temporarily been settled in other brothels. Those owners were very easy to persuade and took them all in. Only, it is not a done thing for them to stay long in another brothel. Fans Yan nodded. At this moment. There was no one in Suzhou who dared not to watch his mood. The brothel owners were probably overjoyed to help take in his girls. Then it's settled. Shi Chanli will lead the repairs. You can take a break these days. Fans Yan suddenly thought of a matter. His brows rose and a ruthless expression appeared on his handsome face. Keep all the receipts, large and small, safe. When we return to the capital next year, I am going to find someone to collect the account. Sang Wen made a noise of acknowledgement. Fans Yan asked, You don't need to live outside. Hua Garden is large. Over the next few days, keep sissy company and help look after that uncle of mine. Sang Wen smiled straightforwardly. She covered her mouth and did not say anything. What's wrong? Hai Tang also said that. Sang Wen laughed lightly and said, And those two girls are also going to be brought to the garden. Fan Xian was startled and then understood that she was talking about the two headliners, Liang Diandian and Masa Osuo. He couldn't help being surprised at the thoroughness of Hai Tang's considerations. Liang Diandian had not officially debuted, so it was indeed inappropriate for her to enter another brothel. As for Masu Osuo. She was the concubine of the great prince. So she had to be carefully looked after.